Hidden away in Lincolnshire sits the Paul Fletcher International Kart Circuit, one of the UK's most prestigious karting venues. This 1,382-metre circuit has not only played host to national, international and world championship events, it also is the site of the annual Motorsport UK Kartmasters British Kart Grand Prix. Now in its 28th year, Kartmasters has never been bigger, with a record 300-plus entries representing 27 different nations from across the world. In eight classes, each driver will attempt to join the likes of Lewis Hamilton, Alex Albon and George Russell on the Kartmasters' Roll of Honor. Three days of intense edge-of-your-seat action boils down to the single biggest day in British karting. Grand Prix Sunday is where the winners of the 2023 GP plates will be crowned. Stay tuned as Alpha Live brings you a record-breaking 30 hours of high-speed live coverage from the home of British kart racing. Fasten your seatbelts. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Paul Fletcher International Circuit, home of the Trent Valley Kart Club, and finals day for the 2023 Motorsport UK Kartmasters British Kart Grand Prix. Quite simply, the most important single day's racing anywhere in the country throughout the entire year. My name's Henry Bodette. Joining me, as always, in the commentary box is Anthony Jordan. Anthony, the sun is shining, and we are set for what could be a classic day in the 28-year history of this event. You're certainly right, Henry. Good morning, everyone, joining us on the live stream. And here at the venue itself, PF International, 1,382 metres, 10 turns, 32 feet of elevation. Established in 1994, and not two years after that, they played host to the first Kart Masters in 1996. Lewis Hamilton won the first ever final in the cadet class. The very, very first champion. There have been many more since. The weather today, you'll be pleased to know, is set fair. A little bit of cloud cover, blue skies are plenty though, and that means the finals, starting at two o'clock this afternoon, will be your stereotypical, your classic Kart Masters slipstreaming battle pack Whoa. affairs. Can't wait. But for those of you that are regular viewers here on the Alpha Live YouTube channel, you'll know all about Kartmasters. But there are always newcomers to the sport tuning in for the first time, and you want to know what is Kartmasters all about? How did we get to this point? Well, Anthony Jordan will explain. The Motorsport UK Kartmasters British Kart Grand Prix returns for 2023, and the 28th running of this prestigious event is bigger and better than ever. So what is Kartmasters and why have more than 300 drivers from 27 nations travelled to the UK for a shot at Grand Prix glory? Kartmasters is a one-off annual event held at the Paul Fletcher International Circuit in Lincolnshire on the first weekend of August. Held across three intense days, Kartmasters brings the very best teams and drivers together in eight different classes from cadets all the way up to senior. We're all trying to earn one of the coveted GP plates and compete for a prize pool in excess of £35,000. Former Kartmasters champions include some of the very best in our sport from Formula One stars Alex Albon, George Russell and seven-time world champion Sir Lewis Hamilton to the likes of IndyCar star Jack Harvey, GP2 race winner Oliver Behrman and British touring car champion Ash Sutton. The three-day event spans Friday, Saturday and Sunday beginning with time qualifying and two heat races for every driver on Friday with the same format being repeated on Saturday. Drivers aim to score as few points as possible in their heat races as they try to ensure they qualify automatically for Sunday's Grand Prix. At the end of the heats, the top 30 drivers in each class transfer directly into the pre-final on Sunday morning, with everyone else having to battle their way through the dreaded repercharge to decide the final six grid positions to give us our full 36 driver starting lineup for the finals. Heat points give us the starting grid for the pre-final, with the rapid charge qualifiers joining the back of the field, while the result for the pre-final sets the lineup for the 15 minute plus one lap Grand Prix. The one race that decides who will be crowned Kartmasters Grand Prix champion for 2023 in their class. So how do the points work? At the beginning of the event, each driver starts with zero points. The finishing order from the heats will award the drivers with the following. First place earns zero points, second place earns two points, third place gets three points, and so on, increasing by one point per position. 
Non-starters and disqualifications will be given one more point than the number of drivers starting that heat. Any ties will be resolved using the results from time qualifying on Friday. Like any other motorsport event, technical regulations are a massive part of the weekend, with engines, chassis and tyres being the main focus. All competitors will be given controlled slick tyres to use for the whole weekend. Come Sunday, this will show who has looked after their tyres and who hasn't. With only one chassis and two engines for the event, looking after your equipment is key. With Kartmasters now in its 28th year, it goes to show the event is more popular than ever and is definitely the place to be, with more than 300 drivers battling it out in 2023 to be Kartmasters champion. Make sure you don't miss out on a single lap over the three days by tuning in at home on the Alpha Live YouTube channel. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is all you need to know. Now, you heard the name George Russell mentioned. He's a three-time Kartmaster champion, and he had a few words for this year's contenders. Hey, guys. I just wanted to send you a message wishing you all the very best at Kartmasters this weekend. A lot of special memories for me at Kartmasters. Obviously, a big one-off race. So enjoy it. Keep it clean, and uh, may the best person win. Cheers. Well, thank you very much for that, George. We have had 38 heat races over the past two days. We've now got three repechages, Anthony. That is for Junior Rotax, Senior Rotax and Senior X30. The top 30 drivers in each of those classes have already qualified straight for the pre-final and the Grand Prix. Yep. It's now up to these next three races to decide the final six qualifiers. This morning is where we do bid farewell to several drivers. Their Kartmasters dreams end in the next three races. 10 minutes plus one lap for the repper charges. 12 minutes plus a lap for the pre-finals. 15 minutes plus a lap for the finals. Thank you for tuning in on the live chat. I can see people from Australia all over the place watching already. Uh, already we get interview requests. Sorry. No interview today. The only way you get an interview is if Chris McCarthy speaks to you on the way out for the final or if you finish in the top three at the end of the Grand oh, Prix. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. 305 drivers entered into this weekend. After the repertoire charges, we are whistling it down to 249 that are all going to be battling for Grand Prix glory. That is a substantial number. Many classes in this one, eight classes in total. We honestly don't know who is going to take some of these GP plates. It's wide the, open. It is really wide, wide open. open. The conditions that these drivers have had to face over the course of this weekend have been probably the most challenging they've oh. been in, at, well, in Cartmaster's history. It has been hot and sunny. It has been pouring biblical rain. It's been damp. It's been cold. It's been cloudy. Over the last two days, each driver has competed in two qualifying sessions and four heats, and it has been a mix all yep. the way through. But without further ado, let's get started with the first race of the day. It is the Junior Rotax Repercharge. Here we go then. Which six of these drivers will make it into the pre-final? Pole position, Aaron Aris Miewskis, alongside him on row number one, Lloyd Hare. Zach Turner and Brandon Truman share row number two with Hugh Moulton and Theo Palmer on row three. Sky Parker and Katsma Tomanevsky are on row four. Joe Anderson and Finley Buck round out your top ten. Iam and Bansal and August Raber are on row number six with Luca Osman Price, Ethan Carney, Henry Cameron, Alberto Gonzalez, Ollie Hughes, Kaiser Raymond, your top 18. Nathan Kappen and Alfie Thompson round out your top 20. Rian Damadasa and Benjamin Baker are on the penultimate row of the grid. Logan Howes rounds out the field. So a couple of little notes. Rian Damadasa, the only driver here from Sri Lanka. Nathan Kappen and August Raber, as well as Theo Palmer, are all from Dubai. Uh, we have Alberto Gonzalez, born in Venezuela. Ethan Carney, born in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Ayman Bansal is from India. And Aris, Aris Bievskis, based in the UK now, but represents Lithuania. A multinational field, Anthony, and it's only the first race. It is indeed only the first race. And, of course, this is the repercharge, if you're wondering. Guys, what is a repercharge? I don't know. Basically, these are the drivers who did not make the cut into the top 30 to go straight into the pre-final. They collected too many points over the course of the heat, meaning... 
they will now fight for the top six positions in this, which will give us our 36 cart grid. There's a breakdown at the back of the grid, but the green flag goes out anyway, and they are away. Aris Music is with a great start, dives into the lead of this one, and remember, it's the top six that go through. And it was Joe Anderson, for the Sam Pollock Racing team, who was slow away. He was due to start ninth. But uh, he's now right at the back. He is up to speed, however. Joe finished 20th, who finished 13th in the Minimax Grand Prix one year ago. Down towards hairpin number one here at PF International. So far, everybody is keeping their nose clean, so to speak. And a two-car break with the front. Oh, and somebody else. Is that another one of the Sam Pot? That's no, a Hunter it's a, it's Motorsport cars. That's the number 99 in trouble. That's Zach, Zach Turner, who started in one of the transfer spots. Oh, and it's an exhaust that has come loose. Ah, that's a nightmare for Zach Turner. Qualified 44th on Friday. He had to battle his way through the heats. His best result was a 17th in his first racing heat over the weekend. He will now be, uh, well, that's so his cart that's, masters over, that, so effectively. Un unfortunately, Zach Turner gets an unwanted yeah. 2023 cart masters record. He is the first driver officially, well, who is not going to qualify for the pre-final and the Grand Prix. Very sad. There's a huge battle pack going through the banking into turn number three and across the bridge of turn number four now down the hill and a spinner in the background Anthony that looks like one of the Birrell ART carts I'm um, having a little look who that could be um, I'm not sure who that is actually we'll get a name check next time round it was Henry Cameron for the Ultimate R team who has spun and he drops to the back of the pack right this battle you're watching on your screen here this is fourth, fifth uh, well, no fifth well, third, fourth, fifth and sixth Sixth being the 229 of August, uh, August Raber. Raber. Raber, yep, who is right there on the last transfer spot. Finley Buck is right behind. So this battle is the most important. Yes, indeed. August Raber driving for the XL Motorsport team. Got to say, a fantastic job that Dan Hart and his crew have done. They brought everything over from Dubai. They normally race in Dubai, both XL and George Gibbons Motorsport here in force. As we've got a battle going on here, Raber clinging to the final transfer spot. Finley Buck trying to wrestle it away from him for all he's worth. Up in front of them, the Coles Racing Machine of Brandon... Uh, of Hugh Moulton moves into third place. Yep, Finley Bucks now managed to get past uh, August Raber and oh. uh, August now out of the top six, but he's only got a few, well, he's got seven minutes left to get back into that top seven. And right now, everyone is battling up in front. There again goes oh, Finley Bucks. Finley Bucks got to be careful because yeah. five second nose cone penalties do apply. If you finish the top six but get a, no a drop nose cone, that's a five second penalty that can knock you out of qualifying for the pre-finals. Hugh Moulton now into seventh place. He is out of the transfer spot. Keep an eye on this group because keep an eye on the group behind as well. You've got Sky Parker, Ethan Carney, uh, Osman Price there as well, all starting to close in. If they keep scrapping like they are, they are going to allow the next group just behind them to start closing in and they do not want that. There's already the, uh, the driver in seventh place with that group. They yep. don't want anyone who's yep. out of the top six near them. Indeed. Ethan Carney sets a new fastest lap. Sky Parker, the young lady from North Wales, she finished, let's have a look there, she started this race seventh. She actually finished eighth in the 2021 uh, Grand Prix when she was in Cadet Ayami. Or is it Ayami? We had this debate yesterday. Ayami. Ayami, sorry. But Lloyd Hare. People. Lloyd Hare has the race lead for the Evolution Racing Team. 20th in this class one year ago. He is on course to at least give himself a chance of matching or even bettering that result because to get into the Grand Prix first, you've got to qualify for it. Uh, Aris Mieskis is second in the number 69 Strawberry Racing Kart. Two years ago, Aris was on the podium here at Kart Masters in Honda Cadet. Then it's Katsma Tomalevsky. Katsma Tomalevsky's family were at a wedding in Sweden yesterday yes. and they stopped the wedding to watch Katsma race. Fantastic. I hope the wedding went well. Hope, yeah. they, hope that wasn't grounds for a divorce. <laughs> uh, Brandon Truman, Brandon Truman 12th in last year's Grand Prix in Emacs. He runs in fourth position. Then it's August Raber. And again, we've got so many drivers from the Middle East, from Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, and the United Arab Emirates. And they've all, I've got to say, they've all had a bit of a culture shock. And yes. just to get into the final here will be an achievement for August 
Raber. Now behind him, Philly Buck still clinging to the final transfer spot. Outside the transfer positions and uh, the Cartmaster's dreams hanging by a thread are Hugh Moulton, Sky Parker, Ethan Carney, Luca Osmond Price, Alberto Gonzalez, uh, Ollie Hughes, Theo Palmer, Kaiser Raymond, Logan Howes, Alfie Thompson, who had a major accident yesterday. That's a new chassis they put down this morning. Yeah. Uh, he wrote his other gloves. Rian Damadasa from Sri Lanka is 17th. Then Nathan Kappen, Ben Baker, Iman Bansal down in 20th now. Joe Anderson still mired back in 21st after that uh, problem at the start with Henry Cameron running last and Zach Turner, the only retiree. Yeah, exactly that. So keep a close eye on every driver in this one because remember, like we were saying, nose code penalties are still applied at the end of this one if you drop five seconds and you're within five seconds in seventh eighth or ninth potentially you might have a chance of getting through so it's always vital to never give up in these rapid charges you just do not know what's going to happen four minutes to go plus one lap hair still leads the way from mieskis from tomalowski from raber Truman still there. Moulton, the top six, who's just set the fastest lap of the race now. He's starting to break away from Finley Buck, uh, Buck in the 1-3-1. One, one. He is there in seventh place. He is the next driver to try and get into the transfer spot. As Ooh. there again, August Ryber uh, nope. just trying to get past Tomalowski. And but again, he doesn't need to do that. But that's showing his inexperience at this style of racing. He's in the top six now. Of course, the, thir the leading 30 drivers uh, have already gone through so basically whoever wins this race will start 31st for the pre-final so on back there's a move that looks like the number 25 car was it no that's uh, number one two one cart of Rian Damadasa getting involved that's uh, the Jack Dex racing cart there so this is the battle further back these drivers aren't really in touch with the fight for the top six this is going to be their final race of cart master so let's give them some tv coverage while we can there's ollie hughes the driver from cardiff in wales is uh, uh running in 14th position just behind theo palmer oh he's just dropped to 18th position now uh, you can see uh, sky sports is chris mccarthy who's filming some behind the scenes videos here we've got two and a half minutes plus change to go and uh, that's a kato motorsport cart i think uh Going through there, uh, that is the number 56 cut of Logan Howes in 14th position. So you're looking at 14th, 15th, 16th and 17th, then 18th, 19th, 20th and 21st. Uh, down towards here, pin number one. Good battling, the number 77 car, Ayman Bansal, the Indian driver. Uh, he moves up a position. All this is happening quite a way away from the top six. And it's still Finley Buck in seventh position, chasing sixth place driver Brandon Truman. One driver who we know is probably not going to be making it into the grand finals is probably the 249 Theo Palmer who has unfortunately ah. just received a five second time penalty there it is on your screen he will now have to add that on top of anything and right now he is currently uh, in 13th place it's not looking too good for Theo no it's not but again a big experience for these drivers. Oh, yes. They'll go back to the UAE, uh, to Al Ain Raceway, the Dubai Autodrome, and there's the move. Finley Buck passes, and again, they don't need to be doing this, and Finley Buck has taken advantage. And now, oh, oh no! Oh, I hope he didn't knock that nose cone down there. He's given himself a bit of a buffer. Sky Parker is closing in as well. Ethan Carney also right there. This is what this group does not need. This is going to give a chance now to two more drivers with one minute to go to get into the pre-final and potentially a chance to come away with that Grand Prix plate. Not long left to go in this race. It's only the first race of the day, but these drivers are fighting for that chance to win the GP plate. Now, let's have a look. Here leads by one and a half seconds over Mievskis. There is a huge gap back to this battle. Moulton, Raber, Tomalevsky, Buck, then Truman down to seventh with Sky Parker. There she is in cart number 23. And the second of those red, white, and blue Coles racing carts in the number 86 of Denver, Colorado's Ethan Carney. Watch as uh, Brandon wow. Truman at the inside of Finley Buck. Finley Buck's got to keep it. Oh, brave stuff there from Finley Buck. And now Sky Parker, uh, Finley's ultimate R teammate, is going to pass them both. Three wide. Ethan Carney getting into the mix. And Brandon Truman. Retake sixth position, Finley Buck. He was seventh, then sixth, then fifth. Now back the seventh. This, remember, only the top six go through any 
post-race penalties, i.e. nose cones or anything like that, will be added on. So they've got to be very careful in this stage of the race. Timer strikes zero. Lloyd Hare has already crossed the line. So there is still another two laps left of yep. this race. The last lap board hasn't come out yet. So Hare leaves from Miauskis, Moulton, Ryber. Then it is Tomalowski. Parker is in the transfer spot, but right behind is Brandon Truman, who is looking to get the move done. That strawberry car you can see now diving oh. to the inside, going side by oh. side. Contact between the two of them up in the air goes Truman, but he gets it back on all four. And keep an eye on Finley Buck now, who is trying to close in on this. Five carts on your screen, only one of them will transfer to the main event. And here comes the number 97 Project One cart of Luca Osman Price, the driver from Orpington in Kent. And Osman Price has now moved to seventh, but uh, Sky Parker is trying to make her escape. Oh, and a penalty for Brandon Truman. That ruins his chances in race penalty. Brandon Truman will drop well out of the top 10. Game over. Brandon Truman's got a five second time penalty, but look at Sky Parker's nose cone. I think Sky Parker's nose cone has possibly dropped there it, it, it looks okay actually from that angle it may have just been wobbly on the other one i'm not too sure she's in safe hands just yet not just yet she's got well this is the final lap so she's got no time to try and get a five second gap over the driver behind her now august raber will some of these drivers help sky parker's course by taking themselves out of the race they don't need to be doing this kasper tomalewski now moves into third position with uh, Raber fourth and Moulton in fifth. And now we go to our leader, Evolution Racing's number 141, Lloyd Hare. He made it into the Grand Prix last year. He's going to make it again. Checkered flag comes out. Lloyd Hare wins with Aris Majewskis in second. And... Tomaleski will take third, he qualifies. August Raber qualifies in fourth. Hugh Moulton takes fifth. And Sky Parker takes the sixth and final transfer spot. Of course, that is all provisional. Yeah. Subject to post-race scrutineering and the nose cone bracket check. Exactly. And I'm really hoping that Alpha have got a roaming camera down there at the Weybridge to see Anthony nose Jordan. cone watch. I've got, Alpha I've got have, to know. Alpha have got you all covered oh, today. Good. We have got more camera crew than ever before here at Car Masters. We're going to be bringing you things from every single angle possible. Lloyd here is your provisional Junior Rotax Repercharge race winner who we got there mandy gibbons please wish miles burton good luck today from auntie mandy well happy uh good luck miles burton and a happy birthday to micromax driver emerson mccandrew urine there is now here we go you can see mixed streak there mixed streak is checking the weight and the bracket and you can see gainer griffin there at the background of the white and orange shirt she's instructing the drivers where to go uh there is oh 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 no, Hang on I, a minute. I, I just now, think there this, was another cart on top of it. Right, there we go. Now, this is the way right, still. He's okay, he's okay to go. Here comes the number 229 of August Raber. So he's okay. So he's not under the weight limits. That's good, because if you're underweight, then that's a disqualification. No, I didn't see where this... There is, a, there is a, 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 someone with an iPad, with an iPad, um taking photos of the nose cones. We haven't quite seen where that is. There's Ben Moore in the grey shirt, one of our scrutineering team. Oh, that's Tomaleski. Tomaleski, so uh, third overall. The background, you can see the drivers that haven't qualified. Oh, now, that's Sky Parker. That's Sky and Parker. We did, and we didn't see. Finley Buck, Finley Buck. I think he's good. Ah, so the clip, it's, it's not the iPad of Doom. It looks like it's the clipboard of Doom today. I, I Mick think they're is all happy. Good. Mick I Street think is all happy. Good. So no nose cone penalties. Now, of course, the uh, technical, the scrutineering team here at Tread Valley Kart Club, at Kart Masters, they will now uh, take the top three, four, five finishes, however many, however many finishes they want, and uh, strip parts the cart down uh, to check its legality. And we will have our full list of final qualifiers a little bit later on. But this event could not happen without some of our sponsors and advertisers. Let's quickly hear from some of them.
Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Senior Road Tax Race 40 Repercharge Charge about to head out into the circuit. Remember, only the top six from this one go through to the pre-finals. Let's take you through the starting lineup. George Hunter and Jack Stedman take the first row on this one. Stedman qualifying it in 16th. Did not have good heats. He starts this one on the first row. Sam Longley and Oakley Pryor, they go from row two. Pryor also qualifying 13th. Again, bad weekend of races. Uh, James Wendells and Ollie Goodyear, they go from row three with Nicole Sutherland and Sam Gornall rounding out row four. Sam Gornall reportedly not making the gate. That would be a disaster. Danny Shields and Sam Light, they round out the top ten on row five from Alfred Gallagher and Stefan Kazmarzik on row six. Ava Agnostiadis and Craig Stevens go from row seven from Omar Ganum and Enzo Dickerberg from row eight. Jack Doyle and Zane Salim. Aiden Evans rounds out the final row of the grid. 19 carts, six go through, and reports that the number six seed has not even left the it, pit lane. It, yep, he hasn't. It was a terrible weekend for Sam Gornall. M multiple, multiple mechanical failures. And we've got a driver that has uh, made a slight excursion. That's the number 39 cart. That That's is James, James Swindell, who was due to start fifth. Now, uh, Jack Stedman on the outside of row number one. He finished fifth in this class two years ago. James Rindells from the United Arab Emirates. So was Danny Shields. Uh, Ava Anagnostatis is from Australia. Uh, Jack Doyle from the United States. Zane Salim representing Egypt. Enzo Dickenberg over from the Netherlands. And Omar Ghanoum, whose birthday it was yesterday, also from Dubai. Here we go, Anthony. 18 drivers. Six will qualify. Lights are out. We're off and racing. And it's a good start for both front row oh. drivers. Oh, Stedman sweeps round the outside to take the race lead. George Hunter absolutely slammed it on the anchors there on the apex. I think uh, Sam Longley just behind had a bit of a heart and mouth moment there to hit on the anchors as well. They lose the lead of this race, and now they'll have to try and fight back. Remember, as we've always said, in the repercharges, only the top six go through, so keep an eye on that one. Changes down the inside there. One of the Oakley Coles racing Pryor. cars. Yeah, Oakley Pryor getting it up into P2 now. And Oakley Pryor has been absolutely superb here for the last couple of seasons, but he's not had a good weekend. Uh, this time, Oakley Pryor finishing the top five of the Rotax Grand Finals uh, a couple of years ago back at Sarno, I do recall. There's Ollie Goodyear in the number 55, the CRG car. Ollie, 22nd in last year's Grand Prix as a junior driver. And the number 52 trying to make some progress, Enzo van den Dickerberg, uh, the Dutch driver. who oh, We saw him on the paddock show last night. It's just him and his dad in a transit van. An easy up morning. They've travelled all the way from the Netherlands to race here. What a surprise it would be if he could make the final. He said he's not even that sure he's going to do it because it's been so difficult this weekend. Uh, lots of support for the Australian. The Australian young lady, Ava Anagnostadis. She, at the moment, is only 14th. Sorry, Michael Burke. And uh, the XB chick saying good luck to Danny Shields. Yes, Danny Shields started... Ninth, and ninth. is currently ninth. Uh, yes, so at the moment, the top six drivers, Jack Stedman, Oakley Pryor, George Hunter, Ollie Goodger, Nicole Sutherland, and Sam Light. They are your transfer drivers as things stand. The 15 on your screen here is the last transfer spot. Sam Light and has got the close company of Stefan Kazmazek right behind. Keep an eye on Kazmazek. will want to fight for that spot. Remember, there's a lot of privateers in this one. Ollie Goodyear, ah, privateer. Yes. Uh, Sam Light, Kazmazek, uh, so and Craig Stevan. You mentioned the privateers. Yes. There is a prize for the best place privateer in any class in the Grand Prix. It's a toolbox and tool kit from Vera Tools. Oh, and there's two off. And is that two of our privateers? The number 44 is one of them. That's Stephen Kazmazek. Kazmazek. And I think going with Kazmazek was Craig Stevens. So I was just about to say that the best finish of a privateer in the Grand Prix wins a toolbox and tool kit from Vera Tools worth three thousand pounds there's a prize fund this today of 36,000 pounds some of it is cash some of it is prizes it's the value of 36,000 pounds now there are two for six privateers in this class there are only 21 privateers in the entire event there are six privateers in senior rotax and i've got to say let's have a little look one two three four five of them uh, in this race, the only privateer to qualify directly in senior Rotax was James Lingard, but uh, Ollie Goodyear and Sam Light 
are also in the transfer spot, so we could get three privateers through, but we could lose half the privateers in this class in this race. Now, uh, for any drivers support or any uh, fans out there supporting Nicole Sutherland, she is out there. She is in the last transfer spot at the moment. She is running with a transponder issue, though. James Swindell's getting a five-second penalty. He's down in 14th place, so we didn't see the incident that uh, precipitated that penalty. Also, Alfie Gallagher, five-second time penalty. It's up on the digi board here. Oh, uh, yes. And that is also going out. There it is, confirmation on the live timing. Uh, if you have not got the live timing in front of you, you can have oh, that. Of you can. Just head to motorsport-timing.co.uk. The live timing link is on there. It's to Ian Rogers working very hard here at uh, PF International to bring yes, you all is. of the live timing action. And there's a lot of messages and statistics on there. Battle for the race lead. Ollie Goodyear dives at the inside of Jack Steadman to take second position. Now, even though Ollie is in his first year as a senior, Oakley Pryor and Jack Steadman, two very experienced drivers. Now, you're not seeing the type of action you saw in the junior race. You're seeing a lot more single file action. Uh, but as I say that, though the battle pack for fourth, fifth and sixth starts breaking up. So these are the final three transfer drivers. The 83 of Sutherland is on the bubble. And look at Danny Shields in cut 225 closing in. Yeah, I think this is why Nicole Sutherland has closed in as well. She wants to get past now. She is in the danger zone here oh. if she wants to make it into the pre-final and the Grand Prix later on today. There is still five minutes left of this one. And Nicole Sutherland now picks up a warning flag. So... The stewards are even keeping a very close eye on her as well as they yep. exit out of the final corner. The slipstream will kick in. There is a breeze today, Henry, and I think yep. it is a headwind down the main straight. The slipstream effect will kick in. Yes, even more than usual because the driver in the second position, you know, if there's two carts in a, in a very close proximity, the second of those carts, the driver will duck down underneath his NASA panel and will get an even more of a sort of vacuum effect. But here we go, into hairpin number one. The difference between making the Grand Prix and missing out is half a cart length at the moment. That is what separates the number 83 Thule Motorsports cart of Nicole Sutherland and the number 225 KR Sport entry of Danny Shields with Sam Longley, who started this event third, running now in eighth at the back of this group. Well... Another five-second time penalty going out to Craig Stevens, who's already out of the race after the coming yes. together with Stefan Kazmarzik uh, onto the uh, Tyrone banking. Uh, that's a bit of insult to injury there. But I still on this battle as uh, Nicole Sutherland now. Well, even Sam Longley's closed in here as well. So yep. th this is going to be very interesting. But then starting to battle up at the top three as now oh, there's Conte no! and Nicole Sutherland and Danny Shields are off the circuit. And you can see oh, Danny Shields. Oh, no. Sh you can see Danny Shields apologize. He went for the move up the inside. I wonder if we can have a little look back at that. I think Shields trying to make a move up the inside. Let's have a look back because they come out from underneath the bridge. Now, they're the two carts in question. And you'll see Shields look to the inside. The door opens. And then Nicole Sutherland closes the door. And uh, contact. They both drive up the banking. And instantly, Danny Shields sort of a hand in the air saying, OK, uh, maybe I misjudged that one. Or maybe it was a hand in the air saying, what are you doing? I was up the inside. I was alongside of you. Well, two more drivers can kiss their cart master's dreams goodbye for 2023. What it does do, it does move Sam Longley up into sixth. Now, Alfie Gallagher is seventh, but he's got a five-second penalty. Omar Ghanoum in cart three, six, five in eighth position. One more place because he's already ahead of Alfie Gallagher because Alfie's got a penalty. One more place for Omar, who celebrated his birthday yesterday. And he could make the Grand Prix at his very first attempt. He very much could. Keep an eye on this one. Two and a half minutes to go. We are in the morning. Repercharge races for everyone joining on the live stream. and wondering what we're at at the moment with the Repercharges. Junior Rotex have had theirs. We're on Senior Rotex. Junior X30 have their Repercharge. The pre-finals, they start at 10.55 onwards. Oh, and Nicole Sutherland, Sutherland out of the race. Yeah, that is just... And there's been some she, more She's such a quick there. driver as well. Oh, yes. She, a top 20 finish at Clay Pigeon, the British Championship last year for uh, Nicole Sutherland, I recall. She uh, walks away. Now, that car, there was obviously some uh, some new damage to that car. You didn't see what the second incident no. was. Um, but uh, Nicole Sutherland out of the race, sitting in the marginal post, cursing her misfortune. Yes, indeed. Well, two minutes left on the timer. Your top six, Goodyear, Stedman, Pryor, Light, Longley, and Hunter 
at the moment. Gallagher in the 272 is trying his best to close in here and a big dive down the wow. inside there in towards hairpin one and that now puts Gallagher past Hunter and into the top no, six no, transfer spot. No, no, sorry, that's that's Gallagher still ahead of Omar Ganoum. Oh, right, OK. It was the XL motorsport cart of Omar Ganoum. Obviously, really hyped up because we sung happy birthday to him in the paddock yes. show last night. Yes, we did. And uh, he thought, I'm going to have a massive lunge at the inside. Uh, XL Motorsport, uh, Dan Hart and the boys have brought all this equipment over here. I may as well make good use of it. He's, But, of course, he, Alfie Gallagher is actually not in seventh position. He is on the road, but he's got a five-second penalty to be applied. So Ganoom has really got to focus on the number 23 uh, Guy Cunnington racing cart of George Hunter, who started from pole position and is now slipped back to the bubble spot. Well, certainly a very dramatic... Senior Rotax Rapid Charge. This is race 40 of the weekend. 38 heats over the course of Friday and Saturday. Plenty more to come today with the pre-finals and finals coming up later on. One more Rapid Charge after this one. But right now, keep a close eye on these two battling away because they are, I would say... They're closing in on George Hunter here. Yeah, well, I mean, Alfie Gallagher knows he's got a five-second penalty. Uh, oh, black flag, Stefan Kazmarzik. So... That incident that we saw between Kazmarzik and Steven, uh, it's accounted for two of the six privateers in this class. But we do have uh, Sam Light and Oli Goodyear holding the privateer flag high in the air in this race. They could be joining James Lingard in the pre-final as the three of the six privateers could qualify. Uh, Enzo Dickerberg is ninth and Ava Anik... Oh, sorry. An Agnostiadis. An Agnostiadis is 10th as here comes Ganoom again. He was thinking about it. Omar Ganoom has been watching ex old Cartmaster yeah. videos on the Alpha <laughs> Live YouTube channel because he is gearing up for a mega hairpin number one lunge. Here we go then. This now is the battle for the last transfer spot. And George Hunter, I can imagine, is absolutely sweating like anything under there. The pressure. He must be feeling with the timer striking zero. Oh, We're going to yes. be going on to the last lap. And, well, Gallagher and Ganuma are right there waiting to strike here. On to the final lap we go then. Goodyear leads from Stedman, Pryor, Light, Longley, and George Hunter is the last transfer spot. He's got Gallagher and Ganoom right on his tail, wanting to get through into the pre-finals later on today. Are they going to get it done? Off the bridge they go. Down the hill. Defensive straight away goes Hunter. Keep an eye on Ganoom. He's on the outside line here. He's going to try and get the switch back to the outside. Goes Gallagher, but he hasn't got the momentum. Down the inside now goes Ganoom. He's side by side with Gallagher as they try to fight for the last transfer spot. Henry, this is too, too close. Now it's game on because Ganoom has got Alfie Gallagher out the way. Here we go. Oh. He goes for the final transfer spot. The crossover down to the back straight. Hunter gets it back. No. Great defence by Omar Ghanoum. And I think Omar Ghanoum is going to steal a place in the Grand Prix. Here comes Enzo Dickerberg. Oh, Hunter's chances have gone. There we go. Checkered flag comes out. Ollie Goodyear and Jack Stedman, first and second. Oakley Pryor, third. Sam Light finishes in fourth. So that's two privateers into the main event. Sam Longley comes home in fifth. And right at the last breath, Omar Ghanoum takes the sixth and final transfer spot provisionally. There we go. They still have to come in to Park Ferme. They need to be weighed. They need to have their nose oh, yes. checked. And they need to go to scrutineering before we get an official result from the repercharge. So don't worry yet. If your driver is Enzo Dickenberg, if your driver is Sam well, Gornall. Yes, I mean, that's... Where, now, look, where, where has uh, Alfie Gallagher gone? He's had his five-second penalty applied. But, so Enzo Dickenberg, the Dutch driver, privateer entry on the Sodi Kart chassis, if any of the top six have an exclusion, he's in. Yeah. Uh, he finished seven seconds behind the winner. So, well, if Oakley Pryor, Sam Light, or Sam, here we go. Jack Stedman, good to go. Relief for the driver that finished fifth in this event two years ago. Here's number 51. Good to go, Sam Longley. Oh, we wait. Right, Ollie Goodyear. Good to go. And the CRG. Goodyear is into the main event provisionally. Sam Light. 
Quick Street takes a good look. Good to go. Yeah, that was a double check there, though, for him. Now, Oakley Pryor is A-OK. -okay. Here we go. This is the moment of truth. Stop the engine. He's Check in. Away. He's in, provisionally. Now we'll go through post-race scrutineering. Enzo Dickenberg, for what it's worth, also... Okay, so Enzo Dickenberg's chances now rely on any of the top six drivers being excluded for a technical irregularity. So, the top six drivers at the moment, none of them were underweight. None of them had a nose cone penalty. They now go into scrutineering where they will have whatever components that our technical uh, commissioner wants to take off the cart. He, he or she shall do so. There's a big team of them there. And uh, yes, and once they've all passed technical scrutineering, then they confirmed the back of the grid. So Enzo Dickenberg is going to be on pins. But even so, we have got three privateers in the senior road tax final. There's Enzo and his dad. Um, I know that their mum, uh, Enzo's mum, Astrid, is watching back home in the Netherlands. And there, you know, happy. Look at that. That's, that's what we want to see. We haven't qualified for the final, but he's enjoyed his experience. Him and his dad, they travelled all the way from the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, that's good. There is Ava Anaglistatis. The Australian lady, she's got Alice Powell sort of mentoring her this weekend. Alice doing a great job with a lot of uh, young female drivers in karting. Mm. Oh, breathe. Breathe. One rep a charge to go, Anthony. We do indeed. The Junior X30 Race 41 rep charge is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short ad break. Stay with us. Nineteen drivers in Junior X30 will do battle for six transfer spots. Leading the way, Morgan Moore and George Quartermain. Henry Carter and Alberto Gonzalez start on row number two. CJ Bennett and Harley Hodgson Wells go from row three. August Raver and Saka Almashirji are on row number eight, at uh, row number four rather. Charlie Morrison, Jones and Ty Magia on row five, row six. Adam Holmes and Rocco Leon Shenton. George Nassar and Mayan Patel go from row number seven. Jeva Al Sabah and Marley Pareo on row number eight. Zhao Chen Ji and Joel Hull on row nine with Spencer Allen rounding out the field. All 19 drivers are on track. Uh, in the history, so Morgan Moore is representing Ireland. Alberto Gonzalez from Venezuela. CJ Bennett is from Ireland. Saka Al Mashirji and Jabba Al Sabah are from Kuwait. August Rabe, we've just seen him, he's doing double duty. He is from the United Arab Emirates. Time of year from Minnesota. Adam Holmes from Ireland. And then we've got George Nassar from Lebanon. Zhao Zhen Chi from China. Now, double duty, there are 17 drivers here doing two classes. We call that doing double duty, Anthony. Yep. August Rabe, now he did qualify for his first Grand Prix. This is his chance, starting uh, seventh to qualify for his second. Yes, indeed. Let's see what occurs. 
Let's find out then as we go out of the final corner into the tram lines. Light go out and here we go down in towards turn one. Morgan Moore with a great getaway. Quartermain getting swamped by the pack. One of the uh, Pragas going off the track. The 13 cart of Gonzalez going wide and he's slow to get back up to speed. But uh, I've got to say, George Quartermain, the, the start formation wasn't wonderful no, for Quartermain. Wasn't. Wasn't. But uh, we'll have to see if there's any investigation over that as the field plunged down towards hairpin number one for the first time. Morgan Moore, a uh, very decent contender in the British Championship. In fact, he's 16th in the current Motorsport UK British Championship standings. So uh, he's back here because on, fr on Friday, in the last heat of the day, uh, a two-kilo block of lead flew off another cart and Morgan collected it at speed. Yes. which precipitated an early bath from that race and a bad finish, which is why he is down in this race. Oh, Constantino effect kicking on in these first laps. These are the moments when nose cone penalties come in thick and fast as you just uh, Constantino up and you get sandwiched. And even if you've not gone into the back of someone and you get sandwiched, it can just squeeze your cart and it can pop it out. And it's always a nightmare. You've got to be so, so careful at the start of these races. But now the field starts it's, to spread out. I was going to say, it has yeah. spread out quite significantly. You're looking at the number 14 cart there of Charlie Morrison-Jones, who is Ooh. currently just outside the transfer spot. So Morgan Moore leads Henry Carter. Ireland CJ Bennett for the Audrin Henry Racing Team is running in third position. Then it's George Quartermain. Harley Hodgson Wells, the number 16 cart, is fifth. And Sabah Al Mashirji from Kuwait in cart number 67. One of those two red and white Birrell ART chassis. There he is, the, uh, the first of them. That is the Kuwaiti driver, uh, Sabah. Saka al Mashirji, and he at the moment is hanging on to the final transfer spot. Rocco Shenton on the Australian built Arrow chassis up into eighth position. Rocco had some, ter he's had terrible misfortune uh, over the course of Cartmaster so far, but he needs to have his luck to hold together. And if he's got the speed, he's got the car to get into the Grand Prix. He's still going to pass two drivers though. Charlie Morrison Jones on your screen now being the first of them. Yeah, exactly that. Keep a very close eye on this entire field. This is a very competitive group of drivers as well as Carter takes the fast lap of the race down the inside. Nice change there as uh, Al Mashwari gets through on Hodgson Wells and moves up into P5. Hodgson Wells now under pressure from Charlie Morrison Jones. You can see there coming through on the Birrell Art chassis with the Jade Racing Team. Jade having a good uh, showing uh, here uh, of drivers, uh, haven't they? Yes, they have. They've got a lot of drivers. They've got uh, Atakamiya from K Qatar. They've got, uh, obviously, the two Kuwaiti drivers. They've got a whole host of international drivers here this weekend to uh, Mark Scott and Ross Allen and the crew through the final scheme. Now, look, you can see there those the, the, how the drivers use the kerb to help the cart rotate. Next time around, we'll go back to that camera angle and I'll be able to show you how the more experienced drivers use the curbing to actually help them get around the corner. There's a move. That is Morrison Jones into sixth position. So now Saka al is on the outside looking in and Rocco Shenton will try and pounce. Mayan Patel is just behind this battle in the third of the Birrell ART cut. Shenton up into P7. One more place for Rocco Shenton to try and make it into the main event. Last year, Rocco was a Honda Cadet driver. Finished 17th in the Grand Prix last year. Yep, certainly is a uh, well-known driver in the GP plate fight. There he is, the 86 up into P7 now. Charlie Morrison-Jones, the next target. Would be good to see Rocco getting into the final. Certainly as a quick driver, has worked so hard on that Arrow chassis, developing it from Australia, uh, really pushing it hard throughout the season. Very wide there going one of the uh, crop promotion cars. I think that was Taj Magie. Uh, Gia. In the time of year, yes. Yeah, in 10th place. But certainly it's looking very, very strong at the moment there in P7 now. But John Morrison Jones, fastest lap of the race on that last lap, is closing in on uh, yes, Alma Swearing. Uh, but, but, but Morrison Jones, yeah, he's uh, oh, actually now Harley Hodgson Wells has dropped back to sixth position. So Alma Swari, uh, Alma Shirzy, sorry, is still in the transfer spots. Let's have a little look. Yeah, no, so there's the number 67 cut with the plain white crash helmet. Morrison Jones on the bubble. He builds his own engines, uh, you know, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't know. I did but know. You did, you did know, yes, because we said this yesterday. We did say this yesterday. Now, the number 35 car, that's the Audron Henry Racing uh, Lando Norris chassis of C.J. Bennett. 
And Bennett is, he cannot relax. You can see there's a gap in front of Bennett to George Quartermain. So the top three, Morgan Moore, we're not really focusing on the top three that much because that's so here we go, there's the move. And Almashirji gives himself a bit of a buffer. It's now CJ Bennett on the bubble. And here comes Charlie Morrison Jones to push Bennett down to seventh. This is very, very close then for this last transfer spot still. Four and a half minutes to go. And again, just keep an eye on it. Almashirji just trying to look to the inside there, not getting it done. CJ Bennett now into the transfer spots and holding on to it. Shenton to the inside. Oh. Shenton now making a move. And he moves up into P6. That signal there, that very uh, emphatic signal was that Rocco Shenton saying to CJ Bennett, don't try and pass me, let's work together. Push, we need to go forward. Uh, Fionn Jenkins on the live chat uh, watching Spencer Allen making his Cartmasters debut the crew down in Newport South Wales Fionn Taylor Arlo and Moose um, I'm assuming Moose is a, a pet uh, I'm assuming that here we go there's oh Al Mashirji is now up in the third position he is absolutely cementing his place in the Grand Prix itself as things stand and following him through is Charlie Morrison Jones side by side though with Quartermain and Jones oh wheel to wheel contact now Morrison Jones is a privateer so is Shenton there are four privateers in this class two of them Jack Mower and Emmanuel Hay have automatically gone through can we get the other two privateers into the main event at the moment the answer is yes Yes, we possibly can. Rocco Shenton and Charlie Morrison Jones, both privateers out there. So uh, keep a very close eye on them as they go through there. They are on your screens. But keep an eye on George Quartermain, the 96, and CJ Bennett, who's now out of the top six. He was uh, battling in that one. He needs to try and get that one back. And I think he may have just done that. Uh, that's the number 16 McBarrett racing cart of Harley Hodgson Wells. Ah, Bennett see. has dropped right to the back oh. of this group. Time of year in 10th position. So Bennett, is, I think his, his concentration has been rattled a little bit. He was sitting pretty a couple of minutes ago, and now with three minutes this race remaining, he is not just on the outside looking in, but he's standing right at the back of the room on the outside looking in. Now, oh, and who's that pulling up? Oh my word, oh, that's Henry Carter. It is. Henry Carter out of second position. The croc has snapped. It's broken. Oh, I don't believe it. Henry Carter out of the race. Cartmasters 2023 20, over. A shrug of the shoulders. Now, we didn't see what happened. I will speculate. There is a big curb on the inside of turn number four. And if you hit it at the wrong angle, it can just flick a chain off like that. And then there's another cart that stopped. It's the 112 that's come to oh, a stop. Oh, that's, that's time is here. Oh, it's a long flight back to Minnesota. But time is it? Well, I think he was that's, originally from Minnesota. That's two crop carts that have broken in the same lap. That is, uh, well, I'm, it's, I'm sure it's, a, it's a, an unhappy coincidence, but it's something that uh, the remaining crop runners, not just in this race, but they, the, 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 the crop promotion team want to get those carts back to their awning ASAP to see what went wrong. And here's Rocco Shenton, and Rocco Shenton now finds himself up at the fourth. Right, a quick refresh. Morgan Moore continues to lead by five seconds. Uh, Saka Almashirji is up into P2 now. Anthony, it only seems like two minutes ago he was seventh. Yeah. He's now up to second. Charlie Morrison Jones is third. This is the battle for fourth place between the 96 of George Quartermain and the number 20 cut of Maya Patel. And look at CJ Bennett now getting back into play. Yeah, CJ Bennett will like this. He's oh. looking for a bit of contact between the two of them. Watch out for your nose cone. You have to be careful through that very tight twisty section through the Mike Wilson complex. One minute to go on the timer and the battle still raging on. Oh, CJ Bennett. Bennett looking down to see if his nose cone had dropped and he drove onto the grass. CJ, it's the grey stuff. You're it. Oh! oh, no. And off the track, that's the third and final Mad Croc Promotions cart out of this race. Oh, my word. Gabriel Stilp, who won the British Junior X30 Championship last year and is a double uh, IAMI World Finals Junior X30 champion, is here doing a lot of driver coaching. And, um, well, I, looking back at that, I, I think that uh, Quartermain may have been... He was trying to make the move, the crossover move, but he, I think he may have been getting some help from behind as well. Because there was, I think, more to that than maybe meets the eye. Uh, but uh, a, a net, net result is Quartermain down to 13th position. Uh, 
Harley Hodgson Wells is six there. Here's a look at the next drivers. That's the, the first of our pre-finals. Those drivers watching on thinking, I think we know what we're not going to do in this race, boys. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, Morgan Moore. Saka Almashirji, Charlie Morrison Jones, Rocco Shenton, Mayan Patel, uh, the driver from Stanmore, and then Harley Hodgson Wells for Mick Barrett Racing are your six transfer drivers. There is Lebanon's George Nassar in cart number 231. He's now running in eighth position. CJ Bennett is seventh, the first driver on the outside looking in. There's Nassar in eighth followed by the Tim Wilson motorsport car of Joel Hull. Raber is 10th, then it's China's Zhao Chen Ji. Al Sabah, the second of our Kuwaiti drivers, is 12th, then it's Gonzalez, Quartermain, Pareo, Holmes, Allen, and Mejia uh, and Carter are out. Well, certainly this is an interesting development and there's been quite a bit of coming together in this one, which means we've got to keep an eye on oh, the nose yes. cones when we come in, remember, Five second time penalty would come in and Harley Hodgson Wells, oh. who's in P6, has got a five second time penalty. It's an in race time penalty for an incident on track. CJ Bennett is just one second behind. So CJ Bennett is now in to the main event. But George Nassar is just four tenths of a second behind Bennett with Joel Hull right there as well. The final lap and it's a battle between Bennett, Nasser and Hull and even August Raber for oh, Hull's dropping back. You can see Joel Hull dropping back. The fight there. Oh, oh he's, there he dropped, is. he's dropping back because he's dropped out of the race. Now, Bennett in the number 35 cards and Nasser in the number 231. These three drivers, they're all safely in. That is Almashirji, Morris Jones and Shenton. Second, third and fourth. There goes your race winner, Morgan Moore, safely through. We wait, we wait. Here's George Nassar, and he's ahead of CJ Bennett. George Nassar from Lebanon has stolen and broken Irish hearts on the last lap. Harley Hodgson Wells is six on the road, but a five second penalty drops him back. Nassar into the main event. Bennett goes home. Provisionally, of course, nose cone watch is going to be coming very, very soon. Cameras are down there. We need to see these nose cones on a lot of these drivers because there was quite a bit of coming together out on that circuit, especially at the start. So let's keep our fingers crossed. There's the provisional results. Morgan Moore from Sakir al -Mashirji. Charlie Morrison-Jones, Rocco Shenton. Mine Patel, oh. Harley Hodgson Wells with that in race five second time penalty is dropped out of the top six. George Nassar is pushed up, but we need to check those nose cones. They provisionally are your ticks transferees. And provisionally, uh, all four privateers in Junior X30 will make the main event. Okay, Morgan Moore, well, he had a quiet race. He's good. He's good to go. Now, Saka Almashirji. Yep, the good. clipboard of doom is still fine. No, 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 Almashirji, oh. you need to go into the garage. Gaynor Griffin is also checking things at the back there. And ah, now there's. Ah, okay, Mick Streak on the left hand side of the screen. He is the weight marshal. Look at the, the young lady, the black trousers, the grey shop. She has got a camera uh, phone. She's checking the, the nose codes. Okay, so it's. Uh, Mick Streak, we love you, but uh, I think your time on camera is over. Weighing scales are one thing, but uh, uh, it's it's the no the nose code penalties, which uh, I mean very 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 rarely. I think we had one driver, or we come in underweight. Um, but uh, ah, here we are Out on the banking. Some people, need, well, it's not. Well, even though you can see Zane Sal in there with a short and t-shirt on, uh, it's not too summery it's dry it's, it's a dry it's dry there's a brisk wind in the air henry yes. uh, i think that's what uh, that's what it is i mean myself i'm in t-shirts and a short yourself you are also in t-shirts and a short i am but i have more natural insulation than you there's scott marsh on the left right hand side of your screen the 2022 junior rotax rotax grand finals champion uh and he's back in the paddock having a chat with some of his mates thomas ingram hill was in there as well Oh, my word. So, sadly, at the moment, Harley Hodgson Wells, CJ Bennett, August Raber, Zhao Shen Ji, Jaba Al Sabah, Alberto Gonzalez, George Quartermain, Marley Pareo, Adam Holmes, Spencer Allen, and Joel Hull will not transfer to the Junior X30 
perhaps right now. Now, I've heard, I've heard rumours that there are paddock pooches roaming the banking. No, that's not a paddock pooch, that's a man. Uh, that is a premium karting mechanic who is a... Oh, a brown lab, hello. Not that you can hear me, but uh, there we go. If you wonder why we're concentrating on dogs, it's a family outing. A lot, there's a lot of spectators here. There will be uh, plenty more arriving as the day progresses. Um, we are hoping to have the biggest photograph ever of current and for uh, current and former Cartmaster champions. Yep. We think there are 45 current or former Cartmaster champions here in the paddock this weekend. Uh, during the lunch break at 1.45, we're going to assemble them on the podium for the biggest Cartmasters photo of all time in terms of winners. There have been 212 Grand Prix plates that have been given out in the 28-year history of this event. 163 drivers have won at least one GP plate. Mm. Only 28 drivers have won more than one. Of course, the Cartmasters King with nine, Ben Barnacote. Oh, yes. Can't top that one, can you, at the moment? Well, it could be topped. We don't know. I mean, it's... Eventually, uh, it's going to take a while. It's, it's going to take, take a, a while. while. Just looking at my statistics sheets here. Uh, Michael Simpson's got seven, but uh, before we go into statistics, let's have a word from some advertisers. Motorsport UK, Kartmasters British Kart Grand Prix. It is pre-final time, ladies and gentlemen. This grid will determine who will be starting where for the finals later on today. Let's take you through it. Austin Gibson, the PF plates, and Austin Newstead start this one on row one. Newstead put it on pole in qualifying, but Gibson got the pole in the pre-final. George House and Ronnie Carter, they go from row two, both of them having a good weekend, but George House taking a race win in his second heat. Mason Brooks and Alfie Davidson, they go from row three, fifth and ninth in qualifying for them. Ollie Warner and Charlie Clough, they round out row number four from Daniel Ferguson and Harry Williams on row five, rounding out the top 10. Colby Patterson and Lee and Lee round out the top six rows. Callum Graham and Senna Shellikens round out row seven from Ava Lawrence and Adi Kamir rounding out the 16 drivers that will be starting this Water Swift restricted pre-final. Henry, there has never been a GP plate winner for the Water Swift restricted class until this weekend. Who is it going to be? Well, anyone of 16. The British Championship leader at the moment is the PF plate of Austin Gibson. Uh, Austin Newstead, the 2021 British Bambino champion. Uh, we've got uh, Ling Han Lee from China. We've got Senna Shalikans from the Netherlands. Atakamiya from Qatar. And Ava Lawrence from the United Arab Emirates. Eight to ten years old. Gibson and his Oliver Rowland Motorsport teammate George House will try and use the fact they're starting directly uh, line astern mm. to their advantage. Watch Austin Newstead on the right-hand side of your screen. Try and cut across as soon as he crosses the line. No, he doesn't. He stays on the outside line. And that, oh, brave, brave move there from Austin Newstead. And he looks at the inside oh. of Gibson, but Gibson retains the lead. Spin at the back of the grid. The number 21 rotates. That is Lee and Lee. Uh, unfortunately, oh. who started this one on the 12th spot on the grid is down and right at the back of the grid. Don't worry, weekend is not over. No. It just means we'll be starting at the back of the grid for the Grand Prix later on in the day. Keep an eye on this one as they go down into hairpin. Number one, very close at the back of the grid, but it's super close at the front of the grid here. Newstead all over that rear bumper of Gibson. Yes, Austin Newstead 
qualified on pole both Friday and Saturday. Uh, on Friday, Gibson and House were the heat race winners. Newstead and Gibson won the heats on Saturday. And uh, they come into the Mike Wilson complex. Named after five-time world karting champion Mike Wilson. Now the final chicane. Uh, good to see that uh, former Kartmaster champion Theo Makouris is en route with his Delta Racewear prize for the uh, the driver that gains the most positions in any of the Grand Prix later on this afternoon wins a absolutely bespoke uh, Delta Racewear suit. And there's action aplenty. Uh, Austin, you said, had a little nibble at the inside of Austin Gibson. Then uh, lost a place to George House on the banking. Now watch for the number 33 Fusion Motorsport cart of Ronnie Carter closing in. And there's Newstead oh. again. Back to the inside through hairpin one. George House back down into P3 now. Very close between these two. Great showing here again from Newstead, who looks to the inside of Austin Gibson, not able to get it done. Keep an eye on just behind, because coming to the inside here, Oliver Warner on Ronnie Carter. Oh, that's, the... that's a nice move, and he's up into P4 now. Yep, Warner for the George Gibbons Motorsport team. Oliver Warner actually seventh in the current British Championship standings. Uh, Mason Brooks in the number 84 cart has dropped to sixth position, but uh, Summer uh, um, and Sis are watching on. There are some of the drivers from the unrestricted Water Swift class will yep. be going out next. They're the drivers aged between 10 and 12, but look at this under the bridge, out onto Uncle Tyrone's banking. And uh, this is a classic example of slipstream. It's the first time today we got an opportunity to showcase this element of kart racing to you. Drafting and slipstreaming. Austin Newstead doesn't want to draft and slipstream. He wants to overtake but now the two Oliver Rowland motorsport carts, the yeah. Pierre Prater Gibson and the 77 of House, they will start to work together. Yeah, this is the dangerous part now because if they do both oh. get in front, which they have now done, if they can now just latch onto the back of each other and start to pull away as George House now takes the lead because Newstead, very, very smart yes. there for Newstead. He, that's NASCAR style yeah, racing, yeah. that is. Use the bump, uh, bump draft there to push them alongside and get rid of Austin Gibson down to third. It was So Austin Newstead Newstead is going to try and keep himself between the two Oliver Rowland. He's going to do everything possible to not let the two ORM teammates hook up and push away. So every so this is going to be a really good battle. And closing in, Oliver Warner and Ronnie Carter. So there's Newstead. No, and it's three wide. And from third to first, Austin Gibson takes the lead. Great move. But Newstead is still the meat in that ORM sandwich. House and Gibson can't. Now they're going to try and hook up. But Austin Newstead has the lead. This is great. This is good stuff here, but you've got to be careful. Warner's closing in and Carter. Mason Brooks there as well in P6. Family of Mason Brooks is watching. Uh, good luck to the number 84. Mum and sis on the live chat. Good to see you watching. He's doing well. He's there in P6. Keep an eye on this one, though, because Ollie Warner is your fastest driver out there. He's there in P4 in the George Gibbons. The blue cart there, you can see, is latched on now. And now we've got more drivers. It's okay sometimes with three, they can battle away. Yes. When you start to get four or five drivers in, then it starts to get a little bit more interesting. It does indeed. Out of the final corner, on to the start finish straight. These Water Swift restricted carts, they're still doing about 50 miles an hour. The drivers are 8, 9 and 10 years old, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. You did hear those two things correctly. And look, I've lost count the amount of lead chains we've had. It's now Gibson back in front. Newstead slots into second. Now, what Austin Newstead wants, he really wants Oliver Warner to pass George House. So he's got there's two buffers between the two ORM teammates. You've got one cart from Fusion, one cart from George Gibbon Motorsports, one cart from BMR Restart, two for the ORM team. And uh, has George House made the move there for second? No. Austin Newstead still... Austin Newstead is working really, really hard. He's working harder than any other driver in this lead group. And he's... Oh, finally! George House, with six and a half minutes to go, goes, Nope, I've had enough of this. I am at the door was half open and George House let himself in like an unwanted cat burglar. 
Mm, yes, indeed. Mm. Down the start-finish straight they go then, and the two Oliver Road Motorsport drivers yep. starting to work now together we'll now. Now you'll see the slipstream kick in, but crucially, Oliver Warner has latched on with them. So now you've not got Newstead in this battle. Now it's Ollie Warner. What can he do? Can he better what Newstead tried a few laps ago? Well, Newstead's tactics were clear for everyone to see. He wanted to stay in between the two RM cars. Yes. Will Warner just want to tag along? He'll think, OK, now they're together. There's no point me battling. They're going to stay together. And look at that. That is, at 55 miles an hour, uh, one driver resting the nose cone of their car on the rear bumper of the driver in front. There is, it's, it's not inches. It's millimetres apart. Yeah. So they come through there. And uh, down the back straight, here we go. This is great, uh, great camera work here to show slipstreaming in karting. Even through the corner, they are locked in unison through the Bobby Game corner, now into the Mike Wilson complex, and you'll see House now. He'll tuck his head down behind the NASA panel and push his teammate down the straight, and you can see it's working because suddenly Newstead and Carter are dropping away, and Warner is struggling to hold on. Brilliant, brilliant cadet-style teamwork in play here. Yeah, this is good stuff. Five minutes to go of this race. These are the longest races we've seen so far this weekend. Pre-finals now, 12 minutes plus one additional lap. The finals, the Grand Prix later on, 15 minutes Oof. plus one lap. It's a long old race around a 1.3 kilometer long circuit. Olive Warner closing in once again into the braking zone. Action further back as well. Yes. It's not the only racing happening out there. Austin Newstead still there in fifth place. Colby Patterson's passing away with Mason Brooks. Now they're sixth and seventh out there. Daniel Ferguson's there in P8 from Harry Williams. Alfie Davidson having a good run. He's there in P10 from Charlie Clough. Shellikens is up into P12 from uh, Graham. Atika Mir is having a good race up into P14 from the back of the grid from Ava Lawrence. Uh, Lee Lee at the back of the grid right now in P16. Not had the best up, but still doing a very good job at the moment. 14 seconds separates yeah. the entire grid. Very close action. Uh, and we're on lap number seven, and 10 seconds separates the top 15. Yes. Like eight seconds separate the top 14. Ah, big war, question. War, uh, okay. Where's the five second gap? The five-second gap is top six. So if any... Oh, oh yes. No, let's change. It's, yes, change the second place to top ten. So if anyone in the top ten gets a nose cone, no they're going to drop from inside the top ten to well outside the top ten. Uh, Ronnie Carter's mum is watching and cheering on. And is there been a change in second? Yes, there has. Oliver Warner up at the P2. So... and back, though but doesn't defend and allows George House to get back into P2. And what that has done, it's allowed Austin Gibson to escape, and it's bringing uh, Newstead and Carter back into play. Yes, indeed. Well, as they go through into the Mike Wilson complex, very, very close here between all three of them. Newstead starting to close back in now, bringing Ronnie Carter along to play. The final corner again, a little wide there from House. Warner looking like he wanted to go down the inside there. Warner still with the fastest lap of the race, no one beating it, but the times have started to drop down a little bit. And, of course, these drivers will have used quite a lot of their slick tyres over the course of this weekend. They had dry rainy, uh, running, uh, I think, part of the part day, of the day it, yes. uh, dry running on Saturday. And did they get a race in on slicks yesterday? I know, actually. I think these drivers still went out on the wet tyres. Ah. They were the first group to think it, they might change. The track was just transitioning from wet to dry when these guys went out yesterday. Now, George House, I mean, the two drivers first and second in this race are the two drivers who are first and second in this year's British Championship, as things stand. Gibson leading house. George House, though, of all the drivers in this field, he's got the best kart masters finish to his name. He finished seventh in Miami Cadet last year. And Warner is just sticking to him like glue. Ollie Warner, 21st in last year's Grand Prix as a cadet Honda, Honda Cadet driver. Uh, we've got David Mann watching from Liverpool, JW Karting watching from Spain. I know where I'd rather be. Liverpool. Obviously. Liverpool, yeah, 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 yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yes. Two minutes to go, plus one lap. Newstead now with the fastest lap of the race has closed back in on the top three. We've got oh, a four-way battle. I was just about to say hello to Joe Neal, but I can't because it's so exciting at the front as George House takes the lead. Yeah, nice overtake there onto the bridge. House leading. Now watch them down in towards hairpin one again. <laughs> time running out. Oh, and House has been left out to dry here. It's on oh, the outside. Lock up under braking. Wow. And Warner takes the lead. 
That was sideways. He locked up, but luckily, luckily, Gibson House let him in every And here comes Austin Newstead back from fifth to first. Ronnie Carter coming into play as well. He moves up the fourth for the Fusion team. Well, remember, folks, if you were here yesterday or Friday, you'll have known that the predictions will have been coming in over the course of that one. And, well, we have all put our predictions in, myself, uh, Henry, and Chris McCarthy have put their predictions in for the Grand Prix later on today. And certainly, this is going to be an interesting one that we're going to see. Less than a minute to go as they go across the start-finish line. Now there is still a couple of laps left in this one. There you can see the grandstand full of people watching this one. The outside of the circuit is filling up as the sunshine beams down on our pre-finalists here and they go side by side house once again back into the lead gets past newstead as they go over the bridge down in towards hairpin one now as they go through house will now start to go defensive keep an eye on the drives behind gibson may switch to the outside he does switch to the outside and Carter follows him as well. Watch over for the switch back here as they go side by side. Newstead will have the inside line as he tries to defend that charge. But George House holds on to the lead of this one. All oh, very close there. Gibson getting squeezed onto the outside. Then it looked like they were going four wide there, but they weren't. Ronnie Carter very, very close to getting squeezed off the track. This is excellent close racing here, Henry. But the two RRMs are now first and second once again. The minute they got the opportunity, they latched back onto each other like magnets. So they're gone. Uh, here we go. So the top two come out of the final OK, They will see the last lap ball go out. Oh, and a five-second penalty for Austin Newstead. Oh, no. So House starts the final lap in front of his teammate Gibson. On to Uncle Tyrone's banking. Now it's team, no team orders here. They played fair all the way through. Now it's elbows out. Well, not literally, but now it's game on for the right. This is only for the right to start the Grand Prix from pole position. Now, watch Gibson try the undercut. Brilliant move from Gibson. But, but, but House oh. is on the inside. Oh, and Gibson squeezes his teammate. Yes. And uh, House will now try to come back up the inside at the short shoes and watch out for Warner and Newstead and Carter and Colby Patterson. He's got the inside line and House retakes the lead of this one. Warner's closed back in once again as you go on to the final lap. He's opened up the door. Gibson goes back through into second place. Here comes Warner. Warner and House side by side, but House slams that door closed into the Mike Wilson complex. It's going to be here a 1-2 for ORM and it will be Gibson, the PF plate, who crosses the line first, but it's a drag race to the line. It actually might Ooh. not be. Gibson takes it from House and Warner. They will be your top three going into the Grand Prix final later on today. Provisionally, of course, Austin Gibson takes the win and will start on pole I've, from George House. I've got to say, Oliver Rowland will be really pleased with his two drivers there. They yeah. try to race as teammates. They work together perfectly for the first 11 minutes of that race. Mm. Then, when it was all on the line, they battled hard and fair. Yeah. And that's what karting's all about. There is a list of your results. So provisionally, it'll be Gibson House on the front row of the grid for the Grand Prix. Warner and Newstead on row two. Patterson and Carter row three. Daniel Ferguson, Alfie Davison row four. Harry Williams and Mason Brooks. Herman, Mason's dad, saying, you know, come on, Anthony, give us some luck. Didn't quite happen. At the back, Atacamia, Ava Lawrence and Ling Han Lee. Well, nose cone watch will start to happen yes, yep, now. Yep. And ah. this is an important one the because it's very difficult to spot it on these cars. Wait, there's the lady in grey. We missed the first couple. Lady in grey, don't put your phone. Oh, that's a beautiful mute button, that is. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was waxing lyrical there about uh, don't put phones on nose cones. Anyway, um, at the end of this race, we will explain to you before the next race what the prediction competition is and who has entered because it, the entries closed yesterday. Now, there is, you know, let's, go, let's have a look, look here. Uh, the number 51 cart of Charlie Clough. Looks A-OK. -okay. Yep, go, go, go. Go. Yeah, I, want, okay. we want, I, want to, I, I don't want to see a driver get a penalty, but I want the audience to see what happens when... You know, oh, there we yeah, go. No, well, well okay. done. Okay. Congratulations, okay. drivers. There's Gaynor Griffin, again, a long-time servant of British karting. And there in the background is Glyn Griffiths. Chief Glyn Griffiths, Marshal. The head marshal here at Trent Valley Kart Club. Cannot speak as highly enough 
about the marshals here. So, the predictions competition. Over the last two days, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony and I have been asking you to put in the live chat the eight names that you think will win uh, Cart Masters 2023. Alpha Live have very kindly donated some goodies, some merchandise for the top three uh, contestants who named most of the predictions. So, yep. these are the prizes. Alpha Live beanies and baseball hats. Yes, Yesterday, lovely. we had a total of 35 people. Here they are with their predictions. 35 of them. And I've been through the live chat in order. So, we've got the name, the class, the winner in the order in which they put it into the live chat. Uh, so I'd, ju I'd just like to stress, ladies and gents, Henry did that in his hotel room uh, last night. He clearly has no life. Well, uh, but I, <laughs> Anthony Jordan, I want to give the people something back. I want to give the people something back. So, Scott Gollings, Matt Nibbers, Isaacs, Isaac Phelps, Jake Humphrey, Michael Burke, Charlie Longman, Josh Coombs, Will Prud, uh, Joe Neal, Aidan Mitchell, Monty Brathwaite, Sam Cook, Archie Heron, Rylan Eshberg, Michelle Reeves, Deal Lewis, Ollie Cook, Macaulay and Mason B, Leo R, Max Kettle, uh, Jamie, uh, James Price, Hayden Phillips, Ellis Cox, Martin Stefanov, Ace underscore, Dom Cliff, Matt Copsey, Emma Donaldson, Karting 007, Liam Phillips, Harry Yardley, Daniel uh, Racing, Ben Price, Josh Jackson, and Stanley Clark. You are in the predictions competition. No one else can join in. Three points if your prediction wins. Two points if your prediction comes second. One point if your prediction comes third. And there we go. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to take a short app break. Don't go anywhere. Water Swift Race 20, uh, 43 is coming up next. Water Swift unrestricted head out onto the circuit for their pre-final with Will Green and George Edgar leading the way. Jesse Phillips and Max Endicott go for row number two. Jarla Sayer and Finley Lines start row number three. Then it's Harley Musk and Ethan Woodward, Albert Friend and Alfie Brown, Kanish Grau and Aaron Richardson. Followed by Archie Levitt, Jensen Ackerman, Archie Owen and Ayan Nayar, then Sukmani Kira and Max Ewell. Rounding out the top 20, George Clark and Ethan Weldon, Jacob Bashler and Derek Babacek, Knight Measures and Alexander Di Beneditis. Rashid Hilal, Charlie Goddard, Hayden Gilbert and Rian Townsend Grant complete your field. Now, uh, let's have a look. Zenek Babacek from the Czech Republic, Rashid Hilal from Bahrain. We've got one Welsh from the field, Archie Owen, Will Green. So on Friday, uh, George Edgar was fast in qualifying. Will Green and Jesse Phillips shared the heat wins. On Saturday, it was Will Green fast in qualifying. Phillips and Green shared the two heat wins. Uh, Jesse Phillips is the reigning and defending British champion in this class. And of the drivers you're watching, Al, uh, George Edgar and Max Endicott both have runner-up finishes in Kart Masters to their name, both last year. Edgar in Ayami, Endcott in Honda. Lights are not out. Yeah, grid will go round again. Um, so, first full start of the day. Ah, uh, somebody uh, asked, their name didn't appear. Ah, oh, I know it was Jack Owen Drawbridge. My name didn't get mentioned in the vote. Yes, Jack, that's because you only named two, three classes. 
I went through the live chat, all 8 hours and 21 minutes of it, and you only named three class winners, not eight. So sorry, Jack, do apologise. But uh, but still free to play along, you know, yeah. get your predictions in, you, score now, yourself. Now, Jack, this is what you, you can now say, well, I picked him, I would have picked him, I would have won. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can Maximum give, scores for me. You, can, uh, <laughs> you know, Herman Brooks, it is what it is, we'll go again. Yes, Herman, that's Mason Brooks' dad. Uh, Mason finishing sixth or seventh in that last race. There's Dan Ashton, one of our race directors here. And this is a great new camera angle there. You can see Jason on the left-hand side of your screen. Safety, not first. Action first. Worry about his insurance later on. Yeah, and his ankles. Here we go then. Drivers getting themselves lined up. Now, crucially, you'll see a red line on the circuit appear just there. Yes. This is now the point where there is no more overtaking allowed. Essentially, yeah. they are now under yellow so flag it, conditions. It, basically, if you spin or if you're slow getting off the dummy grid, you've got yeah. until that red line to get back into your grid position. If you're not into your grid position by that point, you may go to the back and start there. Yes. The Jamie Green Racing, number 54 cart of Will Green and the Fusion Motorsport cart, the 20th anniversary for Fusion Motorsport, Edgar and Green on row one. Green lights go down, and then here we go in towards turn number one. Great then start from Will Green, who gets into the lead and holds on to it, and he does not get swamped. Now that will change as Jesse Phillips, oh, who spin. started, and a spin, half oh, spin, wow. and they all keep going. Heart and mouth moment. That was on the banking. One of the Fusion drivers did a half spin. He was turned around and corrected by the driver behind him. Fantastic stuff. Three wide, and that is Harry Ewell there in that purple, uh, purple and white machine, the Optima Performance cart. Ewell had a great Friday, not a fantastic Saturday. Oh, and there's two cars come to me. One of them is Albert Friend. One of them is Albert Friend. Now, in this class, there are one, two, three, four, five, six drivers doing double duty. Uh, Rashid Halal is not one of them, but Rashid Halal the driver from Bahrain. Oh, dear. And another one, there's Matt, there's you. I said he didn't have a good Saturday. Oh, Sunday's going even Kira worse. And well. uh, the only young lady in the field as well. Uh, there's uh, Alexander Di Benedictis on the Simon Wright de Racing Development right chassis. Um, back of Lloyd's on the large chassis. Good luck to Fred Lloyd. Yes. Oh, this is Nan's birthday. Day. Happy birthday, Nanny Lloyd. There we go. Well, you, know, you can't see Nanny. You've only got one Nanny. That's Nanny June. Well, but uh, happy, happy birthday, Mrs. Lloyd Senior. There is that? yellow flags all over oh, the circuit right Charles now. Charles Sayer out of the race. Yeah. Charles Sayer, who currently runs third of the British Championship. He won the most recent round of the British Championship. He's got Mr. Excitement, Reggie, doing mechanic for him. They're dropping like flies, Anthony. They really are right now, and it means that half the track's under yellow flag conditions. Yes, yeah, so no, no, no overtaking, overtaking until they get to the green flag, which is the entrance of Bobby Game Corner. So they can now overtake oh, now. Can, oh, uh, can they not overtake once they pass the incident? No, they Wait. have to wait until they're at the green oh, flag. OK, oh, I can sit, I, it's not often that Anthony can correct me on a ruling in karting, but he has done so. Consider myself corrected as we've got a Fusion 1-2 in front of this field. Edgar and Phillips with Green hanging on. Green making the move. Oh, oh now. You couldn't do that yesterday. No, absolutely <laughs> not. No, so, again, ladies and gentlemen, for Austin Newstead in the previous race, see Will Green in this race. He will do everything he possibly can to get between the two Fusion carts to stop them working together because Phillips and Edgar, two seasoned campaigners, they work together very, very well. They really do. And uh, Will Green has done that. He's been a thorn in the side of these two, oh. George Edgar and Jesse Phillips, over the course of the weekend. Will too. Green now takes the lead of it. Will Green yesterday took, uh, well, on Friday and Saturday, took two heat two. wins. Yep. The first and the last one, uh, splitting the two uh, drivers, Jesse Phillips, took and two wins yesterday. Just take a moment. The red and white Birrell ART cart yes. of Alfie Brown, number 94, currently running in fourth the fifth position now he is one of only two privateers in this class there he is he's uh, holding up a whole train of carts Alfie Brown and Derek Babichek are the two privateers in this class Derek Babichek the younger brother of Teresa uh, Babichkova Eliska Babichkova and Petra Babichkova yep 
from Vraco in the Czech Republic. And we got another change to lead. Will Green's time in front was short-lived. Yeah, indeed. Well, Will Green will try and fight that one again. Keep an eye on all of it as they come down in towards hairpin number one. It's still very, very close. There you can just see behind yeah. Finley lines as well. The green helmet is now yeah. under attack here from Alfie Brown. Uh, looking no, to the inter oh, Alfie no, Brown's that's not in Alfie front Brown. of yes, uh, Finley yes, Lines. Yes, yes, Finley yes. Lines is under attack from that's Kenish Grau. Yes, the number 22. So keep a close eye on that one as well. That battle uh, uh, is starting to heat up. got to say, that's one of the highlights of cut. Alfie Brown's got this great sort of honeycomb design uh, race suit. Oh, there's a, a rather disappointed Sukmani Kira watching on. Uh, so there you can see that honeycomb design on the back of Alfie Brown's race suit makes him very, very easy to spot. He's the only one, well, he's not, there's a couple of barrels in this field, but he's the only one on the actual official Bill ART sort of graphics kit. Lovely shot there. Alfie Louise Richardson, hello. Alongside. Hello, uh, Louise Richardson. She's cheering on Aaron Richardson. Aaron is 11th. Kit Belovsky, welcome aboard. Kit, formerly of this parish, now racing out in Europe. Uh, let us know what you're thinking of the class that you left last year. You outgrew this class, but you know Jesse Phillips, you know George Edgar. You raced a, for a British title with them. Let us know in the live chat kit who do you think's got the upper hand. Well, there we go. Seven minutes remaining of this race. Oh. Edgar back to the lead. Will, Will Green, Green follows. Second. Yeah, and you can see oh, no, Max, no, Max Endicott a bit frustrated himself. I think he thought if I position my car, I could make a position here, but he didn't get off that second hairpin cleanly enough. But Endicott again, that that electric blue for George Gibbons Motorsport. It's absolutely stunning when the sun is shining. Got to say, it was, the sun glints off the blue colour, lights the car up perfectly. Well, there we go. Six and a half minutes to go in this race. Keep a close eye then on the top four. They are starting to reel themselves in and reel the rest of the grid in as well. Keep an eye on this one as Will Green may be looking to the inside here into the bridge. No, thinking against it for the time being. Uh, Max Endicott right there in front. He's ready to pick up the pieces here, I reckon. Oh, yes, yes. There might be some, there might not be, but uh, you can see him there. He's absolutely pushing that one. Here Green back go. to the inside. Phillips is going to follow. Both get it done. And now Edgar back down into third place. This is essentially what you're going to see throughout the oh. entirety of this race and most likely the Grand Prix later on today. You just cannot predict who it's going to be. It's all well, about timing. Well, you're, you're going to see this type of racing as long as somebody can stay between Phillips and Edgar, the two teammates. Yes. If they can't, you'll see Phillips and Edgar work together for 14 and a half minutes out of the 15-minute Grand Prix right until the end. Ah, uh, now here we go. Uh, let's have a look. What's Kip Oh, uh, hello to Lee Narraway and uh, Luca Narraway cheering on their crop promotion teammate uh, Archie Owen. Uh, Kip Belofsky says he's not sure who to favour. Depends if the track conditions change. Well, oh. it depends of who's between them at the moment. Between them is Will Green, the number 54. Got to say, the Jamie Green race team, I think this is their third or fourth season racing at this level and they have built up slowly but surely and now they are a major force to be reckoned with in British cadet karting. They really are. Another change there for second place. Edgar back up into P2 now. Will Green uh, doing his level best to stay in P3 now and between these two fusion drivers because Phillips now is starting to break away. Still five minutes to go in this oh, race. Yes. Uh, remember, brilliant! I love this. Yeah, this is leave good. them until they run out of fuel. Uh, exactly. Well, hopefully not, because that would be a technical infringement. Uh, but uh, they will be okay for that. But keep an eye on what's going to happen all the way throughout this, because they are pushing hard with five minutes to go. Remember, that it's just a single set of tyres these drivers will be using over the course of this weekend. They yep. didn't have a lot of running on them over the course of the weekend, so they might be okay. But they need to be careful of how hard they push them now. Now, four and a half minutes remaining, and you've got Kanish Grau closing in. Just one second behind the, th the four leaders. Uh, Kenneth Grau in fifth, then Finley Line sixth. Ethan Woodward is seventh. Jensen Ackerman is eighth. Then Aaron Richardson and Alfie Brown has slipped back to tenth, the leading privateer. Archie Levitt is next, and we've got another change lead. This time it's Edgar passing Phillips, and Green slots up the inside as well. And look at Edgar get the drive out of the corner there. Now Phillips is going to follow back, and this is the first attack from Endicott. Endicott into third, and now Kenneth Grau has latched onto the back of it, and Kenneth Rao goes through, so Will Green now down into P5. Finley Lines is just behind there. He's not got much of a slipstream, so he needs to grab onto the back of this group so we can get the toe and help him 
uh, drive along with this group. Three and a half minutes to go. Oh, this yes. will determine the grid for the Grand Prix later on today, folks. This is exciting. It is indeed. They cross the line to start lap number nine. Aaron Richardson with the new fastest lap, 102.7. And Aaron, in the number 16 Fusion Motorsport cart, is leading the second pack of carts. We've got a six tra cart train at the front, and then another six cart train chasing them. In fact, we've got a five and a half cart train because Finley Lines, that bright green crash helmet, is uh, uh, losing touch ever so slightly. And again, this is what we saw in the previous race, ladies and gentlemen. The minute the two ORM carts got together in the last race, they pulled away. Now, finally, the two Fusion drivers are together, and Kanis Grau has slotted into third position. Will Green and Max Endicott are on the back foot. They've got to get their heads down the final two and a half minutes to get back into contention. Uh, comments coming in on the live chat. Jay Larkin, you wonder why you got yourself a ban? Hmm. Let's just see. We'll, uh, we'll concentrate on the drivers that are actually on the track. Is there parents and families and supporters watching? Great racing. Great racing. Here we go then. This is two minutes to go in this race. Will Green now the lowest he's been in this one. Max Endicott back down there into P5. Little wide there for Kanish Grau. It's the highest he's been in this race. He is certainly making moves throughout it. He's had a good race. Uh, we, we, we've Granted, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking about the top five throughout all of this. There is a lot of other drivers in this race, 24 uh, in total, that are currently running on track at the moment, and all of them have been making some good moves. Ethan Weldon, eight positions gained so far. He is up into P12. George Clark is up six positions. Knight Measures is up nine positions up into P14, having an absolutely sterling run in the number 19 BMR cart. Uh, Aaron Richardson is now up five positions. He's up there into P7, so he's right behind this group and has actually got the fastest lap of the race as well. So keep an eye on Aaron Richardson. He will be starting to close in. There you can see the number 94, Alfie Brown and Jensen Ackerman, who are battling away. That is 10th and 11th place as Archie Lovett gets past Ethan Woodward. A uh, Harley Musk in 14th place, five-second penalty. Here's a little battle for down the number 11, the number 14. That is the 11 of Iron. They are the 14 of Archie Owen. Archie Owen up the inside. He makes a position, and look at that. That is the number 88, is it? Oh, it's the 98 of Ethan Weldon, the nephew of the late Dan Weldon, picking a position. Further back, another four-cart scrap. This would be uh, Albert Friend, the recovering Albert Friend. No, is that Albert Friend in this group there? No, he's not. This is the number 30 cart of Derek Babacek. So there's our Czech driver from Rakow in the Czech Republic. But uh, we briefly saw Zenek uh, gaining a place going ahead of Jacob Bashler, I think that was. Right, 30 seconds to go. Time to roll up those sleeves once again, ladies and gentlemen. It is Edgar versus Phillips with Kanish Grau. And look at Will Green there, ducking down behind the NASA panel, trying to make themselves as small as possible in the cart. So the airflow runs over the top of their crash helmets a little bit easier. Rao sets a new fastest lap. Kanish Grau is not done with this one yet as the clock strikes zero. Here we go then. Last lap board will be out this time for the drivers. And there is only a lap and a half left of this race. Edgar leads then from Phillips. These two have been chopping and changing all the way throughout this race. Now they're together. They are working together exactly like what you saw from the ORM drivers earlier on in the weekend or in the day this morning. Uh, keep a close eye on them as they latch onto the back of each other. Kanish Rao, fastest lap of the race, 102.69, and that's without any assistance there. He's not got a slipstream, he's not got a toe. That cart's got some serious waft here. It does indeed. Now, Phillips, the white race suit, the white fusion race suit, to differentiate himself from the multiple other fusion carts that uh, predominate this paddock. On the banking for the final time. Edgar using the natural curvature of the banking to sort of stay high, wide and handsome. But Edgar on the inside line holds him off. Down towards hairpin number one. Now watch Phillips swing out wide. No, he can't. Oh, Edgar does masterful job of covering and, yeah. and avoiding the cross over there. And now Phillips can't attack 
because Phillips has to defend. He is the number 22 of Kenny Scrow. Can Phillips get at the inside? It's a oh. drag race at the short shoot. Watch Will Green on the outside. Edgar still got it side by side through the full of finesse. It's not quite. Job's not done yet, though, for George Edgar. No, it's really not. Kenish Rao then dives down the inside. Will Green goes through. Jesse Phillips down into P4. This is exactly what Edgar wanted to do as Kenish Rao and Will Green are side by side. Will Green getting squeezed to the outside. He's left the door open. Phillips goes through into third in the final corner. It will be a run to the line as a warning flag goes out to Phillips across the line. But Edgar will take the win. He'll start provisionally on pole for the final later on. Kanish Rao will finish in second and will start alongside Edgar on the front row. Phillips goes behind Edgar. That may be tactical. Will Green on the outside of row number two. You are absolutely right, Nancy. Believe it or not, that is the first race at Cart Master 2023 that George Edgar has won. Kanish Rao second. Jesse Phillips, you're right. He will start directly behind his teammate at, in the Grand Prix. He'll be able to push his teammate through turn number one and out onto the banking and maybe, maybe get away from the rest of the field. Will Green, Jala Sayer. Now, oh, Jala Sayer didn't finish in fifth position. That is incorrect. So I'm not quite sure what's gone on there. Uh, Jala Sayer plus 13 laps. Yeah, he was out. So it was Will Green and Max Endicott uh, the top five. Then Finney Lines, Aaron Richardson, Archie Lovett, Jensen Ackerman, Ethan Woodward rounding out the top 10 there. Ethan Weldon finishing in 15th position uh, as well. So again, the, the order the order on that screen wasn't correct. Now, here we go. Here's uh, Nose Cone Watch. Yep, you're okay, Kanish Grau. Now, Jesse Phillips. You're okay too, Jesse. There is the uh, Jamie Green Racing. He's been an absolute star this week as, as uh, Will Green. And this is good. I mean, I mean, basically what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is that if, uh, you know, you've got a damaged nose cone, the, the nose cone bracket has dropped, that lady will do exactly oh. what she's doing here on cue. Oh, first victim, ding, ding, Archie Lovett. Love it. Yeah, five and seconds he time penalty. Love it. No, so he was uh, 3.82, so add another five to that. Ah. That's 8.82. He would drop down to 11th place. Okay, right, here we go. Um, Next race up is going to be uh, Micromax. So that's Luke F96 Racing's question answered. Uh, Jay Larkin, this is more like it. Can someone explain this engine to me? He's never heard of it. What's the difference from the Cadet? So, Henry, what's the difference between a Water Swift and a normal Ayami Cadet? Well, Jay Larkin, I will defer to my... Uh, <laughs> the superior knowledge of my colleague, Anthony Jordan. Anthony, please explain to the masses what the difference is between the old Gazelle Ayami engine and the new Water Swift engine. In fact, Nancy, I tell you what, I tell you what, we'll have a quick advert first. Yeah. What Nancy thinks about it. Jay Larkin, don't go away. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Micromax is time for their pre-final race 44 of the weekend. Let's take you through the starting lineup. Birthday boy, Emerson McAndrew Urin, 10th birthday today, starts this one on pole position. He is the favorite going for the GP plate this weekend. Oliver Spencer starts alongside, fourth in qualifying for him. Jensen Chalk and Kean Bernard racing with his uh, brother on the spanners this weekend, both in South Africa. His brother gave up karting so we could spanner for him. He starts on row number two. Harry Taylor and Oliver Warner, they go from row three, third and ninth in qualifying. Otis Cleary and Alfie Mew, they go from row four, from Edward Haynes and George House on row five. Theo Bradshaw and Austin O'Man, they round out the top six rows on row six. George Cormack and Zach Startbuck, they go from row seven, from Luke Millward and Max Gilman on row eight. Racing Wortley and Riley Murrow, they go from row nine. Alex Riley and Arthur Farrow round out the top 20 on row 10 from Sebastian Lucian, uh, Drew Davidson on row 11. Dax Farrier and Alfie Mayer, they round out row 12 with Josh Pushka and Lucian Smith going from row 13. Dean Pahal and Kuro uh, Kuyatake 
going from row 14. Harry Kallenberg rounding out to the 29 drivers, 15 rows. Henry. Okay, very quickly. Ayami Gazelle, air cooled, pull cord start. Uh, water swift, water cooled, push start. How's that? Right, uh, we've got Josh Cormack, Drew Davidson representing Scotland, Alex Riley representing Ireland, Ari Kallenberg representing the United Arab Emirates, and Kuryoto Kuritaki representing Japan in this race. 20. 29 of them, and I think Harry feels happy because you did a much better happy birthday to Emma's of a than I did earlier on. They're into tram lines, though, boys and girls, and the lights are out. We're up and racing, and someone pulling off the side of the track. That, that is... That's a George. That, that's a Toby, Toby George, George Motorsport. That could be Luke Millwood or Josh Cormack. The rest of the field head under the bridge and out onto the banking so this is micromax oh number 73 is out and that is drew davidson so one of our two scottish drivers out of the race this is the smallest member of the rotax family the 125 cc rotax engine this is the micromax engine for drivers aged between eight and ten years old the minimax class will be up very shortly for the drivers aged between 10 and 12. there we are that's that explains and drivers doing double duty in this class. Uh, George House, we saw him in uh, Water Swift Restricted. Oliver Warner, we saw him in Water Swift Restricted as well. So two drivers doing double duty in Micromax and Water Swift Restricted. Anthony, what's been going on on the circuit while I've been waffling? Uh, well, Drew Davidson has tried to get that cart re-going from turn one. It's not happened. So he is officially uh. out of this race, which is a big shame. Drivers but, now exiting. But, but his tyres will be 12 minutes fresher yes. than everybody else has come the final. The only is problem is only he has 27 thing. wagons in front of him on the grid. Yes, that is the only thing he can uh, have against them. Right. Ten and a half minutes to go then. Lap one completed. Emerson McAndrew are in leading the way from Spencer. Uh, Bernard. Then it's Chalk. Taylor. Cleary. Then it's Warner. House. Murrow and Haynes, the top 10. Edward Haynes, the RCE team, in the number 46, certainly having a good run this weekend. Let's see what he can do. Jordan Edwards. Baines, force waft, powering Edward Haynes, by the way. Full waft for all the drivers, hopefully. Uh, Spencer, very close to the back there of Emerson McAndrew Urin. They are not teammates. One for Dan Holland Racing for Emerson McAndrew Urin. Synergy factory team for Spencer. The O plate is down the inside yeah. here. Goes Otis Cleary on Harry Taylor for P5. Harry Taylor back at it. Though Taylor did a really good job on Friday. Dropped off a little bit on Saturday. So in Micromax, Emerson McAndrew Urin took pole position on Friday and won both heat races. Yep. Saturday, he took pole position again. But Kian Bernard won the opening race when McAndrew Urin spun in the rain. McAndrew Urin came back to win heat number two. So three wins so far this weekend for Emerson McAndrew Uren as we've got Otis Cleary for the Jack Dex rating team picking up a place on Harry Taylor and that is for fifth position. The leaders coming down the hill with the first of the three micro tiers, Kian Bernard in third position. The three zip cart teammates, Theo Bradshaw, uh, Zach Starbuck oh. and uh, uh, Kian Bernard, very, very good mates. Yes, indeed, from the uh, DHR cuts going off there. Luke Tex asked what waft is. Well, waft is what makes the engine power. go quick. Power. I got the power. That is what waft is. Ultimate waft. Here we go. Less than nine minutes to go then. And still we watch this battle ensuing. This is... Uh, fourth place down. Right, Henry, on. if you raced, what was your favourite chassis? Well, Jay Larkin, I raced senior Honda back in the 90s and early 2000s, up to 2008. My weapon of choice, a Stratos Clubman Pro Kart, and then a seven kart Mark II. Oh, yes. weapon, absolute weapon. And there is Edward Haynes, speaking of weapons. There goes Haynes in the number 46 kart in the Richard Chassis Engineering team. Oh, and side-by-side uh, -side action there. That is House getting... Uh, uh, Shuffled wide on the banking for the ORM team. And uh, again, uh, why are OHR drivers privateers? No, they're not. They're not. Oh, ah, ha, okay. Uh, because our computer system here in the UK didn't recognize Audrey Henry Racing as an official entrant. Trust me, though. Trust me. I'm giving Audrey Henry Racing as many props as possible. But uh, yeah, they're not privateers. Alex Riley in this race for the number 86 cart is an Audrey Henry Racing driver. Spencer now leading the way. Uh, Kian Bernard down into, or up into second. Emerson McAndrew Uren into third now on this one. So Emerson 
Not struggling, but he's in that pack. There it is, whizzing past your screen. Jensen Chalk is up to B4. Jensen Chalk certainly had a good weekend, hasn't he? He's been uh, he's been in and around there. He's had two second place finishes, a fourth and a fifth, Ooh. qualified fifth as well. So he's had a good uh, up and down races. And there's some uh, slipstream, some bump drafting between two drivers who aren't teammates, and you will see this, ladies and gentlemen. So, for example, at the front we have got the Synergy Factory team, followed by the Zip Factory team, followed by Dan Holland Racing, the second Synergy Kart. Then we've got Kart from Jack Dex Racing, George Gibbons Motorsport, and Richardson Chassis Engineering. Drivers will form temporary alliances, uh, you know, yeah. during the course of a race, you know, to suit their own needs. Those alliances invariably end when the race comes down to its final moments, but you will see Kian Bernard, the Zip Factory team, that uh, is the Zip Kart, uh, powering Bernard, and then there's a Synergy chassis, uh, the O plate, uh, so it's a Birrell Art now it's called. Um, we got that Rebecca Lloyd sadly now. Uh, okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, happy birthday, uh, Mr. Bram, Mrs. Bram Senior. There we go. Ah, ooh, ooh, ah, and that was a George Gibbons Motorsport cart uh, running wide. Oliver Warner losing a couple of places. Now, yes, temporary alliances uh, not happening there between Edward Haynes and Otis Cleary. But at the front there, you've got four carts, you've got a Zip, you've got two Synergies, and you've got a Dan Holland racing cart. And they're not working together. It's all out warfare. Oh, Keen Bernard there just absolutely round the outside, holding on to that top spot. Spencer now looking again to the inside through this one. And here comes Emerson McAndrew in back to second place. And Emerson, again, will be fighting for the win in this one. He wants to start on pole as he looks to the inside. Oh. He goes through. Spencer down into third as Bernard follows as well. And Spencer saying there to Jensen Chalk, who's got the fast lap of the race, uh, uh, don't, don't be too hasty just yet. Just yeah. Think about it. Let's keep working together. <laughs> looking at that move there, Emerson's uh, great-grandfather was British touring car champion Jeff Uren. And... Looking at that move there, I think that some of the touring car tin top mentality when it comes yeah. to battling has rubbed off on young Emerson on his 10th birthday. The number 82 of Kian Bernard. Uh, Michael Burke from Bathurst, he used to race a seven car in Australia. And I tell you what, my race number was 82. So I've always got a ponch on for anyone who chooses number 82. Why yeah. was that? Because my teammate was 28 and we could just swap the stickers around. We didn't have to buy two sets of stickers. Oh, he raced once, one, I raced one month, he raced the next. There's a move. Yep, Spencer to the inside at hairpin one and gets it done just about. And now Jensen Chalk is trying to have a go here. That's released uh, McAndrew Urin. Uh, just that fraction, but again, not good in these sort of classes. Uh, you need to have the slipstream. Uh, right now he does not have that. And he's punching the hole in the air and the drivers behind are accepting uh, said air gap and are pushing yes. themselves through it. Uh, so a week ago, well, I can't believe it was only one week ago, uh, Emerson McAndrew Uren was crowned 2023 Rotax Max Challenge International Trophy Champion at Le Mans. In that final, he beat Jensen Chalk by 14 hundredths of a second. And Jensen, he's now moved teams, he's now with the Synergy Factory team. He's there in fourth place, the O-Plate. What is the O-Plate? Well, the O-Plate's about to take the lead, Oliver Spencer. The O-Plate stands for British Open Champion, which, like Cartmars, is, is another one-off event. Ah, Jensen Chalk. <laughs> so, the Synergy Factory team is run by former Cartmars champion Mike Spencer. And uh, but that, that was a Mike Spencer move there. Jensen Chalk, hard, fair, aggressive. Yeah, nice little move there. So... Keep a close eye on this battle again. Big battles happening all the way throughout the field. Riley Murray up nine places as well. He's closing in on this group as well. Uh, big movers all the way throughout the uh, field. Callum Berg also at four positions up to P25. But action is on these uh, top oh, runners yes. here because this will determine who's going to be starting on pole position. And, of course, on the front two rows of the grid so, in this yeah. one. And again, ladies and gentlemen, like Anthony correctly pointed out in, one, the, in the previous race, Sometimes for the Grand Prix, you would rather start third on the inside line for the run down to turn number one than second. So will we see any, any tactics at play between these four drivers as the race winds down? Still plenty of time to go. Here comes Jensen Chalk. Oh, oh. and up the banking. He just... The momentum caught him, and he just—he did really well to stay off Emerson McAndrew here and there. There may have been a little tiny bit of sticker swapping, but uh, Chalk was backing out of it when he realised he... Oh, dear. And that is a strawberry racing driver. That is Japan's 
Kuryu Kiyotake out of the race. Or was it Max Gilman who suddenly drops the back of the field as well? We've already lost Drew Davison and Sebastian Lusch. Uh, five cars battling for the race lead now because Edward Haynes has joined the party. Behind them, Otis Cleary, Alfie Mew, Oliver Warner, Riley Murrow and Harry Taylor round out your top ten. Followed by George House, Theo Bradshaw, Zach Starbuck, Luke Milward, Austin Oman. Anthony? For the eagle-eyed viewer out there, you may have seen yes. Ian Bernard just dropping the cover on the radiator on yes. the side of the car. Now, if you're not sure, what are you doing with that one? Basically, limiting the airflow into the radiator, essentially then just giving that engine a little bit more heat, a bit more yes. temperature to give it a bit more waft. Yes. You don't want to do that for too long, though, because if All you do right. that too long, you overheat the engine, then it starts to slow down. So you need to lift it back up, cool the engine back down again, and then, yes, you'll be okay. And the drivers, you can see on the steering wheels of the carts, you can see the drivers, they've got data loggers on those carts, so they can see maybe how the temperature of the engine is going. Uh, Further back, uh, Grayson Wortley runs 17th. Alex Riley for the Ardron Henry Racing Team. And you can see on the timing screen that uh, Riley's no longer down as a privateer. OHR are in. Arthur Farrow is 19th. Then Josh Husker, Dax Farah, Lucian Smith, Alfie Mayer, Tian Pahal and Ari Kallenberg. It's Kurio Kiyotake last at the moment in 26th position. The driver looking very glum in the Tony Kart race suit a few laps ago. That was Max Gilman driving for the Cato Motorsport. Team. One minute to go, oh. plus one lap. Well, next year's Camp Masters is already looking spectacular because yeah. Nibbers, Matt Isaacs is on en route from Forest Edge International Speedway with Cheesy Green, uh, Charles Green, for uh, company. If you can bring Phil Howarth, the real number one, that'd be even better. And, oh, we have hit a milestone. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you, all 1,000 of you who are watching at this very, very moment. Well done. We're pushing the boundaries even more here at Alpha Oh, here we go. Change for second position. Well, all 1,000 of you would have seen that great move from Kia Bernard. Oh, and Emerson McCann, you're in sync yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm listening to Henry. There's a 1,000 of you watching. I'm going to put on something special as well. Side by side at the short shoot. 20 seconds to go. Five Micromax carts battle for the lead. Yeah, this is brilliant stuff here from the Micromax classes. Kian Bernard just sweeps to the inside there to cover off from McAndrew in there in third place. He is wanting to get that position back, but can't quite get it done through the Mike Wilson complex this time around. Timer strike zero now, which means the last lap board comes out now. There it is. Final lap board. And Bernard looks to the inside in towards turn one. Can't quite do it. That's allowed Spencer to break away just a fraction. Just a fraction. Oh. Keep an eye on any of this. This could seriously kick off as McAndrew and back to the inside now. Past Kian Bernard. Bernard down into third place now as they go down the bridge over in towards hairpin number one. Here we go then. Anyone going to pull out? Defensive go Spencer. Oh. And here comes McAndrew Urin under breaking. Gets the lead of the race. And he parks it on the apex beautifully. I thought he had overcooked it a little bit going into that first hit, but he got the cart slowed down, squared up, and nobody was able to get the crossover. And now oh. they're all kicking off behind. That's Jensen Chalk up into P2, giving his mother a heart attack, I'm sure, in the grandstand. Chalk with a great move. Bernard third, Haynes is fourth, and Spencer drops the fifth. From first to fifth on the last lap, Emerson McAndrew Uren. You know when you get, like, sometimes you're a kid and you get, like, before your birthday, your parents give you a little present the night before to help you go to sleep? Well, I think they call that pre-final, maybe the little night before birthday present. The main gift potentially awaits Emerson McAndrew Uren later on. And still the carts come flooding across the line. Great battling. And I've got to say, fantastic moves, clean as a whistle, like the last lap of Water Swift Unrestricted. There's the birthday boy, Emerson McAndrew Uren. Numero uno, Jensen Chalk second. I've got to say, in terms of the battles that Jensen and Emerson have, have had all year, 0.47 of a second. That's a massive gap between them. Yeah. You do better than that, boys. <laughs> there we go. Well, a fantastic result then for Micro Max. Race 44, the pre final. All those results on your screen, provisional, of course. They have to go through scrutineering. I've got to give that race, though, to uh, Riley Murrow. Ten positions gained from 18th on the grid, finishes in P8. That is a solid drive for the Sam Pollock Racing driver, certainly showing some good waft out on circuit. But Emerson McAndrew Urin on his 10th birthday 
He takes the win in the pre-final and will start on pole for the Grand Prix later on today. He's all good, he comes in. All good for Chalky. All good for Bernard, he's fine. Haynes, he's good. Spencer, oh, he's got. He's just behind. Warner was good. Spencer, he's good. So there you go. Your top six are clear. They are fine. But Spencer clearly upset about the results. Well, I mean, he went from first to fifth. And he, he, he just got out aggressiveness on the. There's a Gary Shield from Jag Rotax, the British Rotax importer distributor, rather, overseeing his many many units here at. Cart Masters, uh, Warner just looking up there to see how much he weighed and uh, oh now that's Mr. Barthorpe Senior, Miles Barthorpe's dad there, closest to the picture and there's a pooch and there's a small child in a pram and is that Miles Barthorpe there, out there, hello, he's, he's heard himself now, oh the pooch is getting involved, um, again great to see lots of people, lots of families here at Cart Masters, the finals are 15 minutes plus one lap for those of you wondering on the live chat. That's now, Lewis Werrell. It's Lewis Werrell. Now, Lewis, uh, formerly of this parish, now of international karting fame, mm. Lewis was the highest placed British driver in the CIK European yeah. Junior Championship this year, or is he already a senior? Uh, no, he's still junior. Oh, right, okay. uh, so, yeah, he's still in that one with the uh, the Forza Racing team, uh, uh, doing yes, a yes, lot yes. of stuff there, one of the British racing teams. Uh, I think was the highest ranked FIA, CIK FIA ranked yes. scoring driver, Okay, uh, I think. That's actually now just been taken away by... Um, Bucket hat game, yeah, strong. Excellent. Right, anyway, talk, Henry. I, I need to take some notes. Oh, Anthony's going to make some notes. He's going to learn how to spell his name. There's Sam Flynn. I don't know who Sam Flynn is, but I can tell. I know he is because he says so on the back of his jumper. But uh, uh, Tyler Harris, front and centre. Quiff uh, flowing in the breeze. Give us a wave, Tyler. Uh-oh, he's realised that he's on TV. Well, Tyler, we're going to save your blushes because we're going to go to an ad break now. There we are. There's Lloyd. Hey, hey, Tyler. Oh, go on. Cut his hair. Cut his hair. Go on. Advert, please. Seen the micros now, their elder siblings, the Minimax carts head out for their pre final pole position. Reigning Rotax Max International Trophy champion Albert Friend and current British Championship leader Cole Denham, Jacob Ashcroft, and Joshua Griffin go from row number two. Scotsman second and fourth on the grid. Charlie Wolfitt and Jesse Phillips through double duties next. Then leading privateer Harry Freeman and Charles Kitely, Will Green and Oliver Meek round out your top ten head of Archie Levitt and Tiny Carter Ellis Bell from Bathgate in Scotland. The farmer Tom Reed goes from row number seven alongside Albie Lapper with Finley Lines and Czech Republic's Zedek Babacek on row number eight. Noah Barham and Isaac Barker are on row number nine. Stanley Clark and Hasnain Khan share row 10. Guernsey's Cody Lepatruel and Ireland's Eric Gilsenen are on row 11. Then it's Charlie King and Miles Burton, Isabella Stanmore Wilson and Laurie McVie. Final couple of rows, Jack Collinson and Singapore's Aaron Mehta, Harry Neesom, India's Mitanch Jane. The final three drivers, Jesper Oaks, Scotland's Kieran Stewart and Sodi for test driver, Hugh Hobson. Looking forward to this one. See what happens. Oh, Tiffany G is bidding us farewell. Oh, she has to go to bed. She's watching from Australia. Australia. Understandable. So long. Farewell. I'll read it.
That beautiful mute button, that one. Uh, I'm a fan of that. Uh, right, so this is going to be an interesting one. Friend, Denham, Ashcroft, Griffin on the front two rows on this one. They have certainly had some interesting days. Albert Friend qualified at eighth on Friday. He took a race win in his final heat, and he's already, his like seconds have been then thirds. So he's had a good one. Cole Denham, on the other hand, though, master of the last ah, lap lunges. The closer, Cole Denham. Yeah. Watch and learn, boys and girls. Here we go, then, into the tram lines. Green lights go out. Good start, then, from the entire grid. Great start from the inside row. Friend and Ashcroft dive to the inside. Looks like Charlie Wolfit as well, and the PF plate uh, sides through up into third place. Cole Denham down into fourth as the rest of the field side through. Three wide in the background there. Bit of jostling, but everyone cleanly through the first couple of corners unscathed across the bridge they go down in towards hairpin number one and the train starts to form and defensive will go friend for the first lap six drivers in this field are doing double duty friend lovett lines will green Derek babacek and jesse phillips for jesse phillips this is i think his first time in a rotax cart uh oliver cotton tci uk racer is back on the live chat uh, our co-commentator and colleague Alex Goldschmidt also there Anthony practicing his ABCs I've got to say Alex uh, Anthony said he was practicing two other letters but I'll leave you to guess what they were uh, here we go it's Albert Brand breaking away cleanly up at the front great great gap for the strawberry racing driver yeah this is nice stuff here from uh, Albert Friend. certainly looking very strong going into this weekend uh, possibly one of the favourites for the final. Changed to second place, though. Wolfit on the inside of Ashcroft. Got the slipstream and the jump um, and uh, able to get that one done. 6-2, Cole Denham struggling a little bit there. He's under pressure oh. from the rest of the field. Oh. Harry uh, Freeman <laughs> coming through. OK, so we've got ten and a half minutes to go. And Denham has just dropped back to, what is that, sixth position? Just watch as the race progresses. There's the leading privateer. So three privateers in Minimax. Derek Babacek. Oh. oh, and that was not part of the plan. That was a Dan Holland racing cart getting up on two wheels. And that was I the number 27 Noah of Noah Barham. Driver who finished ninth in last year's Honda Cadet Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, so Ellis Bell, Derek Babacek, Harry Freeman are the three privateers in this class. And uh, so... Friend completes lap number two. He's got a gap of six tenths of a second over the PF plate. Charlie Wolfit for the Synergy Factory team. Then it's Jacob Ashcroft in cart number 22. Jacob is the currently second in the British Championship and finished fourth last weekend at Le Mans. He was the runner-up in the Rotax Grand Finals Minimax uh, event in Portugal last year. So effectively, Jacob ranked second in the world in this class. Yeah, that is a, a mighty achievement oh, as well. Wide, yeah, really? three wide in the background there. I think he lines on the inside of that uh, three wide battle. Back at the front here as down the inside goes Cole Denham again on Joshua Griffin. Joshua, the fastest driver on the circuit at the moment. Keep an eye, though, because Synergy Factory driver Oliver Meek is purple in sector one. So that may change at the end of this lap. Here to the inside. Finley Lines gets that job done. He moves past the number 88. Or of the 86, sorry, of Archie Lovett. Looks like Charles Kitely follows Sam, through as well. Ooh, that's a Sam Pollock racing car, Archie Lovett. So Archie Lovett, yeah. uh, to recap, so Friday morning, Will Green sets pole position for Friday's two heats. Cole Denham won them both in typical last lap fashion. Saturday, in the pouring rain, Archie Lovett, there he is, number 86 for Sam Pollock racing. He took pole position, but the race wins went to Jacob Ashcroft and Albert Friend. And now Ashcroft having to fend off Oh dear, that was a, a late lunge at Joshua Griffin, the Scotsman, in cart number 13. And uh, Jacob Ashcroft was showing. Oh, and there's a driver up over the back there getting caught out. I'm trying to see who that was. Was that Finley Line just getting caught out under braking? Maybe we could see that again. Uh, it was a very quick moment. It wasn't. Uh, well, we'll have to see Ellis Bell there going through, but uh, certainly there's one driver getting caught out under braking there, but luckily everyone seems to carry on unscathed. They're at the back of the pack on the Sony Oh, I'm pulling in. That's oh, it, it's Will Green. Yes. The Argenti Motorsport, number 54 of Will Green. I think that must be the cart that jumped up over the yeah. back of the cart in front going to uh, into here, pin number one. Oh, Roger Young from Chinese Taipei in the island Taiwan is on uh, the whole... Chinese Taipei karting team are watching from their home track with many beers in hand. That's the spirit. Uh, can I say hi to Yong and 
the Young An team from Taiwan. Yes, I can. Hello, entire Young An team. I watched Wales' first ever World Cup, well, first football World Cup game in 58 years with the Chinese uh, Taipei national karting team. And it was a blinking good night as well. Cody the Patrol from Guernsey, currently running 18th. First time ever. Yeah, we spoke to Cody in, in one the, of our paddock, paddock shows. shows. We did, He's yeah. from St. Sampson in Guernsey. And uh, judging from what Cody was saying about karting in Guernsey, Guernsey. Go, go to Guernsey, beautiful Guernsey, yeah. for a holiday. For the views. For the views. Not for the karting. Yes, not uh, the karting. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> Cole Denham, the closer. There he is from uh, Armdale in Scotland. He's running fourth. He did drop back to fifth. There's number 64 cart of Charles Kitely. So, six and a half minutes to go. Albert Friend leads by just under one second from Charlie Wolfitt. Then there's a half second gap back to Jacob Ashcroft, who's got four tenths of a second in hand over his teammate Cole Denham, who has dealt with Joshua Griffin. And you'll see the number 62 cart now try and latch on to his Dan Holland racing teammate and push forward to try and depose Friend, who was led from the word go, and Charlie Wolfitt. The rest of the field spreading out quite uncharacteristically, I've got to say, Anthony. It is, yeah, fairly spread out, but certainly keep a close eye on it because things can change. There's six minutes to go, Henry. Yep, and, uh, Anthony, Anthony, six please minutes sa of lifetime. Sa satisfy that viewer. Right, can you say hi to Harvey Sangerson Racing? Sargerson, sorry. From Don Sargerson. Yes, can, can you answer Dom. Me? Yes, Dom, I can. Okay. Hello, Harvey. Here we are. Thank you, Anthony. Carry on, go karting. Yes, five, oh, just under six minutes to go in this race, plus one lap. And our friend leading the way now by 1.4 seconds. Certainly seems to have this one in hand. Checks over the shoulder still, see what's going on. All is well. You can oh. see that Charlie Wolfitt, though, up three positions in the PF plate, is in second place and is uh, in front of Ashcroft and There's Denham. Move. As Harry Freeman. Yep, that, that black Tom and Reed. blue livery car. It's a very, very smart livery privateer entry. And, mm. and he's, he's driving it really, really well this week. Now, in addition to Will Green, who has had to retire, so that's one really favoured contender starting from the back of the group for the Grand Prix. We've also lost Albie Lapper, who also, I think, could have played a, a role in the top 10 battle in the Grand Prix. They will be starting 32nd and 33rd for the Grand Prix. Um, we've got a driver off at the exit of the first hairpin as now, well, Ashcroft has made short work and getting out of the number 47, that's Harry Neeson. Yeah, Neeson in the wall, not uh, good at all. And uh, yeah, he will start again near the back of the grid then for the final later on today. Stay tuned for that one. The Grand Prix starting from two o'clock onwards today. Plenty more action to come though between now and then. Four and a half minutes plus one lap to go as you are watching the battle for second place well, on screen. This is a critical moment in this race because these four drivers on your screen, these five drivers, if they work together now, they could catch Albert Friends. They could. If they battle now, they won't. No, and battle they shall as well, down the inside. Colt Denham will retake second but place. But they don't lose too much time. No, they don't. Ashcroft let him go and then Ashcroft gave him a nice little shove up the straight towards the second hairpin. So that shouldn't cost them too much time. Right, as you you watch the race, uh, you, Anthony, you watch the racing, I'll run you down the order. Harry Freeman is eighth, Tom the Farmer Reed is ninth, then Oliver Meek rounding at the top ten. Oh, there's Wolfit trying to look to the inside, and Wolfit elbows his Synergy Racing teammate, Joshua Griffin, out of the way. Uh, Oliver Meek is tenth, then Jesse Phillips eleventh, Barham twelfth, Bell thirteenth, Followed by Lovett, King, Barker, Babacek, Khan, the Patrowell, Burton. That's your top 20 with Isabella Stansmore Wilson next. Yeah, nice and close between these top drivers here. Now we're starting to see a breakaway now between Denham and Ashcroft. Now this could be vital. There's still three minutes to go. They are able potentially to close that 1.9 second <laughs> gap. Is it possible? Yes. Let's find out. You think so? yes. Ladies and oh. gentlemen, do you think? Let us know in the live chat. Is that possible? Can Cole Denham and Jacob Ashcroft close that one point now eight second gap uh, to Albert Friend? Um, uh, it might be. Uh, I've got to say, at one point this weekend, there are four Rotax classes and four IAMI classes. Dan Holland Racing looked, look, they, they still look like they could win all four Rotax classes. 
I mean, it, the, the competition level is insanely high this year. But you've got Emerson McAndrew Urine uh, in Micro Max. You've got Denham and Ashcroft uh, in Mini Max. In Junior Max, you've got Macaulay Bishop. And then in Senior Rotax, every single qualifying session and heat race in Senior Rotax. And we've had six heats and two qualifying sessions has been won by either Matthew Higgins or Kai Hunter to Dan Roland, uh, Dan Holland teammates. Uh, exactly. uh, Shivani Jane saying, go on, Mitash Jane. You're driving superbly. Mitash is up into 25th position. He's gained five, five places. places, Shivani. Keep the comments coming in. It's obviously working. Uh, the gap is 1.7 seconds now. Two minutes to go. Oh, I think they might have, might have bitten off a little bit more than they can chew because Albert Friend, like a rock solid he's not going to deviate from the racing line he's not going to defend uh, i think they might have left it a little bit too late you know yeah i think they have as well and uh, now they've been caught up to wolfit as well wolfit's right there just behind joshua griffin Billy lines charles kitely freeman there with the fastest up of the race and the blue cards he's coming in as well tom reed and jesse phillips the top 10. phillips there you can just see running a little bit wide he's under pressure from oliver meek as well who is right on his rear tail 90 seconds plus one lap to go then in this race. This is still the battle for second place on your yeah. screen as well, Albert it's, Friend it's, is 1.8 seconds further up the road. It's more of a battle for third, third. Well, yeah, I'd say, because okay. the closer, Cole Denham, has cleared off. Ashcroft has got his hands full with Wolfit and Griffin, the two synergy teammates. Now, Wolfit and Griffin haven't always played nice in this race. No. Uh, but now... They have got a common goal. That common goal is to get Ashcroft out of the way and mission accomplished. Yep, and uh, now oh, many lines, lines and uh, Joshua Griffin go through. Oh, now Ashcroft. Under the, pressure, yeah. The, the, I, the pace of that car has dropped off considerably yep. in the, the last couple of minutes. We've got 30 seconds plus a lap to go. And uh, Jack Robinson saying, come on, Laurie McVie. Laurie McVie, 24th for the Project One racing team. Two positions gained. Yes. Here we go. Now, 24 seconds. Meek again, fastest lap of the race. There are two laps to go. Can the two synergy carts now catch Cole Denham? With Finley Lines for the Zip Factory team hanging on for dear life behind. Well, the gap is continuing to come down between Friend and Denham as well. It's now down to 1.7. It's not closing as fast as it would uh, like, as it's still kicking off in the background there. Yes. Harry Freeman under pressure here from Tom Reed and Jesse Phillips. Phillips, who's a little further back, actually. Uh, Freeman, it's Meek who's up into that position. You know, these, these carts, they run Mojo tyres as opposed to the... Comets or something of the, uh, uh, yes. the IRs. Uh, yeah, the comets that would be the engines out, yeah. have different characteristics to them. So uh, it's taking Jesse Phillips a little bit of a while to get used to uh, the Rotax engine. Uh, Adam Collingburn, well, you're, you're an absolute gentleman and a scholar. Why wasn't Iliff in race 41 Junior X30? That is because Adam, that was a rep charge. Uh, Iliff has already qualified directly to the pre-final. He didn't need to go through the repercharge. Now, back to it. Final lap, Albert Friend. Well, this will be a nice Sunday drive in the Lincolnshire countryside from Albert Friend. Here comes Cole Denham, and it's still the two synergy racing teammates, Wolfit, the PF plate holder, and Griffin, the number 13 cart, who are bearing down on the closer, Cole Denham. Yeah, Finley Lines looking very strong there as well in P5. Lots of support on the stream for Finley. Certainly doing a good job. Double duties for him this yep. weekend as he latches on to the back here now two of the teams. 13 of Joshua Griffin. Yeah, we're in two different teams as well. Running in the Zip Factory team, uh, Zip Factory Kart team for the uh, Mini Max. Running for Fusion for the Water Swift category. And still the signal is given to push forward. Well, Charlie, you're running out of time. Albert Friend. 1.4 seconds in the clear, comes out of the final corner, and the Strawberry Racing driver wins the pre-final. Albi will start the final, the Grand Prix itself, from pole position. Cole Denham, Charlie Wolfit, Joshua Griffin, and Finley Lines, your top five. Charles Kitely, Jesse Phillips, making good progress there, and a very disappointed Jacob Ashcroft down in eighth. Oliver Meek, Tom the Farmer Reed, round out your top ten leading privateer in that one. Harry Freeman, and Noah Barham, Archie Lovett, and the tiny carter, Ellis Bell.
in 14th position. Nice drive for Ellis Bell. He had a retirement in the free practice warm-up earlier on today. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, good to see him back on that one. Uh, to answer a couple of questions out on the live chat, Dr. SVW saying, is this based on points or winner takes all for the final? It is winner takes all for the final. The races that you are watching now, the pre-finals, are purely to determine the grid for the Grand Prix finals later on today. Uh, very quickly, I will cut back in just very briefly, Anthony. Go on. In addition to Carpix.net, uh, Chris Walker, we are also playing Stu Stretton Watch. We are. Uh, on here. So, Mr. Carting, yep. Stu Stretton, Stu Stretton Picks is out there. He is in pink and his hair is red. Yes. Yeah, I see you can hear that there. And with the sun out, his face will be red too. Yes. Uh, I love hot sunny days, said no freckly ginger person ever. Right, I'm going to go now. We've got a special guest coming in a little bit later on, but uh, right. Oh, now has a look. There, right, nose cone watch. Oh, frick, frick, frick. Uh, uh, there's the top Ellis six Bell. I've already gone through. Uh, there is now. There's Zenit Babacek going through the number 43 cart of uh, Miles Burton going through there. Oh, now it's a rather robust way of pushing your cart through. That's Stanley Clark. Stanley, thumbs up. Oh, okay, he's getting help from behind. His teammates, Sam Pollock Racing teammates, are Cody, uh, sorry, Isabella Stansmore Wilson. Isabella finished that race 23rd. Uh, Guernsey, you can have a driver start in the uh, Grand Prix from the top 20. Uh, Czech Republic, you can have a driver start in the 17th. Ah! Let's do some, let's go pick strawberry, shall we? Well, on, you've got Mr. Longley there on the right. You've got young Mr. Longley, Sam Longley. Next, second from the right. You've got someone with a very big fringe in the middle. And then you've got the best mechanics mullet in the paddock, uh, third from the left, uh, and everyone else. So that is the Strawberry Racing Collective uh, watching from the mechanics grandstand. And they are going to be watching this next race. Well. The next race is Senior X30, the Senior X30 pre-final. There's no one from Strawberry Racing in that, so they were just they just they finished what they were doing, and uh, now they are waiting for their next race. It's a family day out here at Kart Masters, but a lot of companies put a lot of effort, a lot of money into making these family days happen. It's the sponsors. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Motorsport UK, Kartmasters, British Car Grand Prix. It's Senior X30 pre-final time. Let's take you through the starting order. Gus Lawrence, the number one seed from the British Car Championships in the X30 category. He starts his one on pole position, qualified second, and a race win in his last qualifying heat yesterday. He's one of the favorites going in for the GP play. Bart Harrison starting alongside, he qualified seventh. He now starts this one on the front row. Sam Shaw and Caden McQueen. Sam Shaw with a brand new chassis going into the day. Hopefully he has good luck with Caden McQueen alongside. Marcus Hiddle with the PF plate, qualified fourth. He starts this one on the third row of the grid with Sam Heading alongside. Harley Keeble and Harry Buckling Jr., the number 68. They go from row four, Morgan Porter and the, and the GP plate. Harry Platten, who qualified it on pole on Friday, starts this one. P10 on the grid. He's got some work ahead of him in this pre-final. Kali Atkins and Louis Johnson cool. They go from row six from Henry Gregory and Jack Nestleship on row seven. Finn McLaughlin and Rashan Chigarimbo, they round out the top 16 on row eight. 
Harvey Ryby and Alistair Cresswell go from row nine. Aaron Lask on the live broadcast supporting Mr. Cresswell. He's got a lot of work to do from P18, though. Harry Cottrell and Christopher Bingham, they go from row 10 in the top 20. Dayton Coulthard and Michael Shin round out row 11. Kean Gohill and Reese Newburn round out uh, row uh, 12. I think it's Kyan Gohill, actually, I think, if I get that right. Connor Grant and Aditya Kulkarni round out row 13. Isaac Marsh and William Smith, they go from row 14. Harry Yule and Rafael Jesus round out the top 30 on row 15. George Mayle and Alex Duncan go from row 16 from Tiger Dixon and Finley McKee. Callum Tanner rounds out the 18-row grid. 35 carts, all carts have left the dummy grid and are on the circuit. Looking forward to this one. Honestly, in Senior X30, it has been an open field of drivers. We personally do not know who is going to win the GP play in this one. Uh, every guess that we have done, the yep. commentators... Uh, Oof, it's instantly all, proved wrong. Yeah, all a guess. We uh, just don't know. This is the only class where there have been four heats and four different winners. Are we going to make it five from five? Lights are out, we're off and racing. Oh, oh. and Gus Lawrence gets... Turned onto the grass. Half a dozen of them. Kate McQueen's involved in that as well. Gus Lawrence didn't get up to speed and he got turned right in front of the pack. That was incredible cart control, though. Could have been an absolute disaster. But look at that. All 35 carts are still pointing the right way. Yeah, that was an interesting start there. It looked like Gus put his hand up as the lights went green, yes. indicating that he may have had a problem at the start. Oh, and that is a problem. That's for an Argenti car. That is Scotland's Alex Duncan going for a, a wee rotation. Yeah, it's also been a bad start from Cader McQueen. Cader McQueen is he near was, at the back of the grid. He was caught up behind Gus Lawrence. Right, a I whole see. host of drivers had to take evasive action. Now, Gus has to start the fight back. The number one plate cart, he sides underneath. That MDL motorsport car, I think that was Jack Nettleship being put to the sword. Yes, indeed. Well, drivers cross the line. Bart Harrison leads the way from Sam Shaw, Little with Porter from Atkins, Gregory Keeble, Harding, Chikarimbo, Nettleship, and Lawrence. The three and drivers, but going juniors, dropped down to 30th as well. And another driver that was caught out, Hair Force One, Harry Platten. Yeah. The bid for three titles in a row, Harry was down in 25th position as they crossed the line to complete lap number one. Into the first hairpin, and there's lots of drivers. There's Gus Lawrence trying to pick up. Oh, and he's got a croc uh, nipping away at his rear bumper. No, that's not Gus Lawrence. That's the uh, number 11 cart, the Sodi USA entered cart of 2019 British Cadet champion Harley Keeble. Juniors are next. Junior Road Tax is the next race out right now. It is Senior X30 on your screens. Bart Harrison leading the way. Marcus Littlewood trying his best to close in, but Harrison's walking away with this one. He looks very comfortable oh, at the front, doesn't he? He does indeed. Uh, the PF plate, Marcus Littlewood, the Motorsports UK Academy Young Driver of the Year for the Jade Racing Team, runs in close combat with the race leader look at this but there's Nettleship going up the inside of his teammate his MDL Motorsport teammate Sam Heading who oh, it was that no it was yes and uh, Heading uh, going back was the number eight cart and Heading now loses another place to the recovering Gus Lawrence Gus has got me confused he's got a white race suit on today uh, yes yeah he does it's easy to confuse me, as you know, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. But changing your race suit, putting on a special Cartmaster Sunday suit, he's in his Sunday best. Here's the battle of the race lead. I said Bart Harrison was looking comfortable. Yeah. I don't think he's looking too comfortable right now, though, because Littlewood is all over that rear bumper, looking very, very strong. The Jade Racing Team entrant driver on the PF plate, the driver who has, well, he's basically won the championship, the, the, the club championship here at PF International, running... Uh, that number oh, and no. oh, Dayton, Dayton Coulthard three wheels on our wagon and we have stopped rolling he walks away that uh, is a DNF he will be starting Sam Heading is also oh, oh it's, it's a whole, whole axle wow wow well that's lucky he didn't flip the cart I mean whoa, that could have been major for Dayton Coulthard he's got axle in hand Probably he's going to go find a bale of tyres and smash them to pieces with that axle. Oh, dear. And I think... And do you know what? That, oh, and there's a croc slowing down. Is it? That's Kalai Atkins. He's fighting uh, back through, uh, yeah. I'm just thinking, where did that happen? That happened... That's the pit lane entrance. It happened in the pit lane entrance. So, that axle snapped. 
on the back straight going through Bobby Game Corner. Yeah. And, oh, oof. Well, the main thing is Dayton Coulthard is walking away with Axel in hand. And we will see him in the final where he will start shotgun on the field in P35. Marcus Littlewood looking to start P1 for the Grand Prix as he passes Bart Harrison. Sam Shaw runs third. Henry Gregory, the leading privateer. So, Henry Gregory. Now, don't be fooled by the Jamie Green Racing graphics kit. Henry works with Jamie Green Racing when he's not racing. He is based, him and a mate and... His dad are based in one of the pit garages way far away from the JB Green Racing team. He is the leading privateer. There are just two privateers in Senior X30. The other one being Callum Tanner down in 28th position. Kyan, oh, Kyan Gohill for the Optima Racing team. Well, I was looking at the paddock a, a few minutes ago and Kyan's family have got lots of like posters yep. saying go Kyan, go. And Kyan has gone. Sadly, he's gone back to the pits. Yeah, that's a very unfortunate for Kyan. So uh, hopefully he'll be back out for the final later on today. Seven minutes left of this race, plus one lap. Very, very close still in the first half of this one. Just two tenths of a second as Littlewood now leads the way from Bart Harrison. Marcus Littlewood very much impressing me. Sam Shaw as well on that new chassis. Still looking very quick. It was very quick in the wet conditions. There's a big change in the background Lawrence. there. Yes. Lawrence passing the XL Motorsport cart of Morgan Porter. Yeah. Uh, Morgan Porter and James Lowther in senior Rotax. They've gone over to the XL team sort of as a, a, the, the voice of experience and wisdom to help a lot of XL's sort of younger drivers from the UAE who had visited Kart Masters for the first time. So, Gustavs, where was he at the end of lap number one, DJ? Was he about 19th? Uh, I think something like that. Yeah, he's had a... Uh, fantastic re uh, recovery driver, the same as well, who's had a brilliant start, Rashan Chigarimbo. Yes. He's up into P5 now, 11 positions gained. Back in the cart for the first time in three years, Rashan who races uh, in the Junior Fiesta Championship now, or is it just the Ford Fiesta? I think it's the Junior, the BRSEC Junior Ford Fiesta Championship. Uh, Rashan coming back to Kart Masters with the Fusion Motorsport team, which means we have got Jade Racing, leading Mick Barrett Racing, leading Premium Karting, leading a Privateer, leading Fusion Motorsport, leading the Mark and Dave Litchfield Racing Team. Great variety in Senior X30. And <laughs> I'm going to whisper this because there's still five and a half minutes to go. But if Marcus Littlewood stays where he is, that would make it five winners from five races over the course of the last three days it, it in would be. Senior X30. Impossible to predict this one, ladies and gents. It really, really is. Looking forward to the Grand Prix later on today, but between now and then, we still have five minutes to go of the pre-final to determine our grid for that race. And right now, it is being controlled by Littlewood. Harrison's still there in second from Gregory, who is up 10 positions. Henry Gregory, what a drive so far for him. Yep. I'm sure he loves his favourite corner around here. Uncle Guess what it is? Tyrone's oh, back. Yes, so the indeed. question is, can, can Henry he Gregory do it? Course he can. Right. Excellent. Into hairpin number one. Side by side action. There's Morgan Porter with the pink crash helmet at the back of this group. Now he passes Rashan Chigarimbo in the number 92. Uh, Kalai Atkins closing in on Chigarimbo and Chigarimbo fights back. Ch Rashan was saying, Look, this is really tiring. You know, I've gone to car racing and uh, it's come back to karting. It's really physically tiring. So I'm not sure how I'm going to be fearing with the longer races on Sunday. Well, he's fearing very well indeed. Now, further down the order, Harry Burgoyne Jr. is still only 20th. Uh, Harry Platten still only 21st. Michael Shin, for the big Barrett racing team, the drive from South Korea, is up three places to 19th. Sam Heading has gone missing. Sam Heading dropping down the order. Contenders are falling by the wayside, they really left, are. right, and centre, and it means that you've got. And again, this is again, this is. Don't take this the wrong way, guys. But Henry Gregory, Jack Nettleship, uh, Rashan Chigarimbo, they were not amongst the th three names you would instantly rattle off when you would name your top ten contenders. And yet, here they are in the top ten, with three and a half minutes to go in the pre-final. This, of course, sets the grid for the main event, and you've got. Yeah, well, Dayton Coulthard starting last. Raphael Jesus from Angola uh, is 29th. Adi, Adi de Kulkani struggling this weekend, 24th. But Harry Platton, 20th. Harry Bergoyne Jr., 19th. Louis Johnson, Cool, Harvey Ryby, they've been up at the sharp end all weekend. 
they are all going to be starting outside the top 15 as things stand. And this is what we mean that Cartmasters bites back at oh, you because yes. you can work so hard through all the qualifying heats, but if you have an incident in the pre-final, you're sort of the back for the Grand Prix uh, race it's later on. It honestly, it is just one of those races as down the inside looks uh, Kali Atkins on Harley Keeble for P7. But, but then looking at the, yeah. the flip side of the yeah, coin, yeah, yeah. Kali Atkins retired from his first race when yes. his exhaust fell off. Yes. And now he didn't let it go, he didn't let it get to him. And now he's moving back a bit of contention. It's taken him two days, but he's now running in eighth place after starting 11th. So it could go uh, it can start well and go downhill. Yep. It can start badly. And if you keep plugging away, it's a long event, this. It can go uphill. But the battle is on. We haven't had a privateer win a race yet. We've not. Yet. And Henry no. Gregory is closing in on Marcus Little. Worth the battle for the lead. Very, very close. Jack Nettleship as well. 11 positions gained. Look at that. I love that. Marcus Little with four places gained. He's leading the way. Gregory, second. 11 places gained. Nettleship, third. Also, 11 positions gained. Love it. Absolutely. Now, I mean, well, we look at that, and again, there's still two minutes to go. Senior X30, uh, Henry Gregory's best finish in the heat races was, I'm just going to quickly have a little look there. Uh, Gregory, he finished, he had one top 10 finish in the heats. Jack Nettleship had, well, he had his best result of sixth, did uh Nettleship, or uh, yeah, but he also had a retirement. So, you know, they're, they're getting themselves into the right position just at the right time. Gus Lawrence is a man on a mission. He has caught Sam Shaw, and that now is the fight for fifth position. Gus really wants this. He really, really wants it. It's been the one thing that's eludes him in his career. He won a British title last year. The GP plate, and of course, he drives the Paul Fletcher International Great Karting Team, based here at the circuit, owned and run by circuit owner Paul Fletcher. And it's been a while. I think Oliver Hodgson was the last driver to win a GP plate wearing the red, uh, orange, and black PF International karting colours. Now, more scrapping around. Bart Harrison, erstwhile race leader, really in trouble, and he's having to hold off Gregory and the number one plate of Lawrence with Atkins right behind them. Jack Nettleship has passed the number 77 cart of Henry Gregory and moved to the second position. Mark Sittlewood is three quarters of a second up the road. Yeah, Harrison back up into third now. Gregory, who was running in second place, now under pressure. And here comes Gus Lawrence after that terrible start. Now back up into P4. He is on a charge here. I know, but Harry Platt and Harry Burgoyne Jr., they were involved they, in the same they incident, visited. and they and haven't gained any places. No, no at all. But there could be a reason for that. Are they babysitting those tyres? Is Lawrence uh, looking for a good well, starting position, you do but make cooking those tyres? Stu Stratton, watch there on the bottom left hand of your screen. But you make wash, a, right next to the you, you make a really good point, Anthony, because the, uh, as uh, Burgoyne Jr. and Platt thought, OK, darn it, are yes. words to that effect. Yes. We're not. We're down the order. Um, let's just sit here. We can make up 90 positions in the finals. Yeah. That, yeah. That's obviously their mindset. Exactly. Let's see what can happen, though. Time of strike zero. Last lap board out this time, then, for Jack Nettleship. He's taken the lead of this race. He's got past Marcus Littlewood. When did that happen? Uh, well, uh, uh, while we were looking at and uh, waxing lyrical about Gus Lawrence, Harry Platt, and Harry Bagoy Jr., Jack Nettleship was getting the job done for the MDL of the sport team as they come across the bridge for the final time in this Senior X30 pre-final. How many more places can Gus Lawrence gain? He's passed Gregory. He's now attacking Bart Harrison. The top two in last year's British Championship. The number one, number two. Harrison gets snookered. He gets pushed wide. And he cuts back across in front of Gregory. And now he dives back oh. at the inside. Wow! Well, this is very close, oh. and now there's contact to the... Keep an eye on Atkins, who's trying to get involved. Caden McQueen on a great recovery drive, and Gus Lawrence gets spat out of the field. Gus Lawrence yet to win a GP plate now, gets scuppered all the way down the order, and will not even start anything in the top ten. Nettleship oh. takes checkered from Marcus Littlewood, then it's Henry Gregory, Atkins, McQueen, Harrison, and look at that battle. Three wide across wow. the line. That was Lawrence, Chigarimbo, and Shaw 
No, it was it was sorry, it was Porter, Keeble, yeah. Chigarimbo and Lawrence. They crossed the line separated by two tenths of a second. Oh, Gus Lawrence, half the work he did in that race. Went from first to twentieth, back up to fifth, eventually finishes tenth. Well, yeah. oh, well you, yeah. you cannot write Senior X30 this weekend. Nope. No one has dominated. That is a fifth different race yep. winner over the course of this weekend in Senior X30. Will it be six uh, different race winners during the Grand Prix later on today? The Grand Prix start at 2 o'clock local time here in the UK. If you're watching from around the world, make sure you set your alarm clocks for roughly that time. Uh, on your phones. Nose cone watch coming in, uh, looking good. Uh, well, this could be an interesting one because he. I, I hope the phone has got a lot of battery, put it yeah. that way, because that was. There's Gus Lawrence. Um, oh, he's good. Oh. He's okay. He's all right, but I suspect disappointed though. I, I'd be interested to find out, and we're not going to be able to because we're not doing driver interviews until. Well, well, Chris McCarthy will be when they walk out the grid. What yes, Gus Lawrence's problem was at the start, the engine just briefly bogged down. There's Sam heading. Sam after running so well throughout the day, finishes 15th. There's Harley Keeble, the Sony USA-backed uh, driver. And the premium karting machine goes across the front of the camera. There's Morgan Porter. Um, Rashan Chigarimbo in the black and red race suit there. Let's have a look. <laughs> Gets the balaclava off. Oof, why, he doesn't look too tired. He's only got 15 more minutes. And we've got more carts being wheeled into the paddock. That's the number 23 Mick Barrett racing cart of Korea's Michael Shin. We spoke to Michael and he said, all I want to do is I want to fish ahead of where I started. Well, wish has been granted because he started 22nd and finished 21st. The number 15, Adita Kulkani for Argenti Motorsport and his teammate. Now we saw Alex Duncan have a spin but he recovered and actually managed to gain half a dozen places or more to finish 25th. There is the Optima performance cart of number 65, Harry Ewell. And, uh, you know, the medics there at the left-hand side of your screen, always close at hand, because what the drivers do, if they are in an incident during their race and they tweak a wrist or something, the adrenaline surges through them and they carry on racing. It's only when they stop and go back to uh, the pit lane they realise, ow, something hurts. Ah, Gus Lawrence discussing with Dan Ashton something that's obviously upset him. He uh, obviously... Let's have a listen. Yeah, number seven, yeah, smash me clean off. Number seven, the box is just... Thank you. No, 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 again, this is just an opinion. It's not a fact, that is Gus's opinion. And Morgan Porter will now share his opinion as well. Here we go. Let's have a word from our sponsors. I'm going to take a break. You're going to be joined by new star of our commentary world. Motorsport UK Kart Masters British Kart Grand Prix. It is junior Rotax time and it's race 47, the pre final. Let's take you through the starting lineup then. Ethan Jeff Hall selling this one on pole position. Pulled it in Friday's qualifying. He's got Macaulay Bishop, who side through the field after qualifying last yesterday. He starts on the front row. Archie Clark and Freddie Lloyd, they go from row two from Joshua Graham and Joseph Rippin on row three. Armin Hamilton and Reg Hayward, they go from row four. Joshua Turnbull and Timo Youngling, they ran out the top ten on row five. Harry Hannum and Lizzie Mentier go from row six and ran 
rounding out the top 12 from Harrison Crowther and Gustav Fusikov, the Latvian driver, the number four seed from the British Kart Championships. Liam Hartley and Kenzo Craigie, the Mercedes back driver, starting from row eight with Jack Hobson and Lewis Goff on row nine. Harrison Whitcomb and Oliver Sander going from top 20 on row 10. Blake Tysers and Ewan Charman going from row 11 from jo uh, Joshua Smith and Owen Neve. Tyler Harris and Thomas Ingram Hill round out row 13. Max Cuthbert and Zach Heslop row 14. Deacon Russell and Luke Bate go from row 15 and the top 30. The transfer drivers from the Repercharge, Lloyd Hare, Aris Miauskis on row 16, Augustus Raber, Hugh Moulton, Luke Osmond, Bryce and Finley Buck round out the 36 cart grid. Myself, Anthony Jordan, joined in the commentary box by Sky F1 Juniors presenter, Zach McDonald. Zach, fabulous to have you here at Kart Masters. You are yourself a junior road tax yeah. driver with uh, Jack Dex Racing. Yeah. Uh, Kart Masters, welcome. Look at this. It's brilliant. It's the first time I've ever been at Kart Masters, obviously, and yeah, just come off hungry, hungry F1 juniors. So yeah, yep. it's brilliant. No, absolutely fantastic. Certainly, uh, the new initiative looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, the junior yes. drivers coming in uh, to the F1 paddocks, and certainly, what an experience you've had. Yeah, well, I've had a brilliant experience in Hungary. Got to sit in Lewis Hamilton, the goat's car. It was, it was amazing to be with Lewis there, with Seb before as well. And yeah, to be here, and obviously, here's the junior road tax going off. Yes, indeed. Green flag goes out, and the junior road tax pre-final gets underway, and it's a great start from Ethan Jeff Hall, who sides into the lead of this one, holding off the pretender Macaulay Bishop. Very, very close racing all the way throughout this one. Ethan Jeff Hall and Macaulay Bishop both having two race wins over the course of this weekend. Side-by-side -side action as the two go tooth and nail. Split, a half spin in the background there as they go four wide on the exit. And now down the inside here, that looks like Archie Clark going in for second place for the KR Sport team. He doesn't quite do it. He stays there in third place, but a very close start. PFI here, uh, Zach, very, very yeah. fast circuit. It's very it demanding. Have you done many laps around here as well? I mean, I've not done many laps, but I've done two race weekends here and a test day. So for me, I've obviously not been doing great here because you need so many laps around here to become one of the top drivers here. You see Harry Hanneman, Timo Youngman fighting for... Is it seventh, eighth about, uh, about seventh or eighth, yeah, out on circuit. Very, very close with the uh, the drivers. Out of the uh, final corner, very, very close here. Let's take you through how they line up now. Ethan Jeff Hall leads in from Bishop, from Clark, Lloyd, Cranham. Then it is Rippin. Hamilton there in P17 from Turnbull. Youngling there in ninth place from Harry Harron, who's into the top ten. Uh, everyone jumping up a few. No changes within the top seven, which is quite rare from the junior road taxes. Well, big off for Archie Clark there yeah. as he's passed by Joshua Graham. Yeah, he is oh, indeed. Macaulay Bishop goes down the inside into the first hairpin, but it's just covered off by Ethan Jeff Hall there. Yeah. Macaulay just got fifth place in the last heat, I think, and obviously he's going to try and go for the win. Yeah, yeah, he will indeed. So that is going to be a very, very close one there for these drivers. But Brandy again, Lord. it's still heating up as Macaulay Bishop now down the, the inside. He gets that one now and he takes the lead of this race. Yep, yeah, very, very close between all of them. All of these drivers now fighting for their starting grid for the Grand Prix final. That will determine that one. The mm -hmm. final for this, as you've already seen, it's yep. a very exciting one. Really looking forward to what they're going to do later on. Yeah, we're, well, obviously the final's next. Four o'clock, they've got to wait four hours until so, their yeah. final and see Ethan Jeffall and Macaulay Bishop's the main protagonists for this race. Macaulay Bishop getting fifth last race, managing to just go onto the front row as Ethan Jeffall gets passed by Joshua Graham. Not great for his race. Yeah. So Archie Clark's hanging on to the back of them there. And the he two is indeed JDR spin in the background there spin. as well. And that looks to me like an Argenti cart, I want to say. It's Timo Youngling. No, it is. It's Timo Youngling. It's a DHR cart that's gone oh, round. Jensen Gray, uh, Joshua Graham just gone off there. Armand Hamilton tagging onto the back of that pack. Yeah, very, very close. Now, a lot of these drivers here. Have you uh, have you raced with many of these uh, drivers in your yeah, uh, career? Yeah, I have, actually. PFI um, and Wilton Mill. Yeah. It's two really big club rounds. They're all here all the time. And yeah, I've raced wheel to wheel with a lot of these last season and Minimax as well. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, these drivers are brilliant and obviously I'll try to be here next year. Yeah, exactly that. How much would you prefer to be actually out there right now? Would you prefer I mean, to be racing in this I'd, right now? I'd really prefer to be <laughs> racing, especially in this pre-finals. You see Harry Hannum from JDR. Obviously I'm racing with JDR. And yeah, next year it should be there. But yeah, Ethan Jeffel not quite staying on to the back of Macaulay Bishop. Bishop seems to have a lot of pace, get, getting the fastest lap and see Freddie Lloyd who is currently leading in Junior X30 uh, yes, yeah, yeah. with Ethan Jeffel obviously and Archie Clark in third place jo yeah. jo Joshua Graham 
defending from Armin Tomlinson and Strawberry Racing driver. Yeah, Hamilton there just trying to get it down the inside, not able to get that one done either. Big grids here, nice to see it. 36, the biggest grid that we've seen so far this weekend, of course, for the entirety of the grid. Eight minutes left to go on this one, as again, Gustav Uzakov's getting squeezed out there, mm -hmm. as uh, I think that was Harry Hannum getting the move done there, wasn't it? Yeah, we see Reg Haywood and Harrison Crowther or two team teammates fighting with Lewis Goff slowly down the inside. So it was Liam Hartley who made oh. the move there, the other of the uh, JDR drivers. Uh, Lizzie Mentier also out there as well, currently P17. Uh, this was the one thing I think that a lot of these drivers here were worried about, yeah. is Macaulay Bishop getting to the front and breaking away from the rest of the field because Macaulay Bishop, he won his two first heats uh, in Friday. He qualified last yesterday, Break but he came points. through the field in all of them, finished fifth and fourth in them. So he was very good at getting through the field. Yeah. Now he's at the front of it. Drivers are worried that he's just going to drive away. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, obviously, Macaulay Bishop, one of the top drivers, won the Oakley yep. earlier in the year at Wilton oh. Mill. So, yeah, he's got a really big name around him. And he's just pulling a small gap out from Ethan Jeff Hall. But Jeff Hall on that last lap got the fastest lap, three tenths off. So there's a fight between Harrison Crowther, Reg Haywood, and I think think that is Thomas Ingram Hill. Yes, I think you are right in saying that. Three wide of the exit of hairpin number two. Very, very close between the two oh, of them. It's the two oh, Reggie. Squeezing each other. Oh, 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 oh. They've Goff got to be Kenzo so careful. Craigie now tagging onto the back of it. Yeah, and this is the this is the tricky moment there. It's Kenzo Craigie getting a bit sandwiched mm -hmm. there in the middle of that pack. He's got to be very, very careful. He doesn't get spat out of the pack. Harrison Crowther also just in the back of that one. No, that's Harrison, Harrison Whittacombe. Whittacombe. Yeah, sorry. Liam Hartley there. Yeah. Harrison Whittacombe looking to go down the inside into th turn one and two. Good run from Liam Hartley here, all the way up into... There goes oh, Whittacombe. There goes Whittacombe down the inside. Kenzo Craigie trying to go down the inside of Lewis Goff now. Yeah, he's made the move stick. Yeah. yeah it's a big pack there. They don't want to fight too much, otherwise the front pack will just get away from them, which they already oh, kind it, of have. They yeah. have indeed. Yeah, that's a big gap that they've got already. What is it? I think it's the top six have broken away yeah. from the main field. Joseph Rippin is kind of on his own at a bit of uh, no man's land. Then you've got Uzakovs, Turnbull, Hannum, Ingram Hill battling away. Tom, oh, oh, and Kenzo, oh, Craigie. It's Kenzo oh. Craigie out of the pre-final. He's not out. He's still in it, but a lot of rear-end damage. Yeah. And he rejoins right in oh. front of the Jacks car to the number yeah. 90. All the way down, that's Deacon Russell in P28. Oh, there's been a big... Uh, there was a slight off, I think, into the... Yeah, into the chicane. And Macaulay Bishop being caught by Ethan Jeff Hall, I think. Here. Lizzie Mentia trying to go around the outside of Hugh Moulton there. Hugh Moulton, one of the top six drivers in the Repishard, who've made it up into yes. the pre final. Yeah, exactly. You see Oliver Sander, Lewis Goff, and Max Cuthbert all the way up already. Yeah, exactly that. Tom Ingram Hill is uh, up to beat 10 as well. Uh, 16 positions gained, so he's having an absolutely fantastic run on this one. Five and a half minutes to go. Uh, this is getting exciting. Do you reckon Ethan Jeff Hall might be able to close that gap? It's only two tenths. I think it's I possible. I mean, I do think it's very possible. Only two, two and a, uh, close to two and a half tenths. And yeah, that, that gap's not massive in karting. Once you get in the toe, you start to catch quite rapidly. And McCauley is brilliant, but yeah. Yeah, no, exactly that. Very close. Oh, on the board there, Timo Youngling, five second in race time penalty. Now, that's very interesting. The same has actually gone to Kenzo Craigie. Kenzo Craigie yeah. has also received a five second time penalty. Very interesting. So both of them, were, well, they're going to now struggle in the Grand Prix because they will not have the momentum to, to get of up course. the field. It, was, it will be a real struggle for them. It but will, right, yeah. right now, less than five minutes to go. Who's your money on on this one? Because Bishop, he's looking quick. The gap's saying the same. I don't know. To be honest, my money's on Armand Hamilton. Yeah. Seems to have been able to kind of get rid of Freddie Lloyd, Archie Clark and Josh Graham. Obviously, they're in a pack right now, but he seemed to pass them and get away. So... Yeah, my money's on him for third or second or first place. And obviously in the final, got Macaulay Bishop and Ethan Jeffool, who had a slight um, crash, I think, in the British Kart Champ. So a bit of bad blood between them two, as we see. Ethan Jeffool right on the back of Macaulay Bishop now. Oh, Jeffool yes. going for two. Jeffool and Bishop both going for two. Kart Masters wins. And the same as Freddie Lloyd as well, also going for two in this weekend. Certainly, we just don't know who's going to take it. Very unpredictable are uh, this... Uh, in your Rotax class, but Bishop still leading the way from Jeff Hall. Lloyd, then the battle here. This is... Uh, As I put my money on Armand Hamilton, he straight away gets passed by Freddie Lloyd. I don't think yeah, I've got exactly. great luck. <laughs> there we go. Well, Freddie Lloyd, he's doing his very best here to go for the double as well, so he's certainly going to be working hard. Running with the Evolution team in the Rotax mm -hmm. category, running with Fusion in the X30 category. So again, another driver running in two different teams yeah. in the two different classes. So feeling like he, uh, the e Evolution team have uh, a good backing in the Rotex category. Yeah, 
see Joshua Graham dive down the inside of Armand Hamilton here. Or and Archie Clark trying to capitalise on the exit, but Armand Hamilton just has it cov covered off. Joe Rippin starting to catch up with the MLT motorsport team. It's quite a close battle here. Um, Freddie Lloyd wants to break away, I'm sure, as he wants to try and catch the group ahead of him. Ethan Jeff Hall and Macaulay Bishop. Only two seconds. Not impossible. If he's got the pace, he'll definitely catch up slowly but surely. As you see, F uh, Jeff Hall has already um, dropped off the back of Macaulay Bishop. Half a second it is now, but with the toe, he should be able to get closer by the end of the race. He'll be pushing very hard. It would be very good to see, wouldn't it? Now, unlike the cadet classes that we would see, that where with they would be using the slipstream and pushing yeah. each other along, in the juniors it's a little bit different, isn't it? Well, it is because the carts are bigger, they're heavier, yeah. and you really have to handle it around the corner. And when your bump drafting doesn't really work, as the I, I feel like the effect of the slipstream in a junior car or any junior car, any large car, mm. large size chassis, isn't as helpful as it is in the 950 or 900 cadet chassis yeah. so with the juniors it's all about whether you can break away from the pack and then the pack behind you starts fighting and then obviously you get a larger gap and the ones behind slow down massively i think that's a big point that people at home don't understand is that mm. when carts are fighting they're going about half a second a second as we see archie clark make the move on armand hamilton here joe rippin touched tires small small cloud of smoke come up from there but luckily they didn't go over each other so Archie Clark capitalising on that situation. Yeah, very lucky there. Yeah, obviously, obviously you're probably aware in karting that if your uh, rims touch each other, it's okay, but dramatic. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. a tyre touches another tyre, it's very yeah. easy to ping up into the air, isn't yeah. it? Well, that's happened to me more times than I would have wanted. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, dear. Tyre to tyre isn't great. No. We see Joe Rippin's really caught up to this pack now. And as, you, as, I, saw, as I said, he was way behind at the mm. start. And as they've started to fight, he's closed in on the pack. And we see Thomas Ingram Hill, who's just lost the fastest lap to Archie Clark. Oh, oh Josh Gray. Oh, it's very Oliver close there. trying to go down the inside. The two teammates of Harrison Whittacombe. Yeah, and I think that is uh, Joshua uh, Graham with him there as well. Potentially, I'm not too sure. I'll have to double check that one uh, as they go through. But very, very close still. Uh, uh, you and Charman. Charman, sorry, yeah, you and Charman, there we go, we both got it right at the end there. Um, but yeah, one minute to go in this one, still very close all the way throughout, oh, that's Harrison, Harrison Crowther. Crowther, yeah, he's still battling away there for, what position are they in? They are in a little further down the order, about P11, he's got Harry Hannum just behind. Now Harry has, uh, I think at the moment, got the best overtake of the weekend so far. Will you watch that one? That under breaking brakes really worse, didn't they? They did indeed. They were yeah. It was a switch move, wasn't it? It was. It was. He faked them to the outside, and then he got two positions down the inside. It was a brilliant move. Yeah. Harry Hannum coming over from Dubai, I think. Uh, yes, I uh, believe you are correct in saying that. So, yeah, very, very uh, good little racing from them. Mm. Ethan Jeff Hall now with the fastest lap of the yeah. race on that last lap. Only fractionally. Yeah, yeah, 200. Not, it's not, not enough. Make a massive difference. No, it's not. But certainly every little helps. Um, there we go as he tries to close in on so that battle. Joshua Graham and Freddie Lloyd there. Freddie yeah. Lloyd already caught up to the back of Joshua Graham. Them two need to work together to get up to Jeff Hall and Magali Bishop. But with only two laps now. Bishop going on to the second penultimate lap and yeah I don't think it's really going to happen for them two two and a half seconds behind as Macaulay Bishop retakes the fastest lap of the race then taken away by Joe Rippin yeah so uh, number 52 Hugh Moulton there running wide out on circuit dropping positions big shame for him though as this battle still continues here as Freddie Lloyd trying to get the moves done Archie Clark closing in in P Five now, very, very close between this one. This is the battle for third. And the driver who will be starting behind pole position going into the Grand Prix. That's a very uh, crucial point there oh, as Lloyd, Lloyd really wants it. Yeah, doesn't yeah. he? It's not not a great oh, move on the outside. See, Clark Archie Clark through. and Joe Rippin maximises from that situation as they all three of them are fighting. Uh, Josh Fielgrain went wide. Archie Clark pushed down the inside. Joe Rippin just slipped through. And now we see Freddie Lloyd's all the way at the back of the pack when he was already at the front of the pack. So that's how quickly it can change in Junior Max especially. Oh, 100%. Yes, you are right in saying it. It's so unpredictable, isn't it, the Junior categories? And uh, Junior Rotax, fabulous shot there, showing the speed going through the final chicane there, back onto the start-finish straight. Final lap board then is out. Bishop leads from Ethan Jeff Hall. The gap now eight-tenths of a second between the two of them. They have not closed in, but the eyes are on this battle here for third place. Who is going to be starting behind pole positions? Macaulay Bishop for the Grand Prix final later on today. Let's find out as they exit out of the bridge, down in towards hairpin number one. Defensive goes 
goes ripping. Clark follows him as well. Watch Armin Hamilton on the outside rows. He tries to get the switch oh, back on both of them. And that's a beautiful little on overtake. The outside. Oh, he's just, he's kept it on the inside. He's managed to get enough overspeed, but you see Archie Clark pushes straight back down the inside. Joe Rippin just going to the middle of the track, trying to defend both sides. You see Armand Hamilton tries to swing it wide. He's probably going to get the, yeah, he's got down the inside, but Joe Rippin really covering it off aggressively. And you see Archie Clark, Joshua Graham, and Freddie Lloyd still in this battle, but as they come on to the last corner, I think it's going to be Joe Rippin that holds it. And it's Macaulay Bishop that takes the win from Ethan Jeff Hall. It's going to be Joe Rippin next. And from Am Armand Hamilton and say, oh, really close to the line. Armand Hamilton, Armand Hamilton, Archie Clark, Joshua Graham, then Freddie Lloyd, Josh Turnbull. And we see Reg Hayward just clinches it from Ewan Charman over the line. Very, very close final or pre-final on that one. Well, there you go. Macaulay Bishop taking the win in that one from Ethan Jeff Hall. Joseph Rippin rounding out the top three. And Armand Hamilton finishing as well on the second row for the Grand Prix. Remember, folks, that is a provisional order that you see there on your screen. They will come into the Parc Ferme area. They get weighed. They get their nose cone checked. And, of course, they will head to scrutineering to make sure all is well. And they will determine the grid for the... Uh, Grand Prix final later on today. A uh, lot of penalties in that one. Was, I think we yeah. saw Kenzo Craigie and Timo Jungling getting the brunt of it. They yeah. both got 10 seconds yeah. out there and on track. And they both track. got um, pushed off at the start, yes. luckily for them. That's not going to help them in the final, obviously, as when you drop back, it's really hard to make it up, especially in Junior Rotax when it can switch super quickly. But there has been instances before where people have come right from the back to the top. We see Archie Clark, no nose going for him. Yeah. He's all good. Yeah, absolutely fabulous run there. Well, certainly exciting uh, little race there. Yeah. Looking forward to the Grand Prix. Zach, thank you so much for thank joining you. us into the commentary box for this uh, pre-final. Uh, but certainly here, you're uh, doing fabulous work with the, uh, the Sky F1 thank Juniors. You. you know, great to see you out there in Hungary. Brilliant experience for yourself. I think I saw a video of you actually getting a, a lucky little seat in yeah, Lewis's I car did. as well. That was absolutely fantastic. So, uh, Zach, all the best for you. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. I will, definitely. Thank you so much for coming down. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your uh, career in commentary. Me and Henry are going to have to watch out, I think. Mm, but, uh, yeah, mate, Zach, awesome. thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Cheers. Thank you very much. We are going to take a short ad break in a few moments' time. Stay with us as there is more racing left to go. The Senior Rotax Race 48 pre final is the next uh, pre final that is going to take to the circuit. So stay tuned for that one. Remember, folks, that the finals are going to be starting at two o'clock local time here. We have got the Senior Rotax and the Junior X30 pre finals left to go before the lunch break and before we start the Super Heats. Very much looking forward to it. We're going to take an ad break. We're going to be back in about a minute's time. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, race number 48, Senior Rotax, the pre-final. Kai Hunter and Matthew Higgins go for row number one. Lewis Gilbert and James Lowther start on row number two. Lucas Ellingham and Gus Lawrence go from row number three. Kai Cunnington and Teddy Pritchard-Williams are on row four. Tom Adams and Jamie Perilli round out your top ten. Ahead of Josh Price and Morgan Porter. 
Ben Folland and Austin Lee are on row seven. Jack Lilly and Miles Barthorpe on row eight. Tristan Rennie and Pearson Bullock Carter are next. The top 20 rounded out by George Donald and Jude Fernihau. Bradley Barrett and James Lingard go from row 11 ahead of Kai Rillarts and Neil Clark. Leo Brown, Will Ellsworth, George Holbrook, Harry Linden, Leon Henderson and Lachlan Robinson from Australia on row number 15. Ollie Goodyear, Jack Stedman, Oakley Pryor, Sam Light, Sam Longley and Enzo Dickenberg are the final six qualifiers because after the repechage, unfortunately, sixth place finisher Omar Ghanoum was excluded. And that means that a very happy Dutchman is at the back of the grid. Enzo's odyssey to the UK will end in the British Grand Prix. Can I say, Anthony Jordan, what an impressive young man that Zach is. I can hear Dan Parker from Motorsport UK <laughs> rushing up the stairs, <laughs> clutching my P45 <laughs> in hand. Great future in this sport as that young man. What a wonderful opportunity, and he did very, very well indeed. It's really a young is. man's game now. I'm, I'm you know, going to shuffle off into retirement before too long. Getting old. Well, I'm nearly in my 30s as well, so don't reel me out. Here we go. Green flag goes down. Great start then from Freddie Lloyd. He's had a perfect run so far this uh, week. Oh, a nearly perfect run this far. He's uh, qualified fifth in the <coughs> qualifying on Friday. Three race wins. Uh, certainly a very good one. No, I'm looking at the next rid. I'm sorry. I'm looking Freddy, at the wrong Freddy. grid. Freddy! <laughs> <laughs> Hunter leads the way. My oh. P45. Oh, we're oh, going to crash under the bridge. Uh, I was going to say my P45. <laughs> uh, my your P the P45 is uh, in the I say Freddie Lloyd's grown in the last time. It's now there are carts, three carts under the bridge. Marshall's running to the sea. No, the drivers are all out of the cart. I can see one uh, driver. Of course, yellow uh, flag. Oh, so... You have, oh my word, that is a Dan Holland cart that has taken a heck of a lump. Now, okay. we've got Tristan Rennie. Rennie from Scotland, James Lingard. Oh, the leading privateer, James Lingard, that and Harry Linden. That's the Well, DHR. that's the second chassis that Harry Linden, well, I mean, I didn't see what happened. He didn't see he caused it, but I mean, he was in that accident. That privateer. is also, and Ollie Goodyear. Yeah. Yeah. So the two privateers, oh my word. So, uh, Jen Wade watching from Austria. So, Battenberg flag. The first time we've seen this all weekend. Uh, hi, Jen. Uh, David Anderson supporting Lewis Gilbert, his uncle and auntie in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Christian Ingolstadt says, who went straight to the pits? That Look, looks like it was Lucas Ellingham went straight into the pits. Oh, no. Oh, starting fifth, Lucas Ellingham had done so well. And it's the mice getting into the machinery once again. Mm. Um, Kira Harris, we need some Uncle Tyrone talk. We do. Well, we have. We, we have of course we have. Of course we have. Of course we have. There you go, sorted. And a rally driving course. Hey, it's our own. Of course I have. Right. Uh, ah, Astrid. That's Enzo Tickenberg's mum supporting Enzo. Well, from squeaking into the back of the ring, Enzo is up to 26. He's gained 10 places. Right. Ollie Goodyear in the pits out of the race. Uh, Harry Linden, James Lingard, Tristan Rennie, all with very badly damaged wagons, but they're all okay uh, out of the race. Lucas Ellingham out of the race. Will Ellswood having a few difficulties with his number 19 craft motorsport cart. It's Kai Hunter, Lewis Gilbert, Guy Cunnington. There is Harry Linden, the driver from Dennis Powis, strutting away, looking not too impressed. He's actually going back to the... Uh, medical van there so he's might have tweaked a wrist or something like that so hunter gilbert cunnington lowther higgins lawrence pritchard williams adams price and porter your top 10 back underway with nine minutes and 18 seconds plus a lap to go and josh price makes a couple of early moves yeah nice start there on the restart nine minutes to go in this and again everyone through the bridge nice and cleanly now as they make their way down off the bridge in towards hairpin number one keep an eye there guy cunnington there onto the inside looking very very quick the number three seed with a fabulous start to his race he's right on that rear bumper to kai hunter keep a close eye on that one Kai Hunter actually now I think is down into third place. Is Lewis Gilbert through? He yes. is indeed. Uh, and it's so Guy, is Guy Cunnington. Cunnington. Wow, look at that. So the 2021 GP plate holder. Oh, there's some door handling. Super Ted having to uh, keep. That is Tom Adams at bay. Uh, oh, oh, and there goes Super Ted. Airborne. He takes flight. 
comes back onto the track behind Jack Lilly, and now it's getting a little bit physical. Oh. And exit stage left, number 24, Miles Barthorpe. Yeah, and Miles was very lucky there not to get caught by the uh, the barriers there right on the exit of the Mike Wilson complex. They are very close to the track, nope. so he got away very lucky. Uh, uh, while, while you were commentating on the last race, yes. I went to watch that last race from the grandstand. Yes. And it, you forget that during a race, because of course, we are always up in the air, yeah. uh, somewhere, you know, high above. When you're down at ground level, the juniors, it was terrifying. Watching them go through turn number one there, two, three wide, they were battling all the way through that race. Mm. At ground level, you can see why some mums get very, very nervous. Oh, very understandably indeed. Less than eight minutes to go in this one, and Kai Hunter under pressure here from behind... Have um, you answered Porter. you and Llewellyn? Uh, have I? So when's Junior X30 is next? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Junior X30 is next. It was the grid that I tried to call out while we started <laughs> this race. Uh, there we go. But um, uh, The top three have broken clear, and the top three do not contain Kai Hunter. Now, Dan Holland Racing have won every single heat race. There's been six heat races. Uh, Kai has won four. Matthew Higgins has won two. Matthew Higgins has also taken both pole positions on Friday and Saturday. But now it's Guy Cunnington racing Kraft Motorsport leading the charge. Cunnington and the Diamond of Darai, Lewis Gilbert, uh, make that. Uh, it's now England leading Wales, leading Scotland. There's a joke in there somewhere. An Englishman, a Scotsman and a Welshman walked into a bar and said, who's holding the GP plate? And they all went to grab it. That's later on this afternoon. And that is allowing Kai Hunter, he representing the... People's Republic of Time and Weir. There you go. He's uh, fourth, and he's got his he's got his fellow Time oh and Weir. Oh dear! Driver. What was that there? Uh, uh, yellow James flags. Now they're behind him. That was two carts going off, coming out of the Terry Fullerton S's. One of which is still embedded in the barriers. Yeah. And driver trying to get the cart back onto the circuit realizes wagon. I think uh, wagon Ben is Bolland. Uh, it's uh, Miles. Uh, oh, sorry, it's, it's a Jack's motorsport car. It's number thirty-three. Leo Brown out of the race. Will Ellswood has also retired. Once again, there's going to be an awful lot of drivers. As in Senior X30, there are, there's going to be a whole heap of strong contenders starting at the back. And now we have got two, four, six carts battling for the race lead. James Lowther at the back of this group. He's also from County Durham. And he is closing in in the number eight cart. So, Cunnington leads Higgins. No, he doesn't. Higgins makes a lunge. Oh, that's the type of place that you only make a lunge in the final. But to Higgins, that may be just uh, taking some notes for later on. Matthew Higgins, and it's suddenly normal service has been resumed. Dan Holland, 1-2. Yep, exactly that. And these two now, will they work together and break away from the rest of the yes. field? Yes, you think? Oh, I personally think not. Well, Henry, this is Cartmasters. It's five minutes to go, though. There is five minutes to go. And Hunter and Higgins are very experienced. They are. I don't think you're going to see... Uh, well, ah, uh, Kai's second. Kai normally yes. likes to lead. Yes. Kai's a leader, not a follower. Yeah, exactly. In, in well, terms uh, of... so, so far, he's not gone for the move yet. No. No, this is good stuff. Gilbert's still there in third place. It's all fine. Action a little further down. This is at hairpin one, though. This is, uh, who do we say this is? Uh, I think Leon Henderson, I think, Neil Clark, Bradley Barrett's in that uh, group, battling away. Uh, that is all the way down to P16. Leon Henderson on a good charge. Update for Astrid supporting Enzo Dickenberg. Right, Enzo is in P25. He's gained 11 positions. Granted, 10 of them are crashes. One is an official overtake, so he's overtaken one person. Whoop, whoop. Excellent. That was a Dutch whoop, whoop, with a yesh at the end of it. Uh, Lachlan Robinson, oh, has just brought the number 28, the, the number 26 KR Sport cart into pit lane. I have to say a massive thank you to uh, David and Tracy Robinson for supplying the commentary box with many, many, many Australian goodies, including Tim Towns. I've got to say, I'm a fan of Tim Towns. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, for those of you uh, uninitiated, the Tim Tam is a far superior version of a penguin bar. Mm. The, the p -p -p pick up a penguin can p -p -p penguin off. Other chocolate bars are available, obviously. Uh, we are not sponsored by anything in this commentary box other than the brew. And we've got the battle for the race lead. Lawrence has joined the party. Well, actually, it was the battle of the race lead. The top two. There we go. Anthony? Yep. Um, will you stand to be corrected? 
because Matthew Higgins and Kai Hunter have worked together perfectly and they have pulled away. There well, is still three minutes left of this race. I do not stand corrected. New third place driver, Gus Lawrence. Yes, Gus has had a good run in the Rotax category. Not the class he would usually race in and, for, uh, and yeah. that he's familiar with. <laughs> Way more familiar with the X30 category. But yes, he's, well, he's the defending and reigning British champion. Uh, how, however... However, mm -hmm. uh, Pearson Bullock Carter has just pulled into the pits to retire as well. So oh, we're down to that. 27 runners. Blimey. Um, you saw at the end of the X30 race, Gus Lawrence was in somewhat of an animated mood. He, was, uh, he felt as though he'd been done wrong. Uh, and so to, to steal a phrase from you yesterday, Anthony, I believe that Gus Lawrence has his dander up. I think he does. I think he seriously wants to go on to that one. Uh, but uh, yes, two and a half minutes to go. Oh, there is your man, Pearson Bullock Carter for the Jacks Motorsport team. Hands on hips, kicking the tyre, going, what happened there? Oh, Michael Burke's woken up in Bathurst, Australia. Tim Tams are awesome. Yes, they are, Michael. It must be must be blinking late for you. Yeah, but why would you want to go to bed? You've got this wonderful racing to watch. Exactly. The best racing of the year. There's Teddy Pritchard-Williams. Now, we said yesterday, Teddy had a really good Friday and Saturday at Cartmasters 2022, and it all went wrong on Sunday. Mm. Uh, we just said, look, he's had a really good Friday and Saturday again this year. Hopefully, it can all carry on going well on Sunday. At one point, it looked as if it was going south. But Teddy has salvaged it, and is currently running in ninth just in front of the youngest driver in the senior Rotax field, Austin Lee. Portland-born, Germany-based, English racing this year. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, there we go. Jensen Mama, slow down Kai, please. Uh, I don't think he's going to slow down at all if he wants well, to go for this win. He's well, pushing Higgins, though. He's pushing Higgins. Yes, he is. Uh, it's not... Well... They're going to be thinking of tyres, but, you know, this is where it will come down to a battle between the two teammates. Mm. Because who wants to start on the outside of the front row? No one. No one. Well, I mean, uh, there's, there's 10 drivers whose carts are in bits in the pit lane who would it's gladly certainly take certainly, it. Yeah. It's gla but, yeah, if you're, if you're battling for the race lead, it's not the fact that you, it's not the fact that you are upset about not winning the race. You're more upset about the fact that the run to the first corner in the main event is now a lot trickier and fraught with potential danger, as we saw earlier on. Yes, indeed. Less than a minute to go then, folks, plus one lap. There it is on your screens as they cross the line. Higgins, Hunter, Lawrence, Lowther, Cunnington, Porter, Gilbert, Perilli, Pratchard, Williams, and Austin Lee round out the top 10. And that's separated by less than five seconds, crucially. So any nose cones in that top ten. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, if, dear. If, you're if you're Matthew Higgins and you do a nose cone, you drop out of the top ten. Further back, Kai Rillarts up... Oh, George Holbrook up 15 places to 12th. Kai Rillarts up nine places to 14th. Leon Henderson. Now, Leon uh, four went to a family holiday to Turkey. His parents are in Turkey watching. Uh, Leon has gained 13 places to P16. Jack Steadman is up from the repercharge in to 19th position. Uh, Sam Longley up in the 21st. Oakley Pryor up in the 22nd. And so all, I'm just having a look there. Apart from Ollie Goodyear, who went out on the rolling lap, the other five qualifiers from the Repercharge have all gained at least 10 positions in this race. Now, final lap. This is where Kai Hunter starts to work. Matthew Higgins over as he comes over the bridge down through turn number four Kai will launch an assault. Uh, he shall he yes. shall, he shall, he, he has to he has to. I'd teammate, be amazed if he doesn't. Teammate or no oh no no it's, not, it's, it's, it's a given it's an absolute given. Kai Hunter is there. Matthew Higgins will have to start defending he will have to start defending well, Matthew he, he's not defending Matthew Henry. He's not defending. I don't Ooh. think he's going to go for it. I think they're going to start on the front row one, two like this. I stand to be corrected, corrected. sir. Oh, my word. That's about three three times at least Anthony's been right and I've been wrong. Hashtag Anthony was right. Matthew Higgins starts on pole for the Grand Prix later on today for Senior Otax. Kai Hunter, his teammate, the defending GP plate, will start alongside him. Gus Lawrence in the charge for his first 
GP plate starts behind and there Matthew goes Higgins. Enzo Dickenberg. Oh, that's Bradley Barrett. No, wait for it. There's Enzo Dickenberg crossing the line now in 26. P26. Sam Light dropped out as well. So Matthew Higgins takes the win. That moves him on to three wins for the weekend. Two pole positions and three wins. Not bad going. Kai Hunter, Gus Lawrence. Well, wouldn't it be ironic if Gus Lawrence wins his first GP plate in a class that he hardly ever races in, as opposed to the class he has spent virtually his whole adult career in? James Lowther, impressive at XL Motorsport. Well done, Dan Hart and the boys at XL. He finishes fourth. Morgan Porter finishes in sixth position. Perilli Gilbert. Lewis Gilbert dropped back quite a bit at the end. Teddy Pritchard, William and Austin Lee rounding out the list of finishes now. Nose go check. There goes Gus Lawrence. He's fine. Uh, so is James Lowther. So is Guy Cunnington. So the main players now, now are... Ah, that Lando Norris chassis will never turn another wheel in anger. It is... That is a heavy, heavy impact. And uh, we, so we saw Harry Linden sort of walking to the uh, medical car. Mm. And you look at the fact that that uh, chassis is bent like a banana. Uh, Neil Clark going through your screen. There's Jack Steadman. Uh, this is nose cone watch. It's like spring watch with Bill Oddie, only it's with go karts. Oh, and there's the number 52 cart of Enzo Dickenberg walking it. Ah, why is he walking back to the pit lane ah. with his car? He did finish the race. Um, that was a photo that was just taken of a nose cone there it for was. a Sodi. It was Bradley Barrett's nose cone. Was. Oh, uh, uh, that's uh, definitely a nose now, cone. You see the brackets. Now, see, when we talk about the bracket dropping. It's designed so that the nose cone doesn't fall off. Enzo. Here's Enzo. Uh oh. Uh -oh. That's well, the nose cone. Well, Astrid, it shows he's trying, bless him. There's James Lingard uh, in the number 36. Car. That uh, car doesn't look particularly straight either. No, and I'm just looking at when the grid closes for the Senior Otax uh, Grand Prix. 458. They have it's only got three hours. Yeah. Three and a bit, three and a bit hours. Um, to try and and close uh, James that, yeah. Lingard is a privateer as well, so that's doubly uh, disappointing for him. So we have got one pre-final to go, ladies and gentlemen. Race number 49 will be for Junior X30. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will be into the main events themselves. The prediction competition, I've got all your entries there. We'll keep you, those 35 of you mm. who have entered the prediction competition, we'll keep you up to speed how you are all doing as the afternoon progresses. Anthony, um, as usual, the racing has ranged from the sublime, not the ridiculous yet, but you can see that there's lots, lots of penalties being dished out in race penalties. Yes. The officials here, they know that the the excitement and the tension only gets ramped up and up and up and up and up, and they're trying to sort of sp like, you know, clamp down on it. Yes. So that we have a really spectacularly good afternoon of racing mm. but one pre-final to go yep i think we're going to hear from some of our sponsors before then see you in a minute
Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen, it's the last of the pre-finals. It's Junior X30, the one you've been waiting for. Race 49 of the weekend. Let's take you through the starting lineup. Freddie Lloyd starting this one on pole position. He qualified fifth on Friday. Three race wins at a second. He's looking good to take the win in this one. Macaulay Bishop starting alongside. He pulled it in qualifying on Friday. Ethan Jeff Wall and Harrison Mackey, they go from row two. Tenth and ninth in qualifying on Friday for them. Both of them, or oh, one of them, having a race win. Fred Green and Aston Sharp, they go from row three. Noel Wolf and Kean Garrity, they round out row number four. Cathal Clark and Henry Jostin, they round out the top ten on row five with Kenzo Craigie and Joey Brown going from row six. Taylor Orridge and Harry Bartle, they round out row seven. Eden Spanswick and David McIntyre, they go up from row eight. The American, Jack Eilif, joining us in the paddock. He's got Jensen Graham starting alongside him on row number nine. Zach Green and Harry Hannum rounding out the top 20 on row 10. Lewis Bird and Lewis Isling go from row 11 from Riley Cranham and Monde Junior Canini going from row 12. Hopefully his lead is fully attached to his wagon. Scott Riley and Joseph Smith start from the 13th row. Jack Moat and Tristan Powell go from row 14. You know, Palmer and Emmanuel Hay round out the top 30 on row 15. More from Morgan Moore, Sakar, Al Mashwari, Charlie Morrison-Jones, Rocco Shenton, Mayan Patel, and George Nassar. All six of them through from the rep charge. What can they do from the back of the grid? Sean Arnold, stand by. We'll get this race underway. Dave, Helen Arnold, I hope you're listening. You're about to be convinced to let your son come back into the game next year. Meanwhile, I missed that comment in the midst of all that excitement. Uh, Got Leanne Stokes watching Taylor Orridge, her son, track side. Taylor starting 13th. So the last of the pre-finals comes to the line. Lights are out. We're up and racing side by side. Lloyd and Bishop through turn number one. Lloyd starts in to lead. Bishop cuts in behind to take second position. Ethan Jeff Hall goes into third position. Now, a uh, great battle between Lloyd. It's incredible. Oh, oh, and uh, oh, uh, Bondi Jr. Canini uh, damaging his nose cone. Incredible. Two different classes, X30 and Rotax, and the same three drivers are dominating both classes. Macaulay Bishop, Ethan Jeff Hall. Oh, oh, no! Oh, and that's Bishop. Oh, he's right in the middle of the track. Everyone's oh. going to take evasive action. Oh, that is a scary shot. Oh, right. And he's looking there. What happened there? Now, did... Is, is the cart not coming back up to speed? Um, do we have a replay of that? Uh, we'll see about that. But uh, that, oh. Every year, drivers try and do the double. Only Noah Wolf and Ben Barnacote have ever done two Kart Masters titles in one day. 17 drivers, including McCauley Bishop, are trying to do it this year. And I've got to say, I think Bishop's chances of a double win have just disappeared. I mean, I will say that though, he came from 35th, he came from 35th to 5th in a heat race yesterday. That was 10 minutes. The final's 15 minutes. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. We'll wait to see that one later on. But uh, here we go then. Ten and a half minutes to go in this race. Aston Sharp up good positions now. He's up in 2P5. He's battling away with Fred Green. Fred Green also uh, looking very quick here. And Fred Green's been looking quick all the way throughout this weekend, he has. hasn't he? He qualified yep. it third on Friday. Yep. Qualified it on pole on Saturday. Two fifths, a second, his best result, and a sixth. This yes, because uh, so the, the uh, six heat wins. Uh, three have gone to Freddie Lloyd. Two have gone to McCauley Bishop. One's gone to Ethan Jeff Hall, who leads this race in the number 97 Strawberry Racing Tony Kart with number 21 Harrison Mackey. Nanny June, are you watching? Because your grandson's just taken the lead of this race. Kart 21, Harrison Mackey with his teammate Freddie Lloyd slotting into second place. This is going to be exciting all the way to the end, so make sure you stay seated. Fred Green into third place, but now Ethan Jeff Hall back down the inside, retaking third place. He wants this win. Remember, folks, he wants to start on pole. He needs that GP plate. Uh, Typhoon Racing saying good luck to Jack M. That would be Jack Mowat, I would believe, yes. And Jack Mowat is, let's have a look, 25th. Two places gained. Uh, so we're looking there, there's, you just can't take your eyes off. There's Taylor Orridge. In the number 66 crop promotions cart, Taylor has made his way up to ninth position ahead of Joey Browns and Cahol Clark. Sakir Almashirji is up 11 oh. positions into P21. 
Uh, I say that, it now P23. No, but uh, Still. You know, the, the Kuwaiti driver has taken... To, I mean, and this is no disrespect to the racing in Kuwait. I've been over in the Middle East commentating yeah, on it. Cup, uh, yeah, it yeah. is getting better. It is getting better. It is nowhere near this level yet. And yet, uh, Saka al has turned up here and it's, he's taken to the really ultra aggressive style of British racing like a duck to water oh. and that's green up over the front of the Mick Barrett racing car of Aston Sharp and the snarling pack devours them. It does indeed. It gets in front of Harry Bartle. Bartle not able to get in front. There's Mondo Junior Canini, which I'm going to say is most definitely probably got well, a that nose was done, That was on the first that lap was, going uh, into uh, turn yeah. number four. Yeah, yeah, uh, out of the bridge. Harrison Mackey, he has it. Oh, well, Harrison will be the first driver not named uh, Macaulay Bishop, Ethan Jeff Hall or Freddie Lloyd to win uh, a race. There's still a long way to go, though. Let's not count any eggs before they hatch. And what a show Harrison Mackey is giving for Nanny June, who's yep. watching. Good to see. Uh, Clear well at home. Oh, yeah. Everyone racing. Running, uh, oh, she's loving the racing. Absolutely loving it. Loving it. There's glasses of gin being launched all over the living room right now. I can, I oh, can look see it. I dense see inside. It. Yeah, that there was one. a big, big... That, oh, no, the, that's another oh, car. A couple. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, oh and that a is a Sam Pollock racing driver. Okay, we saw, we just caught that. Um, that was Scott Riley and Joseph Smith. So it wasn't a Sam Pollock, it was an Audrey Henry racing driver hobbling away. Uh, uh, so you can, again, for uh, Scott's family, I know his brother Alex is racing here, but if his family back in Ireland, he's hobbling away. Uh, he's probably tweaked his ankle uh, in some respect, but uh, yes, so please don't worry. There is the very second-hand looking CRG, and uh, I, think, I think Scott is just catching his breath. He's kneeling up, probably thinking, oh, okay, that's a bit of a shock, but um, everything's still attached. Yeah. And now I'll gather my com re gather my composure. Now, a little bit of a uh, hand gesturing there between the MDL motorsport cart of Eden Spanswick and... I can't quite see who that other driver was. Oh, no, it was, that was Kean Garrity, sorry. And uh, Noel Wolf, I believe. It was a fusion driver and an MDL driver. Six minutes to go. Long way. The gaps. Mackey leads by three tenths of a second over Lloyd. Then it's Jeff Hall, a further eight tenths of a second back. Then you've got a one and a half second gap back to Kenzo Craigie in a fine fourth position. Taylor Orridge is next, followed by Kean Garrity, Zach Green, Noel Wolf, Cahill Clark, Fred Green, Henry Jocelyn, Joey Brown, Lewis Islin, Lewis Bird, and Mondi Junior Canini. The top 15 separated by just seven seconds. That is absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Less than six minutes to go as again. Uh, Fred Green just diving it down the inside there yeah. of Cahill Clark. Uh, uh. Ah, it's Cajal. Cajal. Sorry. Yes. Cajal, I, I, during my one race vacation in the grandstand, I was standing next to Cajal, and his dad oh. kindly pointed out that uh, it's Cajal, not Castle, that he is silence. Okay, Cajal Clark. That was Lewis Isling oh. getting punched out of the field. Well, almost getting punched into the field, but he managed yeah. to save it in the number 12 uh. Uh, Jade Racing Team cart. Oh, here we go. I've just seen that Fred Green now is under investigation. Not sure what for, but he's going to have to keep an eye on that one. So question mark over Fred Green. One driver who was looking very promising going into this weekend. Uh, Macaulay Bishop has got back up to 23rd place. So uh, make that 21st. Five minutes to go. There is Bishop right on cue. Great work, cameraman. And look at, oh, the good news from McCauley. Oh, there's another car off. Oh, and that is the uh, driver up and out of the cart. Uh, now, have a look there. So McCauley Bishop up the 21st. The good news is Cal oh. Clark in ninth is the, at the head of a huge train, which includes Bishop. Top 10 finish. Oh, what a spin! Ago. Oh, my word. Oh, one fusion driver into another. That was and that's the number Monday 11. That was Carl Clark. Oh, three of them. Yeah, Monday Junior Canini off as well. And the 11 also so off. That's Joey Brown. Joey Brown got hit into the air, spun backwards, and then clipped his teammate, which was... Monday Junior Canini. Johnny, and, and the third was the number 111 cart of Carl Clark. Clark. Yeah. Well, is that three fusions? That was three fusion teammates... Again, all they didn't crash into each other. Uh, 
The one cart rolls into the other cart, which tip the other cart into a spin. They're all back in the race. Or, oh, oh no, Mondi Junior Kennedy has retired, as has yeah. the number 16 Mick Barrett racing cart of Joseph Smith. I, I'm not surprised for Mondi Junior Kennedy. He's had an absolutely disastrous uh, pre final. Oh, yes. uh, it's just not been the one for him. Uh, George Nassar, who squeaked in to the uh, pre final last on the grid, he's up to 30th position. Saka Al Mashirji is up into 18th place. Q8. You could have a top 20 start for the Grand Prix. If you uh, continue the way you are going, there's Harry the Lion uh, going through, and there's Lewis Isley. Oh, oh what a move there! That was uh, Morgan, Morgan Moore. Moore who won the repercharge and that instant quick change of direction. That's what we mean, ladies and gentlemen, when we say drivers have to make split second decisions that could make or break their race. Mm -hmm. And that split second decision gave Morgan Moore a, another position as he tries to work his way back into contention. Exactly that. Uh, Rocco Shenton also now up into the top 20. 14 positions gained. Mine Patel from the Repercharge as well. Up to P22. So they're making some good progress here, aren't they, from the, uh, the old Repercharge? They are indeed. Uh, into turn, into the first hairpin. There's Morgan Moore in that uh, turquoise, mainly turquoise liveried premium karting entry. Now we move up oh. further the order, and there's, there's been a change. Second. I think Freddie Lloyd has muscled his way past Ethan Jeff Hall. And is that uh, this? Well, Freddie Lloyd's been second for a while. He's been caught up by Taylor Orridge and Ethan Jeff Hall. Yeah, but do, do you know what? I think McCauley Bishop has just cracked the top 12. He's running ahead of Harry Hannum and Henry Jocelyn. So, well, I spoke too soon again because I said that McCauley Bishop's chances of winning two GP plates in the day were over when he dropped back to 36th position. Au contraire, Bishop is still in this one. Um, I have to say, you know, again, people comment about driving standards. Look, look, this is a very, very intensely competitive event. It has always been the closest, most aggressive weekend of British karting. However, you know, drivers are getting penalised in every single race. So they know that contact and uh, issues of that aren't tolerated. They, the red mist comes down like it does with all racing drivers, and, but they, and they, they are getting penalised. This morning, I went onto the motorsport-timing.co.uk website, checked the results. 198. 198 stewards' decisions were made over the course of the first two days. Now, that could be gaining a, a position through an unfair advantage. That could be a nose cone penalty. That could be underweight. It could be bad sportsmanship. It could be anything like that. But 198 penalties have been dished out. And that was the start of today's two stretch watch. Much. So, yeah, it's not called Crash Masters. It's called Car Masters. Um, and the racing is superb occasionally occasionally anthony it gets a little bit overboard as it does in any championship yeah freddie lloyd now under pressure from ethan jeff hall taylor orridge has got past and is on the charge towards mackie the gap only half a second between those two and taylor orridge has the fastest lap of the race well. which is some four tenths faster than harrison mackie the mad croc is on a charge he is he is he's swishing his tail and licking his chops and harrison mackie is on the menu has to be said. And there is the number... Let's have a look, look what we've got here. So, so Oliver Cotton's currently in China at the moment, and uh, his mum's not very happy at the moment because he's got cart masters on the dinner table. Ooh! Uh, hey. And he's still watching it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Taylor Orridge. The clock strikes zero. He's four tenths of a second back. Uh, Bishop must have some shenanigans. No, not at all. You should have seen him yesterday. Very good, yes. And we'll keep the comments respectful. We are in line with racing with respect. Motorsport UK and Trent Valley Car Club are moderating this. And if we sort of teeter on the brink, the brink of not positive comments, because there's so much to like about this event, then you will be removed from the chat. Simple as that. Last lap ball goes out. Anthony Harrison Mackey versus Taylor Orridge. Fusion versus Croc. Yeah, this is looking good here. Taylor Orridge on an absolute charge here. But remember, you've got to be careful. He has pushed those tyres mighty hard after gaining 11 positions to be in this place. But 
Mackey, I think, could be just on a defensive one here now, all the way to the end of this one. Hugging oh, the yes. inside line, or to the outside. Gets the switch back, side by side again. Mackey again with the inside line. He's going to force Orish to the outside well and done. not let him to get it done. Now he blocks past him. Now we can't get him down the inside again. Into the middle of the track. Not going overly defensive. Nice work there from Mackey. He's holding on to it. Nanny June watching. Stay calm, Nanny June. This is exciting stuff. But your boy Mackey here could be starting on pole for the Grand Prix later on today. One more corner to go, and it's looking good here. Yep. Harrison Mackey will start on pole position for the Grand Prix later on today from Taylor Orridge starting alongside Ethan Jeff Hall starting third and behind Mackey, Freddie Lloyd starting fourth. And do you know what will make the occasion even more special for you, Nanny June, is that Harrison's older brother, Lewis, is mechanicing for him. He'll be pushing Harrison's cart out onto the grid for the final. There you go. Harrison Mackey, Taylor Orange, Ethan Jeff Hall, Freddie Lloyd, Kenzo Craigie. That, that's a perfect race for Kenzo. Quiet, unobtrusive, hardly got a mention. Starts fifth for yeah. the grand final. Zach Green, Keen Garrity, Noah Wolf, Macaulay Bishop. Well, Macaulay Bishop. Uh, first to 36 to 9th in the space of 12 minutes. He's not out of this one yet. Uh, Fred Green rounds out the top 10. Then it's Lewis Bird, Morgan Moore. What a drive from Morgan Moore. From the Repper Charge this morning, Morgan Moore will start on row 6 for the grid. Ah, this could be interesting. Uh, Fred Gree, uh, Freddie Lloyd has a nose cone. Oh dear, that's going to push Fred back to about ninth position. Sure, I saw the lady with the camera there. Now there's Sue Potter, second nose cone. Macaulay Bishop, no nose cone for Macaulay Bishop. For Macaulay Bishop, so he passed. Ah, there we go. He passed 25 carts, and not a single one was through contact. Um, now, you're wondering why drivers, some drivers keep their engines running and some don't. Obviously, the clutches would, you know, they, they, you, you don't really want to maybe overheat the crust. Oh, there, the clutch, there's Harry the Lion having a nose cone. And there's, there's a nose cone penalty if ever there was one. Come on down. Price is right. Henry Jocelyn, Rocco Shenton, well, Rocco... From 34th to 18th, the arrow, bullseye for Rocco Shenton. He's going to be on a charge later on as well. There are some decidedly scruffy looking graphics kits there. Tire marks tells the whole story about some of that. Um, how much does it cost to enter? Well, do you know what? Yes. Um, karting can be an expensive sport. It is, it is an expensive sport. It's, you know, you, you can, it's not like you're buying a pair of football boots. However, there are families out in the paddock that have spent far less money than you would imagine on this sport, and they're still doing well. They're the privateers. There's 20 of them here, and we'll see a lot of them in the final later on. What a beautiful sight. Ma impeccably manicured grass. Sadly, some bent wagons heading back towards pit lane. That concludes this morning's racing uh, we're not going to be showing you the paddock show you can watch the exclusive hour-long version of last night's paddock show which was a doozy by the way ladies and gentlemen showing some real real socialized aspects of karting the finals the 2023 grand prix events start at two o'clock we will be back shortly before then chris mccarthy zach mcdonald will be interviewing drivers on the grid we'll bring you the faces of Cartmasters 2023. So we are going to have a short break. Uh, we might play some interviews. We might play some commercials. There'll be something to keep you entertained. We'll be back there. Now, on Thursday, I spoke to about 20 drivers in the paddock. Here's hearing from some of them now. See you for the Grand Prix just before two.
once again 2023 sees some of the very best in our sport come back to Cart Masters, if not in a driving role, but in a team manager and a coaching capacity. Danny Curl, 2011 winner in TKM, 2016 in Senior X30, year later went on to win the World Championship, but it's great to be back in the paddock at Cart Masters. There's something special about this event, isn't there? Yeah, no, there's always something special about this event. I mean, there's always top drivers that come for the race, come back from all, all over the place. Uh, it's really prestigious, obviously, to win. Everyone aims to win and uh, normally ends up in a fantastic race at the end. To win this event, there's got to be an, there's got to be speed, there's got to be racecraft, a slight element of luck. You really got to combine all three and get yourself prepared. Today's only Thursday. You've got to be peaking Sunday afternoon. It's a long, long time. As a driver coach, you've got to teach your drivers to just slow themselves down and not get too worked up too early. Yeah, I mean it's obviously difficult. Uh, today everyone's trying to find their pace. I mean this weekend's a little bit different because obviously we're looking at rain tomorrow and Saturday. So and then potentially dry again Sunday. So I mean today it's a little bit different. Probably people are trying to work out today what's their race equipment going to be for Sunday because this is the only chance we're going to get. So yeah, it's slightly different to, to most years. Normally in this uh, summertime you'd expect it to be sun all the way through, but you know this this year's a bit different. So yeah, yeah. Normally you try and prepare yourself like you say gradually but this year i think everyone's going full gas today because they know it's going to be wet the next couple of days so yeah well there we go everyone's going full gas today take it from somebody that knows somebody that's been there done that won the very very biggest event in the world karting here at pfi plus a gp plate as well danny kill thank you good luck see you on the weekend no problem thank you very much car masters draws drivers from all over the world ethan carney originally from denver colorado you're now based in the uk but but ethan karting in the us has got nothing on car masters has it no definitely not it's way more competitive here in the UK. Now tell us a little bit about, with Coles Racing, Junior Rotax? Yeah, uh, Junior Rotax, yeah. Junior Rotax, what are the biggest grids we've got here? Um, obviously, you know, you're testing yourself, your aim to get the final, or are we looking higher, top 10, top five? Um, right now I'd like to make the final, but I mean, we'll see what I can do later on. I noticed on your, on your race, you've still got the stars and stripes there, so we're still proud to represent Team USA, even though you're now based in the UK. Um, what advice would you give for any of the drivers in the US that are thinking of maybe trying British karting? Why come to this event just for once? Um, I mean, you should definitely come. You can learn so much from these really quick drivers. who are like the best in the world. Um, yeah, just definitely come. And on Sunday, people on the live stream, where are we going to see Ethan Carney line up on the final grid? Hopefully high up. <laughs> Hopefully high up. There we go. All the way from Denver, Colorado, now raced in the UK, Ethan Carney in Junior Rotax for Coles Racing. Kartmasters brings nearly every single team from around the UK, including Praga IPK Karting, the official factory outfit. Alberto Gonzalez, born in Venezuela, making your debut in the UK this weekend at Kartmasters. Well, he's not in the UK, but making your Kartmasters debut this weekend. What do you make of PFI and what do you make of the Kartmasters vibe? Um, I enjoy it for the most part. It's a lot of driving, um, but you know I've got the team behind me. Second year in the sport, so uh, I've got, I've got quite far for where I've started. But I'm happy. Happy, and again, of course, and of course, what 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 any driver do? He comes to the kart master the first time. And it's only a second year in karting. You have got Junior Rotax right by here. Now there's 50 odd drivers in Junior Rotax. Yeah. But of course, you don't want to do just one class. You want to do. Two classes, another 50 drivers in Junior X, Bertie, Bertie, what are you thinking? Um, not very well, to be honest, <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. L lots of laps. Again, with experience comes you know, laps, laps equal experience. Um, what's it like having the whole Praga team from the UK behind you? Um, I mean, I've been with them since day one. I started uh, as a novice last season, probably still be on my novice plates now. Uh, they've just coached me through everything, um, got me quite high up and I'm just confident and feel quite close with them really throughout the whole journey. So finally, okay, I mean, you've got two predictions for two classes. Are we just looking to sort of make progress and try and get into the Grand Prix on Sunday? Um, that's the main goal, realistically speaking, yeah. Um, I'm just going to try as hard as I can and see what we can do. So two countries, Venezuela, UK, two years in karting, two classes in kart masters. Alberto Gonzalez. Each year, the beauty of kart masters is how many drivers are trying to do double duty, winning two GP plates in a single day. So far, only two people have ever achieved it, Ben Barnacote and Noel Wolf. This year, there are 16 drivers doing double duty, including this man, Macaulay Bishop, in junior Rotax and X30. Macaulay, British champion, but the kart master title has eluded you so far. Yeah, I've been close a couple of times, but it's been unlucky, I think. 
what does it take to win this event? This is such a unique event. You can win British Championship rounds around here, but Cart Masters is just different. Uh, I think it depends. Uh, if it's quite a big hack, then it gets a bit hectic, and uh, sometimes you can get unlucky. But if it's like one or two people, then it's all right. Like it's got to race really well. Mixed conditions. If it's dry on Sunday, it's going to be a big pack. What's going to give you the edge? You've done a lot of racing this year, overseas and in the UK. Do you think that that extra bit of experience is going to give you the edge when it comes down to a final lap shootout? Um, don't know what I'm going to say. Well, I'm going to say you might say yes. I think I'm going to win. Yeah, I might win. Might win. Might win. Might win. Two classes. Have you got one that you think you're better at? You're doing both rounds of the British Championship. Are you stronger in X30 or Rotax? No, I think I'm about the same. My practice days went really well. Uh, I've been fast in both of them, so we'll just see how it goes from there. There we go. So watch from Macaulay Bishop trying to do double duty. Could he be the third driver to ever achieve it in Kart Masters history in Junior X30 and Junior Rotax? One of the biggest grids in Kart Masters 2023 is Junior Rotax. Josh Graham for Argenti Motorsport. You finished fourth a couple of years ago, I believe, in Honda Cadet. Yeah. Uh, you know, so nearly on the podium. What are the type of challenges that drivers have to face here to get on that podium at Kart Masters? Uh, I think the the most is the drivers. That they're, they're really tough and it's just really hard. I mean, this, this year especially, you've got a lot of uh, in, international drivers coming over. You've got the final round of the Internet, the Rotax Euro Trophy. Does that add to the pressure, or do you just think this is an opportunity for us as British drivers to sort of show how far ahead of the competition we are? Uh, yeah, I mean, it pushes us a bit, um, but I think they are a big, a big challenge. Now, three days, mixed weather. Looking forward to Sunday, obviously, but you've got to get to Sunday, first of all. Any tactics to save your tyres, maybe, through the heats? Uh, hopefully it's dry, but just smooth driving and be fast. And your package this weekend, where do you think you, you, you stack up against one of the strongest junior Rotax fields you've ever had here? Yeah, well, currently we're, we're really strong at the minute, so hopefully it keeps up. Excellent. Well, good luck, Josh, and uh, great to see you here and uh, great to see the Argenti name. I think Argenti won this a couple of years ago with Dan Ginchard. Are we going to see another Argenti win in junior road tax with Josh Graham this year? We are here at PF International. It's Grand Prix Sunday here at the 2023 Kart Masters. Uh, I'm joined by someone who would usually be racing at this event, which is hoping to race next year. Junior Rotax driver here supporting the Jack Dex racing team. Zach McDonald, you might recognize him from the Hungarian Grand Prix, where he was one of the three F1 juniors. Uh, Zach, congratulations uh, on becoming part of that F1 juniors team uh, on an, a fantastic first event. Just to tell us how it was uh, to be over uh, in Budapest for the Grand Prix? I mean, it was brilliant. Obviously, it's my first F1 Juniors ever. Yeah. Got mm. to see Lewis Hamilton. And before, I got to see Sebastian Vettel. Got to walk down the paddock where the drivers are brushing your shoulders. It's just mm. a brilliant experience to be within the paddock of F1. Uh, and having watched, uh, I know you said you started racing at, at, at Daytona uh, yeah. when you were six. And uh, having watched F1 since then, maybe even before, mm -hmm. uh, I imagine going there and meeting the likes of Lewis Hamilton, getting to sit in his car, that must have been uh, an amazing amazing experience I mean it was an amazing experience obviously the Hamilton was the top of whatever I experienced there in Hungary and yeah I got to sit in his car yeah I asked I, I knew that the carters would be shouting at me if I didn't ask to <laughs> yeah, go and sit in yeah, the car yeah. so yeah I got to sit with Lewis Hamilton it was just brilliant yeah. so tell us how it felt when you got the the news through that you were going to be part of the team I mean I imagine it it must have been absolutely amazing to know you're going to be at the Grand Prix and not just yeah. there watching but in the paddock yeah. working for Formula One and Sky Sports well, I think the first memory I have of knowing that I got the role was my mum shouting at me oh my <laughs> gosh can you believe it and I was just like what yeah. she wouldn't yeah. tell me mm. and then she just blurted it out you're part of F1 genius <laughs> yeah. yeah I was I was amazed I was yeah. just so happy yeah, and it was something that was enjoyed by fans all yeah. around the world, worldwide. A brand new project as well. Is, yeah. The first time we ever saw it uh, in Formula One. Uh, but getting to, to commentate on the races, present the F1 show, uh, talk us through some of the memories uh, that you walked away from, from that. I mean, I think the, the funniest thing that I did was, um, I think I had a little, um, I said the wrong thing, I think. At one point I said I have a box fizz after every race, which I don't think is what they want to hear on live TV. But yeah, I mean, it's my, that was my favorite thing. And obviously I got to see um, George Russell and Zach Brown. Yeah. Also Zach, 
Yeah. That was the coolest thing. And you got to go in with Stefano Dominicali as I well did, into, yeah, the I got to see into the, the broadcast centre. Broadcast centre, and obviously all the screens just wide. Yeah. It was just like got to talk to the um, the marshals on the track. It was yeah. It was really funny to talk to the Italian marshal as well. And we were out there earlier uh, here at PF watching the the drivers come out onto yeah. the dummy grid. How is it being on an F1 grid? I mean, I've never personally been out on one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that loads of people would love to do. Yeah. I'm sure you want to do it as a driver one well, day, do, but, yeah. but tell us how it was seeing it from, from that perspective. Well, to be honest, it's quite it's quite a similar experience. It's it's obviously, they're both motorsport. Obviously, karting is way down mm. from F1, but it's the same type of feeling. Drivers go out onto the grid with their mechanics, with their whole team, and everyone's cheering them on. So it, it is kind of similar, mm. but yeah, obviously, it's F1, the yeah. top of motorsport. Uh, and you got to do all the presenting content and stuff, but I, I know you're, you're a racer, yeah. getting ready to maybe go to British Championships, come to Kart Masters next year. Yeah, did definitely. you get any tips from any of the drivers uh, at all? Did you well, pick I anything did, up while you are there? Actually, um, Lewis gave me a major tip. He said, um, go to the gym, firstly. Okay. Not, not personally, but yeah, yeah you should yeah, go yeah. to the gym as a driver. And he said, stay in school. That's the main thing. So oh, wow. Education was the most important thing that I said. Yeah, and, and yeah. Do, so do you think you've left there with a lot of inspiration now yeah, and something you can have. apply to, to your karting career? Well, it is obviously meeting Lewis Hamilton, seven time <laughs> champion of the world. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a great inspiration, but yeah, I can apply it to my karting. Hopefully, this year, get some podiums later in the year. You never know. And mm. obviously, I'm going to try and aim to be here at Kart Masters next year yeah. and the British Kart Championship. So, yeah. Well, let's get into to the karting. Zach is going to be out on the grid with me as well, which is going to be fantastic. Yeah. You race for the Jack Dicks. Uh, racing team uh, talk us a little bit through this uh, is a junior road tax car yep. one of uh, three that we have in here so this is your teammates uh, tell yep. us a little bit about who we've got here and a little bit about the car well, I think this is Rian Dam uh, Damadas's car unfortunately I think he didn't quite make it through the rapid charge yep. but yeah obviously a great driver he looks a lot like me in the car actually with the <laughs> yeah. white helmet and the blue suit but yeah obviously you've got Harry Hannum's car here and that's a Absolutely brilliant. Mm. He's been doing brilliant this mm. weekend. I think he's got the move of the weekend. It's brilliant. He's a EBC brakes. That's why I made such a good move into the happen first happen <laughs> yeah. at the corner. Yeah. yeah. You can see his car. He's got quite a. He's got quite a stiff seat. He's got a tillet seat. So I'd mm. run a Jacko seat. Okay. I don't think anyone else here runs a Jacko seat. But yeah, Jacko seats have a more flex seat. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. So and obviously. This is what we're looking for. This is what you're getting all your data from as yeah. well. Uh, Ro Junior Rotax engine. Mm -hmm. uh, quite powerful engines yeah, as well, they aren't are. they? And, uh, and a lot of data to look through yeah. as well. Yeah. So they, I think they're pushing about 23 horsepower maximum. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so they, they, ha they pack quite a punch, especially at the mid range. Obviously, the X30 at the bottom and the top is a lot more powerful, but the Rotax through the mid is very powerful. So reach up to 75 miles an hour these cars obviously yeah people from 12 to 16 that's quite quick yeah now tell us a little bit about where you've been we'll come back round so we can see some of the other guys tell us uh, Zach a little bit about what you've been racing in this season and where you've been racing because uh, we did catch some clips from the Alpha live streams at Wilton Mill so mm -hmm. yeah tell us a little bit about your season yeah, so far so earlier in the season right at the start of the season hopefully this was going to be my year to be at the top in mini max but unfortunately MS UK decided to get rid of the class and so I had to move up to junior max which was quite a hard step but my first race at Shennington I'm managed to get a podium and then from then on it's been quite a good run mm. i've been racing at wilton mill as you said got mm. quite a few good qualifying sessions the mm. racing i think for me needs to get better but yeah race at pfi only twice and i know for the drivers that are at pfi it's actually quite it's, you have to be there a lot of times to yeah. really get into the groove yeah. and learn the track and that's why the first time i came and i qualified well but then when you're racing you have to relearn the track every time you come so it's it's very hard to really go into PFI hoping for a good result when you've only been two times. Mm. Yeah, we'll come back around this way a little bit, Zach, so we can see these guys in the background. Uh, so uh, you, you mentioned about PFI. It is really hard, isn't it? Yeah. it was, I remember when I raced, it was the one track when I did yeah. British Championships that team said you have to come and test before. Well, you do. You, I mean, I've only been here for a test day in Minimax, actually. Yeah. So the first time I came into this weekend, it was quick, but it was just, it was really, it was just a dawn, dawn mm -hmm. to me. It was like, I'm coming to the best track in the UK, mm. 
with all the best British Guard Champs drivers mm -hmm. and I had to go in for the first time in, min, uh, mm -hmm. in Junior Max actually so yeah mm -hmm. it's a great track yeah. Yeah. hopefully for Kart Masters this year yeah. to provide some good racing and you've come here to watch to cheer on the team obviously yeah. you're doing a little bit with us uh, as well mainly I know you're here to support your teammates yeah. how do we think the, the team are going to get on this weekend I mean we've got two brilliant drivers here two British top of the British Kart Champs level drivers Harry Hannon from Dubai I think is first week of the, from here from Dubai but yeah Lizzie Mentio obviously here all the time mm. teammate very good driver so yeah. yeah really cheering them on hopefully for them top 10 in the mm. rapper shot or in the pre-final in the final yeah are we going to get a GP plate on one of these? And are you going to be back next year to, to put one on your car to try and do so? I'm not sure. I, I really do hope one of these two drivers can get the GP plate, but it's going to be hard for them. And obviously for me next year, it'll be hard to get the GP plate. But yeah, Kart Masters is the top event in the UK, the top event of the year. Everyone wants to be here, so I'll definitely be here next year. Well, we've we've taken up the whole awning. Uh, as you can see, there's no one else in here. And I'm, I know Kart Masters is a very busy event. I'm sure yeah. the team want to get back in, get to work and try and get some GP plates on this car. Zach, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, we, I will see you out on the grid uh, later where he will join me to open the show and we'll do some grid walks as well. Make sure you catch all the action live on Alpha Life. Welcome everyone to the 2023 Motorsport UK Kart Masters British Kart Grand Prix live here from PF International. We are very, very excited to welcome you to the live coverage. It's been a fantastic day of pre-finals so far, but now it's time to get the Grand Prix races underway and get those drivers, those GP plates. Well, down here on the grid, myself, Chris McCarthy, someone you might have recognized from the Hungarian Grand Prix F1 Junior, Zach McDonald alongside me, but Zach, uh, you of course are here mostly to support the Jack Dex racing team. You race with them in the Junior Rotax category, maybe at Kart Masters next year. Tell us how it feels to be here this year. I mean, it's great to be back at home. I haven't been at, at Kart Track for over two and a half months and mm. F1 is home, but this is really where it's at. So yeah, it's great to be at Kart Masters for the first time as well. well you've raced around this circuit, haven't you? Yeah. At, at the Trent Valley Kart Club meetings. Uh, uh, tell the, for the viewers at home, uh, what, what's it like to, to drive as a circuit? I mean, it's the best track in the UK in my opinion but you have to do a lot of laps around here to be P1 that's why you'll see the top, dri the top drivers here at this weekend are really the ones that have done the most laps and it's been very challenging for the drivers isn't it because mm -hmm. we've uh, had a lot of rain yesterday yeah. the first time it rained at Kart Masters for a whole day since 2012 wow. so yeah uh, Henry gave me that one um, but uh, yeah, so different conditions for the drivers today it, it did is. dry up this morning but mm -hmm. we were talking before tracks very green isn't yeah, it yeah because obviously the rain coming down has washed all the rubber away and they do have new tires because it's they've just gone on their brand new slicks and so they have laid down brand new rubber but mm. it's still not going to be quite as fast as it could be yeah so we're going from what would have been worn slicks to now yeah. uh, uh, much newer slick mm -hmm. tires and, and how, how does that feel when when you're in the seat I mean, I don't necessarily love brand new tyres, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I quite like a slightly worn in set, but because when you're brand new, it's really slippery on the first few laps and then it takes quite a long time to get a heat cycle through the tyres as well. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be very close racing uh, yeah. out there. I know Car Masters is something you're looking to race next year. Just tell us a little bit uh, about your plans there. Well, I just I was supposed to do Mini Max and ho hopefully have a competitive season in Mini Max earlier this year, but mm. then MSUK decided that they couldn't do that category, and so I had to move up to Junior Max. And yeah, as a lot of drivers are, I'm one of the youngest in the class, and so I've been mm. doing club meetings, Wilton Mill, Shannington, and PFI, mm. my mm. hardest club meeting, mm. and I'm hoping to go into the British Kart Champs and hopefully 
be Cart Masters next year. And this is the grid for Cart Masters. Yep. This is the grid you want to be on. This is the position yeah. you want to be on as well. Pole position, hopefully, next year. Well, we're going to talk about the drivers who are on pole position this year because now we are going to welcome out onto the circuit. We're getting ready to go for the first Grand Prix. Water Swift restricted drivers now coming out onto the circuit. People in the grandstand, can we get a round of applause for our Water Swift restricted drivers? Let's give them some support as they come out down the start finish straight and get ready to go for the Grand Prix. Starting at the front on pole position, PF plate holder Austin Gibson and alongside him the number 77 Oliver Rowland Motorsport teammate George House. They're going to be on the front row. Myself and Zach, we're going to go and speak to some drivers. Let's let them get the carts down. I know you're going to go and speak to uh, George Zach, but I'm yeah. going to speak to Austin Gibson very quickly as we get ready to go for Water Swift Restricted Grand Prix. Uh, Austin, of course, you've won a similar event to this uh, already this year with the PF plate. Uh, tell us uh, how you're feeling ahead of the Grand Prix. Uh, very good. Yeah. Uh, and tell us when you when you won that race. Uh, you think that's given you good preparation? Now you got the PF plate. Now you think you can go and get the GP plate? Yeah, I feel like I've got good confidence into this race. Yeah. It's going to be a very good race. We'll let you get set. Zach, uh, would you like to go and speak to George House, yeah. his teammate who sat alongside him on the front row? George, you're starting on second place. What do you think you can do from here? Um, I think I can push Austin and we can get away, pull a nice gap, and then hopefully have a best one on the last lap, and hopefully it'll go as well for us. Yeah. Are you going to have a massive fight with your teammate? Obviously, you're first, second, and fourth. Do you want to pull away with him, like you said earlier? Or if it does come to your in first, will you hope to take the win, or do you think that they're going to, he's going to come past you? What are you going to hope to do? Uh, I just hope to push him to the last lap, then we can battle. Nice to see you. Okay, well, let's uh, quickly speak. We've got a little bit of time, Zach, so uh, great job with that. I'm going to speak to uh, uh, Colby Patterson, uh, who gained seven places uh, in the pre-final. Colby, uh, looking forward to this one. You gained a lot of places. Think you can gain a couple more now? Very, uh, very fast in the last one. I'm going to try as hard as I can to win it. Obviously, GP3, one of the, meth, the best weekends I've ever been in. So let's go try as hard as I can. Well, best of luck to Kilby Patterson. Let's have a walk down, Zach. I want to go and find uh, Austin Newstead, who has done very well so far this weekend. And I know, Zach, you're going to go and speak to Mason Brooks as well. So whilst you go and get ready for that, uh, I will speak to you, Austin Newstead. Uh, I know uh, a penalty, or you've dropped back a little bit uh, with a five-second penalty, uh, but you've proved you can fight at the front this weekend. Reckon we can get back there? Yeah, is in the British Champs at Shenington. I managed to make my way up from 12th to 1st, so hopefully we can beat it and do it again here. That's, a, I think, a good way to say it. Maybe a repeat of history. Let's yeah. uh, go down and speak to a couple more drivers. We're going to go and have a chat with Mason Brooks. Zach, I'll hand it over to you to speak to Mason. Mason, you've just moved up into this class, I know, and last year you had a good run on Honda Cadet and Miami Cadet. How are you feeling for this race? Uh, great. I just need to get a good start and get with the front mm -hmm. and just try to push away. Yeah. What do you feel about this car? How do you like the Water Swift? Uh, I like it. Yeah, you like it. It's, it's a good car, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice to see you, Mason. Good stuff. Uh, well, so let's take a walk down to the back and we'll leave the mechanics then to say their final words. I think we will head to the, the yeah. back of the track, shall we? Uh, and just allow the drivers to have their final words uh, from the mechanics. Uh, Zach, tell us uh, how this feeling is when you're now sat on the car. You've uh, had the final words from encouragement for your mechanic. Yeah. What's going through your mind at this time? I mean, it's, it's quite nerve wracking, especially when your mechanics leave you. That's the worst feeling when, they, when you're just on your own and you've just got all your Team, well, your teammates and all the other drivers with you. It's really nerve-wracking, but yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, and that siren in the background meant that the grid is now closed. This is it. It is with the drivers now to go yeah. out. I think we'll uh, pan round, shall we, uh, and get a, a shot of all the drivers. Yeah. Uh, Zach, just talk us through uh, the first corner as well, going into there uh, here at PF. How are you approaching it? Well, if you're at the guys PF in the front here, row? you really want to get to the inside. It's the dirty side of the track, but it's also the side that allows you to get into turn two first. When you get to the inside, you're allowed. 
you well you have to stay in the tram line so you can't straight away switch once the light goes green but yeah you really want to be on that inside and it will minimize the opponents from the other side and a long race as well isn't it they got yeah. plenty of laps out there so uh, if you're minutes. in yeah if you're in there you're uh, would you approaching this with some patience trying to work, work yeah. with the driver to get away i mean you've got the massive timer up there showing you how yeah. much time you've got left so you should really know how much time you've got left but especially when it's kind of two minutes or three minutes to the end you really don't have to push because i know these water swift drivers are a really clever bunch of drivers <laughs> and so yeah i don't feel like they're going to push themselves too hard well we're being told to clear the drink zach it's been yep. great to get your uh, insight there uh, that is all the preparation done it is time to go racing for the first grand prix let's hand over to our commentary team henry Bodet and anthony jordan Let's make a little bit of Cartmasters history, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set to crown our first ever Water Swift restricted GP plate. Austin Gibson and George House for Oliver Rowland Motorsport will share the front row of the grid. Oliver Warner and Colby Patterson will go from row number two. Ronnie Carter and Daniel Ferguson on row three, followed by Alfie Davidson and Harry Williams. Mason Brooks and Austin Newstead round out the top ten ahead of Charlie Clough and Senna Shadikens from the Netherlands. Then it's, Bar it's Qatar's Atakamiya, UAE's Ava Lawrence, Callum Graham and China's Lin Han Li. International grid. Wh who is going to be the 164th? different Cartmasters champion. Thank you, David Classen. The new commentator is superb. Um, I can see myself. Right? Yes, I'm, I'm being marched out of the door as we speak. The 35 viewers that entered the predictions competitions, I have got your predictions in front of me. If your choice wins, you get three points. If your choice is second, you get two points. If your choice comes home third, you get one point. It's going to be provisional on the live stream. Obviously, the results you see on the circuit are provisional, pending any issues after the race so it will be provisional on the live stream good luck to austin gibson uh good to see josh cook saying hello to all his friends he races against in micro max and water swift restricted anthony jordan yes let's time to pull those belts up tight and go racing it is certainly time to go racing water swift restricted race 50 of the weekend looking forward to this one the wind has picked up it's a tailwind down the main oh. straight let's see what happens with that one it is oliver roland motorsport row one lockout austin gibson george house who's going to get the whole shot into turn one green flag goes out and it's a great start from the pf plate but watch out as george gibbons motorsport comes through oliver warner into p2 great start uh 16 Water Swift restricted carts head out onto the Uncle Tyrone backing. Two of them collide in the background there, interlocking wheels, and off they go. Are they going to get back on there? They do get back into the race at the tail end of the field. But it is your pole sitter, the PF plate holder, the driver that currently leads the British Championship, Austin Gibson, in the lead, but he hasn't got his rear gunner behind him. He hasn't got his teammate, George House, because... Oliver Warner for George Gibbons Motorsport is up at the P2. Then it's House in third. Then the leading fusion car, that's Rocket Ronnie, Ronnie Carter in the number 33 entry, followed by that very distinctive white car, that's the Micro Promotions entered car, but it's a livery for Daniel Ferguson. Yep, very nice start then for the entirety of the grid. Out of the final corner they go then. 15 minutes plus one lap these races the longest they have had to do over the course of the weekend and like you say three cup breakaway now george house has closed into the back of yes. oliver warner now and this is vital warner he wants to keep those two around carts split apart by staying in that middle spot if they join forces they could become more dangerous than he ever thought patterson looking to the inside there at ferguson onto the bridge which wasn't on he stays behind as the now very clear gap, as now goes Ferguson for fourth place. No, again, thinks against it. Ronnie Carter holding on to it. Ah, pivotal moment, potentially. House passes Warner for second position. Remember back to the pre-final and how desperate 
Austin Newstead was to keep himself between the two Oliver Rowland motorsport carts. Now that task force to Oliver Warner because Austin Newstead is still trapped down in seventh position after starting tenth. And as they come out of the Mike Wilson complex, six times world karting champion, into the final complex of corners. Gibson looks over his shoulder. They're not pulling away. Warner is still there. Then it's Carter, Ferguson. Behind Ferguson is Newstead and Mason Brooks with Patterson, Davidson, Harry Williams rounding it at top 10. And Attica Mia, the young lady from Qatar, up into 11th position ahead of Santa Shadikens. There's Ferguson making a move as we head down through turn four towards hairpin number one. Nice start again, still watching all these battles. Keep an eye though, further back. Austin Newstead's back on a charge in this one. Austin, who started the pre-final on the front row of the grid, unfortunately fell back, finished 10th in his uh, race. But certainly he is a quick driver and he's wanting to capitalize back on this one. He knows he can launch an attack, but he can't launch an attack yet because he needs to work with the man in front of him. Mr. Ronnie Carter to see if he can close up to Oliver Warner. Yeah, and there's oh, a change. Okay. There goes Newstead. He's not hanging about. He knows that time is ticking. And we're watching a good battle. This is a good little battle between uh, Colby Patterson in cart number 24. Uh, the two fusion drivers, Mason Brooks and Alfie Davidson. And behind them is Daniel Ferguson. There is, and you can see this is a temporary alliance. That is a fusion driver, Mason Brooks, pushing an Oliver Rowland motorsport driver, uh, Colby Patterson. They've got to work together now if, they've got to stay in if they're going to stay in touch with the leaders. They battle and they fall back and neither of them have a chance of winning. They work together because, look at that, the gap's not that big and Oliver Warner's not being dropped. As we go into the first hairpin on lap number four, 11 minutes to go. Austin Newstead on that last lap, set the fastest lap of the race, 106.45, very, very quick indeed. 11 minutes to go, plus one lap. But keep an eye on it, this is certainly still heating up. This is the earliest, I think, that Gibson and House have got to the front yes. and have been working together. That is dangerous for the yes, rest of the is. field because they have got plenty of time to just drive away from the rest of the field. Yeah. These two will not attack each other nope. until the last couple of laps if they stay like that. It's guaranteed. Yes, and you can see the damage they're doing because Oliver Warner is gradually just half a length here, half a length there, falling behind. He's still in the slipstream. Well, is he? Because look at that boost that George House is giving his teammate onto the banking. Warner is just about keeping touch. Oliver Warner cannot put a wheel so much as one centimetre offline. If he makes the slightest, smallest, tiniest, teensiest mistake, his chances are gone. And you can see on this lap, I think that Oliver Warner has lost a toe. I almost think, is it worth Oliver Warner just easing back, back a little bit, yeah. allowing Austin Newstead to catch him, and then Newstead and Warner can form an eight-wheel train and maybe work together. But it's going to be tough from this point on. The two ORM carts working in sweet harmony together. Yeah, we always call it, don't we, in these uh, cadet level uh, races, that it's like playing chess at 50 miles an hour. Oh, yes. It's a constant <laughs> thinking game, isn't it, Henry? Where they're just thinking, what do I do at this point now? Because like you say, you always need to have that slipstream. It's got to be available. Yes, okay, it's a tailwind down the main straight. But what does that mean when they're coming down off the bridge? It's a tail, it's a headwind. So now they've got to work with the slipstream. And right now, Mr. Warner does not have that, but now he will have a bump draft. Further back, though, in the field, Mason Brooks making good moves. You can see he's three wide there. He's got to be careful, Ferguson. And Williams in that one as well. Ooh. Patterson trying to get involved as well. Yes. Very, very close all the way throughout the field. Here comes now for fourth place, though. Newstead to the inside. Newstead's wanting to lead Warner here. Both of them now. Warner's got to latch onto the back of Newstead. Yes, he does. Austin Newstead, uh, he means business. The... Baby-faced assassin, Austin Newstead. Great interviewer, uh, uh, interviews, really polite, always mentions his sponsors. He has nerves of steel and a stare that could turn into stone when he's on a mission. He goes, he's started 10th, he's up to 3rd. You can't see his eyes, he's got his tinted visor on. And uh, I have to say... Be very interesting to see Anthony. Can Austin Newstead catch these two carts all on his own? Pretty remarkable if he does. But uh, we'll have to see Warner. Now you could. Now look, 
the two ORM cars are locked together. Warner, he's still that one cart length, half a cart length off the rear bumper of Newster, which means he's not giving him the same bump, in, uh, not bump, the same push and the same draft that uh, House is giving his teammate Austin behind them. Now there's, again, this temporary alliance, Patterson in the 24 mm -hmm. and Davidson in the number 46 working together and they're not out of this one yet. Behind the top eight, nine, we've got Ferguson in ninth, three and a half seconds cover the top nine. You've got Harry Williams, Atakamiya, Senna Shellikens, Charlie Clough, Callum Graham, and then Ling Han Lee and Ava Lawrence. All 16 drivers still running. And really now we're down to nine. Well, Daniel Ferguson is about eight tenths of a second behind Ronnie Carter. Ronnie Carter runs in eighth. And the top eight, as we come on to the start finish straight now, you'll still see the top eight, top nine in the same camera frame. There they are, two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, then there's a big yawning gap mm. back to Harry Williams in 10th position. Yeah, uh, Akita Mir, who's up two positions as well, is there just behind Harry Williams in P11. Senna Shellikins also there as well. P12 from Charlie Clough, Callum Graham, Ling and Lee, and Ava Lawrence still rounding out all 16 carts that started this race. Uh, currently still running in it as well. Ah, Anthony, look at the front there. Now you can see Warner has latched on yes. to the rear bumper of Newstead. It's taken him a lap, yep. but now he is doing exactly what George House is doing for Austin Gibson. Yeah, he certainly is doing that, so keep a close eye on it. Oh, but Gibson sets the fastest lap of the race on that last lap. 105.66, 105.69 for George House. They are absolutely line of stern still, aren't they? And they were four tenths faster yeah. than Newstead and Warner. This lap, That's though, big jump. could be different. Well, Warner has just set his personal best first sector. That's while he's pushing Newstead along. He's in the slipstream. Let's check the gap. It was 1.4 seconds. It's gone up to 1.7. They're this not is, catching. This is pressure. This is pressure. Newstead and Warner. Temporary Alliance, BMR and George Gibbons Motorsport. Oh, these temporary alliances, they, they uh, <laughs> seem to be fading. They, they, they fade just behind them as the two fusion drivers, that is Davidson and Brooks now, lock horns and try to push on. Still the top nine on the same frame. Behind the top nine, there is a gap of eight seconds back to Harry Williams in P10. Sean sure, O'Brien asks, is the track a bit wet? No, no, no it's, it's completely dry. No, but basically there's a little bit of sunshine, but there's also some cloud, and that is reflecting off all the rubber that yes. has been laid down. Yeah, completely dry track. Five minutes to go. Not all is over here oh, for no, Newstead no, and Warner. Not by a long shot. Because it's guaranteed, ladies and gentlemen, 100% guaranteed, George House and Austin Gibbon will battle. They will battle. They Gibson to. and House, they will battle. Austin Newstead and Oliver Warner will close that gap. But it's at what point do they start battling at the front? Uh, That's what they do. If they well, leave it to the very last lap, they won't catch up in time. Another new fast lap, 105.61. Yeah. Well, the team, uh, the ORM team boss, Oliver Rowland, he won his first and only Kartmasters title in 2002 in what was then called Cadet Coma. This is an effective a continuation of that class. We had the Coma engine, we had the Gazelle engine, now we've got the Water Swift engine, but this is a restricted class, so it's not a direct continuation, but can, on the 21st anniversary of that triumph for Oliver Rowland, can his drivers make it a very, very special one to finish? They're still quicker by three tenths of a second per lap than those leading than the, the, his, their pursuers. Yeah. Alfie Davidson in fifth, Mason Brooks sixth, Colby Patterson seventh. On your screens now, they come out of the final corner and onto the start, finish straight now. And uh, they're also trying to catch Newstead. Look at the gap. It's gone up by another four tenths of a second. Even though Newstead and Warner have just put in both their personal best laps of the race at 105.9 for Austin Newstead against a 105.6 for George House. Oh, and uh, sideways there, that was uh, Daniel Ferguson and Ronnie Carter. They're now battling over eighth and ninth into the first hairpin, uh, Anthony and uh, George House. Is it making his move yet? What we haven't seen yet 
is we haven't seen Austin Gibson looking over his shoulder that much. No. When Gibson starts looking over his shoulder, that's the sign that he's now starting to think, OK, I we've been attacking, defensing. now my mind is on defence. Yeah. Now shouts not pass is Austin's motto. Yeah, three minutes plus one lap to go. And again, you've you got to think now for these drivers, the drivers behind this is probably the most controlled race we've seen from the uh, water restricted grid. Uh, they've had some exciting races, exciting battles. Come to the Grand Prix final, yeah. everything suddenly, they, they mature well, about 15 yes, years exactly. mentally, don't this they? This is smart, smart racing. You know, this is smart racing by the RM. Yes, you want to see them going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, but that is not smart racing. It's exciting, it's spectacular, but it is not smart. You need to use your nouse, and that is exactly what these young drivers, aged 8, 9, and 10 years of old, that's what they're doing. Mm. No change at the front. Austin Gibson still leading the way. Back with them here now. Uh, well, well, Henry, you said about checking over the shoulder. Yes. Two minutes to go. Yes. Gibson checked over his shoulder. He's okay. not gone defensive yet, but he's very much aware that George House is right there. Okay, so we're not getting our elbows out yet, but we're definitely rolling our sleeves up. Mm. We'll see if Gibson checks over his shoulder coming out of this next corner onto the start finish straight. Let's have a look. No. No. Not yet. The not next test as yes. well is that as soon as Gibson and Howe start battling, ah, yeah, look will the... Newstead and Warner start to close in? Yes, they will. But crucially, will they start to battle or will they continue to work together? Well, I mean, they will. If, if they mean, okay, if George leaves it till halfway on the last lap, they'll then, battle. Then they'll battle. But if he starts having a little nibble at Gibson, say at the end of this lap, we've got. 1 minute 17 seconds to go, so when they come across the line, there'll be two laps remaining. Uh, if they start battling with two to go, then Warner and Newstead will continue to stay in single file to try and catch them. Yeah, exactly. It's just a case of when it's going to happen. They did swap positions. Oh, there's a little look. Another yeah. little look. Uh, I think we're building up. I mean, OK, it'll be two laps to go next time by. I think you might see Austin Gibson defend going onto the banking on this lap. Yeah. I think going onto the banking this lap is when George House will start to shift his line away from uh, Austin Gibson and try to use a different line. They go across that finish line. The teams, the mechanics, the spectators watch. Newstead being pushed along by Warner. They're not battling yet. They, they know there's still a chance. Even though the gap is three and a half seconds, there's only 20 seconds plus a lap of this race to go. They know there's still a chance. Okay, a look over the shoulder here. Yes, no. It, no, no. no. It, it's so, on, on, honestly, okay. it's just it's going to happen when yep. we just don't not know when. Lap. Not this lap. It's not going to happen this lap. No. I mean, I think they both know it's last lap only. Yeah. So House and Gibson, one and two. Ignore the graphics there. It says... Uh, House in front of Gibson, that's more like it. So, ah, there's a little look. But again, George is not going to make a move until they start the last lap. Until they start the last lap, which they are about to do. Anthony Jordan, it's a ORM 1 2. The question is, which one of them will come home first? Here we go then. Last lap ball comes out instantly now. Gibson starts to look to the inside there. He Covers off any attack through turn number one. Not going to happen there. Now House switches to the outside. Watch for the cut oh, back here. Cut and back. he gets alongside here onto the bridge. And he gets into first place. Now that's very early into the lap. Yeah. There are so many overtaking opportunities between here and the finish line. House has got all the work to do now to defend from Gibson. Watch Gibson, Gibson needs cuts to cut. Out. Yep, yeah, he yeah. cuts out. Now he'll try the crossover. House parks it on the apex. Oh, very and good. Smart driving there from George House. Now into this... Second hairpin. Can House get the cart slow down? No, the momentum. He does get the cart slow down. Gibson can't get the crossover again. Newstead and Aubrey Warner around still the outside. battling. Oh, very close there. I thought it was going to go the outside through the Fullerton S's into Bobby Gain corner again. Defensive watch with a switch back through oh, here. This Gibson's is where you can him. catch him. Oh, and there it is. And Gibson's back through. But watch out for House. He might go back down the inside here. No, he's not quite close enough. These two very, very close. But George House just left that gap open into Bobby Gain corner. And Austin Gibson will cross the line. He is your Grand Prix champion for Water Swift Restricted. The first 
ever in history. And he did it in a style worthy of a champion. He didn't panic. You think of this, ladies and gentlemen. You're less than one lap away from winning the British Kart Grand Prix. You've been leading the entire race virtually, and your teammate passes you at the start of the last lap. Do you panic? No. Austin didn't. Austin just bided his time. The crossover moves were superb, and then he got George House into a position where George simply couldn't get across quick enough, and Gibson makes the move, takes the win. The PF plates will be swapped for the GP plate, and provisionally, Austin Gibson is your first ever Art Masters champion for Water Swift Restricted. A look at the Harry Williams on the retired with five laps to go. No nose cones. There's Austin Newstead who completes the podium. Oliver Warner finishes fourth. Then it is Alfie Davidson fifth. Colby Patterson comes home in sixth. Mason Brooks is seventh. Ronnie Carter is eighth. Daniel Ferguson finishes ninth. Senna Shellikens is tenth. Then Charlie Clough. Callum Graham, Ling Han Lee, Atakamiya, and Ava Lawrence. Unfortunately, Harry Williams failed to finish. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you are going to see, the drivers will go in, they will be weighed, they will have their nose cones checked, and then once the stewards out on the circuit have said, look, no in-race penalties, there might still be issues afterwards in all these races. Once the stewards clear anything from on-track activity, you will see the first three drivers come out into the waiting microphone, and oh, there's Mason Brooks. Oh, he's going to be a little bit upset there, Mason, but there are your top three. Now, once there's no nose cone penalties, once the officials are happy there's no in-race penalties, once there's no weight issues, they will drive out and take their positions behind there. So, provisionally, and this is all provisional, your Water Swift restricted Cartmasters podium, Austin Gibson for Oliver Rowland Motorsports in P1, George House for Oliver Rowland Motorsports in P2, and Austin Newstead for the BMR Restart team in P3. Chris McCarthy is waiting, and he'll be speaking to Austin Gibson very shortly. And a huge round of applause down here as we welcome our Grand Prix champion in Water Restricted. Please continue the round of applause for Austin Gibson. S Finishing in second place is Oliver Rowland Motorsport teammate George House, a 1-2 for the Ollie Rowland Motorsport team. Ollie winning 21 years ago here. And in third place, a great drive through as well, Austin Newstead. Can we have a round of applause, please, for all of our top three once again? Thank you. Well, we'll let uh, Austin get his crash helmet off and then we'll talk about that last lap. A brilliant team effort, Austin. I'll come over and speak to you. Uh, a great team drive between you and George to, to get such a big gap there for the last lap. Um, yeah, it was really hard on the last lap. Um, I mean, he hit the curb and he ran wide, so I just got the switch back. And saw the gap coming into the Mike Wilson complex and managed to get it down the inside. Yeah. Um... Me and George pushed really hard through the race, and yeah. Tell us how it feels to be a Grand Prix champion. You're a PF plate holder, now Grand Prix champion, following in the footsteps of your team boss as well. How does that feel? It feels really good. I'm so happy that I won the GP plate and the PF plate. Well, Ollie is over there watching. He had one of these a few years ago. Now this is for you, Austin. You get to hold it, face the crowd. The team are over there. Hold it up for us, Austin Gibson. GP plate holder. Let's come to second place, and it was a really good drive. Almost got it, uh, but just losing out on the last lap. George House, I mean, you must be very happy still with the podium. Yeah, very happy. It was a great race. Um, I'm proud for getting second. He just got me going into the... Uh, I can't into the complex. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy with second. At least I get a podium, so... It looks like you have uh, put a lot of effort into to that one uh, as well. Uh, tell us, how hard was it to stay so consistent throughout the race? It was really hard. Um, we pulled a massive gap to third. Um, it was a great race and 
Yeah. Cool. Well, well done. Let's uh, get a, pod a, a round of applause, please, for second place, George House on the podium. <laughs> and next, Austin Newstead. Well, we spoke to you before the race. Uh, you said you think you could make some places, and you, you have coming through the pack to finish in third. You must be happy with the podium. Yeah, obviously, I'm um, really happy as I had to start 12th, no, 10th after a penalty. And I just managed to come through and managed to finish third. Uh, and definitely going to come back to another fight to try and get the GP play next year? Yeah. Well, well done. Let's give a round of applause, please, to uh, Austin Newstead finishing in third place. That brings uh, uh, an end to uh, Water Swift Restricted. Now, I'm going to attempt... I, I was trying to practice this earlier. Trying to... Let's, uh, oh. There we go. That... That's looked smoother before. Right, there we go. I'm sure Henry and DJ enjoyed that one. Uh, OK, next we're going to have the Water Swift class come out. Once we've cleared the board, uh, we've got a big grid in this one. 28 drivers out there. I'm seeing Nigel Edwards is giving the signal that we are clear to bring the drivers on to the circuit as well. Our top three in Water Swift Restricted have now left us. Uh, and now we wait to welcome Water Swift. On pole position will be George Edgar looking to become another of the Edgars to take a GP play uh, and Kanish Rao will start alongside gaining nine places uh, in the pre-final so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on Jesse Phillips uh, and Will Green will be on row number two Max Endicott podium here last year he's going to be on row three with Finley Lines but I believe we now have carts coming out into the circuit there they are grandstand please let's give a round of applause to our water swift drivers as they come out onto the dummy grid Starting on pole position, number 17, George Edgar. Alongside him on the second row, Oliver Rowland, motorsport driver. Can they make it two GP plates in two races? Can it scrow? We welcome George Edgar down. We did do an interview with Jessica Edgar earlier, now racing in the F1 Academy, has finished on the podium here at Kart Masters and is here to support George Edgar. Uh, she is over in the grandstand. I can see her over there, probably uh, a little bit nervous as her brother George now goes on to the grid. And we are going to speak to him. Him. Here we go, George Edgar. I remember speaking to you on the front row, I think it was last year as well. Back on the front row, pole position now. How are you feeling ahead of the race? Yeah, really excited to get out and have a good race. Hopefully, me and Jesse managed to get away, but it's cart master, so anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen uh, indeed. How's it been over the course of the weekend? It's a long weekend, isn't it? Uh, had to put a lot of hard work to get it. Yeah, it's been a lot of hard work right from Thursday morning, from practice in the dry with changing conditions to now in the dry for the final. And you think uh, over the course of uh, your campaigns in Carmars, you now learned a lot to be able to help you try and go and win? Yeah, I've learned a lot, obviously, being on the front row once or twice and then being fighting at the front for a couple of years as well, so yeah. Well, best of luck to George Edgar. I know a lot of support in the grandstands. We're going to uh, wait for Dan Ashton to just finish speaking to Canish Ground. Then we're going to come in and speak. Well, uh, a, a great pre-final coming up through the field. To get yourself on the front row, you must be feeling confident ahead of this one. Yeah, I'm feeling quite confident. I had to come from 11th in the pre-final, so I think I've got the speed to win. And how does it feel having just seen one of your teammates uh, go and win in Water Swift Restricted? Do you reckon you can go and do the double now? Yeah, hopefully it's a double win for ORM, Water Swift Restricted and into Water Swift. Well, best of luck with it. Let's go and find a couple more of uh, the drivers. Uh, George Edgar just wishing Jesse Phillips all the best. We had Jesse in the live lounge uh, yesterday. I know you said you were here to uh, get the victory and you're in a pretty good position to do that, I think, Jesse. Well, yeah, P3, hopefully me and George can push away at the start and then anything can happen on the last lap. Hopefully I can go for the win. Well, best of luck to uh, Jesse Phillips. I'm just going to come uh, and speak. I think we've got, still got a bit of time. I'm going to speak to uh, Will Green. You're on the pole for the pre-final, but uh, still right up here in the second row. How are you feeling ahead of the race? Yeah, it's good. Hopefully me, us all four of us, or five, could be able to push away and hopefully I can come on top on the last lap. And the first year for the Jamie Green Racing team here, uh, what a start it's been so far. You reckon you can maybe bring home a trophy for the team? Yeah, it'll be really good. It's my first ever Cart Masters to get a podium. It would be great.
Well, best of luck to Will Green. Let's go and find Max uh, Endicott now. Uh, Max, uh, you've done well at this event but before. Uh, you think you can go and get number one spot this time? Hopefully. I mean, it'll be a hard race to like, beat Fusion and beat Jamie Green Racing and beat RM. It'll be very hard, so I'm going to go out there and try my best. Well, best of luck to Max uh, Endicott. Findy Lines is alongside two drivers here who gained quite a lot of places in the pre-final. We're strapped for time, uh, but we'll walk fast. Uh, Aaron Richardson and Jensen Ackerman. Uh, cameraman, please be as fast as you can uh, because I want to speak to someone down at the back of the grid, and that is uh, Jarlaf Sayer, who uh, did drop back 20 places in the pre-final after a bit of an incident. So uh, I want to speak to uh, Jarlaf, the Fusion Motorsport driver, uh, because, as shown, some fantastic pace this weekend and uh, there's always going to be a driver to watch out for the guys in commentary know that brandon carr proved that last year could this be the next one let's find out i'm going to come and speak to uh, jarlaf sayer reggie Doohy, giving uh, it the uh, uh, words of encouragement someone who knows how to get a podium here uh, not the best pre-final but you've been up there all weekend reckon we can move forward in this one yeah hopefully we can move forward and get top three so and with a mechanic there who's stood on the podium here before, I'm sure plenty of good advice and encouragement ahead of this one. Yeah, he has. <laughs> good stuff. Well, uh, let's come to the back of the uh, grid there uh, and we will turn around as we see the full grid now uh, in action. I believe we are six seconds away from seeing the green flag go out and seeing the drivers be released. So uh, with that, I think we will hand it back uh, upstairs. Henry and DJ, over to you as we get the Water Swift Grand Prix underway. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, indeed. Great to see a lovely grid walk there yes. with the Water Swift drivers. Certainly looking forward to this one. All the predictions that uh, the yes. ladies and gentlemen have brought I, in. Uh, us ourselves, the I, commentators, have all got a different person we've gone for as well. Yeah, uh, but uh, for those of you, uh, 18, no, 22 of you all picked Austin Gibson to win Water Swift Restricted. The rest of you, the rest of the 35, all picked Austin Newton. So we've got 22 of you on three points, the rest of you on one point. Lee Narraway and Luca Narraway saying, come on, Archie Owen, you could do it. Uh, Nat Johnson saying, come on, Will Green and Finley Lines. Uh, Good night, Michael Burke. Thank you for joining us. You can see how your predictions go tomorrow. Louise Richardson, as always, supporting Aaron Anthony. That's the moment. You've got... 28. Very nervous. Well, nervous. There's bound to be some nerves. There's bound to There's be bound nerves. To be. Probably got 28 somewhat nervous mechanics as well. Mm. It's the biggest single event of the season. The grid is cleared. Off to the left goes Alicia Barrett, that Jarlath, uh, sorry, Iron Nayar's mechanic, number 11. You see George Friend, Albie Friend's mechanic there. The green shirt moving off to the side. The rest of the teams are now leaving their drivers alone. Well, certainly looking forward to this one. Busy grid, 28 drivers, and again, another chance for a new GP plate winner. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. Here we go then, it's race 51, it's Water Swift, it's the Grand Prix final. Let's take you through the starting lineup on this one. George Edgar, who put it on pole and qualifying on Friday, starts this one on the top spot. He's got Kanishk Rao, who is the story of Kartmas in a nutshell. 22nd and a 12th in some of his heats. He qualified 4th and finished 11th. Uh, earlier on, he starts his one on the front row. Jesse Phillips and Will Green, they round out row number two, both of them being very quick drivers and some of the big predictors for this final win. Max Endicott and Finley Lines, they go from row three. Aaron Richardson and Jensen Ackerman then round out row four from Ethan Woodward and Alfie Brown on row five on the top ten. Archie Lovett and George Clark round out the top six rows. Night Measures and Ethan Weldon, they go from row six from Jacob Bachelor and Harley Musk on row eight. Archie Owen and Zianik Babacek round out row number nine. Aaron Neyer and Albert Friend round out the top 20 on row 10 from Charlie Goddard and Hayden Gilbert on row 11. Alexander De Benedictis and Ryan Townsend Grant go from row 12. Jarlis Sayer and Max Yule round out the top 13 rows from Sukmani Kira and Rashid Hilal rounding out the 28 drivers on this grid. Rashid Hilal from Hamadtown, Bahrain. Derek Babacek from Rakov in the Czech Republic. And the rest of the drivers from the United Kingdom 
with the exception of Maxim Bobashov from the UAE withdrew from the event. So, Grand Prix number two, the first official Kart Masters Grand Prix for the unrestricted Water Swift class. On the left, George Edgar on the right, Kanish Rao, lights are out, we're off and racing, it's a great start from Edgar, a terrible start from Rao, who's lost five, oh. six positions, side by side, wheel to wheel contact, Rao over the grass, and has dropped, oh, oh my word, and there's a big one, and uh, a driver rolling the cart, the others off, the marshals are already with him, uh, the marshals are already with that driver, I can say, yellow flag, yellow flag, yep. uh, George Edgar continues to leave. We've gone full course yellow. And there is an... I don't... If that's the fusion driver that barrel rolls out, he's got out of the cart. Harley Musk. And now he's angry because the cart won't start. Harley, you've just rolled up the banking on your head. You're only 10 years old. And now you're angry because the cart won't restart. These drivers are made of stern stuff, I tell you that. They certainly are, aren't they? Well, Full Course Yellow has been deployed, and that slows the grid down, essentially like a safety car in one of these races. They have to control the pack, and George Edgar right now still leading the way in this one as we'll go for a restart very, very soon, probably in the next two laps or so. But, like uh, we say, absolutely made of stone, yep. these drivers. What? Harley Musk. A built moment. different. Yeah. Built different. But most importantly, for his family and friends watching at home in the grandstand, he is absolutely fine. That's he's, all that matters. He's so fine. He was trying to get the cart going again. We're going to go and do another lap and yep. the full course caution. So, breathe. And the new order is George Edgar and Jesse Phillips. Well, Phillips started their plan Work to perfection. Remember the pre-final? Yeah, yeah, Phillips yeah. seemed content to start third. They're now running one, two. Max Endicott on the grid. Chris McCarthy said he had a tough job on his hands. He's got to try and beat Jamie Green Racing, Oliver Roller Motorsport, and Fusion. Well, he's in front of Oliver Roller Motorsport and Jamie Green Racing, but he's got those two pesky Fusion carts to deal with now. Then it's Will Green in fourth. Aaron Richardson is fifth. Finley Lines runs sixth. Ethan Woodward is seventh. Jensen Ackerman is eighth. Archie Lovett is ninth. They are oh, Kanish Rao is what trudging back. Is that Kanish Rao? Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Broken track rod. And he was obviously caught up in a subsequent accident there. So from the front row to the Marshall Post in the space of two corners. Uh, Jacob Bastard has gained five places to run tenth. Then it's Ethan Weldon. Alfie Brown is the leading privateer. Uh, Night Measures, Archie Owen, George Clark, Alexander D. Benedictis, Rian Townsend Grant, Max Yule, Derek Babacek, Albert Friends, Rashid Hilal's at seven places to 21st. The reigning runners, Hayden Gilbert, Sukmani Kira, Jala Saya, and Ayan Naya. Charlie Garden at the back, Rao and Muska out. Anthony Jordan, we're going to take the restart with. Ignore the timer there on the left-hand side of your screen. There is 11 minutes and 50 seconds to go when they go green now. They do indeed. Timer restarts and green flag comes out. Single file start and look at the getaway that Edgar and Phillips have got. This is bad news for the rest of the grid. Those two are now latched onto each other. And as far as they're concerned, we'll just continue to latch onto each other until the very last lap. The rest of the field, though, slots through just in the background. Endicott still in front of Will Green. Aaron Richardson still there from Finley Lines from Woodward. Ackerman, love it. Bachelor as they go down into hairpin number one for the first time. Anyone going to pull out? Yes. Will Green to the inside. Moves into third place in front of Max Endicott oh. as they now head round turn or the hairpin number one. Yeah, that move was great for Will Green, but it's bad for everybody else because look at the lead. The Edgar and Phillips are already eking out as we go past race director Dan Ashton there. Uh, you can see three, four, cut lengths. This is going to increase their advantage even more. Although, hang on a second, actually, this is... Finney lines up at the fourth oh. position. Oh, and that's the 18 of Endicott. Uh, just getting barged a little bit wide. The intensity level has really switched up. Endicott now finds himself mired deep in that snarling pack of carts. Meanwhile, 
Will Green is catching the two leaders on his own and he's catching them hand over fist. Serious waft in that Jamie Green racing cart with Will Green at the wheel of it. He is siding his way up to the back of Phillips and Edgar here. This race for the lead is not over. Remember, Will Green has been a thorn in the side oh, of yes. the Fusion team in the Water Swift category with taking wow. race wins. But look at the rest of the field here. So, so close and spread out still. That was, I think that was uh, Derek Babacek in the red, or I think it's uh, in the all red crash helmet. They'll be making a good move there. He is getting into the swing of things, uh, style of British racing as well. Three for the lead. And they have a two-second advantage over everybody else. Will Green, I said that move that Will Green put on, I had my doubts about it, but I've been proved wrong yet again. Yeah. Uh, because Green has got the pace to stay with him, and the rest of them, led now by fourth-place driver Aaron Richardson, they're all tripping over each other. So... The gap is 2.1 seconds. Love that shot. Everyone thinks that, oh, these are only kids racing. They're not going fast. Yes, they are. They oh, are flying absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Now, the three Fusion drivers in 4th, 5th and 6th, Richardson in the 16, Lines in the 81, Woodward in the 83. They have to start working together. Behind them, Archie Lovett for Oliver Rowland Motorsports runs 7th. Then Jensen Ackerman is 8th. Max Endicott has fallen back tonight. Four wide. Oh. And the red and white independent run cart of number 94, Alfie Brown, emerges in front. Yeah, nice little oh. run here. And again, he goes toe to toe here. That's and again, gets another position. Who was that? That with? was Rian Townsend Grant. It was. We <laughs> spoke to Rian on the paddock show. He didn't finish a single race yesterday. And he's Eight. also got a five second penalty. So he's up into 16th. But now he's going to give some of those places back mm. as we watch the top oh, three. He's caught them. Yes, Look at this. He has. Will Green has latched onto the back without even a slipstream or a bump. What on earth have they done to that cart? It's literally flying out there. He's popped a set upon it. That is for sure. What Will Green now has to agonize over? Do I make a nooses of myself and take the fight to them now? Or. Do I sit here and wait, and then I've got less time to deal with George Edgar, who finished third in last year's Cadet I Army Championship, and Jesse Phillips, who was the British champion? Any privateers in this one, says Josh Coombs. Yes, Alfie Brown and Derek Babacek. Quickly mention the privateers. Vera Tools have put up a £3,000 worth prize. Toolbox, toolkits, everything for the best placed privateer in any class in the Grand Prix. There are 19, pri no, there are 21 privateers here in total. And all of them have made the finals in this race, Derek Babacek and Alfie Brown. So uh, the best privateer is, well, they're running 15th and 16th. Babacek from the Czech Republic in front of Brown. So we will monitor that. And of course, everything's unofficial, but we will provisionally monitor that on the live Street. How many finals are left after this one, Henry? There are six. This is race two out of eight in the finals. Plenty of time left in this race as well. Seven minutes plus one lap to go and side by side further down the back of the field. Nice chop and chain there as Jacob Bachelor yep. dives down the inside of Jensen Ackerman. That is for P9 on track. Albert Friend also getting involved in that phrase just behind it. There you can see oh. Finley Lines. He's just tucking in behind his uh, helmet there behind... Uh, Aaron Richardson, who's just got past him. And, uh, of course, all three of these Fusion drivers here right in front of the 89 of Archie Lovett, another of the ORMs trying to make it a double GP, but right now is struggling behind this trio of Fusions. Ah, oh, now, uh, no Janssen saying that Babacek isn't really a privateer. Well, he is at this event. He has just got one mechanic. He's using uh, a bit of awning space with the George Gibber Motorsport team, but he is running his own operation, just him and a mechanic. They didn't want to bring uh, their own awning all the way over the from the Czech Republic. Yeah. So, uh, so they're, just, they're using someone else's awning space, but it's just Zenit, uh, Zenit and a mechanic. Yeah, I believe they're in the Jack Dex uh, awning. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, literally, yeah not the George in, Gibbons, yeah. In a corner of the awning. Yes, literally. Uh, now, let's have a look back. Here is the battle for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. It's Richardson at the head of this group in the number 16 cart. Then Lines in the number 81. Behind Lines is Woodward in the number 8. 
89, uh, three cards, and then Archie Lovett in the number 89 entry for Oliver Rowland Motorsport. Several drivers under ah, investigation. Movement. Yes. Right. Will Green has decided I am going to make a nuisance of myself for the last five minutes of this race. To heck with sitting in line, and you can already see him deviating. He's just moving around. And, of course, in these cadet cars, Anthony, you can feel the car. There's a move for the race lead. Is there a move? Yes, there is. How long for? Oh, brilliant. Jesse Phillips goes three, two, one. Yep, nicely done. Again, that move always uh, vital to get it back down the inside. But again, Will Green's going to go to the inside. Phillips defends furiously into the hairpin. And Edgar goes through into second. Heart in the mouth moment wow. for Will Green. But he leads the way. And now down the inside, both of the fusions will retake it. This is going to be a fight all the way to the end. Aaron Richardson is 3.7 seconds further down the road, right in the back of this shot. Watch the, the gap come down it hand will, over fist. It will disappear. There are four and a half minutes left of this race in terms of kart racing that's an eternity 17 drivers came into this event trying to do double duty only 16 of them now have the opportunity because george house did not win his first race in this class you are looking at jesse phillips doing double duty Derek babacek doing double duty will green doing double duty finley lines archie levitt and albert friend Four minutes to go, and the Fusion Motorsport drivers are back. One and two, Edgar ahead of Phillips. Uh, the driver's doing double duty at the moment. Well, uh, Albert Friend is only 20th, so he's not going to do the double this year. Uh, Derek Babacek is 15th. He's not going to do the double. In fact, I think a lot of drivers' hopes of doing the double are going to finish after this one, apart from Jesse Phillips and Will Green, who are still right in the hunt for the battle for victory. Yes, they are. Here we go, then. Three of them very close. Oh, Will Green's dropped off just a little bit here. And uh, Will Green is under a little bit of pressure here because if he loses that toe and if he's lost oh, the yeah, rhythm yeah, now, yeah, yeah. he will just drop back. He needs to focus. He needs to get back into it. Look at the steering inputs that they're putting in. Again, Will Green earlier on was very, very smooth with that steering input. Now it's just a little bit more shaky, a little bit between it. Keep an eye behind. But just further back, though, Richardson and Lines, they've started to break away from Lovett, Woodward, Endicott, Ackerman and Bachelor as well, still the top ten. Further back behind them, Archie Owen still there. He's up six positions. He's having a great race, is Archie Owen, for the uh, Crop Promotions team. Ethan Weldon just behind him as well. George Clark for the OMS team. He's up into P13 as well. Zenit Babacek up into P14. Four positions gained. Jarlis Sayer having a cracking run. I don't know what Reggie Dewey told him, but he's certainly having a good one. He's up into P15. Yes, he's uh, not going to take the win, is Jarlis, but he's driving very well. Two minutes, 45 seconds to go. And you can still see Will Green just hunching down. He's not given up. Now, the gap was 3.7 seconds. It came down to just over two, and now it's back up to 3.1. And the chasing pack have been whittled down. It was three fusion carts. It's now just two. Aaron Richardson and Finley lines, which means that Ethan Woodward has faded back into the clutches of Max Endicott, who runs in eighth position, with Jensen Ackerman and Jacob Basher rounding out the top ten. Archie Owen is 11th, followed by Ethan Weldon, George Clark, Derek Babacek, the leading privateer in 14th, Dennis Jarlis Sayer, Knight Measures, Alfie Brown, the second privateer, is down in 17th position. No, nope, make that change, Alfie Brown picks up a couple of places and moves back into 16th place. Still big moves happening further down the order as well. Sukmani Kira for the Fusion Motorsport team up into P19. This is Sukmani's first ever Kart Masters and certainly doing well in the top 20. I think she was uh, aiming for a top 20 actually, she said, uh, over the weekend. So she can do that. I'm sure she'll be very pleased with the, uh, the result that she's got out there. 90 seconds left on the timer, plus one lap. And I'm just keeping an eye on that oh, gap oh, oh. at the front. And it's still, it's, oh, it's interesting, isn't it? It's closing, it's opening. Everyone's a little faster here or there. But at the moment, it's a bit of a stalemate, isn't it? Well, I mean, one minute ago, six tenths of a second yeah. is effectively, that is one passing manoeuvre yes. for Jesse Phillips. If Jesse makes one little go at George Edgar, He's right then there. Will Green is right there. Now, further back, there's the 89 of oh. Archie Lovett, and there's Max Endicott at the inside. Yeah, Endicott well, on Woodward. I, I'm not going to tempt fate here, but uh, last year, Max Endicott, I think he wrote off two chassis, uh, fell out of his cart, and I think he said, never going to do car masters again. 
12 months all around. Here he is, and he's having a much better. It's not over yet, but things are going much better for Max Endicott. Funny enough, I was speaking to his uh, mum this morning. She said something very similar. Well, I know. That, that, that's, where I, uh, that's where I got my information. Oh! oh! 12, Jensen Ackerman on the grass. Just got squeezed wide, and he is dropping down out of the top 10. There's the gap. It's opened up to eight tenths of a second now. There's 17 seconds left on the board. I reckon Phillips is going to go for it on this lap. I reckon he's not going to wait right to the last lap. I reckon it's going to go soon. It will be as soon as Edgar starts defending. Well, Phillips looked over his shoulder there. He just wanted to double check to see how much of a gap he had. Yeah. And now he will assess the situation. He'll think, OK, I've got one, possibly two attempts before I get caught by Will Green. It's amazing right. what the drivers are thinking of. They think turn their heads for a fraction of a second and they, and they compute so much information in that time. No move there this time around. They're going to wait for the final lap, guaranteed. But Will Green is still right there in third place. He is close enough. As soon as they make one move, he'll be right there in the battle. Phillips is no longer pushing George Edgar. He is now staying a cart length off his rear bumper. Edgar will feel the fact that he has not got any support anymore. So he knows there's Jamie Green looking nervously on. Will his team get their first Cartmasters podium? Oh, now, here we go. The clock has struck zero. Will the Edgar Karting dynasty add another trophy to the cabinet? Or will reigning champion Jesse, or reigning British champion Jesse Phillips claim his first GP play title? Round the outside goes Jesse Phillips. Edgar has his pink towards the inside. What a move. Move of the event so far. Jesse Phillips. Has it won him this race? I don't think it has, you know. I think there's still time for George Edgar to come back at him. Wow, Edgar looks to the outside. He's saying, anything you can do, I can do better. And here comes Will Green. This is going to be a three-way fight to the line here, Henry. Phillips defends Edgar on the outside. Watch out for Will Green. Now he's going to switch to the outside. Don't go to the outside here, Will. <laughs> That's the bad way to go here. Now Now you've got to switch to the inside, but it's very, very close. There's yellow he's flags out run. in he's sector gonna one. Run. He's going to get a run. He is indeed. He's going to go defensive. Here comes Edgar. Oh, it's going to be close. It's tentative. I don't think there's going to be enough space here. It's very close. Oh! Unless Edgar goes down the inside. There's a bit of contact between the two of them. Will Green down the inside. He's into second. Can he go for first on the low, uh, over the start-finish line? I don't think he can. Out of the final corner. It's going to be a run try. to the line. It's going to be a run to the line. It's side by side. Who's going to get it? It's Phillips who takes it by one thousandth of a second across the line. Can you get a Cartmasters final closer than that? How on earth? Did Will Green get such a good run out of the final quarter? And do you know what, Anthony? Each cart looks spotless at the end of it. They did not even so much as rub a sticker up against each other. Fantastic. Jesse Phillips is your provisional Water Swift Grand Prix champion for 2023 by one hundredth of a second. Henry's uh, dying in the oh. commentary box. That race was oh, so sorry. close. Excuse me while I die. I was let's drinking while he no, was dying. Uh, right, oh. let's look at that. Edgar finishes third. Two tenths of a second covered the top three. That is quicker than a hiccup. Uh, Aaron Richardson in fourth. Finley Lines rounds out the top five. Max Endicott comes home in sixth. Then it's Ethan Woodward, Jacob Bashler, Archie Owen. Pop it now, let's have a look. Nope. All those cones fine there. Of course they were going to be fine. That was a superb battle. Uh, Archie Owen ninth. Ethan Weldon. For the left of the late Dan Weldon. It's a fantastic top ten result for the Crop Promotions team. Two carts in the top ten. Ackerman after a spin. Jala Sayer was 12th. Then Albert Friend. Right. Zenek Babicek finishes 14th. That is the best place for a privateer at the moment. The other privateers have to beat that if they want to win the Vera Toolkit package. There's Glyn Griffiths, our chief marshal, just telling the drivers, OK, when you go out, you slow down. There's cameras, there's stuff like that. Basically, don't do a game. Yes. If evermore... <laughs> yeah. 
It's going to be known as doing a Gabe. Hashtag don't do a Gabe. Yes. Uh, there look, we go. Look up. Go. We're not going to explain. Just no, look no, no. at last year's Kart Masters uh, video, uh, Junior Otax, at the end of that race, and you'll find out why. Oh, the eyes of George Edgar. So close once again for George Edgar. It will come one day for him, that GP plate. He is bound to oh, be yes. a Grand Prix champion. His uncle, Justin, won two GP plates, I believe. But the Edgar family, they, they win O plates and they win British titles. I think they, they do, they, yeah. They've got about nine or ten O plates to their family name. And, of course, the family name, well, there's Jessica Edgar. There's all sorts there. But here we go. Chris McCarthy. Whoa. You just can't get any closer than that, Chris. Wow, wow, what a race. One by one hundredth of a second. A round of applause, please, for our winner, Jesse Phillips. Coming down in third place, George Edgar put in a fantastic fight. Let's have a round of applause for George Edgar. And second place, just losing out by one hundredth of a second, Will Green in the first ever race for Jamie Green Racing at Car Masters. I'm going to ask you again, everyone in the crowd, because that was fantastic for all three drivers, please. Round of applause for what will go down surely as one of the best races in the junior classes. Absolutely fantastic. We'll let uh, Jesse Phillips get uh, his gloves off and put his crash helmet down and then we will speak to him. We're still catching our breath back. I'm not sure what's going through the mind of the drivers. Jesse Phillips, congratulations. That was close, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a really good race. Obviously, the start went perfect. Me and George got away. And then on the last lap, you've got to do what you're going to do. Uh, I went around the outside through the long left uh, and then I just defended really well through the rest of the race and then on the start finish almost Will got me by like so close. Tell us what was going through your mind when you came out that final corner there and you saw Will Green getting up alongside you tell us what was going through your mind at that point. Well I knew that the slipstream could always get you the win on the side so I was just thinking please please win please win please win please don't get alongside me. So yeah, it's a great race. I'm sure you've always dreamt of winning this race and to do it by one hundredth of a second, that one's pretty special. I'm sure there's some people in that grandstand that you'd uh, like to thank. Uh, who would you like to thank for, for this win? Uh, well, the whole of Fusion, um, Jordan and Jake, my mechanics, uh, and my mum for bringing me all the way up here, and my dad. Good stuff. Well wrapped up. Our winner, Jesse Phillips. And with that, I don't get to keep this. This is yours. Face the crown, Jesse Phillips. Hold it up for us, our Grand Prix champion in Water Swift. Well done to Jesse Phillips. Yeah, it Will, it was that close. Was it? it was that close. Uh, almost, almost got it. Uh, but uh, well, how are you feeling after that one? Yeah, it was a good race. Jesse and Edgar will both be able to, well, to push away. So I just had to hang on and hope I was able to come on top on the last lap. But I'm still really happy with second. Uh, who would you like to thank, Will? I'd like to thank Joe for the waft, my mechanic James, uh, my dad, all the other people supporting me and everyone in JGR. A round of applause, please. Almost got it, but what an effort. Will Green. And we don't forget about you, George Edgar. A podium uh, at Car Masters, a fantastic result. Just missing out on the last lap there, but uh, you still must be very proud of your efforts. Yeah, really good rears. Me and Jesse got away. He pushed all the way until the last lap and then just unfortunately through the long left he managed to get through. Then down the bottom I nearly got back through but didn't quite manage and Will got through. But yeah, it's still really good to have a podium. Who would you like to thank very quickly? All the Fusion Motorsport and my mechanic Jake, my mum and my dad and my sister. Well done. Give another round of applause please to George Edgar. Fantastic effort. What a race. Wow. I don't know if the guys up there in commentary are still with me, but Henry, that, that was a close one, wasn't it? Yeah, and do you know what? Just behind the camera, Jake Dalton, uh, Jesse Phillips mechanic, giving him a huge embrace. But again, it's the standard racing. How clean was that? Jesse saying, I, you've got to do what you've got to do on the last lap. Well, it involves driving around the outside of the banking to take the lead. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. 
Uh, and I want to get the thoughts very quickly of someone who was watching that last lap with me. And we were stood right here at the start finish line, Zach McDonald. That was close, wasn't it? Well, it was, especially with Will Green into the uh, onto the finish line. It was just, what, it was five thousandths of a second behind? <laughs> yeah, it, was, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, well, with that, we're going to get ready for the next race. Everyone in the grandstand, yeah. I'm sure you've caught your breath back uh, eventually after that one. But let's get our next drivers out as we welcome onto the track our Grand Prix finalists in Micro Max UK. Please drivers as they head down to the start finish line let's give them some support everyone as they come down lord of nerves building they put in a big big effort since thursday and now we get ready to go racing and starting on pole position it's going to be emerson mcandrew ewan put in a, a fantastic performance uh, in the pre-final uh, and alongside him will be jensen trot well zach we're going to go and speak to some drivers yep. i'll speak to our pole sitter first and then uh, i'll hand you over to uh, speak to jensen emerson mcandrew ewan on pole position it was a, a really close pre-final wasn't it a really really hard fight uh, how are you feeling now ahead of the final uh, good. I think I have a really good chance of winning. A, a close race, what we just saw out there, isn't it? It, it? it can always go down to the final run down the straight here, can't it? Yeah, there's always a chance for someone in second to attack and maybe beat them. Well, good stuff. Well, best of luck for the race. Uh, Zach, I'll hand over to you. Uh, have a quick chat with Jensen Shaw. You're starting on the left-hand side of the grid. You've had a strong weekend. What do you think is possible? Yeah, I'm um, hoping for a good finish, at least a podium, and it's going to be a very hard fight. Yeah, do you think you can take Emerson? Um, I think every, I don't think it's down to lap speed, I think it's down to racing. Yeah, it definitely is. Well, good, good luck. Good stuff, Zach. Let's go very quickly, because one of your teammates is down here from Jack Dex Racing. We're going to go and speak to Otis uh, Cleary. Uh, I'm going to hand you to do yeah. this. You know Otis better than all of us. So uh, a very quick question New to the class, for Otis. Otis. What do you think is possible in this race? Top five, at least. Maybe top three. Maybe top three. Well, if you're top three, do you think it's uh, first is possible? Yeah. Just, I'm going to be getting lots of fastest laps and things like that, so it is definitely possible. And I think it's definitely not impossible for me. Yeah, well, it definitely is. You've been fast. We will, uh, we're going to have to, we can talk all day to Otis, can we? Uh, but with that, we're going to leave it with the drivers. Uh, I'll ask the camera to turn around to myself and Zach. Engines are fired up, Zach. Excited for this one? Yeah, really excited. Let's go up to commentary. Henry and DJ, over to you. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is the third Grand Prix. Micromax, Emerson McAndrew, Euron and Jensen Chalk go from row number one. Kian Bernard and Edward Hayes on row two. Oliver Spencer and Oliver Warner, row three. Otis Cleary and Riley Murrow on row four. Zach Starbuck and Alfie Mew, row five. Harry Taylor and Theo Bradshaw, row six. That is George House, Luke Millward, Grayson Wortley, Josh Cormack, Austin Oman, Alex Riley, Josh Hushka, Arthur Farrow, Lucian Smith, Alfie Mir, Dax Farah, Dian Pahal. And the remaining runners, Ari Kallenberg, Kuryu Kiyotake, Max Gilman, Sebastian Lush, and Drew Davidson. Uh, the double is still on for Jesse Phillips. We're going to see him in Minimax later on. Okay, very quickly indeed. Emerson McCandry Urine, his 10th birthday today. What a present that would be. Uh, Anthony? Yep. Last weekend, the two drivers in the front row crossed the line 14 hundredths of a second apart in the Road Taxi International Trophy. Can they do it again? All signs point to the fact that they could. Uh, certainly looks like that way, Henry. And, uh, well, right now, they are certainly backing the pack up. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yes, uh, very, very so. Now, why couldn't they have done this all the way through the weekend? Uh, been this nice and slow and uh, tactical at the front of this one. These boys know exactly what yes, they're doing and, and right this there. Is deliberate. This it is, is deliberate. It Absolutely. Is. Make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why they're doing it, but there's a very good reason. Now, uh, international viewers, Kuryo Kiyotake is from Japan. Uh, you've got Ari Kallenberg from the United Arab Emirates. 
uh, Alex Roy from County Meath in Ireland. You've got a smattering of Scotsmen. The rest are all from England. And you could not do it any slower if you Oof. tried. And uh, Nibbers, yes, there are a number of people that have had two correct predictions out of two so far. We'll bring you up to date as they now bring the speed up. Lights are out. We're off and racing in Micromax. Jensen Chalk does fall back to third place. They go under the bridge. All the leaders through cleanly. Everybody. Oh, and there's somebody getting sideways in the middle of the pack there. And they saved it. They saved it. That could have... Like, that was looking like it was going to be another major accident. But the driver saved it. And now they're three, four wide, coming off the bridge with McAndrew Euron in the lead. And Kean Bernard oh. up to second. Somebody goes grass track. It's one of the Dan Holland carts. We'll try and get a number check on that car. Well, driver grass tracking straight back at the inside three wide it was harry taylor yeah harry taylor onto the uh, the grass going down into hairpin number one thankfully gets it back onto the track and holds on to it clean getaway then for your top threes looking very good at the moment emerson mccandrew Owen from jensen chalk still uh, there uh, it looks like Kim bernard's got him to second place now as well yet so bernard there into second place brother on the spanners tristan both from south africa very proud of their heritage yep and running very strongly here and in this GP the, final. The question was asked. Yes. Uh, does anybody, what, what, when you finish second or third, do you get anything apart from a trophy? Oh, you do. Yes, I and answered the, that in the comments the, as the, well. The prize package is £36,000 with the prizes this weekend. Oh. £500 cash money, cash money for each GP plate winner. I think it's £450 in the Rotax class for second and £300 for third in the Rotax classes, and I think it's £300 for second, and £100 for third in the Army classes. Yes. And, and then side by side, there's engines, vouchers, tyres. Oh, yeah, the, the entries to the uh, yeah. Army World Finals later this year. Not uh, for this class. No, and, uh, no, but the, in, in, the, in the Army classes. In class, the right? Army classes, yes. Now, uh, McAndrew is not getting away. Uh, into third place, Riley, Riley Murrow, five second penalty. That is Josh Griffin now running in P2 with Haynes there in third, no, fourth position. The 82 of Bernard is third, Chalk fifth. Last year, Jensen Chalk finished ninth in the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals in Portimao. So he's officially ranked ninth in the world in this class. The uh, Mr. Lord Pancake. Where have you been, sir? Top privateers, they have prizes. Yes, the £3,000 worth of tools and tool kits from Vera Tools, mm. who are sponsoring the exact same price, the driver of the day. So Vera Tools putting about £6,000 worth of prizes into the £36,000 prize fund. Oliver Spencer now leads the way. The yeah, O-plate, looking change. very strong. Yeah, Bernard, Haynes, Chalk, Starbuck and Theo Bradshaw. So, the three micro-tiers, they're the three factory zip teammates. Uh, Zach Starbuck, Theo Bradshaw and Kia Bernard are all best of mates out of the cart. They call themselves the micro-tiers. And there's two of them, and they're now trying to duel their way past Edward Haynes, although Haynes has got force waft. Uh, on there, Baines, he's been at, at it again, and he's produced a good one for Edward Haynes. Yes, he has. Look at this breakaway now. It's not just two carts or three carts. It's one, two, three, four, uh, seven in total. Seven cart breakaway at the front of this one with 12 minutes to go and Ooh, runs wide uh, is Oliver Spencer. Spencer. And through goes the other three, Kim Bernard. Then it's uh, Urin and Chalk. We'll yeah, go through. Spencer race, back down to fourth. New race leader, but not for long. No. Emerson McAndrew yeah. are in. And uh, Jensen Chalk. Smart driver there from Jensen Chalk. He allowed Emerson McAndrew to open the door. He just got into the slipstream and strolled through without having to bat an eyelid. Yes. So Emerson McAndrew are in from pole position back on the top spot. His 10th birthday today. He would like that GP place as a lovely birthday prize. Three qualifying heat wins over the weekend yep. he won the pre-final can he win this Grand Prix it's going to be a tough fight Jensen Chalk as well a very good weekend and uh, started third in the pre-final finished it second gaining that one extra spot and he's there in P2 right now defending from Kean Bernard 
there on your screen, the number 44, Theo Bradshaw Move. as a change. Jensen Chalk, new leader. Yes. Now, uh, okay, so karting parents. Uh, as Emerson McAndrew, so Emerson McAndrew, your dad, Wayne, does his mechanicing for him. Jensen Chalk's dad, uh, Mike, does his mechanicing for him. Oh, and there's a little bit of argy bargy going on there. Kean Bernard elbowing his oh, oh. oh, contact there. McAndrew, Euron, and Bernard come together, and two of the other microtiers take advantage. Up into P2 is Oliver Spencer, and suddenly Jensen Chalk has got a huge lead. But that's 10 minutes to go. I'm going to calm myself down, Anthony. I can see what you're going to say to me. You're going to say, don't get too, don't overexert yourself, Henry. Long way to go. Don't overexert yourself. Yes, of course, because there's 10 minutes to go. And yes. this is a, it's an interclass, yes. a, a cadet-shaped cart. So that gap will close because yes. eight wheels works better than four. Correct. And Chalk is all on his lonesome there. The number 32 Coles racing cart of Alfie Mew has slowly and quietly attached itself to the back of this lead group as Theo Bradshaw passes Zach Starbuck. Yeah, yeah Riley Burrow is still got a five-second penalty. Uh, he's got two five-second yeah. penalties. Ten seconds of penalties. He's really trying hard in this race. Yeah, uh, he doesn't want to get another one because that might be accompanied by a different colour flag yes. altogether. Yeah, it might do. A flag that says, please return to the pits. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. In fact, give me $200 and the steward of the meeting as you're fine for misbehaving. Yes. Or words to that effect. Words to Already. that effect. Already. Uh, Jensen Chalk, last lap, 105.89. Uh, Spencer matched it, but on this lap, Spencer, three tenths of a second quicker through sector number one, and then the tenth of a second through sector number two. Now, the recovering Emerson McAndrew Uren has to try and figure out a way round the numerous colourful obstacles in his sight. Uh, the second group of carts is led by Oliver Warner now in cart number 72, followed by Luke Millward. Josh Cormack, Riley Murrow, Otis Cleary, Austin Oman, uh, Harry Taylor, Alfie Mayer, Arthur Farrow, Josh Hushka, George House, Max Gilman, Grayson Wortley, Sebastian Luce, Dax Farah, Lucian Smith, Alex Riley, Drew Davidson, Tim Patar, and Ari Kallenberg. With Kunio Kyutake still out there running, but down in 29th and last. Yes, indeed. Seven and a half minutes to go then of this race. Still plenty of time left in it and right now we're seeing some changes here as spencer has closed in on yes. we the are back. so that lead with jensen involved now i was talking about karting parents both the dad, one. emerson mccandrew your dad wayne and mike chalk jensen's dad do the mechanics that's life as a karting dad as a karting mum it's you, you you spend your entire uh, career as a karting mum uh flit, flipping between anguish despair nerves, sheer terror, and occasionally, when your child smiles at the end of the race, elation. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so the mums live and breathe this sport just like everybody else. There are some mums that do mechanicking, but uh, you can see uh, Jensen Chalk's mum, she could never watch him race. For no. years, she just physically could not watch him race. Then she watched him race once, and it's now become a superstition. She has to watch every single lap. Oh. It's, it's, so it's so bizarre. Again, drivers are ritualistic creatures. They like the same rule, the same routine, because if they get into a winning routine, that is all good. Jensen Chalk, though, has to get in a defensive routine very shortly. Two, four, six, seven carts, se eight carts separated by 1.7 seconds. We run lap number eight. Still six and a half minutes to go. Yep, still plenty of time for a battle to ensue. Oh, and, and it of will. Course, and it will. Oh, of course it will. Spencer, though, is your fastest driver out on circuit with that 105.26. Has closed in on Chalk. Bradshaw still there. And look at that. How close can you get between all of these drivers? Edward Haynes still there. Emerson McAndrew Uren still on that fight back, who now sets the fastest lap of the race and is closing in on the two drivers ahead. And oh. now a change side by side. Chalk to second place. Spencer to first place. Down the hill, they go. And Jensen didn't even try to defend no. that. He knew there was no point. It's so early in the race. We've still got five and a half minutes to go. The main thing I don't want to do is I don't want to clash wheels and delay myself. I want to slot back in. Okay, if I'm not going to lead, I want to be literally sat on the leader's rear bumper, which is where he is. It's a Synergy Factory Team 1-2 at the moment with 
the Zip Factory team in third with Theo Bradshaw, the RCE team fourth with Edward Haynes, then Dan Holland racing in fifth, and remaining two three microteers, seventh, uh, sorry, seventh and eighth. Mew and Warner round up the top ten. All 29 starters are still running. Very good running then. Five minutes to go in this one. This is going to be exciting all the way to the end of this one. Don't worry about the timing graphic there. Just a little uh, glitch as we sort it out. Harry Kralingberg is uh, not leading by 43 seconds, but this battle is certainly getting interesting though at the front as they're chopping and changing. Any one of these five drivers could win this race, but do not rule out those three drivers just behind as well. Kim Bernard, Zach Starbuck, Alfie Mew, they are all in line for this one as well. They will close in as McAndrew Irwin again sets the fastest lap of the race. He has latched on to that rear bumper now of Edward Haynes and is going to go for the move. There it is, down and towards Heppin, number two, and McAndrew Irwin now gets up into P4. He has to be careful now. He doesn't want to lose touch with the three up in front. Theo Bradshaw looking very strong here in third place. Theo in the number 44 certainly had a good running all the way throughout this weekend. So keep a very close eye on him as Henry forgets to mute his microphone. <laughs> Four minutes to go in this race. Certainly this race is far from over. Back across the start finish line they go. Spencer still leading from Chalk. Chalk right into the back of him as they go up into the... Uh, Tyrone Banking, both of them absolutely line us down. The two synergy drivers in unison here as back to the inside. There goes Edward Haynes on Theo Bradshaw. Emerson McAndrew are now up into third place as well as they're on the charge. Now back for the race lead, three and a half minutes. Time quickly running out, but plenty of time left in this one, Henry. This is the third race in a row. We will crown a first Kart Masters champion. Micromax, the two water swift classes, never a part of this event no. before. It takes the total number of classes to have raced in the 28 year history of Kart Masters to 29. Now, Jensen Chalk, he's well liked, well liked by his right amongst oh. his rivals. A black flag is going out for the number 22, 22 kart. That, that Riley is Murrow. Riley Murrow. So the reigning British Bambino champion has been black flagged. Uh, what else has gone wrong? I'm looking at Ari Kallenberg down the back of the pack. Maybe there's been an incident out of my sight. So Chalk, now, he's, oh, I hate to say it, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way. Jensen's got to get a little bit nasty sometimes. He, he's, he, he, he is involved in so many nail bitingly close finishes as Jensen Chalk. He really, really is. Well, he's listening to you now, Henry, because he's going absolutely side by more side. More often than not, in those nail biting finishes, he comes out just a fraction behind. Yeah. So you've got that killer instinct, that kill friend or foe, you've got to make, you know, he's, you've got to get nasty. Yeah. A well, little bit nasty. And that is not as a change of personality, but no, when it comes down to the crunch, yeah. the cold denim syndrome, when the, when the race is on the line, you've got to make that killer decision there and then. Yeah. Stand by it, you live or die by it. Yeah, I know exactly. I know exactly what you mean there, Henry. It's just, you know, you have to sharpen your elbows just that little bit. Not be dirty, but just Not, be yeah. knowing that I'm going for this win now. I'm depicting what happens well, into this corner. Every racing driver, you know, when they, they're different animals when they put the helmet on. You have yeah. to be arrogant. You have to believe you are the very best. You are better than everybody else. You have to believe that. You have to believe that that corner is your corner. You have a right to that corner. There's an example. Emerson McAndrew Uren. Mirror signal manoeuvre down. And he dared. He dared Oliver Spencer. He said, turn the if you want, Oliver. But we're both going to crash. I've got this corner. It's mine. And that's fine. And drivers understand that. They respect that. They do indeed. So here we go. Jensen Chalk, make that corner yours. He runs a little bit wide, right. but he committed. He committed. Yes. Edward Haynes up in the third position now. Bernard and Theo Bradshaw closing in once again. They're going to chop and change now. Chalk losing another two positions, possibly even three positions now. Chalky falling down in the order here. It's all going to be really down to what the uh, two at the front can do. Don't rule out Edward Haynes as well, because he's still right there in third place. Yep. As everyone's still battling for these top spots. Less than a minute to go, Henry. This is looking interesting. Emerson McAndrew Urin still leading the way from Oliver Spencer. It is so, so close. Again, you can't put it on either one of these drivers, can you? Well, they complete lap number 13, and the top six are uh, separated by 1.9 seconds. Jensen Chalk's gone from the lead to two seconds off the lead. He hasn't made a mistake. Again, 
other drivers have just sort of out aggressive him. And he's now, he's not going to be Cartmaster Champion 2023, I am afraid. One of these two drivers, I think, will be the O plate of Oliver Spencer and the number 33 of Emerson McAndrew Urine. The 2020 British Bambino champion, Edward Haynes, is stalking them. And I don't think Haynes is out of this one yet either. Then there's a gap back to Kian Bernard and Theo Bradshaw. The two leading two, three microteers for the Zip Factory team. Then it's Coles Racing's Alfie Mew, Jensen Chuck, Zach Starbuck. Oliver Warner, Otis Cleary, Luke Millward, Austin Oman is your top 12. Riley Murrow has been black flagged in it. He's still circulating. That's going to get expensive. Uh, Josh Cormack, Harry Taylor, George House, Al Fimey, Arthur Farrow, Max Gilman, Grayson Wortley, Lucian Smith, Sebastian Luce, Dax Farrer, Josh Hushka. Here we go. It's game on. Final lap. Amazon McCann oh. the inside. Oh, and uh, he parked it on the apex. And... Uh, through goes Spencer. He gave the back end of McAndrew uh, Sky a healthy clap. Here comes McAndrew Uren at the inside. And now Emerson has to defend. Haynes will swing wide. Is he going to try and sell Emerson the dummy? Yes, he is. And they're all backed up there. Oh, and at the back of the pack, two carts come together. That's Jensen Chalk. Oh, it's Jensen Chalk. Chalk out of it. Well, now it's still McAndrew Uren who leads the way. Look at Edward Haynes here in second place as he battles for that one. Kim Bernard. Bernard. He's coming through as well. He's up into second place, but he's not managed to get past McAndrew Uren. He clatters into the back of him. And now he's out of there. Bernard is out of the fright for the top three spots. It is still McAndrew Uren, but now down the inside, the 44 of Theo Bradshaw comes through. Emerson McAndrew Urin is out. He's collided, I think, there yeah, with another driver. He's, he's out of it. Locked together with Edward Haynes. Theo Bradshaw has led 200 metres this entire week, but it's the last 200 metres. And Theo Bradshaw and the Zip Factory team are Cartmasters champions. Talk about biding your time until the very end. He led three corners in four days but they were the last three corners and he wins well well only two hundredths of a second i mean the last race decided by one hundredth oliver spencer comes home in p2 and coles racing's alfie mew on the podium kian bernard who i think led a little bit uh, of that last lap he finishes fourth Zach Starbuck is fifth. Luke Millwood is sixth. Then it's Otis Cleary. Paul Jensen Chalk down in eighth position. Oliver Warner ninth. Emerson McAndrew Uren tenth. Theo Bradshaw yep. started that Grand Prix final 12th. He qualified at the beginning of this weekend 25th. Like you said, Out Henry. Out of 29. He came through the entire field over the course of these three days. And again, that is why we love Kart Masters. Oh, yes. You could have a bad qualifying. And look at that. There's Luke Millwood. Luke Millwood's going through. He's yeah. come home. Luke Millwood six. has finished. Eight six, positions six, he gained. Yeah. And he's pleased Delighted. as punch. Uh, Riley Murrow's still got his visor down. I think there's going to be a, a conversation with oh, Riley. Look at the damage there to oh. Emerson. He's, luckily, he's not got a nose cone, but that NASA panel has certainly taken a beating. I... Uh, I don't think it would matter too much if there was a nose cone penalty. Uh, coming around the Mike Wilson complex, Haynes and McAndrew Uren got locked together. And there we go. Now, one of the three microteers has won. And already, Zach Starbuck, his teammate, is there. They're good buddies. Bradshaw, and, and we're waiting for the other microteer. That would be uh, Kian Bernard. But there he is. Now, we spoke to the three microteers. Uh, wait, there, 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 there we go. There, uh, oh, no words are not needed. Well, you can see there, Oliver Spencer not moving much there. I think just deflated, I think, after that one. How can you not be deflated? When you lose by 200 to the second. Yeah. Very good, because you're a star now. If Ernie Salmon calls you a star, that means you're a star. Yeah. Uh, Oliver Spencer. Oh, yeah. there's nails that not, man, Ernie. Not, uh, not exhibiting the same overjoyed emotions, but that's racing for you. It is indeed. Chris McCarthy, Chris. over to you. A spectacular race. We are welcoming down the star finish straight. Our champion, 
Theo Bradshaw coming down towards the start finish straight. What an absolutely superb drive for Theo Bradshaw, stealing it on the last lap to win. Micromax UK jumps out of the car. What a fantastic drive. We're going to have a chat with him in a second. In fact, Zach, you're going to chat to Theo Bradshaw. Well, how do you feel? I can see the emotion on your face. How do you feel? I feel really happy that I've made up all this two years just to come to Cart Masters and hopefully win it like I've just done today. Well, you've come from 12th to 1st. How did it feel on the first few laps trying to get through the pack? Um, I felt like um, dropping a bit off the pace for like the middle of the race and then made up it and then last lap battling and I came through. Well, that was brilliant. Who would you like to thank? Um, I'd like to thank my dad for mechanicing me and making all this happen. Earl uh, for um, paying for a lot of the things and actually getting me to cart masters and RPM engines for all the um, power. Thank you. Here's your GP plate. Well done. Theo Bradshaw holds it up. What a superb drive. Well done to Zach as well. Congratulations, Theo Bradshaw. Now let's go to the driver who just missed out by two hundredths of a second, Oliver Spencer. Oh, what a last lap uh, that was. Almost got it in the end, but uh, a, a great podium drive here at Car Masters. Yes, yeah, we done well all weekend. Um, it's just annoying we didn't win, but yeah, we can always come back better next time. You'll be back next year, fight for the GP play again? Hopefully. Uh, who would you like to thank? I know it's been a, a long, hard weekend for all of you and you've fought very hard. Who would you like to thank? Um, my team, my team manager, Rob, Mike, KR, my dad for bringing me and everyone else. And my mechanic, Jack. Showed why he's the British Open champion today. Well done to Oliver Spencer. Can we have a round of applause, please? Second place to Oliver Spencer. Let's go and speak to uh, third place now as the... Mechanics come down. We are going to speak with Alfie Mew. That was uh, an absolutely superb race, wasn't it? How hectic was it on that last lap? Talk us through it. It was really hectic. Like down the bottom there, I got lucky because there's two of them that spun and then I managed to jump up to third. But right place, right time and made all the right moves on that last lap. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We can see the emotion on the stop. We'll come back to yourself, Alfie Mew, but uh, there you can see what it means to Theo Bradshaw to have taken the win. Well done. Well done to them and the family. Just want to come back to yourself, uh, Alfie. Uh, I know you've got uh, plenty of people at the Coles Racing team and your family. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank Coles Racing, my school, my family, and, yeah, it's good. Well done. Third place in the Micromax UK, Alfie Mew. Congratulations to him. Uh, let's go and uh, hear from Theo Bradshaw again. Uh, what yeah. a, a superb performance. Just uh, We can see the emotion on your face, Theo. Uh, just tell us what it means to win this event. It, it, a lot of hard work has gone into it, hasn't it? Yeah, I think two years of hard work making my way up for Hondas into Micros, only doing like half a year now in the Micros, and now I've won the, the GP play at Cartmasters. Uh, and how, how was it that moment getting the embrace from uh, your mechanic coming down? Uh, how was how did that feel? Um, I, fe I felt real happy and yeah, it's a great, it's a pleasure to win Cart Masters and I think we'll probably um, hurt for another GP plate next Cart Masters. Absolutely, got to go for two. Uh, well, congratulations. We had all the Cart Masters champions here this weekend out on the podium uh, earlier. They know what it means. Theo Bradshaw, now you know what it means. That was a superb performance. Uh, well done. One more time, come on to our champion. That was a superb performance. Well done to Theo Bradshaw. Finishing in a P1. Well, next, I mean, Henry, just want to come up to you for a second, if I may. Yes. Uh, what, what a superb end to the race and well, what great emotions. You've commentated on many of these. You know what that's like for the drivers after what you said to me in the live lounge as well. Oh, exactly. That when you just looked over and you saw that uh, Theo in tears, his dad in tears, there's his dad. Uh, you know, I'd love to, love to be able just to hear what his thoughts are. You know, just as a winning dad. And uh, yeah, and, and all the parents up here in the commentary box, <laughs> we all started getting a little bit of a quiver in our lower lip when you saw that there. So all the mums and dads up here in the commentary box feeling the same emotion. I mean, that's three races down, Chris. Two of them have been decided by less than two hundredths of a second.
An incredibly special moment there, wasn't it? And a great support from the all the people oh, yes. here in the grandstand. What a race. I mean, uh, we're putting down some pretty fantastic races and stories uh, so far. Uh, congratulations once again to Theo Bradshaw and the team. But we now must turn our attention to the next class coming out onto the track. Now, let's give a round of applause for our Grand Prix finalists in Minimax 950. Support for the drivers, please, as they make their way down. No doubt a lot of nerves out there. Let's give them some encouragement as they head down at the start finish straight to line up on the grid. Starting on pole position will be the number 91, Albert Friend. That is where uh, he started in the pre-final. And starting in second, Cole Denham, that's where he started in the pre-final. Not the best qualifying for him, uh, but he's came through since. Uh, Albert, you've been at the front pretty much all weekend. A great drive in the pre-final. Think we can replicate it now? Um, I hope so, but it's always tough at Cart Masters to get away, and it's always a fight till the end. But um, I think it's going to be a scrap, but... Um, I hope I could get away. Do you think you can use the experience you have running at the front to uh, adapt to any scenarios that might come up like we just saw there in the last race? Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. I, I sense the confidence. Well, good luck to Albert Friend. Let's come over to uh, Cole Denham, Dan Holland Racing driver. Uh, Cole, coming through the, the field this weekend, I, I know it wasn't maybe the best qualifying, but you've done really, really well. Uh, looking forward now to the race? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough race. Hopefully I can come out and top in there when the GP play. Yeah, that, that's what we're here for, isn't it? I know you've put in a lot of hard work over the weekend. Excited for it now? Yeah, very. Well, best of luck to Cole Denham. Let's uh, have a walk down. I think we've got one more minute. So let's go and speak to, uh, we've got uh, Charlie Wolfitt here, PF plate holder, Joshua Griffin as well. Uh, Finley Lines is not here. I'd love to speak to him though. He gained 10 places uh, in the last race. Uh, coming through the field, Finley. Uh, now, gain 10, uh, four more to go, is it? So uh, where can you can do this? Hopefully. Yeah, well, hopefully you can. Uh, let's uh, have a look. You just had a, a great result as well there for some of the zip drivers. So I uh, uh, think we can now go and add to that. Hopefully. Definitely. Hopefully. We'll let you get ready uh, for the race. Let's uh, uh, head down the grid and quickly speak to Jesse Phillips. I believe we've got time. Uh, well, 1-1 one, one today uh, already. Uh, can we now make it two? We've seen uh, two, well, two drivers do the, the double. Are we going to get a third one? Well, hopefully. It would mean it would be an amazing co accomplishment. Uh, we're starting from seventh, and if we got all the way to the lead and won, that would be amazing. Well, best of luck, Jesse Phillips, uh, coming in with a huge amount of confidence. I think we are clearing the grid. I was going to try and get down to the back because Will Green uh, is starting right down the back, and we saw him finish in second place just a little while ago. So he's already had a podium today. Let's see what he can do in uh, this one. I believe we've recovered in the commentary box. So let's go back to uh, Henry Bodet and Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, a very exciting last final, that one. Really looking forward to this one, though. Minimax 950. This is going to be an exciting one. Albert Friend and Cole Denham starting this one on the front row. Let's take you through the starting line up. Minimax 950, race 53 of the weekend, Grand Prix time. It is Albert Friend and Cole Denham who start this one on the front row. Keep an eye on them. They qualified 8th and 7th on Friday. Charlie Wolf at the PF plate. Can he replicate what happened in the Water Swift with the PF plate? Uh, finishing very close up the top order. Joshua Griffin starting alongside on that one as well. Finley Lines and Charles Kitely, they go from row three. Jesse Phillips, who already has won a GP plate, can he do it again in this one? Jacob Ashcroft starting alongside. Oliver Meek and Tom Reed, they go from row number five and the top ten. Harry Freeman and Archie Lovett round out the top six rows. Noah Barham and Privateer Ellis Bell, what can he do from the seventh row of the grid? Remember, the Vera Tools, £3,000 worth of prizes. Can he do anything from there? Charlie King or Isaac Barker? They start on the eighth row. Zianic Babacek and Miles Burton, they go from row nine. Cody Lepatrell, his first time racing here this weekend at PFI. He starts on, uh, alongside Stanley Clark on row 10. Laurie McVeigh and Isabella Sansmore-Wilson go from row 11 from Jack Collins and Ed Khan. Eric Gilsnan and Jasper Oaks go from row 13 from Kieran Stewart and Matisse Jan. Aaron Mater and Hugh Hobson go from row 15. Harry Neeson from Albi Lapper. Will Green rounds out the 17 rows. 
And this is going to be an exciting one. Henry, drivers already making their way to the final corner. England, England, Scotland, the Czech Republic, Ireland, the United Arab Emirates, Guernsey and Singapore, all represented on this grid. They come into the tram lines, lights are out. Albert Friend leads them into turn number one and slotting into second place, the PF plate of Charlie Wolfitt through the Bruno Ferrari S's and up onto the Uncle Tyrone banking for the first time. Now, onto the bridge through turn three they'll flick right through turn four the cam that that's just the that's not the camera moving <laughs> that is the carts moving the camera so privateer drivers harry freeman ellis bell and denek babacek they've all got it well babacek at the moment has the best finish for a privateer 14th position in fact i didn't check the honda results were there any uh I didn't check the honda results alfie mayor and drew david that was micromax I uh, didn't check those results, but I think his 14th place is still the best of the Hondas. Lots of support coming in for Ellis Bell uh, his mum and his granddad watching from home. Now it's game on. Friend, Denham, Wolfit, Griffin, Lines, Kitely, Phillips and Ashcroft. This race could be Jesse Phillips' chance to make a little bit of history. It certainly could as 14 minutes remain of this race is down the inside there goes Cole Denham Three and wide. now Friend comes through as well and now Cole Denham gets a boot up the back side as Friend Finley Lines now comes through into third place now very close there's been a coming together oh, oh and off the track that's the a very bent steering rod Oliver Meek yeah has made it almost all the way up the banking as this snarling pack of Mini Max cart head down towards turn uh, the second hairpin. Harry Freeman is the leading privateer in this race, and he is up into 11th position, challenging Jesse Phillips, who has just won a GP plate. You can see Jesse the fusion colours, and in fact, Harry Freeman has got past. Oh dear, that is that Oliver is, Meek. That's Oliver. He's back going again. He's just realised that his steering column is by no means straight, and his race is run. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly is. That is a disaster for Oliver Meek. But Friend retakes the lead and holds on to it now. And that gap opening up to four tenths of a second from Denham. Charlie Wolfitt under pressure from Joshua Griffin as they go up into the banking for the second time. And oh. Jasper Oaks seeing a five second in race time penalty being added to his time here. Look at the drama here for third place. Jacob Ashcroft just passed about three people at the inside of the banking in one go to move the number 22 Dan Holland racing cart into third position. And now Anthony and I are joined in the commentary box by Chris McCarthy. Chris, uh, you, luckily not much has happened in the first two laps of this race. Uh, but you can see Albert Friend, Cole Denham, two drivers who are battling for the British title uh, along with Jacob Ashcroft. So the main players are all at the front. Yeah, very close out there, isn't it? In the early stages of the race, Albert Friend now has the task to try and control this race. And Cole Denham has a decision to make. Does he go by or does he work with him? Mechanics on the right-hand side of our screen will be giving them that encouragement. We've got the number 36 on screen there trying to work through as well. The top 16 carts all in a row. Yeah. Down to Isabella Stansmore Wilson in 16th. Cody the Patruels in this league group. So is Ellis Bell. So is Charlie King, Harry Freeman. Side by side for the lead, Chris. In towards the first hairpin change of lead. Cole Denham taking it from Albert Friend, who immediately responds by trying to tell him he wants to work with him. But Cole Denham <laughs> is not having any of it at all. These two, as you mentioned, fighting with each other in the British Championships. They know each other very well. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to back each other into the pack behind, aren't they? And this is uh, classic tactics in cadet racing where you would just think, right, yeah, you've tried to get into the lead. Oh, no, I don't want you with me anymore. I'll back you into everyone else behind and see if they can get past you as well. Yeah, so this often happens in Carter. You see that thing. Okay, a driver will just sort of ease off the pace a little bit to make his rival defend against the, the chasing pack. And that occasionally 
gives him a chance to get away. George Russell used to be a, an expert at that yeah. by just backing the drivers behind him up. He waited to hear a little tap on his rear bumper, then he would go and lead the rest to fight amongst the minor placings. Well, good to see fastest lap from Will Green. He's already made 10 places up to 23rd. Uh, and we've also had uh, Abby Laper uh, come up to 20th, gaining oh. 12 places. So big movers coming through, big battles going on out yeah. front. Finley yeah. Lines, that was having a little nibble at the inside of Noah Barham. I think that was a successful uh, pass for Finley Lines. Yep, he nods his head. He was listening, obviously, Anthony. Mm, yeah, it certainly was, wasn't he? Ten minutes to go in this one, and he's making the moves. And now Finley didn't do overly too well in the Water Swift class, but he's got redemption here in this because he's doing much, much better in the Mini Max class. Uh, running with the DHR team this time around in this one, but certainly he's in that top fright. You can see him there with his green helmet, but Friend still leads the way, and it's a sizable gap. Now, where are our privateers in this one, Henry? Looking uh, down, Harry Freeman's currently in 10th place. Yep, so uh, that's the Ellis, best result for a privateer so far. Ellis Bell's in 14th. Oh, oh side by side. Oh, sorry, Anthony. No. Jacob Ashcroft. Sorry, uh, Cole Denham, the 62. Charlie Wolf with the Synergy Factory team. The PF plate is sort of... Well, he's a meat in a Dan Holland racing sandwich because you've got Jacob Ashcroft right behind him and another Dan Holland racing cart, that's at number 27, Noah Barham, just behind that. Uh, yes. No, uh, Cody the Patrowell is running in the... Oh, we've, we've asked, we've checked, and uh, Cody has said he's not a privateer. Sorry, Bobby, uh, on, on the live chat there. But uh, with the prize that's on offer, Trent Valley Kart Club have been extremely careful. And then this morning... Uh, Claudia Short went round every single driver, all 305 of them, as they went out for morning warm-up, double-checking whether they were the team or whether they were a privateer. Got the list, and Cody Patrol's not on the privateer's list, sorry to say. Look at this fight here. The timing cannot tell the difference between first all the way down to 23rd as again they battle for second place. And Halber Friend again comes through both Jacob Ashcroft and Charlie Wolfit. It's chopping and changing all the way throughout. Hey, you know I said I missed Honda Cadet. Well, I think we found a new one here. Well, I mean, Mini Max was around before, but they were on the bigger carts. You know, these are the smaller carts. So this is like cadets with more power. Yes. Mm. You know, like a special offer. <laughs> Two for one. Oh, there's a lead change. Albert Friend. Uh, Chris, again, you've got so many different teams up here. Back when you were racing, there weren't as much variety of teams battling at the front, was there? Just go no. to show how professional these teams have got. And also, you know, the, the, the standard of competition just goes up and up and up. Yeah, we've seen a couple of demonstrations of teams working together with ORM and Fusion yes. as well, working together to make sure it was just a, a two-way fight for the lead. This time, that's very gonna, that's going to be a hard task, isn't it? We've got uh, the Synergy team up there, Dan Holland, a Zip, Strawberry Racing as well, all fighting away. And there, in the middle of our picture, Jacob Ashcroft, is he about to be passed by Finley Lines? No, there was a change behind that, uh, oh. in fact, and that looked like Joshua Griffin making a place. Cody Lepatruel has retired with a mechanical issue. And uh, the long drive back to St. Sampson, Jersey, in Guernsey, rather, begins. And, oh, 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 a driver on the grass. Oh, that is... Oh, oh and then oh, another one. Another one. Must oh. have been contact there further been, back. Yeah, that's the 74 of Charlie King going backwards. And it looked like a Sam Pollock racing cart. It was Stanley Clark who was the driver pulling off the side. So we've got 31 drivers left because somehow Oliver Meek is still out there. Bent steering column and all. There is the number 78 cart. Your leading privateer, Harry Freeman, chasing the KR Sport number 64 of Charles Kitely. Again, Chris, you know, we go back to when we were racing, you know, when, when you were racing, there were a lot more privateers back, the, back then. It's harder and harder for privateers to succeed but yet some of them still do. Harry Freeman being a prime example. Yeah, we're just taking the chances when they come, isn't it? And trying to work with some of the teams, spotting that teams are working together and going with them as well. Very difficult for the drivers to manage mentally uh, when they are out there because ultimately it is all down to them. Are we getting a two-car breakaway forming here? with Albert Friend and Cole Denham. Uh, Wolf is doing his best to go with them, but uh, it certainly looks like there's signs that they could be starting to escape and maybe are now communicating and trying to break away a little bit oh, better. Oh, yeah, uh, you know, different teams, but yet they race against each other week in and week out. The closer, Cole Denham from 
uh, Dun uh, sorry, Armdale in Scotland. He knows how to separate Albert Friend from the pack. Uh, look, look, hold on. You, you see a wildlife program. You, you see the lion. The lion, the pack of lions, they, they eventually they, they pick on a weak member of the herd. And they sort of separate that member away. I'm not saying Albert Friend is weak in any way, shape, or form, but it's the same. You get the thing. Uh, Cole Denham, he's sort of, right, I'm going to push Albert away because I want him all to myself later on. And there he goes. Yep, going for the move down the inside into hairpin one, as now a black flag has come out for Cody Le Patrel. Unfortunately, not coming in after seeing the technical flag still side by side, though. Now, Denham in the lead of this one, but Albert Friend's going to come back at it instantly, yep. side by side between the two oh. of them again, and this is going to allow Wolfit to close back in. Look at him. Look how quickly they've closed back up. They lost all that time, and now Denham is under immense pressure once again. The double could well and truly be possible. Jesse Phillips, fastest lap, and was around half a second quicker than some of the drivers ahead. He's caught them, he's made his first move in that pack, and he is about to make another. He's the second last car in this queue. I think we should keep one eye on him with the confidence he has, but battle for the lead is oh. on. Are we gonna see someone send it? Not quite, but uh, I'd be keeping an eye on Phillips. Albert, Albert Friend gets a warning. warning. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, now that Cole Denham, he had pushed Albert Friend away, he made the move. That was part of the plan. What wasn't part of the plan was Albert Friend coming back at Cole Denham. And now we've got a lead train of nine with Jesse Phillips, the back of this lead train. Denham back to the front. And this time, Friend gets freight trained. And he's down to third. He's got Ashcroft alongside him. He's got Griffin right behind him. And he's got the number 22, uh, sorry, 27, and Noah Barr. I'm trying to get up the inside now as well. Finley lines that bright green crash helmet for the Zip Factory team also involved and you're right Chris uh, there's Jesse Phillips he was ninth we go. he's now seventh stalking his prey Jesse Phillips it's amazing he, he struggled a little bit at the start because he's not used to racing Rotax yeah it's hard jumping back isn't it yeah but I mean the, the confidence that he's got after winning a GP plate he he feels invincible now he mm. feels every time he steps in the cart he can go out and dominate yeah, I think it was a bit of an adjustment period at the start. He's had a weekend to get used to it, but different when it's finals. Oh. Albert Friend down the inside of Charlie Wolfick for P2. Jesse Phillips down the inside of Joshua Griffin for P6. Yep, he's up one more place. Here comes Harry Freeman now. Uh, Harry Freeman there in the blue and black cart. He is in eighth position. Ellis Bell's the next best place privateer in 14th. Cody Lepatrua has finally made it back to the pits. Uh, Hugh Hobson is running in last place uh, with Oliver Meek. Then uh, Mitash Jane getting a lot of support online. Mitash is 27th, the Indian driver. Yeah, certainly a very good one with the time quickly running out in this one, though. Denham's in a bit of a dilemma here right now uh, because he is leading. He's not got a teammate right behind him. He's got a proper rival right behind him as well. It's a mental game again at around 50, 60 miles an hour that these drivers are having to deal with. They are going so, so fast. And these carts are so low to the ground as well that they actually feel like they're going about 100, 200 miles an hour, really, doesn't yeah, it? It does indeed. Now, watch at the back of the camera oh. shot. There is a black and white and blue oh. Argenti Motorsport oh. car. As one. Jesse Phillips picks off Ashcroft. Is that? Oh, wheel smoke. Into the moment. Phillips braves it out. Oh, Harry Freeman. Freeman. Wow, look at Freeman coming straight through, reading the road perfectly there and getting two for one in hairpin one. Finley Lines coming back through now. Phillips is starting to struggle now as I think he's reached the peak of his pace here as the rest of the grid now starting to break away. And look at Harry Freeman. He's at the back of the leading group. Yes, indeed. This could be a big payday for Harry Freeman if he can just stay where he is. And I've got to say that Phillips and Barham and Lines are, are doing... Harry Freeman, a huge favour by battling away. Now, we talk about the Argenti car. There it is. That is Will Green. And Will Green is now 12th after starting 33rd. Ooh, the little concertina effect there. Oh, 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 no. oh, and that is Charlie Wolfitt. He spat out of the pack. The PF plate, who oh. won the clubby here, is nowhere in the GP plate. His final is over. 
that was six rear wheels making yeah. contact with each other. And Charlie Wolf, it was very lucky there, Chris, that it wasn't an even bigger he, accident. He was. And uh, the battle out front, far from over. It's just uh, good. They all walked away from that one. I think uh, Anthony's right. Jesse Phillips got to a point and that momentum has now seriously slowed down. But once those four drivers out front begin to battle, when the bell rings on that one, which should be this time around, any one of these drivers in picture could then go and take victory. Over to you guys to call this one home. Best of luck because it's going to be a close one out there. Yep, and you might be interviewing a privateer driver, Chris McCarthy, because Harry Freeman is now running in P4. Finley Lines is fifth. The clock is about to strike zero. It is Denham from Griffin, from Friend, and from Freeman. Albie Friend runs a bit wide. Josh Griffin over the inside curb. Harry Freeman sticks his nose at the inside of this year's Rotax Max International Trophy champion in this class, Albert Friend. And Albert Friend holds him off. Now Albert's going to get a great run. Watch Albert if he can get some track, some clear track, which he can't. And Freeman now trying the crossover move. This is fantastic between these drivers. Look how close they are. Finley Lines has now latched onto the back of this group as well. It could go to any one of these top 11 well, drivers. Yeah, don't count out Jacob Ashcroft and Jesse Phillips. No. Friend up to second. Harry Freeman onto the podium. What an opportunistic move for Harry Freeman. Look at this. This is a privateer on fire here. He is absolutely flying through this field into third place. Last lap board comes out then for Minimax 950 and it is Cole Denham leading from Albert Friend. Privateer Harry Freeman and Finley Lines in the zip cart there in P4. Lines to the inside. He's looking for a podium here and possibly even a GP plate as he goes through. No, Freeman denies him the move as he go back off the start finish, off the bridge, down in towards Hairpin. One they go. The top two have broken away now. Cole Denham goes defensive. Friend on the outside on a very late lunge and a break in, but he doesn't make the apex. He doesn't. Harry Freeman is about half an hour. Oh, what a crossover from, from Albert Friend. They both were. Wise. Here comes Harry Freeman. This is a £3,000 prize mistake for the driver of the blue and black cart if he finishes top privates here in any class. And you can't finish any higher than first. It's Cole, the closer, Denham. He is going to close out another one. Who's going to be on the podium? Will we get a private here on the podium at Cartmasters 2023? The answer is yes. Denham is your champion from Friend and Harry Freeman. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. One and a half seconds covers the top 11. Wow. They call him the closer. He put himself in the right place at the right time. 12 months ago, Cole Denham lost his license at this event. He was excluded. Penalty points. He lost his license. What a way to gain redemption. Cole Denham, Albert Friend, and Harry Freeman on the podium. Ashcroft is fourth. Finley Lines, a top five finish for Finley. Josh Griffin in sixth. Then it's Will Green, Jesse Phillips. Well, the double is not on. There's still drivers in junior and senior that can do it, but uh, none of the drivers in Inter will do it. Uh, further back in the order, Tom Reed, the farmer, finishing in 11th place. Ellis Bell, 14th. Albi Lapper at 19 places. Will Green at 26, 26 places. What a drive after a terrible pre-final. Will Green to come back into the top 10, finishing in P7. You've got to take it to him. There he is on your screen, the 54. I think he was just a. I can't believe I'm here. Well, that's a drive and a half. That is a drive and a half from Will Green. And there is Cole Denham. Uh, wow. He's, got, I, he's going to find Dad, is what he's doing. Harry Freeman, he doesn't know where he's going. Let's find that. Where's that Where's that emotion? Where is it? There's Dad. Oh, no, is that, that's... That's that, not Dad. That's not Dad. That's not Dad. There's Dad. <laughs> oh, 12 months ago, Cole Danham left this without a racing license because Motorsport UK had taken it off him for too many penalty points. He will leave PFI this year with a GP plate in his pocket. What a final that is. That is Kart Masters in a nutshell, oh. ladies and gentlemen. The top 11 separated by one and a half seconds. I mean, what can you say about that? But this man here on your screen, Cole Denham, the number 62 for Dan Holland Racing. Finally, redemption. Like you said, Henry, a GP yep. plate to his name. 
Albert Friend. What a drive from him. Oh. Again, you can't take it away from him. Solid, solid performance. He started it on a pole. He finished it in second. But this man here, Harry Freeman, a privateer in the category, and he puts it on the podium. Chris McCarthy, we're exhausted. Over to yes. you. What another fantastic race and what a fantastic win for Cole Denham who jumps out of the car. Let's give him a round of applause. Our Grand Prix champion in Mini Max 950. Second place going to Albert Friend. He almost got it, but can we have a round of applause for Albert Friend in second? And on the podium, up 10 places, the privateer Harry Freeman as well. Let's have a round of applause for them. Superb drive. Let's talk to our winner, Cole Denham for Dan Holland Racing. Uh, an intense last few laps, an intense entire race, wasn't it? There was no respite uh, at all. Tell us how you're feeling to be the GP play winner. Yeah, I'm over the moon. I'm so happy that I can run GP boy now. <laughs> And we can just see the emotion I and mean, tell us what it means to you or all the hard work you've had to put in to get this. Oh, it means everything to, to me. Uh, I've been working so hard for this. And you put in a really superb performance. Tell us, when you came out of the last corner there and you saw the chequered flag, how did that feel? Oh, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Who would you like to thank, Cole? I'd love to thank Dan Holland Racing, Time Racing Engines, my mum, dad, and everyone supporting me over the weekend and Nessie for the main coach sessions. Well, you might have seen I just unclipped this. Cole Denham, that's what you've been working for. GP Play winner, face the crowd, please hold it up. Let's give a round of applause to our winner, Cole Denham. Second place, let's go and have a chat with Albert Friend, a podium, a fantastic podium uh, off pole position. Uh, you led the race many times in that race, gave it everything you had, just missed out. I know you're going to be disappointed, uh, but a, a podium nevertheless, yeah, you, you must be happy to have come away with the podium. Yeah, um, I've worked really hard this weekend. It's just a shame I couldn't win the final. I know, it is a shame, but you're going to be back to fight for more. There's no doubt about that, right? Yeah. Uh, tell us who you'd like to thank, Albert. Uh, Cream Racing Engines, my mechanic, Lee Taylor, my dad, my mum and my brother, and everyone supporting me, Strawberry Racing as well. Oh, well, Lee's just here now, and uh, you've got a lot of support out there in the grandstand as well. Please, round of applause for second, Albert Friend. Let's go and find our privateer, Harry Freeman. Wow. Coming up 10 places there, or coming up from out of the top 10 to uh, get that one uh, up eight places. Wow, you must be absolutely over the moon with that. Yeah, I didn't expect it from 11, yeah. especially. Uh, and you're a privateer as well. Tell us uh, 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 how long you've been racing, uh, what the setup is for you guys as well. Um, I think like five years or something. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just didn't expect to be here. And how hard is it as a privateer to fight against uh, the big teams around you as well who have won this many times? Uh, hard because they can just push away sometimes and it's impossible to catch them. As a privateer, I know you've got a lot of people working around you. Tell us who you'd like to thank. Uh, my family, uh, RPM, Project One, uh, that's it. Good stuff. Well, well done. A privateer on the podium, a superb performance. Please, a round of applause for Harry Freeman. Well, Henry, I don't know if you are still in position, but uh, uh, I want to come back to you just to reflect on what a fantastic performance and the prize that could be going now to Harry Freeman after that. Yes, I mean, I don't think it would have sunk in quite yet. There are still four classes to go, Chris. Obviously, uh, there's plenty more opportunities for privateers to do well, but third place at Cartmasters for a privateer. Somebody asked on the live chat the last time a privateer won at Cartmasters. It was Minimax 2012, I believe. No, it was Theo Macouris. Theo Macouris, 2018 Honda Cadet. It was the last time we had a, a privateer win at Cartmasters. We don't get many of them, so that's an especially sweet feeling. You've got carts behind you, Chris. Next race is coming up. Well, let's welcome out our drivers, please, a round of applause as they come out onto the track, our Grand Prix finalists in Senior X30. 
Starting on pole position, the PF plate holder, Marcus Littlewood, and alongside him will be number 77, Henry Gregory. We will let Marcus get the car down and we will go and have a chat to him now. Uh, well, PF plate holder as well, so you've won a similar race to this. This one a little bit more difficult though, isn't it? GP plate now. Uh, of course, never easy, but uh, yeah, we'll give it our best shot and see what happens. That's all we can hope for, really. And for those who maybe haven't been tuning in, tell us how close the racing has been so far in Senior X30. I mean, it's been three whole days of racing, very tiring, but yeah, all comes down to this. Whatever happens, happens. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to gun for it and see what happens. And I know you put in a lot of hard work over the years to get yourself in a position like this. You think you've learned enough now to uh, go out there and win this? Of course. <laughs> Stuff. Well, best of luck to Marcus Littlewood. Motorsport UK, Young Driver of the Year uh, as well. So congratulations to him for that, Henry Gregory. Uh, getting the gloves on. Uh, hello to you as well. Uh, for Jamie Green Racing as well, already had a podium uh, today. Uh, yeah. Do you think we can add, add some more to that now? Uh, hopefully. Uh, see if it goes round. But as long as we keep it on the road for the first few laps and stay in that front fight, it should be all right. Uh, what's the key to the, this race going to be? Is it going to be staying in that breakaway group or do you think it's possible to break away? Uh, I think it's going to be quite a close race. All these guys are quite quick. And I think just to keep it at the front in the fight and it should be all there to take it back. We certainly gained some places uh, yeah. in the pre-final. 11 places uh, gained from Henry Gregory, as did this man here, Jack Nettleship, but in a superb performance in that pre-final. You've done a lot of hard work in that pre-final now to get yourself in this position. Uh, confident going into this one now? Um, yeah, quite confident. I just need to get away at the start, really. I don't get, don't get held back, really. So... Hopefully, as long as it goes cleanly, we should be all right. It can change very quickly in Kart Masters. You can be in the lead group and drop back from it. How tough is it now just to stay in that lead train all the way for 15 minutes plus an additional lap? Yeah, it's really tough. you just got to make sure you make the right decisions and don't do anything stupid. Well, best of luck to you. Uh, we will leave Jack Nettleship and we will go to our reigning champion, uh, Harry Platten, who is down in 17th place. So we might have to uh, walk a little bit to find him, but uh, we will make that trip down uh, to find Harry Platten. Uh, Gus Lawrence, by the way, uh, down there, the number one car, dropped seven places, was leading. Bart Harrison started on the front row as well. So watch out for those two guys. They're fifth uh, and eighth respectively. Uh, our defending champion Harry Blatton, let's come to you. I mean a uh, little bit of work to do to, to go and get this one but uh, you think you got enough time to do it? Yeah for sure I mean it's cart masters anything's possible so um, try and have a good start see what happens but the main aim is to win the race. So. And it's nothing to lose now is it? No not at all it never is. Well best of luck we'll let you have final words uh, with your mechanic uh, and we will have that one last look down at the field. We can see Rashan Chigarimbo over there hasn't been in the car for uh, three years and came through really well in the pre-final got a five second penalty uh, which dropped him down. All over here as well we have Michael Shin uh, FIA Formula 3 driver in that number 23 car was racing at uh, the Hungaring two weeks ago at Spa last week and uh, Michael Shin now with us to uh, keep himself in shape and uh, uh, he's definitely going to be doing that. Look at the, the size of the field we have out there. It goes back 18 rows. Michael Shin bang in the middle of that. But bang at the front of it is Marcus Littlewood and Henry Gregory. Guys, they're firing up. Over to you up in commentary. The Senior X30 Grand Prix is up next. Marcus Littlewood and Henry Gregory go from row number one. A privateer on the front row. Jack Nettleship and Cade McQueen start on row number two. Bart Harrison and Morgan Porter go from row three. Harley Keeble and Gus Lawrence are next with Sam Shaw and Fiona McLaughlin rounding out the top ten. Alistair Cresswell and Sam Heading are on row number six with Harry Cottrell and Louis Johnson Cool on row seven. Watch out for Harry Burgoyne Jr. and Harvey Rivey on row eight and defending champion Harry Platten on row nine with Rashan Shigarimbo. Connor Grant and Michael Shin round out your top 20. Kalai Atkins should move forward from row 11, which he shares with Christopher Bingham, Reese Newburn and Aditya Kulkarni on row 12. Alex Duncan, Harry Ewell, Callum Tanner, Tiger Dixon, Raphael Jesus from Angola is next, then George Mayle, Finney McKee, William Smith, Kian Gohill and Dayton Coulthard, who is 
at the back of the field. Very, very quickly, Scott Gollings currently leads the prediction competition on 11 points. Second on 10 points is Sam Cook. A lot of people tied for third on nine points. Don't talk about the commentator's predictions because I I'm like, last. I like right, that one. Here we go. This is going to be another one. We've had a privateer on the podium. Jack Freeman's toolbox isn't safe yet. Henry Gregory, he is a privateer. He's not with Jamie Green Racing. We double checked this morning. He's in a garage on his own. He does have a graphics kit. Let's see, he does some work with Jamie Green. But it's a privateer on the front row. It's Marcus Littlewood. We'll go around again. Yeah, false start on that breathe. one. Breathe, Henry, breathe. You're okay. Ah. You're okay. Right, race director Nigel Edwards on that one depicting that that was not a legal start and sends the field round one more time. Two more failed attempts. Oh, the game of shut up and listen. Yes, we've only played it once so far this weekend and you missed it, Henry. I know, I was doing an interview with Chris McCarthy and I missed my favourite game. Ah, now there's a very interested spectator. Um, yes, it's, a, it's a Dave Luff on the right-hand side there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, the uh, mechanic. I'm sure, I'm sure the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you would have seen who that was. But he is a Formula 1 driver in his past life. He's just a sporting dad here yeah. today. Very passionate about uh, the sport of karting. And, uh, yeah, certainly excited to see what his lad can do in this one. Starting at the back of the grid after a complete axle failure in oh, the yes. final. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly a It was one. a good one. It was. But, uh, thankfully, uh, Dayton's all good. And uh, he will get a good start from this one. Here we go, then. As we enter into the final section, we've gone past the red line, meaning there is no overtaking. I've got to say, Henry, the back yep. of the grid is not formed up whatsoever. Um, well, that's their problem. Um, you know, if they be messing about. And, look at that, uh, yeah. Look how spread out it is. Well, they're going to have to sort themselves out. Too sweet. As, uh, well, Marcus Littleman is doing them a favour. He's slowing, slowing the field down. down. Wait for the acceleration line. Lights are out. We're off and racing in Senior X30. Marcus Littlewood leads him. Caden McQueen gets sideways. Henry Gregory holds on to second place. They go underneath the bridge, out onto the banking. 35 carts all safely through turn number three. And now they spread out, coming down through turn four. Oh, oh. one of the S8 racing carts in trouble. And a, a broadside, he got turned back around right the right way yeah very lucky there and uh hopefully uh, probably holding a bit of damage there onto the car but crucially good getaway though from marcus little with the oh, pf place harrison good getaway. what's happened to harrison he's yeah. dropped like a stone in trouble from the start he's down about 15th position and <laughs> it, well this is a snarling midfield pack if ever i saw one and that is the what's fusion motorsport that was rash and chigarimbo with a white nose cone he was battling hard here but Caden McQueen has made good progress as we complete lap number one it's Littlewood McQueen Gregory Porter Gus Lawrence and Harry Burgoyne Jr the driver with more podiums the British Championship than any other driver in the modern era he is also gaining ground he's up to 14th position uh, that would be 13th after getting past Sam Heading through turn one. Oh yes and okay well Henry Gregory has fallen to fifth, and I have to say that uh, Harry Neeson will be uh, Harry Freeman will be very happy with that because that means that he remains the best placed privateer after five out of the eight uh, Grand, uh, Grand Prix. But there's a long, long way to go. Look at the field fanning out. All 35 drivers still in the race, and uh, so many different teams, different chassis. Uh, there's Dayton Coulthard. Uh, let's have a look. Dayton, well, up he's 10 places drive. already. Yeah, he's had a solid start to that race, up to P25. Keep a close eye on him. Uh, very distinctive helmet just going through shot there. You can see now into the final corner. He has got some close company there just ahead of him of Harry Cottrell for the S8 racing team. Uh, 12 and a half minutes to go, plus one lap on this one, Henry. Marcus Hillwood not pulling away from the rest of the field, and Caden McQueen with a lightning start. He gained two positions at the start of that one. I, I, I'd hope to see if we can see a replay of the start of this oh, one, but a change go. for the lead as Caden McQueen looks to the inside, gets it done, and sideways side. Oh, Morgan Porter and uh, Gus Lawrence getting a bit touchy there. 
perfectly, as they try to go for the move. Perfectly executed from Caden McQueen yeah. there. And now, Littlewood tags onto his rear bumper. Lawrence having to defend, third going to the Fullerton S's. I have to say, McQueen is a very popular choice in the prediction competition. So is Gus Lawrence. In fact, senior expert, he's got more. It'll be Marcus Little has been picked by a couple of people. So is Gus Lawrence, Caden, Harry Platten, uh, Sam Shaw, Harry Burgoyne Jr., Kalai Atkins. Uh, looking down there, Morgan Port has been picked by a couple. Oh, and, that and that's is Sam, Sam Heading. Heading. Sam Heading out of the race in the barriers at the final corner, and his GP fight is over. Oh, and, and there's another one. So is the number 35 cart. That's Finley McKee for S8 Racing. And Marshall's running off camera there. That's never a good sign. That was just a retrieve, Finley McKee. Here we go, down the hill towards to hairpin number one. Sam Shaw dives at the inside to pass Henry Gregory. And I have to say, or was that Henry Gregory? Or it was, or it was a so, Harley Keeble. Yeah, Harley Keeble's there. Harley Finn, Keeble. Mac Finn McLaughlin's there as well. Finn's having a fantastic final. He's up into P6 here. He's gained four positions. Finn's been not on our radar in this one, but nope. it's surprising that we say that because he is a very talented driver uh, racing in the IAMA Euro Series, Champions of the Future, and in the FIA uh, European Karting Championships yep. as well over in Europe. He has just been... He's been there in the races, but right now he's looking very strong and he's up into P5. And uh, Kalai Atkins' mum has been on and uh, she is watching back home as we've got to change for second place, have we? Yes, Gus Lawrence into P2. Oh, do you know what? I, I, I've got to say, I could watch Caden McQueen and Gus Lawrence battle all day long. Uh, I they, could probably watch it for about five corners until something happens. No, no, I mean... Uh, 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 they're very hard racers. They are very hard racers. Uh, but uh, again, there's so much respect between the drivers here in uh, X30. They don't always see eye to eye, but they do respect each oh, other. <laughs> that's Bart Harrison. Uh, on it, that's on his teammate. See, respect. Yeah. No, teammate out the oh. way. And now oh. Bart goes grass tracking. And oh, Harry Burgoyne on the grass as well. And look at that. That's Alistair Cresswell picking up a couple of positions. And he now gets elbowed wide by Harry Burgoyne Jr. Uh, Alistair Cresswell for the Tim Wilson Motorsport uh, team. And Cresswell having a good run. He is up into 13th position. Harry Platten, the GP plate, here, Force One. So, less than 10 minutes to go in this race, plus one lap. Keeping on oh, this one there, Henry Keeble. Gregory defending from Keeble. I think Keeble got through. Yeah. And Keeble did get through, yes, indeed. And again, goes defensive into Hepin one here. And now Harrison runs wide. And Bart Harrison goes through in this contact and Keeble off the track. Gregory and Keeble coming together out of Hepin number one. And Keeble goes off the circuit, loses several positions. Callie Atkins has come through. There was uh, Dayton Coulthard absolutely sending it down the inside through uh, tunnel one. And I saw there on my screen, Harley Keeble, the number 11 on the digiboard. Uh -oh. Five second time penalty for... Harley Keeble, what a disaster. Yep, the MDL motorsport driver entered by Sodi Kart USA is not going to take the GP plate at this one. Rashan Chigarimbo, he's just behind um, Bart Harrison there. He is uh, up into 13th place. Atkins is 14th. Then Aditya Kulkarni, Keeble, Cresswell, uh, Cottrell, Ryby, Grant and Dayton Coulthard in 21st with Bingham and Harry Ewell next in line. Change and for the a lead. change for the lead at the corner of my eye. And Gus Lawrence has it. So Lawrence, who had a, he had a penalty in qualifying on the Friday for some sort of nose cone infringement. It's been a bit of a slog for Gus Lawrence. as, uh, And then he had a, a problem with the cart in Heat 1 on Friday, I remember. Yeah. McQueen... Giving chase now, Littlewood. Okay, Marcus Littlewood, he's been metronomic in terms of his performance this weekend. As the, the rest of the field have experienced ups and downs, Littlewood has been ever-present. Yeah, he certainly has. He's been right there alongside. I mean, understandable, he is the PF plate. He knows his way around the PF international circuit. So, yes. you know, keep a close eye on him. I'm impressed with Finn McLaughlin on this one. He has he's well, come out of his shell in this final. He is in fourth place. Now, oh... Finn McLaugh Fionn McLaughlin uh, was notorious in the British Championship for having the second most number of 
second place finishes in the modern year of the British Championship without a win. Uh oh, prom for Katie McQueen, slapping something and looking across. As he came out at the short shoot, you can see the grandstand, he was tapping something. Something wasn't right with that cart. I hope it was a temporary thing. I mean, it doesn't look like it's, it doesn't look like it's affecting his performance at the moment. We'll see when he comes out, if he looks across Katie McQueen to the grandstand to try and communicate something. Yes, he's looking. Something's gone wrong. Yeah. Is, got, uh, is it a puncture? I don't think it's a puncture, but it's certainly he's not getting the drive out of the corner that he wants. And yeah, again, I, yeah, it might be a tyre going down because he's understeering into the corner yeah. or a track rod is bent. Possibly so. We'll keep a close eye on him and see what happens. If anything happens to his car, he might just find oh. it. He's looking down. He's checking the tyres. He's checking the tyres, Henry. I think he's got a front right flat. Yes, I believe that you're correct only because I said it about 30 seconds ago, but that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Shaw is the next. Have a go at Caden McQueen. Oh, if you chose Caden McQueen in the prediction competition, I think you are going to be disappointed. Now, let's have a look. Um, ah, yes, it's, it's a, it is. Yeah, it's, it's deflating. Yeah, it, it's deflating, and he's out. You can see it when he turns the corner. It looks up there, but it's when it, he turns... It's when he turns, you can see the tyre initially. Oh, yeah, he's, not he's happy. furious. He's not happy. Yeah, you can start to see it now. It looks deformed on the car. He's yeah. got to be careful, Caden McQueen. That tyre could give way. I mean, this is a one off event, Caden. There's no prizes for coming. Where are you now? Uh, you're only going to drop further down. Think, be careful, Caden. That's all we want to say. He's now found the problem. Hand in the air. Sensible thing, yeah. Caden McQueen. There's no point risking your safety. Actually, it could be the bearing. I think it's not it's, flat. It, it, I think the wheels actually come off. Is that, yeah, so that, the whole right front assembly looks like it's collapsed. Yeah, he has, and he stopped it. I, I think that is a complete failure of the front right wheel. Oh, no wonder he was absolutely fuming, tamping rage, and he was. Oh, dear, Caden McQueen leading the way. The favourite oh, for many. And yes. Yeah, that frustrating. But you can you, feel it in the commentary box. Do you know there's one driver that nobody picked in the predictions competition to win? And that was Fionn McLaughlin. Yes. Uh, and up he pops in third position. One thing, Henry Gregory is not going to be the top privateer. He is down in 13th position. A fantastic start, but it's not going to be a fantastic end for the driver of cart number 77. No, so Gus Lawrence now leads the way and well, unlike in the cadet and the smaller classes, you can get away from the pack by yourself in these ones because there's so much more power and Gus Lawrence leads by 1.3 seconds from Marcus Littlewood. That's incredible. Gus Lawrence might be getting his first GP plate here at this rate. And he's doing both senior X30 and Rotax. And he's doing very well in the Rotax category as well. He could be going for the double here, Henry. The double could still be on for Gus Lawrence. Into the Bruno Ferrari S's. There's Louis Johnson Cool. Louis Johnson Cool has gained seven places up from 14th to P7. The leaders, one, two, three, four, well... Lawrence has got that one and a half second advantage. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Uh, L Littlewood, Nettleship, McLaughlin, Shaw, Porter, Johnson, Cool, and, that's, and, and Johnson, Cool all together. Harry Platten is next in line. And there's a move. Uh, that was Sam Shaw trying to pass Fionn McLaughlin and losing a position in the process. Uh, yeah, it was actually Finn McLaughlin getting the move done on uh, Sam Shaw again. Porter got through both of them. So now Porter leads from Shaw uh, in this pack. And uh, Porter saying, right, should we go? Sam Shaw agreeing. Yes, let's. Yes, we should. Yes, please. Let's go and uh, try and latch on to the drivers up in front. Um, but Jack Nettle uh, Nettleship, who's there in second place, has got past Littlewood. And he's moved up into P2 now with the fastest lap of the race. And back down the inside, there's Louis Johnson Cool on Finn McLaughlin. McLaughlin, who was looking very, very strong at this po uh, at one point of the race. He was up to P2. Yes, um, now starting to fade away. Lawrence, Nettleship, Littlewood. That, I mean, no offence to Nettleship or Littlewood, but when you looked at the entry list and then you said, oh, the podium will be Lawrence, Nettleship and Littlewood, you'd think, okay, Gus Lawrence, that's fair play. But, I mean, 
even well, yeah, no, I, I yeah. talk myself into a hole here. My point is, ladies and gentlemen, is that there are so many top, top drivers yeah. that have struck trouble in this event. It's almost like the last man standing. Mm, mm. Uh, Belinda Dewey comes in on the chat saying, safe to say Reg is going to be a bit gutted about this one uh, because you know the, uh, the history between Mr. Excitement, Reggie Dewey, and Gus Lawrence here oh, at Cartmasters. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Best of friends. Best of friends. Best of friends. <laughs> it wouldn't be Cartmasters without Gus Lawrence saying, what are you doing? What are you defending like that for? And Reg going, well, I'm a privateer. I'm going to do what I want. I'm happy. I'm in third. You're the one. I'm one. Yep. It's rough. I, I, I paraphrase. Uh, yes, that's, yeah. That's, that's roughly. That's roughly what, roughly what the ballpark. What the general <laughs> annual conversation <laughs> <It's> <laughs> between Gus on. Lawrence and Reggie Dewey at Cartmasters. There we go. Finn McLaughlin again trying to get the switch back here on Morgan Porter. Porter trying to defend it as he uh, follows Louis Johnson Cool to the apex. McLaughlin gets the run back. Calloway Atkins there. He's up into P8. Atkins, 13 positions gained. Man's on a mission. Yeah, but how much more time has he got to complete his mission? Because time is one thing that all these drivers are running out of. Lawrence has a 1.9 second advantage over Nettleship. Nettleship, Nettleship in turn is four tenths of a second in front of Littlewood. And then there's a 1.6 second gap back to the number six cart of Sam Shaw in fourth position. Johnson oh. Cool is fifth, and we've got a new sixth place driver. It is... Calloway Atkins. Calloway Atkins, who was... What was he? he was sixth now. He was ninth going into that corner. Mm, certainly is. He's making good positions all the way throughout this field. Henry, one minute to go, plus one lap. Gus Lawrence now leads this one, 1 1.8 seconds. He is, at this moment in time, uncontested for the GP plate. Indeed he is. Well, of all, of all the races that I thought could be a, a walkover, this was not, not the one. No, not at all. I, I mean, it was impossible to make a decision on this one. I think, didn't we have like five different race winners over yes. the course of the weekend? Yep. We thought we were going to get six. We could easily have had six. We could have easily was, had six, There yeah. were still about a dozen potential race winners that hadn't featured yet. This will have only been Gus's second win if he yep. makes it uh, to the end of this one. He only won his last qualifying heat. Yeah, but we saw with Theo Bradshaw, you don't need to win any of the heats. You well, just need no. to lead the last couple of hundred metres. Yeah, very true, very true. But uh, still, it's been an absolutely fantastic race for this one. The start was exciting. We've had drama throughout the race. But now, with 10 seconds left on the timer... It's really a case of bringing it home for a lot of these drivers. Gus Lawrence leads from Nettleship, Littlewood. But the battle here, this is for P8 on track. McLaughlin defending from Burgoyne Jr. as he sweeps to the inside. Porter goes through as well. Chigarimbo trying to cross yes. over. Rashan to the inside. Three oh, wide. And he gets them. Well oh. done, Rashan Chigarimbo. Rolling back the years in the number 92 cart. Gus Lawrence, though. He's having a year. He won the first two rounds of the British Championship. And he leads that class now quite comfortably. And he is less than 1,300 metres away from securing that elusive GP plate title. You look at Mark Litchfield. You look at Oliver Hodgson, who have won GP plates for that legendary team. Gus Lawrence is going to write his name in the history books next to them. He's still got half a lap to go, though. We're not going to crown the king just yet. We've seen what can happen. Fortunes can change in an instant. They certainly can, but uh, half a lap to go for this one. That number one seed, the reigning defending champion in the British Cup Championships in Senior X30. And he has only got one more section to go. The Mike Wilson complex for Gus Lawrence, his first GP plate win yes. for him. He's never had one. He's fought for many years to get one. And in 2023, he delivers PF International crown, their Grand Prix winner in Senior X30. And it's Gus Lawrence. I don't know if his mum's here, but his dad is here as always, somewhere out on the bank. I think as uh, Gus crossed the line, you can see him pick out his own man and say, yes, they've done it. And uh, you've seen the emotions from the little kids. Well, the bigger kids get just as emotional as well. It means just as much to them. What a drive from Jack Nettleship, the MDL motorsport team on the podium with Marcus Littlewood completing the top three for the Jade Racing team. And look at this, you've got PF International, MDL, Jade Racing, Premium Karting, Crop Promotions and BMR. Six teams in the top six places. Harry Platten does not equal the record set by Ben Barnacote and Mike Simpson. 
for winning three in a row in no, Carl Masters. He falls short, but it was a solid, solid fight back. Harry Platten's chance has really run out of the window halfway through turn one in the pre-final. No, it certainly did, and that was a massive, massive shame uh, to see those retirements as well for Caden McQueen uh, with that front right wheel assembly failing on the cart, retiring from the race. But, I mean, you can't take it away. Uh, what a podium that is. Gus Lawrence, Jack Nettleship, Marcus Littlewood. Well, hang on a second. Well, <laughs> oh, well, this, I think this they're the all way, three are through. Yeah, this is the way station. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're, they're all good. They're all good, Henry. Relax. Well, I mean, they might not be all good. They might be given an OSCO penalty, but well, they've yeah, still maybe. got to go to the way station. That's very true. But I think they've all got through. Okay, right, okay. So, number 61. This is Louis Johnson. Cool. Yep. He's all right. Um, now, Gus Lawrence, you can see him in the background there. Yeah. Yeah, still Thumbs celebrating. Up. One. Excellent. Cool. He, as far as I'm concerned, I think he's good. So, he'll come in, but he's got to be weighed first. Tense moment here. What's the weight for uh, Senior? Put you on the spot there. I have no not, idea. Not a, I think it's something like 175, 180 kilos or something along those lines, uh, if I'm right in saying. But, well, senior uh, Rotax uh, is 162 kilos. Okay. And so, Rotax 177, ironically, is 77 kilos. Oh, well, there you go. So uh, probably not along those lines then. <laughs> so uh, probably a little less. But for Gus Lawrence here, it seems to be all good. And uh, he gets congratulated there by Finn McLaughlin. Jack Nestleship there as well. And, uh, there he is. And uh, what a drive. Number one. Yes, indeed. Well, can you do a GP with your hands there, uh, Gus? Because you've already got a one on your card. <laughs> you need to yeah. change it to a GP. Well, I'm sure he... Well, I don't, will he? That's the thing. I think he will. I think, I think that, he will. I think that plate means a lot. More because of the fact he runs for the PF International team. team. Yeah, yeah. And it's taken so long for him oh, to yes. get it as oh, well. Yes. You know. I'm just looking at his results, Gus Lawrence. Uh, 2021, he was second in Senior X30. Last year, he was right in the mix for a win and got involved in an accident two laps, two yeah. corners from home. Yes, yeah. Exactly, do you remember that one? No, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't, Out don't, he don't. goes. Yeah, there we go. Whew. Precision driving there from your race winner, Gus Lawrence. As we watch to see the other drivers come out, Gus is very, very slowly and carefully uh, heading down towards Chris McCarthy on the grid. He's had to wait a long time for it, hasn't he? But now he gets it. Let's give a round of applause to our GP plate winner for the first time, PF International driver, Gus Lawrence. We can do better than that. He's just won the GP plate. Round of applause, please, for Gus Lawrence getting his first ever GP plate. Coming down, we'll let to Gus just recover quickly. Finishing in second, Jack Nettleship. A fantastic drive through the field in two races. And coming down in third place, PF plate holder Marcus Littlewood on the podium here at Cart Masters. Gus, let's have a, a quick chat to you then. Uh, I know that you've uh, had to wait a long time for this. You had to fight very hard for this this weekend after almost facing the wrong way going in towards the first corner. A great recovery drive through in the pre-final and now you've got the GP play. Yeah, it's amazing. I've, I tried this three times and finally got there in the end, so I couldn't be happier. And to do it in these colours uh, as well, that must make you very proud. Yeah, to, to win it on the home track, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, can't, can't fault it. And would you say there's things you've learned over the, the, the last attempts that uh, applied to this? Because you managed to, in the end, walk away with it. Yeah, definitely learned loads the past few years and uh, gathered all that and, yeah, put it together this weekend. I'm really happy for you, Gus. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, my mechanic, uh, Pod, uh, Paul Fletcher. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, everybody involved back down in that garage, everybody involved, really. It's I think... I think this is a special moment for the event. A PF International driver with the GP plate at PF International. Gus, that's yours. Hold it up to the crowd out there. Let's give him a round of applause. Gus Lawrence winning the GP plate for the first time in Senior X30. Let's go to uh, second. Jack Nettleship, uh, a fantastic drive today. Uh, you've come through the field, put in some really brilliant performances, a great drive in the pre-final to get you up here, uh, and you took advantage of it. You must be ha really happy with the podium. Yeah, I'm pretty happy, but it's just a shame I keep having to come through the field, but it's my own fault, really, so I can't blame anyone else. So if I just need to, get, just need to figure out how to learn the starts, but oh well, I'll get there, hopefully.
you've definitely proven that you can fight at the front. You know, that second queue, which was uh, the next race really after Garcia, you, you managed to work your way through that. So uh, uh, there's definitely signs here that you can, you can go and win that GP plate one day. Well, hopefully, yeah. Uh, who, who would you like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank MDO, Dave, Mark, my dad, mum, anyone who's come to watch from the AC, anyone really who's helped. Well, well done. Jack Nettleship in second place. Uh, congratulations on the podium. Let's go next to our third place driver, Marcus Littlewood. Uh, fantastic performance. Uh, a podium. I know you work really, really hard. You got the young driver of the year. Now you got a podium in Kart Masters. How are you feeling? Yeah, really happy. Uh, obviously, started pole, which was really good, exceeded my expectations. A uh, bit disappointed I couldn't get the win, but I mean, uh, Gus and Jack drove really well, so I can't take that away from them. But yeah, really happy that we could come away with a podium. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't fall your way, does it? But it gave you the best you, you had. Who would you like to thank? Oh, I'd like to say a massive thanks to my brother on the spanners, uh, obviously my parents, my sponsor, Bailey MK, and obviously the team. They've done a really great job. So thanks to Jade Racing and Birrell Art as well for putting together such a great car. Thank you. Congratulations. Well done to Marcus Littlewood, third place in Senior X30. We will let him walk away and go and celebrate the result. And then we will welcome our next drivers out. We'll get a very quick word from DJ, who's up there in commentary. Uh, a great win and good to see Gus finally get that win. Uh, yeah, exactly that, Chris. Uh, like you said, three years he's been waiting for that one. Certainly couldn't come at a better time for him. You know, to be a, a PF International driver, to come away with the GP plate, certainly an absolutely fantastic run. But Chris, the next grid's on their way out. Mate, I'll hand it back over to you. Uh, what's coming up next? Right, we move now to Junior Rotax. Let's give a round of applause to our Grand Prix finalists as they head down the start finish straight. Starting on pole position is going to be Macaulay Bishop. Has to on this podium before. Let's see if he can do it on the top step. And alongside him will be the number five plate, Ethan Jeff Hall. These two fighting at the front in the British Championships constantly. They know each other very well. Let's see if either of them can now go and win. Macaulay starting on pole position would we'll get a quick word from yourself tough racing so far all weekend how are you feeling ahead of this one I'm feeling all right I've had a good week so far so so we can do in the final yeah it's been tough racing in, in the category as well hasn't it it's not going to be easy this no I just need to try and break away really and then see what I can do from there well best of luck to Macaulay Bishop starting on pole we'll get a quick word from uh, Ethan Jeff Hall as he straps his crash helmet uh, up uh, uh, Ethan you've been at the front all weekend at the front all year uh, you reckon you can now go and out there and take the GP plate yeah I think we'll be able to do it we didn't have quite have the pace in the pre-final um, hopefully we'll have the pace in the final some changes made I'm sure I, I guess is the strategy going to be like we saw with Gus there just try and break away uh, in the middle towards the end of the race yeah that would be uh, pretty decent <laughs> best of luck uh, Ethan Jeff oh, uh, we're going to get to one more if we can we do have time uh, let's go and find uh, Thomas Ingram Hill and get a very quick word uh, from him the number 22 gained 17 in the pre-final uh, a lot of places uh, gained for you there uh, Thomas up 17 can we go up a few more Definitely. Good stuff. Look, we'll, we'll get the one word from you because we are going to be clearing the grid and I do really want to find uh, Lloyd Hare if I can. I might have to get a, a run on here, but Lloyd Hare was our repechage winner and has carved through half the field. So uh, half down, half more to go. Ready for the pre ready for the Grand Prix? Yeah, should be a good race. If we can keep go going where we're going, should be all right. We we'll should be up there. Uh, we will move away from you. Best of luck to Lloyd here. We are being given the sign to clear the grid. Uh, that is a look down it for you. Uh, up 14 places in that pre-final was Lloyd here. Uh, you and Charmin as well could be one to watch uh, if you just uh, pan the camera. Number 42 over there, up eight places uh, in that pre-final as well. But there is a number of these drivers who could go and take this win. The guys up in commentary know that and they'll take you through the grid in full. Let's go to Henry and DJ.
Thanks, Chris. Yes, indeed. Junior Road Tax Race 55 Grand Prix is about to get underway. Let's take you through the starting lineup. Macaulay Bishop, the O plate, starting this one on pole position. He's got Ethan Jeff Hall alongside. Joseph Rippin and Armin Hamilton go from row two. Joshua Graham and Freddie Lloyd, they round out the top six on row three. Joshua Turnbull and Latvia's good stuff Uzakovs goes from row four. The number four seed looking to do well here. Thomas Ingram Hill and Harry Hannum with the best overtake. I think of the weekend so far into hairpin one. He starts on the fifth row of the grid in P10. Harrison Crowther and Archie Clark go from row six from Reg Haywood and Ewan Charman on row seven. Harrison Whitcomb and Oliver Sander, they go from row eight. Lloyd Hare and Lizzie Mentier round out row nine with Jack Hobson and Max Cuthbert rounding out the top 20 on row 10. Blake Tysers and Luke Bates go from row 11 from August Raber and Deacon Russell on row 12. Finley Buck and Luca Osman Price round out row 13 from Leon Hartley and Hugh Moulton on row 14. Joshua Smith and Owen Neve go from 15 with Aris Miuskis and Lewis Goff running out row 16. The final two rows see Zach Heslop and Timo Youngling, Kenzo Craigie and Tyler Harris starting shotgun on the field. 36, Henry... This is going to be an exciting one. You're tying your shoelace. It You're so is. excited. Remember, you loop it, you swoop it, and you pull. Well, uh, I do bunny ears. You do but, bunny um, ears. I have to disagree with you, and I have to disappoint all the Harry Hannum fans. Disappoint Jesse us Phillips. after the start. Yes, indeed. Lights are out. We're off and racing. Macaulay Bishop leads us into turn number one. Ethan Jeff Hall slots into third position. 36 junior road tax carts go in. And oh, oh. there's a couple of spinners. Oh, and it's Gustav Uzakov's one of them. It's uh, this is the number one. Oh, and there's one. There's a cart over. Oh, dear, and that's Lizzie Mentier. Lizzie and Mentier what? rolling. She's scrambling out from underneath her cart. Uh, I can see it. Well, she's picking her cart up, putting it back on her wheels, and she's getting back in. No, is she? She's having a look. Oh, it's broke. Yeah. Well, I'll her. But the, the main thing is, she is absolutely okay. I was going to say, I will see your Harry Hannum die bomb at turn one, and I will uh, counter that with the Jesse Phillips around the outside of the banking to win a GP plate as the move of the weekend so far. Sorry, Harry Hannum fans. I'm going to have a Millwall collective come to break my legs now, I'm sure. More than likely. But here we go. Macaulay Bishop. Excellent start for Bishop. Still yellow flags waving. Uh, no, they're not. Well done, the Marshals. There was four carts off, one of them on its roof. And the Marshals have cleared it up before the field come round. There is, look, the clear banking. Absolutely fantastic. And Ethan Jeff Hall, I think, has just passed Macaulay Bishop with the race lead. Bishop gets it back. Yes, he does indeed. Bishop holding on to this one. Bishop, uh, one of the favourites to win the road tax category. Same as Ethan Jeff Hall. You can't take it away from either of them here as they're going to be chopping and changing. Crucially, though, that's going to keep everyone else in the battle, isn't it? Here comes Joe Rippin. Here comes Joshua Graham. <laughs> they're third and fourth place for, uh, for those two. Here we go. And again, another lead change. How many is that now? Four. Count them, Henry. In four a, in, so far. In a lap. And um, we go for number five. five. Yes, we are. And look at Graham. Uh, look at Rippin and Graham. Rip into the inside. Now he's the Jeff Hall gets forced back to third. He's got to be his careful. Oh, this is great stuff already. We're only on lap two. That's release McCauley just that little bit more. Nice well, angle that as they exit out of the final corner. Oh, Look at yes. the speed that they're going here. Oh, that's artistry at its finest. Slippery surface flags on the banking, probably because Lizzie Mentier's radiator uh, parted company with its water as the cart was inverting itself. Ah. Now, here we go. Five lead changes. Macaulay Bishop has escaped. Well, he's escaped from Ethan Jeff Hall, who's now in third position. He has not escaped from the Argenti Motorsport number 88 of Joshua Graham. No, he certainly hasn't. Graham wanting to take it's this one as well. Ewan Charman making a move. Ewan Charman's had a really... Ewan Charman, he, he had a mechanical failure in one qualifying session. Yep. He started at the back. And then he had another mechanical failure. He only really scraped into the pre-final. So he's having a really good day, is Charman. He's already up from 14th on the grid to 9th. And I think he's gained another couple of places. Yeah. So end of lap number three. Bishop and Graham separated by two tenths of a second. Then it's Jeff Hall, fast Freddie Lloyd. Then Armand Hamilton, Archie Clark, Joe Rippin, Ewan Charman with the fastest lap of the race at a 59.46. 
He is already eighth with Harry Hannum ninth, Josh Turnbull, Reg Hayward, Deacon Russell, Max Cuthbert, Blake Tysus, and August Raber from the UAE in 15th position. Uh, there's Armin Hamilton now who's closed in on this battle. Freddie Lloyd's got into fourth place now. Uh, oh. So Lloyd's having a chance at trying to close this one in. There is Archie Clark getting involved as well. Uh -huh. And there's the EBC brakes. Harry Hannum, who's wanting to use those brakes to their full potential in this one. And he is Reggie. driving a bit of a defensive line there is Harry the Lion. Uh, protecting the Cubs. He's defending there. And that is the number 33 cut with the black nose cut. That's Max Cuthbert. Yeah, privateer. Now, pri leading privateer is still... Harry Freeman, third place driver. We've got Owen Neve and Max Cuthbert are the privateers in this race. And, well, Neve is down in 22nd place. Cuthbert is, let's have a look. Where's Cuthbert? He is in 15th. So, Harry Freeman still safe at the moment. Now, the predictions competition, uh, like you said, all the results that we see on screen on the TV are provisional. There are things happening after, and there are one or two changes to the results which may affect the prediction competition. So we are holding fire on adding those up at the moment. There's Freddie Lloyd in his lucky Ollie Green all race suit. Coming out of the Mike Wilson complex. The two leaders are escaping but Bishop is being pegged back by Joshua Graham. Certainly is. Less than 10 minutes to go. Charman still pushing his way through the field. You and Charman certainly had an interesting one. Like you were saying, 22nd he started the pre-final. He got all the way to P14. And now he's currently sitting in P6 with the fastest lap of the race. He's certainly had a good uh, second or third day of this weekend, hasn't he? He has indeed. Now, lots of support on Tyler Harris. Uh, uh, yes. He's up 70 places, as is Kenzo Craigie. So and Craigie Tima Youngling. And, yes, but I mean, Youngling, Craigie, and Harris are siding their way up through the field like a hot knife through butter. Yes, they certainly are. Well. And, uh, uh, oh. Lucas Ellingham, uh, oh. he's not out there. And, uh, yeah. Well, he, he, he was good. he's not out there in the. Uh, senior race. Yeah. So Ellingham will be going out in the senior race. Damaged ribs after an accident earlier on. Ah, dear. That is a shame for Lucas. But hopefully we see him fighting fit uh, later on in the season. Hopefully well, indeed. And, uh, Henry, is this, the, is, uh, this is third, fourth, this and fifth. Is, yeah, it is. Um, no, Freddie no, Lloyd, Ethan Jeff Hall, Archie Clark. There's Archie Clark pass. Ethan Jeff Hall sprinkles the military dash. Shouldn't be happy. Yes, yes, we are shaking with excitement. Yes. Um, now, doing this, this isn't going to help their no. fighting, catching Macaulay Bishop or Gen uh, Joshua Graham. Um, uh, jo yeah, looking at Joshua Graham, yeah, seventh yeah. last year as a Minimax driver. So this is Joshua's first year in the big class, as it were, or in the junior class. And there's Harrison Whittacombe in the number 66 car. Oh, casually four wide. Tyler Harris in the number 84. Just giving a little bit of a rear end shimmy down the short shoot there. As if to sort of, you know, as to ward off potential attackers. Mm, yes. Just make yourself a bit wider than you actually yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A hip check. Oh, yellow, yellow flag. That is a cart off at the Fullerton S's. Driver getting back in. And that is Aris Miefskis. Ah. No, it's not. Sorry, I apologise. It is... It's the number 51. It's the number 51. That's Lewis Goff. Yes, it's a Sam Pollock racing car. Aris Miefskis also having... I think maybe, maybe the two are connected. Aris Miefskis losing ground. Yeah. And uh, that's Archie Clark ah. breaking way too late. And he totally missed the apex. And that allows Ethan Jeff Hall and Freddie Lloyd to move back into third and fourth. Uh, Armin Hamilton there, yep. just trying to get back onto the track after getting squeezed off slightly wide there by Ewan Charman. Uh, who's that coming through in the Dan Holland racing? Is that Joshua Turnbull? It oh. is! Turnbull getting very close to comfort oh, there. Wow. And then bang, through comes Harry Hannum saying, thank you very much, I'll take that. You have to be absolutely ruthless when you're in the middle of this pack. I mean, this is, not, this is the tail end of the top ten. But yeah, complacency is punished. Mm. You know, absolutely this harsh and brutal punishment if you uh, take your foot off, if you, if you lose focus for even a fraction of a second. Yeah. Now, 
Ah, right. So Bishop looks over the shoulder and just Whoa. confirms there to Joshua Graham. Let's keep going. Well, and, we uh, know that Argenti have got the setup right because uh, Josh's teammate, Harrison Whitcomb, has just set a new fast slap of the race. So yes. the Argenti squad have got plenty of waft under their belts. They certainly do. And well, they seem to be doing very well in this one. Where have they got? Okay, so they're second with uh, Joshua Graham. Uh, they've got Ewan Charman going quickly. He's in P6. Uh, they've got Kenzo Craigie up 21 positions now behind Timo Jungling into P14. Great drive from Kenzo. Yeah. Great drive from the uh, Mercedes Formula One Young Driver Program member. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, solid drive. Solid drive. So, five minutes to go, or just under six minutes to go. And still, we're not seeing a scrap here between Ethan Jeff Hall and Freddie Lloyd, uh, who are a little further ahead from this two here, of Clark and Charman. Those two are now working yeah. together. What's yes. the gap? The gap to uh, the race leaders Staying the is same, isn't two it? seconds. Yeah. However, on this lap, well, both uh, Ethan Jeff Hall and Freddie Lloyd are putting in personal best laps, which tells me that they're working in sync together. But uh, will that be enough? Well, seeing as Bishop on that last lap was a 58.9 and Ethan Jeff Hall was a 59.0. Ooh, yes. There's tenth between them, but they're just still eking ahead. The fastest driver on that last lap, actually, Kenzo Craigie in the number 44. Like you say, P14, solid drive. He's driving through the field and now with the fastest lap of the race. He will be appearing in your screen at the back right there as he uh, makes his way out of the final corner and over the start finish line. Um, Turnbull now with the fastest up of the race. Uh, Henry, this is a, a calm junior it is, it road is. tax final. I mean, there were five lead changes in the first three laps. Yeah. But then there was that issue that just allowed uh, Bishop and Graham to escape. And that was the turning point of the race. That turned the race in from an all-out hack into a slightly more tactical affair. Don't forget, McCauley Bishop is still going to have to defend and defend hard oh, from, yes. from Joshua Graham. And uh, Ethan Jeff Hall and Freddie Lloyd, again, one of those temporary alliances, Strawberry Racing and Evolution Racing, mm. uh, working together with Archie Clark and Ewan Charman, now running in fifth and sixth, also working together to try and bring themselves closer to Lloyd and Ethan Jeff Hall. Behind them, you've got Harry Hannum, the seventh, Josh Turnbull, eighth, Joe Rippin, ninth, Hugh Moulton is tenth, Followed by Armand Hamilton, Max Cuthbert, Kenza Craigie, Timo Jungling, Blake Tyshurst is hot 15. Uh, we've lost Harrison Crowther, sadly, he's out of the race. Okay. Thomas Ingram Hill has also retired, the, uh, the Welsh, half Welsh, half Ghanaian driver. And there is Cuthbert at the inside of Hugh Moulton. Yeah, a position. Both of them running slightly wide at the exit of hairpin one, dipping into that little divot on the exit, but uh, thankfully both getting away okay. Look at Clark there, so uh, firm on the old brakes there, wasn't he, into the Fullerton S's. Just a stab of the brakes, yep. just to settle the cart and then dip it in to the apex. Very fast corner, isn't it? So it's a very fast track, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the average speed that these drivers probably taken around here over the course of a lap, probably very well, high. Motorsport Dash Time is Ian Rogers would know that sort Ian of information. Ian Rogers would know exactly what the average speed uh, around PFI is in these junior carts or the senior carts. Uh, and I've got a feeling that the disembodied voice in my head is going to reveal <laughs> that information very he, shortly. He, he does know the information. He just turned and looked at us and just but shook his shot. Yeah. What? <laughs> the, a, a desultory show. He's Ian, working it out for Ian us. Ian is working it out. Bishop leads by three tenths of a second. New fastest lap of the race for Archie Clark. 58.46 seconds for Archie. And the lead duo of... Bishop and Graham still 2.3 seconds up the road from Ethan Jeff Hall and Freddie Lloyd. Uh, earlier on, Freddie Lloyd, he was involved. It was the race that uh, young Zach McDonald was commentating with you on. Mm -hmm. And there was an incident. Was, you know, was that, oh, no, that was the X30 yeah, race. Yeah, it was the X30 one, where, yeah. And there was an incident involving Lloyd, Ethan Jeff Hall, mm -hmm. and uh, Bishop. And uh, I spoke to Freddie Lloyd out on the uh, balcony there. And he said, no brakes. Right. Oh, so the disembodied, the disembodied voice in my head is about to uh, pass on some knowledge. 
average speed in this class, 52 miles an hour. Now that's average. Average, not the top speed. Top speed is more like 80 miles an hour, but you consider it. You've got one hairpin, you've got two hairpins, you've got chicanes, and you've got complexes. Yeah. So average, 52 miles an hour, astounding. Dizzying speeds there, Henry. Yes. 90 seconds plus one lap remain on this one. We are yet to see the battle between Graham and Bishop. It is inevitable. Yes. And it's approaching soon because this race, well, the, the first three minutes of this race were absolute chaos. No crashing, so apart from the opening lap crash, but that was, you know, just, just opening lap shenanigans. But then the middle portion of this race has absolutely flown by, and suddenly we find ourselves with less than one minute to go, ladies and gentlemen. Macaulay Bishop, he has won a British title, but he has not. He stood on a podium at the Rotax Grand Finals, but he has not won the GP plate mm. yet. Mm. There we go. Bishop, Graham, still there, line of turn. No change between the two of them. This is the battle further back. Ethan Jeff Hall, Lloyd, Clark, Charman. Very close between them. Clark all over the back here of Freddie Lloyd. Lloyd really doesn't need an attack here from Clark, and uh, I think all four of them need to make sure they stay yes. line of turn because they are waiting for the two up ahead to start battling. But I've got to say, I don't think Joshua Graham, that gap, look at it, it's half a second. I, I don't think, think Graham's close enough for an attack. I think McCauley Bishop has just saved enough. Now, it was this class that he had to come to the back. So, in Rotax, he's already had to do two races where he has come from the back of the grid up towards the front. You talked about how much of his tyre has he used. Well, he has saved just enough of his tyre to just give it that little tiny extra couple of hundreds when the pressure is on. Uh, there we go. That's just the uh, oh, the, the catch, the overflow uh, thing that's uh, dangling there. So no problem there yeah. whatsoever on the well, side of your yeah, but, it, but it, well, He's looking over his shoulder. It will cause a problem in your peri peripheral vision. It's not supposed to be waving and flapping around. No. A driver can sense that. I mean, it will now compute, oh, OK, it's nothing that's going to stop the cart. But when everything is through the radiator, when you see pipes coming loose, you know that that radiator will lose its water very quickly and then your engine will go up in a puff of smoke. Here we go, final lap. Macaulay Bishop has stretched it out. He is keeping Joshua Graham at arm's length. Now we've been concentrating on the fight behind. There's the look over the shoulder. Now Bishop knows he doesn't have to defend. He won the oak plate at the start of the year. He currently leads the British Championship. Last year, he came fifth in this class in the Grand Prix. He's your 2020 IAMI, IAMI Cadet British Champion. And the boy from Hoddesdon is two corners away. Joshua Graham has done a fantastic job, but Joshua Graham will not catch him. The rest follow far, far behind. Fist pumping, GP plate winning, Macaulay Bishop. What a drive there for Bishop across the line. Cool, calm and collected. Flag to finish for Bishop. He had to fight a little bit for it. Oh, there yes. Was a bit of jostling, but he certainly held his nerve and came all the way to see that GP play and the checkered flag at the end of that one. Graham finishes in second from Ethan Jeff Hall. Solid drive from both of them. But Macaulay Bishop, the O plate turns into a GP plate. Indeed, there's a look at the rest of the results. Freddie Lloyd, Jim and Charman, Joseph Rippin, Armand Hamilton from Hungary. Eighth, Kenzo Craigie, a top 10 result from Kenzo. Kenzo, ah, 26 places gained. Delta Raceway have a competition, uh, a prize. The driver that gains the most places out of any in one of the Grand Prix wins a fully customised race suit. Kenzo Craig, yeah, I'm having a look there. 26 places gained. I can't recall anyone else. There we go. Nose cone check is complete. Weight check is complete. And breathe. And breathe. At Le Mans last weekend, McCauley had two of his best laps taken away in time qualifying, which meant he qualified 61st out of 107. 
He then got two in-race penalties in his first two heat races. With one heat to go, he uh, with, with two heats to go, he was 60th in points. With one heat to go, he was 41st in points. He scraped into the final at Le Mans, 34th on the grid, and then drove through to finish 8th. So cutting his way through the pack and saving tyres has become something of a speciality for uh, Macaulay Bishop. Ethan Jeff Hall on the podium. He, here's a look, some look at that. Doesn't know where, doesn't know where he doesn't know where he's Arthur or Martha at the moment. Look at that, he looks a little bit dazed and confused because the emotional turmoil that all these drivers go through when it's so close, so competitive, and now he can breathe and relax. Um, Mason Tune, that was uh, his brother Mason helping to uh, set the cart up. There goes Josh Graham. There goes the number five cart of Ethan Jeff Hall. All three of them heading Chris McCarthy's way. Coming down now, the GP play winner in Junior Rotax. Let's have a big round of applause to Macaulay Bishop. He is our winner in 2023 in Junior Rotax. Finishing in second place, a brilliant performance. Joshua Graham on the podium for the Argenti team. And rounding out the podium in third place, the number five play, Ethan Jeff Hall, has put in a superb performance all weekend. Let's wait for uh, McCauley just to uh, reset a little. It was a great race overall, uh, a dominant performance in the end from McCauley Bishop. Not easy to do in this category, but uh, it's been the story of his season so far, taking the O play leading the British Championship, as Henry said, and now he can add the GP plate, do that, McCauley. Uh, what a fantastic drive. I mean, not easy to... We spoke before the race, it's not easy to get away in this class, but slowly you managed to do it, and we're in a position at the end there to not need to defend. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I got a good start, and then I had Josh behind me the whole race, and then I just put in consistent laps, and I just pulled away a little bit at the end. How hard was it dealing with the, the pressure from, from Josh behind? Because it was there throughout the race, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's important not to make a mistake, so I could keep the gap uh, the same. And who would you like to, to thank for this? Uh, all of the HR, um, Daryl, my mum and dad, and my brother. I know you worked very hard. Coming out of that final corner must have felt so good coming across the line. Yeah, it's good. It's a relief now. Obviously, it was a long final, but I'm happy I won it. Good stuff. Well, now we will do the honours and give you your GP play. Face the crowd, please. Hold it up for us there. Our GP play winner in Junior Rotax, McCauley Bishop. Congratulations to him. Josh Graham, we will go and speak to uh, next. Uh, uh, you gave it everything you had out there. Put a lot of pressure on McCauley. Not quite able to get there in the end. Still happy with the podium in second? Yeah, I mean, it's a great result. He just out had outp outpaced us at the, uh, towards the end. And coming into today, you, you are sitting ju just outside the top five. You've done really well in the two races to work your way through forward. Yes, I, I mean, all the races have been, it's been tough. I mean, just I'm glad to be in the position that I got. Uh, and who would you like to thank for this, getting a, a podium for the Argenti team? Then? Obviously, Argenti Motorsport, Car Republic Chassis, Ogden Race Engines, Ron Meadows, Danny Sweeney and my dad, Terence Dove. Well, congratulations to you. Second place, everyone, Josh Graham. Let's give a round of applause to Josh Graham on the podium. Ethan Jeff Hall finishing in a third place. I know not the result you, you would have wanted. I know you really wanted that GP plate, but uh, and nevertheless, a, a fantastic effort all weekend. Yeah, it's uh, been a very tough weekend, struggling quite a lot with uh, grip. Um, yeah. Yeah, not, not the way I'm sure you would have wanted to end, but nevertheless, uh, it's not easy to get on a podium here at Count Masters. You must feel very pleased to be able to walk away with a trophy step. Yeah, it's uh, pretty decent to uh, still come away with a trophy considering the weekend, so yeah. And in a very, very competitive grid uh, as well. Who'd you like to thank? Uh, I'd like to say a massive thanks to Strawberry Racing, Cream Racing Engines, Liam Wright, uh, <coughs> Fibre King, Fit for Performance, and OH Media Management. Well said. Well done to Ethan Jeff Hall, third place. Great podium in Junior Rotax. The drivers will now clear the grid. I think a fantastic performance there for uh, McCauley Bishop. I know the guys up in commentary were speaking about that throughout the race. Uh, to, to break away like that, despite the pressure, uh, it, I mean, it was only about half a second at the end, but nevertheless, McCauley doing a great job to not make any mistakes and keep consistent. Yes, indeed, Chris. Uh, again, uh, 
junior road tax is one of those races that we were both sort of a little bit feeling a little bit of trepidation about. Mm. It could have been one of two things. It turned out to be the better of the two options, uh, a spectacular start and then a really good, close, clean four battle. Yes, Joshua Graham couldn't quite have the pace at the end, but that is because... Bishop just ground him down ever so slightly. Yes, yeah, exactly that. It was a very, very close knit race on this it's one. Chris but Clough down there, yeah, Roddy, look, it's Chris down there. I know, I know, I know. Look at him. Thank you, guys. Let's get the senior Rotax drivers out on the grid now. A round of applause, please, for our Grand Prix finalists in senior Rotax. Let's give them some support. Starting from a pole position is going to be Matthew Higgins, the number four. Started on the front row in the pre-final as well. And as you can see, alongside already has the GP play on his car, Kai Hunter. Can he hold on to it? Let's uh, go in and speak to uh, uh, Matt Higgins uh, ahead of this one. This is where you want to be, clear road uh, ahead of you. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a tough race, isn't it? Lots of drivers in this one that could go uh, and take the win. Uh, dealing with that pressure from behind, I'm sure you're going to be calling on a, a lot of experience, which helps you get that number four play. Yeah, 100%. Got the best team around me. I mean, proving it. Look at the front row. So, yeah, just see what we can do. And tell us about some of the work that's gone in uh, with the, the team at Dan Holland Racing to uh, get this performance of locking out front row in senior road tax. That's uh, quite fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty relentless in the dyno room. I mean... Workshop boys do a mega job to keep everything in top nick and yeah, and we push each other to the limit. And you push very, very hard out there as well. Good luck to Matthew Higgins. Uh, let's come round to Kai Hunter. I'll see if I can quickly chat to him before he puts his crash helmet on. Well, you've got it on your cart. It's now a case of can you keep it? Yeah, I think I think I've got as good a chance of anyone. I'm uh, I'm ready for it, and uh, yeah, I think if the scrap begins, I'm I'm, I'm there and, and ready. So it's, yeah, I can't wait to get get started. Yeah, come on. It's a unique challenge, isn't it? It's taking those chances when they come and having had the experience to win. Uh, I, I guess that's going to be a huge advantage for you. Uh, yeah, I think every year is different, so I think you just got to be on your toes. And uh, yeah, it's not one in the first lap as well. So let's let's hope we can get get through the race, get through the first few corners, and let's crack on. Well said. Good luck to Kai Hunter. We've got a few minutes, so let's go and speak to uh, someone I spoke to earlier after he won the GP plate for the first time in Senior X30. Uh, Gus, have you recovered now from uh, that one? I'm sure the adrenaline was pumping, but uh, uh, now it's reset. I'm not an easy challenge, is it, is it at all, to reset and now go again? Yeah, I've had a quick drink and then just got to uh, retune the brain to drive this one round because it's slightly different. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, see how we get on. There's quite a few people doing this, and I think it's 17 overall. Tell us, uh, as a driver, how you have to reset and what's the biggest differences in swapping over? Yeah, so the tyres. The tyres are different, so it handles differently. And the throttle response is totally different compared to the X30, so you've got to feed it in gentle. It's just different. Yeah. It's just when you jump straight back in it, it takes the first lap to get your head back in gear, I think. Well, that four days uh, of preparation yeah. definitely helps with that. Definitely, of course, yeah. Definitely. Best of luck to Gus Lawrence, PF International Racer. Uh, and now I want to go and speak to uh, George Holbrook, if I can, because he, he was a big mover. We've got, uh, as you can see there, James Lowther uh, alongside got Guy Cunnington uh, here, up two places in the pre-final. Uh, Jamie uh, Perilli up four. But uh, let's go and find George Holbrook. Uh, he appears to be missing. Ah, I think that's him there. Let's go and have a little chat. Came through uh, 16 places gained uh, in the pre-final. Did a lot of overtaking. Going to have to do a little bit more to uh, go and take the win, but uh, uh, that must have been good preparation, that pre-final. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, came from 27th, obviously. So we're really quick. We actually had a problem just then. Um, starter motor weren't going. So we just changed the engine with the help of a few of these lads on the grid. Uh, Six-minute engine change, so... Yeah. So uh, uh, for these lot, because else he wouldn't be on this grid. Else. So a bit of support coming in there. That's what we like to see. But everything all running okay now? Well, yeah, it should be. We'll, we'll see. But I feel quick, so it should be good. You're very, very quick in the pre-final. Uh, let's go and see if we can find uh, how much, how long do I have? Uh, okay, yeah, we've got time for this. Uh, let's go down to row 10. We've got a couple drivers who came through the repercharge. Uh, Jack Stedman uh, here and Sam Longley. Uh, I will speak to Jack Stedman uh, who came through the repercharge. So uh, this can be a third race uh, of the day. Not ideally what you would have wanted, but uh, I think we can now move forward and, and get it in the top 10. Yeah, it's going to be tough. We did it a couple of years ago, came up to fifth. Two years ago at the car, so then we could do it again. Just a bit tough to go, but we'll do it. 
give it a go. Well, best of luck uh, to you. Maybe one eye should be kept on those guys. Likewise, Lucas Ellingham as well. I know he injured his ribs. I don't know if he's out there uh, or not, but uh, he lost 31 places because of that. Uh, uh, hopefully he is uh, able to get out there. But uh, uh, of course, leading the way out front, we spoke to them both. Matthew Higgins, Kai Hunter. Can he hold on to that GP plate? Can we see someone do the double uh, as well in Gus Lawrence? I'm going to hand over to commentary now to take you through the grid and the race. Over to you guys. Guys. Senior Rotax, your starting line at pole position. Matthew Higgins, Kai Hunter, his teammate on the outside of row number one. Gus Lawrence going for the double, starting third alongside James Lowther. Guy Cunnington and Jamie Perilli start on row number three. Row four sees Lewis Gilbert and Teddy Pritchard-Williams, followed by Austin Lee and Tom Adams. George Holbrook and Jack Lilly are on row six. Morgan Porter, Kai Rillard from Belgium, Josh Price, Leon Henderson, Joe Fernihau and Neo Clark are next up. Jack Steadman, Sam Longley, George Donald, Ben Follins, Bradley Barrett and Oakley Pryor on the 12th row. Then it's Miles Barthorpe and Enzo Dickenberg from the Netherlands. Sam Light and Pearson Bullock Carter on row 14. Lockie Robinson and Leo Brown on row 15. Then it's Will Ellsworth, Tristan Rennie and all Craft Motorsport row 16. James Lingard, Harry Linden, Ollie Goodyear and Lucas Ellingham. Although we are missing Ellswood, Linden and Ellingham. Right, Badly okay. damaged cart for Harry Linden. I yep. would say that Will Ellsworth's chassis probably took a knock and could not be repaired. Lucas Ellingham injured ribs. Gus Lawrence going for the double. Nancy Jordan will bring them to the start. Thank you very much, Henry. Yes, indeed. Can he do it? Gus Lawrence with the double. Can Kai Hunter defend that GP plate? Or is Matthew Higgins going to pick both of them to the line and take it himself? Lights go out and away they go. Oh. Down and towards turn number one. Great start from both the front rows. But through goes uh, Gus Lawrence and Higgins to the lead. And Gus Lawrence immediately to the lead. He's wasting no time whatsoever. And he wants to break away from the rest of the field. And he gets into the lead of this race. And Guy Cunnington from fifth place is up into P2. Absolutely sensational stuff from Gus Lawrence and from Guy Cunnington. Like I said, Lawrence, he said he had to reprogram the brain to drive these kind of carts, uh, had a drink, but that's all he's done between the last race. But the muscle memory is still there. And again, you're bursting with confidence. You feel invincible. You've just won a GP plate, something that you have always wanted to do in your lengthy career. And now, half an hour later, you've got a chance to win two and become only the third driver after Noel Wolf and Ben Barnacote to win two GP plates in a day. Love this, Anthony. We've got this race and the junior race to go. Yep. Two potential doubles, uh, daily doubles, in these last two races. Yeah, exactly that. That would be absolutely fantastic, wouldn't it? But uh, we've still got to wait a while, Henry, until we can get confirmation of who is going to take the win on this one because Guy Cunnington in that number three is sniffing all over that rear bumper. And so is Matthew Higgins as the two of them nearly collide going in towards hairpin one. And Higgins gets the move and moves up into P2. That allows Gus Lawrence just that little bit more of breathing space as now the GP plate of Kai Hunter looks to go on the attack here. And now looks to the inside as Higgins once again and Guy Cunnington off the oh. track. And he's going to get swamped by the pack now. Three wide. And look at that. Kai Hunter on the inside. Gilbert comes through as well. And Matthew Higgins gets spat out of the field as now Jamie Perilli gets through. Uh, incredible stuff there. Gus Lawrence clearing off at the front. Kai Hunter, it was just a case of mirror single manoeuvre. Avoid the incident. Cut to the inside and he was through. Uh, Lewis Gilbert, you can see Gilbert with the green and white Tony Cart nose cone. Obviously the Kraft branding on his original nose cone was damaged at some point this weekend. And so he has had to revert to just a spare nose comb, which is not uh, sort of graphic kitted up, as it were. There's the battle further back well, between James Lowther, Jamie Perilli. Oh, one car Higgins. off there. And that was someone on the grass. That's Tom Adams in the red and yellow race suit. And he's being escorted slightly wide. Oh, what a Coming spin. Out. Oh, hang on, hang on. Who's gone? Who's gone? It's on the start-finish straight. And I think, is that 
got uh, it's the 94. Is that Leon? Oh, Leon Henderson. His yep. parents watching from the holiday, holiday in Turkey, and uh, sadly, Leon's Cartmaster's dreams up in a cloud of smoke. Figuratively, not literally. He's still in the race, but he's now well down the order. Yeah, exactly that. Well. 12 minutes plus one lap to go. We've already had a very dramatic opening lap. And, well, what's happened over the course of that opening lap? Gus Lawrence took the lead, and now he's clear by a second. Yes, as everyone else squabbles behind this, uh, number 40 cart of... Uh, number 40 Tony cart chassis, that is... Jamie more Perilli. Report, Jamie Perilli, sorry, in sixth position. And side by side, coming out of this Super Ted, Teddy Pritchard Williams, the number 35 cart. And... Teddy gets escorted onto the grass blocks by a recovering Guy Cunnington. So, Kai Hunter, and look at Kai Hunter and Lewis Gilbert. Now they're beginning to close in they on are. the race lead. They're closing in hand over fist. They are indeed. That gap's already down to half a second now, not a second. So, uh, Gus Lawrence, he may have dominated in Senior X30, but he's well known for dominating in the world of Senior X30. Yep. Not in road tax. Nope. That falls to this man in second place, Kai Hunter, and to Lewis Gilbert, both of them very oh. experienced in class. Both have been on the podium at the Rotax Grand Finals multiple times. Both are, no, 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 Lewis Gilbert's a British champion, not in the modern era, I don't think, but he has always, always featured in and amongst the seeded drivers every single year. And I think Lewis has been on the podium twice at the Grand Finals, once a, no, he was fifth as a junior, and then in, Bahrain, and uh, where was he last year? Number 29, Cart, he was uh, second in 2021, oh, second in 2022. This. Look at this, he's latched right onto the back of him already. Kai Hunter is smelling a defending GP plate here. If wow. he can find a gap, boss, uh, Gus Lawrence and drive away, because look at the waft he's got here. And this is interesting because Kai Hunter and Gus Lawrence don't usually race against each other. So there's going to be a slight, you know, like a feeling out process just to see. Gus is going to see, well, will Kai sit behind me or will he start going in on me? And if he does start going in and making passes, have I got the pace? And there goes Kai Hunter. Oh, wheel to wheel up the banking. Goes Gus Aww. Lawrence. Gus Lawrence checks over his shoulder. <laughs> oh, I would love to be a fly on the, uh, fly on the wall inside of Gus Lawrence's crash helmet. Penny for your thoughts, uh, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Lewis Gilbert gets through as well and now moves up into P2 now. And, uh, well, well, there you go. Gus Lawrence just adjusting the radiator. There. He lifts it up, so he's cooling the engine down now. I think he may have had it down for a bit uh, long there. Again, just uh, showing that radiator now being lifted up. Less than 10 minutes to go in this one. Here's your top three. Hunter, Gilbert, Lawrence. Higgins is still there as well in P4. Don't rule him out. Same as James Lowther. Same as Guy Gunnington. Same as Jamie Perilli, Holbrook, Teddy Pritchard, Williams, and Morgan Porter still the top 10. Biggest mover, Ollie Goodyear, privateer, P23, 12 positions gained. Well, apart from uh, Tristan Rennie, who has gone out on lap number two, all 30, what, 32 out of the 33 starters oh, still running. Austin yeah, Lee is about just to, lost Austin Oh, Lee. yes, I say that curse of the commentator. Um, Enzo Dickenberg is 30th. Leading privateer is Ollie Goodyear in 21st so still harry freeman safe with third place in micro Ma Ma mini max rather mm -hmm. for the three thousand pound vera tool prize fund well keep a close eye on this one because well gas lawrence is he's all over the back of uh, gilbert now he's not going to let gilbert get away uh, i think gilbert uh, very uh, politely asking the uh, the strawberry team potentially if he could borrow a uh, front nose uh, uh, well, that or he could have just popped into the cart shop and bought, like, you know, or, an OTK product. Yes, he could have done that as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. That happened to have a strawberry. Although, although Lewis Gilbert did drive a straw, uh, Tony cart. He did, yeah. Last year. He, he did, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, we have got eight minutes to go. Hunter leads Gilbert by four tenths of a second. And he doesn't lead him by much. He doesn't need, he doesn't need Gilbert anymore because Gus Lawrence forces his way up the inside and you see him pointing right there there's our target we've got to work together and go for it and uh, Lewis Gilbert I think eventually sort of complies yeah somewhat complies but Matthew Higgins I don't think is going to comply because he's latched right onto the back of them this is the battle further back though in the field uh, who do we have here we've got Bradley Barrett in that fray as well we've got Oakley Pryor 
uh, James Lingard, Jack Stedman uh, as well in this fray. This is uh, around 24th on the grid, back to the race lead. And now, crucially, Matthew Higgins has got past Lewis Gilbert. Yes, in D. Higgins back into P3. And uh, Lawrence separated by oof, the width of a ball of wool. Yeah. Yes. That's a very random unit of measurement yeah, there, Henry. Yeah, it's a good one, though. Uh, here we go. There's ah. Pritchard Williams to the inside of Kennington. And Teddy up into seventh position. Now there is... The Dan Holland racing the number five car checking over his shoulder to see Lewis Gilbert, James Lowther, and 47. Is that it? The last car in that line. Look at Porter here. Oh, no, that's oh, James 46, Lowther, sorry. sorry. Oh, yeah. is it? Uh, yeah, Porter is. Porter running. is the 46, yeah. Yes, uh, it's, it's the XL Motorsport cart of um, James Lowther. James Lowther which looks very similar to, to a KR Sport cart. Yes. Uh, this is the battle of the second place because Kai Hunter is all on his lonesome up the road. He certainly is. And uh, out of the bridge they go, down the hill. It's all quiet on the rest and front at the moment. Oh, that's a good I, one. I well, suspect that may change very, very soon, though, Henry, because... Uh, Six uh, minutes to go. Give it, give it time to ferment. Give it time to settle. Oh, yes. Breathe. Mm. A fermenting cart race, ladies and gentlemen. How does that sound? That sounds, um, honestly, that sounds disgusting. But uh, still, uh, it's uh, looking very good, though, for these drivers. Matthew Higgins, though, controlling this next group. Question is, is he closing that gap? It's 1.5 seconds. Look at the sector times. Um, let's have a look. Sector one, it's uh, about uh, a little bit closer then. Uh, they're not matching the pace of, uh, of Guy Kunter. Oh, oh, indeed. Matthew Higgins there. Ladies and gentlemen, if your eyes can detect, that radiator is looking a little bit loose, Henry. Now, one of the brackets is broken, keeping it in place. Now, now that's not all the, Yeah, that's not illegal. No. It's not ideal. It's not illegal. If some of those pipes disattach themselves, that's a good um, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then... Uh, then it'll be a whole different set of problems with Matthew Higgins. Could be race over. Right now, it's fine. Well, it's not fine. Well, it's not fine, but, but it's, it's legal. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They won't, the, the, the Manageable. Yeah. Manageable. The stewards won't do anything to him. But he's, he, he does have to stay off the curbs. He does. Because it, that could cost him time. Here's Lawrence and Gilbert. They are now going to start asking questions of uh, Matthew Higgins. Yeah, they certainly are. And... Uh, Higgins is going to be careful here because if he reaches down to go and do his radiator and then doesn't realise where it is and loses it, he might actually oh, hit it further off. Yes. So I, uh, I, again, that's not an option for him now. You can't sort of like oh, drive one-handed round here at PFI when you sort out your radiator flap. Yeah, exactly. And there's Lowther picking up a position, passing Gilbert. Gilbert now beginning to slip down the order. So some carts were set up for the tyre press to be on straight away. Other. Uh, past, uh, you know, other drivers, they, they, their tyre pressures are set up, you know, so they come on late in the race. Yes, exactly that. But uh, again, down in towards hairpin two. And they're just scrapping amongst themselves there. Bit of contact, Ooh, wheel smoke, car stuff. There we go. Now it's kicking off here, isn't it? So Matthew Higgins uh, with that issue uh, right now, starting to break away, though, from this one. But it's all kicking off behind Gilbert. Teddy Pritchard, Williams, Holbrook, Cunnington, Pirelli, Morgan Porter, all in that battle. There's Gus Lawrence going through. There is James Lowther leading that one. And it's all just very tense. There is Guy Cunnington, the number three, who was up to second place at one oh. point. He dives to the inside of George Holbrook. Holbrook holds him off, though. He does, holding off Holbrook. Now the 29. Dan Dalry, Lewis Gilbert catching James Lowther. And up at the front, Kai Hunter's lead. It was 1.4 seconds over Matthew Higgins. Lawrence is within eight tenths of a second now of the number four cart. But uh, all quiet here. Hunter controlling things beautifully. I have to say now, Senior Rotax, the history of this event in Senior Rotax, uh, drivers winning for multiple years in succession is not as rare as you would think in Rotax. I'm just going to grab the old uh, history books oh, he's out. Got, he's got this Bible out. Well, I mean, Michael Simpson won the first four yeah. senior Rotax titles. No one else has won it more than one year in a row. But yeah, Simpson 
And then he won it, he won it in 2000 when the class made his debut, 2001, 2002 and 2003. Took a couple of years out, came back in 2000 and let's have a look when he came back. Simpson, he came back in 2007, won again. That's why he has five titles. Gilbert. And Gilbert, looking for his first, takes over what is now fourth position. Yeah, he's battling away there with Teddy Pritchard Williams and uh, has held on to that position. And uh, now James Lowther down behind both of them. So Lowther down into P6 now. Holbrook's got back past Guy Cunnington. That's for seventh place. Uh, but still. I doubt. Higgins, I would say, is closing in on Hunter. Henry, gap, 1.3. It's not over yet. Here's the battle for fourth and fifth position, which isn't over yet either. Comes the banking, there goes Harry the Lion. We look to the inside, no. It's against it. One minute to go. Time very quickly running out here, ladies and gentlemen. And, well... Predictions are looking good for some of our viewers. Pearson Bullock Carter, though, receiving a five second time penalty. Uh, there was actually a black flag that went out earlier on for the number 72. That was Austin Lee. That's why we lost Austin Lee. Ah, oh, and on the grass flag. is the number 49 of George Holbrook. He somehow saves it. He falls the back of this group, which is now led by Lewis. Oh, it's, no, it's not led by Lewis Gilbert. Who was that? That is. The NLC motorsport car of Teddy Pritchard Williams. Then there's Gilbert. Cross the line we go. It's, yes, Pritchard Williams, Gilbert, Lowther, Cunnington, Holbrook, Porter, Perilli, Lilly, Rillarts, Fernihau, Neil Clark, and Ben Follins. That's your top 15 of the remaining runners. Enzo Dickenberg update. Enzo is 28. He's gained a couple more places. Certainly has. Well, not long left in this race as the timer ticks down to zero. Now, last lap board will come out to Kai Hunter this time around. GP plate last year in the senior Otax class. And right now, that gap is still 1.3 seconds from Matthew Higgins, who is nursing a broken radiator Ooh, yes. out on circuit. Gus Lawrence is still holding on to third place. And this here, the fourth place battle down. It's fourth all the way to P11. And it's uh, being backed up by Jack Lilly in for Sam Pollitt racing in the number 30. And it's all kicking off here again as Gilbert's fighting to the outside row here. Slots back in. Cunnington goes to the inside as they go onto the bridge. There's your race leader, Kai Hunter. 1.2 seconds now, the gap. Higgins is closing, but I reckon Kai is just cruising this one back now. Yes, for, for, for Kai Hunter, Reed McCauley Bishop, and vice versa. Yeah. You know, he did the hard work at the start, had to sort of fend himself off. He showed defending as well earlier on, but he knew that he had to defend to avoid getting stuck behind anybody he was about to be go quicker than. Yeah, exactly that. Last few sections and corners here for Kai Hunter. GP plate last year. He now goes for the double here two times in a row, he says as he crosses the line. Senior Rotax, Kai Hunter, GP plate retained. What a drive. What a drive from Kai Hunter. Matthew Higgins will have to settle for P2 after starting this one on pole position. It's a Dan Holland racing 1-2. He will be delighted with that one. Gus Lawrence tried his hardest to do the double. But unfortunately, he will have to only settle for a podium in the final for Senior Rotax. He takes third place from Teddy Pritchard Williams. Four positions gained from Lewis Gilbert, James Lowther from George Holbrook, Guy Cunnington, Morgan Porter, and Jamie Perilli rounding out the top 10. Biggest mover in that one Leo Brown, uh, Lachlan Robinson, uh, Ollie Goodyear. But he will have to give a couple of those places back, unfortunately receiving a five second time penalty in that race. But for Kai Hunter, it is redemption once yes. again. Again, he missed out a couple of years on uh, Kart Masters glory. He is backed at last year's achievement in style. I think that the radiator coming loose didn't help Higgins' cause. That would have no. caused a slight distraction for a couple of laps. But, uh, you know, all, keep, all Kai Hunter needs to do is all he needs is a couple of laps, and he is gone. Now let's have a look. No nose cone. 
Yep. He's Teddy good. for Chad Williams. Top four finish for Teddy. He's, uh, uh, that's Lewis Gilbert going through. He was fifth eventually. There's Teddy. Top four finish. Oh, that's a clutch. That doesn't sound too healthy. There's your man. Oh, oh. There you go. Yes, he's been directed into the winner's area. Always interesting to see the reaction of the drivers. That is Kai Redarts going over to congratulate uh, Kai Hunter. Very sporting. Excellent. Good to see. Mm. Uh, you know, Redarts right, right for strawberry racing. The arch nemesis <laughs> to Dan yeah. Allen, Allen racing. But yeah. the drivers get on. Some of them. Some, some of them, yeah. Some not of all of them. Not all uh, of them. You know, variety is the spice of life, isn't it? There's Matthew Higgins. Just uh, congratulating there, Gus Lance, as well. There's your top three, folks. And, well, DHR 1-2, PF International, number three. Solid drive, and the GP plate gets held for a second year in a row now in senior Rotax. Kai Hunter makes his way to Chris McCarthy. Chris, we'll head down to you on the grid. Thank you, DJ. We're getting ready to welcome our senior Rotax GP play winner. What a fantastic drive. Looked like at one stage he wouldn't have even been able to contest for the win, but Kai Hunter fought back and he kept his GP plate. Superb, superb performance uh, and a great result for the Dan Holland Racing Team. A one-two finish for them. Well done to second place, Matthew Higgins. And finishing in third place, won't quite be the double, but he gave it a good go. Gus Lawrence on the podium for the second time today. Let's speak to Kai Hunter about that drive. Uh, Kai, uh, it looks like at one stage you weren't even going to be in a position to fight for that, but uh, you put in a really good drive there. A lot of consistent laps, and in the end, you won quite comfortably. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. Obviously, Got shuffled back at the start from starting second. Uh, was right back compared to Gus. Gus got a lovely lead, so I had to nail down, get get him, and then uh, I think yeah, because Lewis Lewis followed us through on Gus, and then I just got a lovely little gap after that, and I just had to be nice and consistent, but. That was uh, thrilling. Yeah, talk, talk us through when you were in that position of having to chase down a lead. Uh, how difficult was that, just trying to stay calm and consistent? Yeah, I think uh, at the, the, the earlier starts of the race, it's quite slippy. So Gus was like, probably got the got to the front a bit too early. So yeah, when I when I caught him, it was it was lovely. The track was just nice. So when I went past him, I could just do what I wanted to and uh, yeah, and get that nice little gap. And you mentioned about getting that lead as well, staying consistent when you're in that position with the pressure building and building. Not easy, but uh, did enough to keep your GP play. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to do, keep it so I have. And yeah, lovely. Who would you like to thank? Uh, Dan Holland Racing, um, Time Racing Engines, my mechanic Alfie and uh, everyone else, yeah, who, whoever's been there for us and who supported us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for everything. Doing the double like that back to back is not easy at all, but you get to keep it, my friend. There is the GP plate for you. Uh, please do face the crowd. A lot of support in there. Hold it up for us. Kai Hunter is the GP plate champion in 2023. Let's give some support. A superb drive from him and a one two for the Dan Holland racing team as well. Uh, Matthew Higgins, well done on the second place. It was a, a tough race at, at times, wasn't it? Yeah, very difficult when people think it's acceptable to turn into whilst you're halfway alongside them, but it's what it is. Uh, uh but got yourself in a position then to, to fight for second. I know you, you had to fight for it at times, but uh, overall, a, a great performance. Yes, definitely. I mean, look at my side pod. It shows uh, what happens when people turn into you, but yeah, look where we are. Uh, well, a, a podium nevertheless, uh, who would you like to thank for it? Uh, obviously all the boys at DHR, shows what, they, what a mega job they do. Uh, my dad, of course, and all my family that here support me, as well as my sponsors and their remote sport for the sport. It may not have happened today, but I'm sure you'll be back to do it next year. Let's go in uh, here. Well done to Matthew Higgins, P2 for him uh, today. And let's speak to, uh, for the third time, I think it is uh, today now, Gus Lawrence. Uh, two podiums. I know you would have wanted to get the W. You got that lead really quickly, uh, but unfortunately didn't quite materialise for you from that. No, uh, with these two boys, their pace showed towards the end, so I, I had it in my head to get in the lead and try and control the race. But I got there and couldn't quite 
keep the thing stuck to the track. So that was my downfall in that race, I believe. But uh, no, it was okay. It was our first attempt doing the Rotax Cartmasters, and I'm yeah happy to finish uh, third, really. Like get on the podium out of what 72 or 50, 50 drivers. It's not a bad effort, I don't think. So no, it's been it's good. I'm glad we won the X13 and to get on the podium for this is a bonus. So well, it's been a fantastic day. Two trophies to take home. Who would you like to thank? Uh, again, uh, Paul Fletcher, my mechanic, Pods, and uh, Shelby Racing for the engine this time. Well done. Gus Lawrence, third place for him. Congratulations to him. We'll let Gus walk down. He will be on the podium twice when it happens later. But we still have one more race to go before we do. Let's reflect on that result up in commentary. Uh, Anthony, I mean, uh, wh when we saw that lead materialise for Gus, I thought a lot of people, including yourselves, maybe thought that could have been race over. But that was superb from Kai to be so consistent and then get back into the lead. Uh, yeah, Chris, you certainly are right on that one. Uh, you know, we saw him do that earlier on uh, with, you know, uh, I would say Gus Lawrence just drive away from the rest of the field. We really thought that he was going to get that one again as he <laughs> comes back into the coverage box. Uh, yeah, really surprised about that one. But uh, Kai Hunter, fully deserved, fully deserved uh, getting away. Henry, go on. It's raining. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a sprinkling of rain. Next race is coming up. Chris, back to you. Yeah, let's first of all give a round of applause to our Junior X30 Grand Prix finalists. There are small spits of rain starting to fall out here on the circuit. If it's to get heavier, could that play a part? I'm sure that's going to uh, intensify the nerves uh, on the grid. Let's go to our pole sitter. Seems very relaxed. Uh, Harrison Mackey gained a, a few places. Pole position now uh, in the final. Yeah, you must be very pleased with how things have gone so far. Yeah, I'm happy with the result of the pre final but it's all about this race now about to start for when it so it's all about now and how does it feel as a driver when it, you can see the dark clouds are around sprinkles of rain have you just got to put it to one side well can't change it now so let's hope for the best you'll be calling on your experience i'm sure good luck for the race uh, harrison mackey uh, someone alongside him gained a lot of places uh, in the pre-final up 11 i believe it was taylor orridge uh, brilliant drive to come up you've done all the hard work to make those places clear road ahead uh, now it's about the run down to turn one yeah just don't crash well, that, that's good advice uh, in car masters isn't it? it always does help that way long race ahead though for when you do keep it on the track it's a long one isn't it yeah, 15 minutes, I'm going to be done. <laughs> so am I, and so are those guys up there. So is everyone around the circuit. I think we'll leave it there. Uh, let's go and speak to Kenzo Craigie, uh, because he put in a fantastic performance in Junior Rotax. Started dead last, got up in the top 10. Uh, Kenzo, uh, just sat down getting yourself prepared for this one. Well, you've done a lot of overtaking today. You don't have to do uh, much more uh, in this one. How did you feel after that Junior Rotax race? Yeah, it was a good drive in the Juniors. Hopefully we can do the same, but eight better uh, P1, so, yeah. And just have to now uh, change your, your driving style a little bit, I guess, to, to go with the Junior S30? Yeah, this class is quite different. You can chuck it around a little bit more, but still quite tough. Well, best of luck to Kenzo Craigie, uh, Mercedes Junior, knows how to win uh, this uh, event. Uh, we're going to go to another driver who knows how to win uh, this event. We've got uh, Ethan Jeff Hall there, by the way. Uh, we saw him on the podium uh, a little earlier. No doubt he will want to be uh, making some places. Uh, here we have Zach Green as well, gained 14 places uh, in the pre-final. So, uh, uh, again, fantastic performance uh, in the pre-final. Jamie Green Racing is doing brilliant today. I uh, reckon we could uh, wrap it off with a podium here well yeah the aim will be to gain as many positions as possible and just keep going forward and hopefully we can come out on top well, best of luck for the race we'll let you get set i want to speak quickly to two more drivers uh, if i have time for that i believe i do uh, no wolf done the double he knows what he's doing at this race uh, uh, no how's it been being back first of all very quickly uh it's been amazing um there's so much support from all the um, people cheer me on and it's really, really fun this event. I know it's quite different to what you've been racing this year with the Lennox racing team over in Europe in the OKJ class, but uh, uh, back in the UK, you think you can use that experience here to uh, use that to, to go forward in this race? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we learn so many different styles of driving in Europe, so it's very, very difficult. Best of luck to Noah Wolf. Two more drivers I want to speak to. Macaulay Bishop. Uh, let's uh, have a quick chat. Uh, Winner earlier on, uh, can we do double? 
I'll try. I've already done it once, so I'll see how this one goes. Best of luck to Macaulay Bishop. I'm going to keep it that short because I really do uh, want to speak uh, to Morgan Moore, who gained 20 places. Uh, coming up from the repechage, won the repechage. Morgan Moore, uh, you're back where you belong, up the field. Almost fell over there. Uh, Morgan Moore, up in the sharp end now. Uh, how are you feeling ahead of this one? I'm feeling very good, happy with our pace. Now it's time to go to war. Best of luck for it. You certainly showed very good pace in the pre-final. It's been a fantastic afternoon of racing, hasn't it? We've had races decided by one hundredth of a second, two hundredth of a second. Now the grid absolutely full, as you can see from left to right there. The drivers now with their own thoughts as we get set ready to go racing. One more GP play to decide who's it going to go to. Let's find out with Henry Bodet and Anthony Jordan. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the final race of the weekend. It's race 57 and it's Junior X30. Harrison Mackey and Taylor Orridge start this one from the front row. Ethan Jeff Hall and Kenzo Craigie, they go from row two. Zach Green and Keen Geraghty, they ran out the top six, they go from row three. Noah Wolf, who did the double in this one in 2021 in the cadet classes. He starts on the fourth row of the grid with Macaulay Bishop alongside. He is looking to do the double this time around in the junior classes. He won earlier on. Fred Green and Lewis Bird, they go from row five and they round out the top ten. Morgan Moore and Lewis Islin, they go from row six from Harry Bartle and Riley Cranham on row seven. Rocco Shenton and Joey Brown, they round out row eight with Fast Freddy Lloyd and Mayan Patel rounding out row number nine. Charlie Morrison Jones and Eden Spanswick on row 10 from Henry Jostin and Harry Hannum on row 11. Emmanuel Hay and Jack Mowit, they round out row 12. Jensen Graham and Jack Eilif, they round out row 13 with uh, Sakir Al Masrari and David McIntyre rounding out row 14. Tristan Powell and Calvin Clark on row 15, Theo Palmer from George Nassar, Monday Junior Canini, Joseph Smith, Scott Riley, and Aston Sharp round out the field as they make their way into the final corner. Under threatening skies, once more into the breach, dear friends. Let's gird our loins and go to war, as Morgan Moore says. It's a false start, which means I can give you an update in the prediction competition. Interesting indeed. Leading the prediction competition with 18 points is uh, James Price. And James Price, 18 points. He's gone from McCauley Bishop in this next race. There is a three-way tie for second place with 15 points. That is Jake Humphrey, uh, junior TKM driver in the British Championship. Mason and McCauley Bishop, who entered the competition. <laughs> They've got sec uh, 15 points. And also, uh, Daniel Racing, 15 points. All four of you have gone for McCauley Bishop to do the double in this race. I'll give you the full update in points standings, but it's provisional, of course. How's the uh, commentators one doing, Henry? I uh, don't know, Anthony. I've got the piece of paper in front of me. Uh, your... What's the score? I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. You've got three, six, nine, thirteen. Um, and other people have got other things. You're beating me again. Anyway. I mean, I'm just saying, Henry. I'm just saying. <sighs> it's good. It's good. Here we Ladies go. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got, to, I've got to give him some props somehow. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to give him a little bit of encouragement in life. I mean, look at him. You know, he's been afflicted at the best times. Right, carry on, Anthony. We're off and racing one last time at Cartmasters 2023. We are, and it's a lightning start from Harrison Mack, who dives into the lead. Taylor Orridge drops down into third place now. Oh! As Ethan Jeff Hall and spat out of the circuit, it's the number 11, Carl and Clark. that's Joey Brown. No, Joey Brown, sorry, Carl Clark, the number 111. The triple yeah. one, but... Uh, that was uh, nearly messy indeed, but he gets going again. And the breaking. Now, the last couple of races have started well, then turned into a little bit. Oh, and uh, all four wheels off the ground there. And that was one of the Sam Pollock racing cars. Just goes pop into the air and uh, lands and carries on. I think that was, well, I can't quite see who that was. I think it was the number 111 one, one cart. 
Not quite sure. Well, down the inside there. There goes Rocco Shenton, who's had a lightning start as well in this one. Started this one in the midfield, gaining more positions as uh, there goes through Noah Wolf. Uh, yellow flags out. Oh, and there's a big coming together through the Mike Wilson oh. complex. Two carts in the barrier, and it's Fred Green, and oh, it's oh, it's Morgan Moore. The premium karting number 46 of Morgan Moore, Fred Green, who started so well, changed the lead. Taylor Orange takes the race lead. I actually spoke to Taylor's mum, Leanne, uh, during the lunch break, and uh, she says, you always say I'm watching, and I say, well, that's why I know you're watching. But she's got blonde hair in her avatar picture, and she's got black hair in the panic. Yes. Oh, there you go. Well, and Taylor's got orange hair. There you go. Taylor. On fire! Yes. Both literally and figuratively, he's leading this race for the crop promotion team. Got to say, the crop team have had a not the best cart masters 2023. Can Taylor Orange put a big toothy grin on the collective croc family? That certainly would be nice, wouldn't it? As he now leads the way and is starting to pull a gap as well. Now four tenths of a second from Harrison Mackey. Zach Green still there in third place as he's latched on to Mackey as they go across the start-finish line. And the fastest driver out on circuit, who is it, ladies and gentlemen? It's number four, Macaulay Bishop, who's there oh. in P6. Uh, Will Print asks, where is he in the uh, prediction? He's got 11 points, so no alpha goodies for you, unfortunately. And there was a move, Zach Green. Trying to pass Harris and Mackey. And look at that, Ethan Jeff Hall. Trying to get him off. Noah Wolf is next in line. Noah Wolf. And then it's McCauley Bishop. Now, we saw that start from Gus Lawrence in the previous race. Just sliding his way at the order. Okay, he finished third. But here comes Bishop. He just says, well, I've done it once, so why not do it again? No, exactly. Very matter of fact. And that's not being cocky or arrogant. All these drivers have to have a certain level of arrogance. They have to believe they are better than everybody else. And that it's their destiny and their right to win every race. That's what makes these the best of the best. Yeah, it certainly does, doesn't it? And the uh, junior category always gives us a show, doesn't it, Henry? Seniors, very calm, collected with their racing. The juniors can be also, but also... They can give us some very, oh. very dramatic and exciting final few laps. Well. And there is 11 minutes to go in this one. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot more excitement to come. I was going to say, that this group of drivers you're watching now, they need to get their act together to, if they want some excitement in this race. Because Taylor Orridge is disappearing. Oh, McCauley Bishop goes in on Zachary. And look at that. Zachary tried to defend. He sort of jinked out and sort of thought that would put McCauley off. And McCauley said, no, no, there's still a cart's width at the inside. He went for it. Put McCauley Bishop... Into P3, Orange, Mackey, into P4 rather. Orange, Mackey, Jeff Hall, Bishop. Then it is Green, Wolf, Craigie, Bird, Getty, and Fast Freddie Lloyd rounding out your top 10. Joseph Smith gets a five second penalty. The only two drivers that have retired, Morgan Moore and Fred Green. Yep, nice stuff there as Ethan Jeff Hall now sets the fastest lap of the race. Uh, now that goes to Henry Jocelyn, who is uh, currently sitting in P15. Hey, Monday Junior Canini, take a bow. Up 20 places. Now, Kenzo Craigie, I think, has passed more drivers in any of the Grand Prix. I think he's passed 27 drivers. Uh, Honda in, Cadet. Uh, uh, there was, uh, who, who, who did that in Honda Cadet? Kenzo Craigie. No, no, no. Um, in terms of this... The, oh, this the, weekend, this sorry. This weekend, for the Delta Raceway uh, prize. Oh, I see. Uh, Kenzo Craig, but Monday Junior Canini, uh, well, he's up to 13th and he passes another four or five. Well, he can still get that prize. That's unofficial. I think Kenzo Craig, he may have won the Delta Raceway prize. We'll have to see. I wonder, I wonder if Kenzo's going to go and ask Toto Wolf, can I have this new race suit? It's not on, not on brand. No, but we'll have to see Kenzo uh, doing really well in both classes, I have to say. Uh, of course, 2022, Kenzo was the Honda Cadet uh, Kart Masters champion. Well, now, look at this. There's a bit of Kart Masters history. Noah Wolf, one of only two drivers to do the double here at Kart Masters, chasing the driver who could potentially do the double here this year. Macaulay. Bishop. Orange has a 1.1 second lead over Harris and Mackey. Time ticking away at nine and a half minutes to go and uh, you're not seeing that burst of speed from Bishop that we were so seeing. He started eighth, okay, he's up to fourth but he, he's going to need some help. I, it's very early stages here but look at Taylor Orange go. Orange, and I'm just looking 
in the predictions. Has anyone Did gone anybody, with it? I mean, we got people going for Macaulay Bishop, for Zach Green, for Fred Green, for Noah Wolf, Freddie Lloyd, Ethan Jeff Hall, Harrison Mackey. That's seven different drivers. Not one person has gone in the prediction competition for Taylor Orridge. Yeah, even the commentators wow. there. Well, Noah Wolf now with the fastest lap of the race. They're in P5, starting to close in. There's Taylor Orridge. Well, I mean, look at you, this. You can understand why, in a way, Taylor's been very fast, but he hasn't been winning races. No. But I don't think Taylor has Taylor has not won a race all weekend, any of the heats or anything like that. He's been there or thereabouts. But now, bit of clean track. Oh, oh there's a bit of elbow grease on this. Kenzo Craigie passing the number 17 cart. Uh, sorry. Who was that? That was uh, Kendrick Lee Parting, yeah, uh, 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 Freddie Lloyd. Kian Garrity also in the mix there. Freddie Lloyd on the charge through the field as well. He's uh, up into P9, P8 as well. There was a, a, a roar emanating up from the grandstand as Orridge, Mackey, Jeff Hall, Bishop, Wolf, Green, Bird. Oh, Bishop's uh, dropping down. Bishop, yes. what's the problem there? That is Freddie Lloyd going round. And here is the battle further up the order. Ethan Jeff Hall getting a five-second penalty, I'm hearing. Well, it's not come up on the screen yet. Um, there's nothing on the screen saying that, and I don't see it right. Ah, yes, there it yes, is. there it is. I know not why or what for, but it's happened. And Ethan has now lost three places. There's the, the second of the croc carts, number 24. Well, Lewis Bird making a move suddenly in the early evening air here at Cartmasters. The croc promotion team have come alive. It must be feeding time. It must be. And through goes Freddie Lloyd there and no Wolf Bishop going through as well. Wolf getting spat out there to the back of this group. Well, Taylor Orridge, Harrison Mackey. Ethan Jeff Hall dropping down the order. Lewis Bird there now, like you're saying, up into third place now. Seven positions gained. This is looking very, very good here as uh, Lloyd again to the inside line, I think goes side by side oh. and is gaining positions. And I think he's up to P4 now. Look at this battle pack. Two, four, six, seven cards. And here comes Zach Green to take third position. The head... Got to say, the heavyweights are not at the front. With Jeff Hall, his chances of victory are over. Noah Wolf, but uh, Orridge, one second in front of Mackey. With Bird and Green, these two drivers on the screen, they're three seconds back. Uh, Lewis, oh, hang on a minute, though. Under investigation, driver number four, Macaulay Bishop. And we just saw... Number 24 under investigation as well, Lewis Bird. Well, there we go. That certainly is start interesting. Start line so infringements. Start that would be, line infringements. That would yeah. be formation infringements. No penalties yet. They're under investigation. That means the stewarding team, or rather the camera crews back in the control centre, they're looking at the start line cameras to judge whether they broke formation and put wheels outside of the tram lines before the lights changed. Now, Bishop seems to have settled back in. There he is. Now, he's, uh, uh, he's in front of Freddie Lloyd. This is fifth and sixth, but they are five seconds behind race leader Taylor Orridge. People asking what happened to Keen Garrity. Uh, Keen Garrity is down to 11th. He's just got caught up in the mix, put the cart in the wrong place at the wrong time, and lost several positions. Further back, George Nassar, the Lebanese driver. He is 32nd on his day. Eaton Spanswick and Scott Riley have retired. Uh, Saka Al Mashirji from Kuwait is 29th at the moment. As we've got, again, that is Bird passing green. The more these battle, the closer that Bishop and Lloyd and Wolf and Jeff Hall get. Although Ethan Jeff Hall, that five-second penalty, that will push him back out of the top, out of the top 20 at the moment. Yeah. As you can see that train of carts coming out of the hit, second hairpin. Now they're all within five seconds of the number 97 Strawberry Racing Driver. 
They are indeed. So this is now closed up now. McCauley Bishop back on the drive. Remember, question mark over Bishop under investigation. So he's got to be very careful with any overtakes that he plans on doing over the course of this uh, next four minutes. Yeah, it depends what he's under. If he's under well, yeah, investigation yes, yeah, yeah. for a start line procedure, then he can carry on. If he's under investigation for, like, yeah, like you said, an on track incident, then yes, he's got to be very watching careful. Him. There goes Zach Green right, on yep. bird. Up the inside, McCauley Bishop trying to make it three Ooh. wide. Bishop into P3. Right, four minutes to go. The gap's five seconds. That is not enough time. And the thing is, though, Harrison Mackey is one second behind Taylor Orridge. So it's not as though Mackey and Orridge are going to battle and slow each other oh. down. And that is Freddie Lloyd, who's... Done the decent thing, Anthony. Uh, yes, and I think covered he up had. the Oliver Green on me. I think they may have watched back some of their racing. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a rule, though, Anthony. It's a rule. It is a rule. Oh, Wolf and Green. Oh, oh no. tire smoke. Two fusion drivers fused together. And Lewis Bird. Five second penalty for Lewis Bird. That's Lewis out of fourth position. Now he was under investigation. So was Macaulay Bishop. They've obviously concluded their investigation into Lewis Bird and they've judged him a five-second penalty for, I would imagine, a start line infringement. Although, don't quote me on that. There's Lewis Islin now in the red and white Jade racing cart. He's up to ninth. Kenzo Craigie rounding out the top ten, the back of this group. Ethan Jeff Hall now. <laughs> oh, yellow flags at sector one yes. and there's a driver off and it is... Oh, it's our Kuwaiti 67. driver. I wouldn't part there, Saka. If you can move your cart, I would move your cart. Al well, Mashergi there in a dangerous spot. Marshall's quickly on the scene. Right. Okay. I think the Marshall's um, actually lost his shoe. Oh. So. Oh dear. Oh, oh and Kenzo Craigie back. Oh, this I've, is not oh, good. It's, it's, oh, and he's Kenzo damaged. Side pod is yeah, about side pod's come off. So I was about to say, uh, some of these drivers have seen they've got five-second penalties. They know that their cart master's dreams of glory are over, and this is where things can get silly you know drivers are thinking well i'm not going to win you know i just want to go it's been a long time it's been a long day uh i haven't seen mccauley bishop getting a penalty they're still investigating that uh bishop is still 4.87 seconds behind racing the taylor orange taylor orange now let's look at orange very quickly he's fourth in this year's british championship he didn't do can't ask the last year or two and oh, well, it's over the minor placings, but this is great stuff. And Freddie Lloyd. Now, Freddie was complaining about uh, poor brakes in this class. And I think that he had a couple of instances where the, maybe those brakes aren't working to his liking still. There's your leaders, Harrison Mackey. Uh, is he closing in? He's closing by a couple uh, of tenths. A couple of tenths. Over here a and there. minute to go. Bishop. Still third. Bird has got a penalty. That'll put no one for fourth. Yes, Anthony. Oh. Oh, 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 no. Oh. Well, I was just pointing at Mono Junior Canini, who was getting very close to that 27 positions gain. Well, you know, he's got in front of... Uh, he's got... Uh, who's had a penalty? Lewis Bird's had a penalty. That's so that's seconds. another another place gain for Mono Junior Canini. Harry Hannum Freddie is Freddie Lloyd tenth. as Freddie well. Freddie Lloyd, now five seconds. And so where's Freddy? He, he's behind him he's anyway. He's dropped back. Yes. Oh, a cross over there. Lewis Islin. No, is that Lewis Islin in the number 12 card? I think it is, you know. Yes. He's suddenly come alive. I don't know if it's the time of day, the ambient temperature, <laughs> certain bits of jetting in the engines. I don't know. Something in the water. Huh? So, but, but certainly, you, you see, in the last few minutes of Cart Master 2023, you are watching a couple of drivers we haven't seen too much of suddenly come to life. One of them, Taylor Orridge, is now 16 seconds plus a lap away from the GP plate. This is fantastic. I mean, uh, no one had Taylor Orridge down to win this one. He started this one on the front row in the uh, for, for this race. But he certainly, he surprised a lot of us here. But the crop, we know that the crop promotions cart chassis, and we know it's quick. Oh, we know it's good. Yeah, we know yeah. that Taylor's quick as well. I mean, that chassis that Taylor's driving, that won the... Uh, the last two uh, IAMI International final events, and it won last year's British Championship. I I oh, and now there's the Bethlehem Cup, Monday Junior Canini. He's battling with Ethan Jeff Hall. This looks like it's going to end in tears. It ends with Ethan Jeff Hall on the grass. He falls back into line, so 
Monday Jr. Here's Islin. Now, is Islin in line for a podium? No, Bishop is off So at the moment, the top three, Orange, Mackey and Bishop. Oh, dear. And the number 43 gets back wide. Oh, it's a... Uh, yeah, this is one of those... Ra it's Emmanuel the end of the Hale. weekend, isn't it? Yeah, that, that was Emmanuel Hale, and that was the leading privateer driver. Harry Freeman, your... Unofficially, Harry Freeman has won the Privateer Award. But here is Taylor Orridge. Anthony Jordan, it's been a long, long five days. We've seen some of the best win. We've seen some surprise packages. I'm not going to say Taylor Orridge is a surprise, but judging on his form coming into this race, you would have thought, yeah, chance for podium, yes. A win? Well, I'm not so sure. But he has absolutely dominated. And special mention, Harrison Mackey with his brother Lewis on the spanners. Uh, yeah, Nanny June will be very proud of them. But the Ann Stokes, you haven't been in the chat, probably because you're on the grandstand chewing through your fingernails. Well, you can stop chewing and start celebrating because Taylor Orridge is your Junior X30 GP plate winner for 2023. Harrison Mackey takes second. Macaulay Bishop, the double was not to be, but another podium for Bishop. Lewis Bird finishes fourth on the road, but he will get a five-second penalty, which means Noah Wolf in one of his few appearances in the UK this year. And there's a driver celebrating going across the line with that black NASA panel on. Uh, who was that, I wonder? I think that was David McIntyre. Potentially so, but there oh. it is. Taylor Orridge after a very dramatic weekend. 13th in the intermediate classifications at the end of the qualifying heats. He qualified it 17th on Friday, 8th, a 30th and two third places over the course of the qualifying heats. It was not on our radar to win, yep. but again, Kart Masters proves us wrong, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we love the format. That's why we love this weekend. And for your man there, Taylor Orridge, after 17 laps, gets that GP play for the first time. Am I right in saying? Uh, yes. Never. Oh, yes. Before. Never won a GP. I can't remember Taylor even entering no. uh, Kart Masters very often. But uh, there he you goes go. through. There is. Oh, okay, Nanny June, hold your breath. We are not in the weight. We don't have a nose scope penalty. Harrison's on the podium. There's your winner. Oh, there he is. He's spotting him at number one. Here's Macaulay Bishop. Two podiums in a weekend, the first and the third. Not a bad weekend's work. Yeah, mimicking uh, Gus Lawrence. Uh, Jeff Hall walking away there. He had a penalty. There's and, Bartle. Uh, Harry Bartle. Yeah, Harry. Uh, Saying well done, uh, so Taylor so the support. Yeah. Yep. Well, again. I'm trying to do live maths. Yep. You you talk. I'll okay. add. Excellent, Henry and live maths. Well, McCordy mm. Bishop looking a bit deflated there, but uh, a great result finishing in P3. And uh, well, over on the other side is, is that uh, no, that's Lewis Bird that's over there. It's not, uh, or unless it is um, Taylor Orridge in just Lewis Bird's suit. No, that is Lewis Bird. There he is. Hey. There's Taylor Orridge. Handshake from uh, Ethan Jeff Hall. Ethan Jeff Hall. Hall. Oh, uh, and that's nice to see. Uh, yeah. yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Well done. GG and all that. Good game. Okay. Oh, no, who is that? that yeah. Oh, that's Jack Mowat. Oh, no, that's uh, Joey Brown, sorry. Ah, uh, apologies for the... Uh, <laughs> somewhat industrial language there as you can see tensions running high yes indeed but well probably finishing p3 in that one certainly a brilliant brilliant result for our finalists in junior x30 they make their way over to chris mccarthy then on the grid taylor orridge his first gp plate we are down here a greeting a huge round of applause to your GP play winner in Junior X30, Taylor Orridge. Congratulations to Taylor finishing in second place. The number 21 of Harrison Mackey put up a very good fight in that race. And now we wait for third place to come round to complete the podium out of the final corner will come McCauley Bishop, who finished in third place. Well done to McCauley. It's been a really good day uh, at the office for him. But let's go and speak to our winner, Taylor Orridge. Well, you, uh, your advice before the race was that you don't crash, don't get into trouble, uh, and you, you very much did that. How hard was that? 
just really long. Um, I got told to sing, so I started singing with like eight minutes to go. Is that, has that happened before? Oh yeah, uh, whenever I've got a bit of a gap, I'll just sing. What, what do you sing? <laughs> um, well, Hannah told me to sing this song called Heads Will Roll. Uh, so yeah, I just kept singing that for like eight minutes. I won't be able to stop thinking about it when I'm watching you race now, to be honest. So I was always going to ask you to start singing, but uh, maybe we'll leave that for the. We want to hear it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. I'm sorry to disappoint, but it's not happening. <laughs> it's not. Oh, we tried. I tell you what, maybe on the podium, maybe on the podium. Maybe. But uh, yeah, Taylor, you were having a. <laughs> Let's get back to uh, some serious business. You had a lot of pressure from uh, that man over there uh, behind. Tell us how hard was it to stay so consistent with the threat of rain around as well? Yeah, I've seen a few drops on my riser. It was it wasn't scary, but it put a doubt in my mind. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, well, you've got a lot of people uh, up there supporting you. A huge round of applause. Who would you like to thank? Um, all of Croc, Grice, uh, my dad and everyone that's just supported me. A team that was on top of the world not long ago, now on Kart Masters as well. Final order of the day. Taylor, that is for you. Hold it up to the crowd. You are the GP Play winner in Junior X30. Singing might come later, Let, let's see, maybe, maybe on the podium. Let's go to second place, Harrison Mackey. Uh, great drive for you, just couldn't quite get that gap down at the end of the race. Yeah, I saw we got, got into first at the start. Obviously Taylor got went in front and got a good gap. We started to catch and then a few, made a few mistakes. We maybe drop back a little bit, but Peter is still great. Uh, and we're seeing personal best sectors coming in, purple sectors uh, as well. Was there any point you thought you, you might have had it? Yeah, it was, I think half of the race I thought I might catch, but that last two laps, I was like, oh, I don't think we'll get it, but I'll try my best. You certainly didn't give up. Who would you like to thank? I want to thank all the Fusion Motorsport, my mum and my dad, Event is Powered, Joe Bullen, just for all the power. And I think I want to thank my brother, so, just because I couldn't do it at home. Well done to second place, Harrison Mackey put in a, a fantastic performance. Uh, let's go and speak to uh, third place, uh, Macaulay uh, Bishop, who did win in junior OTAC, similar to Gus Lawrence, I guess. First and a, a third, two podiums, that's not bad. It's all right, I mean, like, I got close to doing a butt double, but uh, honestly, just like, even Jeff Hall, like, what's he doing, mate? Like, obviously... Oh, 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 we winning the double, so I just couldn't say could he? Like, just kept removing me, and then just ruining his own race, and like finished like P20 or something. So I just says it all, doesn't it? Uh, who would you like to thank? I mean, I think we'll move straight on to that. You've had a really good day, a first and a third. Who would you like to thank? All of DHR, uh, my dad's mechanic, and my brother, and then uh, Sean for setting up the car. Well done, you've had a fantastic day. Well done to Macaulay Bishop, first and a third. That's a, a great result. <laughs> And well done to the Croc team uh, as well. That's a, a brilliant performance. <laughs> well, he's singing, and now, now he's got the muscles out as well. Uh, so we will hear some singing maybe on the podium uh, later. Uh, Anthony Jordan now Hello. joining me on the track alone. Uh, I don't know where. Uh, oh, Henry, 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 Henry's just here. Henry's just here. <laughs> there's, there's Henry. Uh, now, now makes Hello. his way around. Uh, guys, well, oh. we've had some fantastic races today, haven't we? Yeah. Um, always, okay, you know, tension's coming a little bit high at the end of it, and I think, you know, when, when karma heads prevail, racing is tough, racing is hard. Um, nobody goes out to hurt another driver or anything like that, so, you know, yeah, when things calm down a little bit, you know, things will be reviewed, but again, a fantastic three days of racing as it starts to rain again. <laughs> I mean, the eight drivers that have won... Uh, the GP play today. They have had to do it through biblical rain, mm. damp conditions, greasy conditions, hot sunny conditions, and then cool cloudy conditions. They have they have had to master the karting, which is why they are this year's kart masters. Yeah, and Anthony, for you, I mean, any, any races in particular that stood out there? I mean, one by one, one was one by one hundredth of a oh, second, one by two yeah. hundredth of a second. Uh, yeah, yes, a, a pretty good year for it, wasn't a, a it? A pretty good year, very mixed uh, mixture of uh, race finishes, I say. Yeah, very close finishes. Uh, wins by a mile but I've, I've got to give it it wasn't the most exciting race but I've got to give it to Gus Lawrence finally finally he gets a GP plate after fighting for it for so long uh, a well deserved drive to get it he can change that number one now
now to a GP Play. And I would hope to think that, Gus, if you're watching this, use your GP Play this year, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and uh, Henry, as well, we, uh, sticking with the senior classes, we yes. did see some fantastic performances, uh, particularly from Kai Hunter as well. Uh, yeah, Kai Hunter, two in a row. So I think there's only six or seven drivers that have successfully defended uh, the GP plate. So Kai has done that. And he did it against 50 of the best, not just in Britain, but around the world. I mean, first of all, thank you to all the people from the United States, from the United Arab Emirates, from Angola, from the Netherlands, from all over the place who have come to sample kart masters. I think that there's going to be some uh, somewhat jaded drivers going back to their own countries now, thinking, ooh, I've got to up my game a little bit because the Brits are crazy. <laughs> and uh, here, yes, we are. <laughs> um, OK, quick, quick, before we go, the prediction competition unofficially. Thank you for all your support. James Racing with 19 points wins the prediction competition. Joint second with 16 points, Junior TKM racer Jake Humphrey and... <laughs> Macaulay Bishop, <laughs> Macaulay and Mason Bishop with 16 points. They are the top three. So uh, James Racing, you win an Alpha Live uh, baseball cap. All you have to do is email james at alphalive.co.uk with your name and your UK postal address, and we will get that out to you. The same for Jake Humphrey, although, yeah, no, the same for Jake Humphrey. We're going to see Jake soon. Uh, no, Jake Humphrey, James at Alpha Live, and we'll go and give this to Macaulay and Mason in the paddock later on. Thank you for joining in, though. It's been a great laugh. Uh, I, I think before we uh, close, uh, I know there is driver of the day. I want to ask you to any drivers oh, yeah. in particular that have uh, stood out. I know it's really hard to pick one because there's been so many fantastic performances, not just wins, but drivers <laughs> charging through the field. Uh, uh, let, pick uh, one driver for me I, who's I, uh, stood I, out. I can see the three cogs and Anthony Brain sort of like slowly yeah, they're, turning. They're so I'll give him a little bit of time there. I'm going to say Saka Armashirji from Kuwait. Not only did he make the final coming over from Kuwait, one of the few drivers in the Middle East to do that. I think he, he went out in the Grand Prix, but he was up there in the top 15, the top 16. So for me, unsung hero, come all the way from Kuwait, get it into the final at the hardest race of the year. That's good for me. And I think that, that's a very good pick. What about, what about yourself, uh, DJ? Again, my cogs are still turning in my, uh, in my brain because, like you said, there was 305 drivers to go through. Henry. How about a privateer that finished on the podium, Anthony? Shall I just help you out there? Put uh, but, 50p in the meter? That's actually there quite a go. good shout on that one. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, Harry uh, will have a good one as well in that one, I think. He finished P3 in this one in the uh, in the cadet classes. I think, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll give it to Harry Freeman. I think he deserves uh, driver of the day in that one. Uh, but, but overall, a lot of people to thank, isn't there, uh, Henry? I'll, I'll let you do the, the honours. Uh, people who have worked here for this event, you've seen it up close and personal with DJ for the the entire yeah. event. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you to everyone here at the Trent Valley Car Club, from Nigel Edwards, the chairman and race director, to the ladies in the office, the beating heart of this event. Most importantly, of course, the medical staff and the marshalling team, the Orange Army, the best of the country, to everyone at Alpha Live, to James Fitchew and team up there in the time for motorsport timing, to all the sponsors, Delta Raceway, Vera Tools, Rotax, iArmy, all the people that are providing the prize money, there's £36,000 worth of prizes that we've mm. got to give out in a minute. Um, to you, Chris, coming back to your roots in karting, to, right there, to Zach McDonald's, what a star he's going to be. My P45 is in the post. I'm gone. Uh, he is the future of our sport. Uh, to the drivers, their families, they sacrifice the time, money to go racing and they create this wonderful thing to OMS for putting on the best paddock party oh, yes. we've ever had. And to you the viewers yeah. in your tens of thousands you have watched we do our level best to make this sport as interesting and as innovative and as exciting as it is in the flesh and you respond by watching by commenting and by supporting so thank you very much I think that's a very nice way to wrap it up. Uh, yep. Gents, I think we'll both be back. Uh, well, hopefully all of us will be back here next year. Uh, whether we're doing it behind the microphone watching, we'll certainly uh, be back. And I hope you guys are at home watching will be back as well. Thank you to everyone uh, here at the circuit. That closes the Motorsport UK Kart Masters British Kart Grand Prix for 2023. We will see you again next year. <laughs>